Oh, we're gonna die tonight. Oh, yeah, get him. Get him. Get him, spider. Oh, gosh. Howdy there, folks. How are y'all doing? My name is Reese, or Brashiat Cub, and welcome to Tech It with Reese, specifically Tech It 2. That is right, 10 years after the release of what we now call Tech It Classic. The Tech It team, in conjunction with, I believe, XJohn was the username, have rolled out Tech It 2, a sequel of sorts to Tech It Classic. This is based on Minecraft 1.12, and it attempts to recreate. The original Tech It or Tech It Classic. It's got most of the mods you'll be familiar with. It's got some fun new surprises. It has Galacticraft. And I'm excited to start playing. So, without further ado, we're going to go to single player. And we do have a world that's already in here. This was from a live stream that I did. Actually, as of recording, it was last night. And it was a lot of fun. I just wanted to hop in and see what the mod pack was like. Whether or not it really did stay true to the original. We're starting a new world, though. This is a series where we're going to have a fresh start right from the beginning. So let's go to Create New World, and we're going to call it Let's Play. We're also going to go down to More World Options, and we're going to set the seed as Cub Games, because that's a fun throwback. I'm going to turn on Allow Cheats so I can fly around and get pictures for screenshots. I promise I'll never cheat in any other way. I'm also going to turn on Bonus Chests, which is the only other type of cheat that we're going to have. I'm going to cycle through these real quick so you can get a feel of what we have available to us. I've always been a fan of large biomes, so I think we're going to go ahead and do that. So if you want to play along at home, we're using version 1.0.0 of Tech It 2. The seed is here, Cub Games, large biomes, create new world. And let's see what we get out of it. I'm hoping for either Vast plains or big mountains. Nothing in between, no forests, please. Well... This is the exact opposite of what I wanted. In fact, this is not what I wanted at all. I wanted a... Well, hi there, puppy dog. How are you doing? That's nice. Red currant leaves? Oh, cool! So we can collect, uh, we can collect berries from these. Or, I guess, whatever red currant is, presumably some type of fruit. If I break this, will it give me the plant? This is very strange. Shrub wood. This is not from Tech It Classic, or even Tech It Main, from what I can tell. But that's awesome. It looks like we did get a red currant sapling. So, at the top of my screen, you'll see we have Wayla, which means what am I looking at. By default in this pack, it's disabled. It's not there, and I kind of like that. It is nice for just having a nice, clean aesthetic, but if you want to enable it, by default, it is bound to number pad 1, and you can change that in your settings by going to controller, scrolling all the way down till you get to Wayla, which, or, or, or Wyla, Wy however you're meant to pronounce it, which should be in here. I seem to have not been able to find it, but I assure you it does in fact exist, and you can change the show hide to number pad, well, it's on number pad 1, but you can change it to a different key if you want to. All right, we also have our starter chest here. And it's full of mostly not too useful things. Uh, an axe will be handy, and a pickaxe will be handy. I would kind of hoped for better food options, although we did get some red currant right after we got in here. Oh, you know what? That chest is also going to be pretty useful. We have our first chest now and our first few torches. Believe it or not, I, I think we're going to hop up this hill here. We're going to have a little bit of a look around, and then we're going to sail away. I'm halfway tempted to just start another world with a different seed, but we're already invested. We decided to use the seed, uh, Cub Games, and we're going to go ahead and see it through. So we might end up leaving this tree floating in the air, if not for the fact that I know that would drive me crazy. Once we're many miles away from here and I can no longer see it, I'll still know that it's here. And breaking it does give us the chance to possibly get some saplings, although it doesn't look like we did, which is a tragedy. All right, little doggy, I'm going to leave you now. I'm going to build a boat, and we did have some planks out of the bonus starter chest, so we didn't really need to cut down a tree. I was hoping for a sapling, because I, I'm going to find a different biome, and it would have been nice to have some of these with me. But I think we're going to head off towards the north and see what we can find. Well, it looks like if uh, the mini-map is to be believed, the river ends this way. So let's go the other direction! Actually, you know what? Let's take a moment to stop and just admire nature. This is just me admiring nature. Don't worry too much about it. 
This is a this is just a normal thing that I'm doing today. Let's not be stressed over it. I suppose we do need to be on the lookout for rubber trees. If we find any, it might be worth grabbing them. Because this is a tech pack after all. We're going to need that. But for the most part, I'm... Oh, this is the way we were... You know, this direction is where we want to be headed. I want to find something a little bit more interesting. I want to find a really nice place to build a house. So if somehow you are not familiar with tech it Classic... It, ironically, this is called tech it 2. But back in the day when I played tech it Classic, it was called tech it 3 because it was the third iteration of Tekkit. Tekkit itself was a multiplayer sequel to Technic, which was, I mean, I guess actually, now that I think about it, it might have been Technic and then Tekkit and then Tekkit 3. Were there multiple varieties of Tekkit before? I, I cannot remember. I can't recall. I might not be a, a reliable historian on that. What I do know is that when I started playing Tekkit Classic, it was called Tekkit 3. So you could make the argument that this is Tekkit 4, if not for the fact that Tekkit Legends existed before this, and then there was Tekkit Main before that, and then Tekkit Light before that, and all of those followed on from what we call Tekkit Classic. So the numbering scheme of all of this is a little bit silly, but the name is good, Tekkit 2, because it's meant to be a sequel to nothing else other than Tekkit Classic, and it is truly an honest-to-goodness follow-up from that. A lot of the bells and whistles you might expect from a more modern uh, pack, they're not present here, which, I mean, they might be a negative to you, you know, you're not going to have to capitate or anything like that. But in my opinion, my humblest of opinions, I kind of like the direction they're going with this, because it is a true, honest throwback to Tech at Legends, and it is not ashamed or bashed by that. So I'm going to build another axe, and the reason I'm killing all of these guys is I don't have iron right now, so the only way to get their wool is to kill them. We do have six wool now, so we could probably head off. But we're going to want to build a bed wherever we end up, because I'm not going to want to die and travel all the way from where we are now to wherever we end up, especially if we end up going on a really long pilgrimage. We're going to want to avoid that. I mean, obviously, the, the answer to that would be avoiding death, but that can be sometimes very challenging. And I don't really know if that's going to be something we can manage. So it looks like the river does continue on here, so so shall we. Oh, there is a village here. We have happened upon one. I see it up there on the mini-map. Very handy. We're going to go over there and see if we can pilfer any products from the local uh, villagers. Pilfering produce would be more like it, because I'm actually after carrots. Carrots are super quick and easy to grow, and while they don't offer a lot in terms of health gain they are at least easy to manage and in a pinch very handy and it looks like i have found their entire food supply but they just leave it lying out here tell you what though i'm not a complete monster so i am going to replant their seeds mainly so if we ever happen across here again we can pilfer them once more so we will replant their carrots and we still have 11 carrots, so that's handy. Oh my gosh, they've got everything over here. They got beetroots as well. We're going to spend quite a bit of time here, I can already tell. Hops? Okay, that's fun. I tell you what, these are kind of out of sight and therefore out of mind, so I'm not going to bother replanting them. Oh my gosh, there are bunnies. I Is that vanilla Minecraft? I've not played vanilla Minecraft enough to know whether or not that's vanilla Minecraft. I think bunnies are a thing, though. They're kind of cute. Hmm... Not a lot going on in these houses, eh? I think these villagers would do well if someone would open up a furniture store nearby. Or maybe any kind of store where they could you know, purchase objects. I, I mean, this house is impressive just because it has a countertop and a little table in the corner. Oh, books! Hot diggity, this is a great find. So we can middle mouse button to sort everything that we now have in our inventory, which is starting to fill up. And with this place explored, yeah, I think we can safely say the last thing of interest here for us is going to be this tree right here, and I guess these plants, which I, initially I missed. But this is a very special tree, one that I am excited to see. This is a, a rubber tree, and we need a rubber tree so that we can get rubber. Obviously, I guess that goes without saying. So that gives us three rubber. We're gonna clean up the sides a bit, see if we can find any more. Oh, this is a great find. This tree's loaded with it. And then we could leave this tree here, and over time, it will replenish its rubber. But we're gonna go ahead and cut it down because I think that there's a potential that it might drop at least a rubber sapling. 
Doesn't look like it did, which is unfortunate. Just means it was kind of a waste. But it looks like it's getting dark. We've already burned through our first day here, so I'm going to go ahead and collect what is left of this food. And we're probably going to head out of town and spend a night out on the water. So as of right now, as of recording, there is not a pack for uh, BD Craft, even though I would love for there to be. It used to be called Sfax. I don't know why it's not anymore. I don't know what happened there. I'm not sure if there's some sort of epic dramatic story behind it all, or if maybe, you know, falling out with the original creator and they had to change the name. All I know is that it's not called Sfax anymore. We're gonna, we're gonna pilfer a bit of cobblestone over here because that's gonna allow us to create some slightly better tools before we head out. And I could just dig a hole and get some cobblestone, but this cobblestone is readily available. Someday we will come back here and I will make it up to these villagers. I will replant all of their food and rebuild all of their houses. I'll make them better than they are now. I'll, I'll make this place fantastic, believe you me. But for right now, we're just going to pill for this stuff. We're going to get ourselves a better pickaxe. Leave that one here. Get ourselves a better uh, axe as well. And once again, leave that one here. And then we're going to get some more sticks so that we can create something to defend ourselves with. A sword. Sounds like the rain is falling and our inventory is now full. So unless we want to, you know, build a chest and leave it here for the locals... Uh, which, I mean, I guess we could, so that they could hold on to those, that axe and that pickaxe for me. We're not going to, though. That would be silly. We're going to kill these pigs on our way out of town, and then we're going to get out of here. I already see that a zombie has spawned. Where's my boat? We're sort of at the limit of what we can carry, so anything else interesting we see, we kind of have to leave behind. It looks like we're heading out to open ocean now, though, with a very large beach there. There's some lava on the surface over there. Let's see what we can find. Let's see if there's any places out here that speak to us. Now, already, I do see something that speaks to me. And that is... Oh, gosh. A giant hole in the world. Oh, that's land. We found ourselves an island and some oil. I'll tell you what we might do here. What is this? It's a crab. So this is from Quark. That's good to know. Let's build a bed and see if it'll allow us to sleep out here. I understand that we are currently standing out in the middle of a storm so if the game did actually allow us to sleep here that might be a bit wild oh my goodness gracious hopefully that means the rain will stop as well we're going to collect if we can fit it in our inventory what can we get rid of here we don't really need to carry around with us sticks we can get more sticks later Beetroot seeds? I don't need more than 64 of those, that's for sure. And this stuff's going to be really useful for paper later on. So let's get this. And we'll hop over here. I realize now that choosing large biomes may have been a mistake, considering how far we have to journey to get out of the one we're currently in, and how I do definitely have an interest in doing that exact thing. Even so, we're going to persevere. This is episode zero. We have episode zeros for this region, so that we can explore and find a place to call home. S -s Sticky dipping, that's very funny, yes. I understand now, don't, don't try to pilot a boat through oil, it will end poorly. Hmm. That's fun. That, that is a throwback to the old days of Tekkit. Just massive unloaded zones. What a, what a fun callback. Man, there are a bunch of squid around me right now. If only we had room in our inventory, we could grab some, uh, some ink sacks. Whoa. Oh, okay. I found myself a trick of sorts. If I pause the game, it rapidly loads the chunks in front of me. Man, this is a persistent biome. I mean, yes, I selected large biomes, sure. But this is a little bit ridiculous. Wowzers. Okay, I'm actually going to turn on my iPad. And I'm now going to turn on a YouTube video. Because, my goodness, this is, uh, this is getting a little bit too nuts. Oh my goodness, we found a different biome at long last. What an absolute journey to get to this point. And I'm gonna say it, this is it. <laughs> Even, this is literally the second biome we've seen, and that's enough for me. Oh gosh, do we want to get our boat that badly? We can get more sticks. We can always get more sticks. That's not a big loss. I would argue even the beetroot seeds were a bigger loss, even though I don't particularly regret getting rid of those. Even though this is the second biome we've been to, 
And even though there's not a whole lot going on here, and there doesn't really appear to be any reason to select this place, you know what? It reminds me of my my Tekkit Main series. Tekkit Main was the file system name given to the version of Tekkit that launched in 2013. And that one mostly focused on space, Galacticraft, which is also, by the way, it's inside of this pack, so that's fun. But the file name for it, like the file system name for it, was Tekkit Main. So that's how I always refer to it. And we did that one in a field, and it was great. Plenty of room to build. It's very picturesque here. Look at all these beautiful little cows all mooing all over the place. Maybe over here on top of this hill. There's so many chickens. We got a beautiful view of the ocean. I think this might... I mean, what we really got to do now is just nail down exactly where in this seemingly unending field we're going to start building. Oh. Oh, that's just over there. So... <laughs> it's just a volcano. We could build in a place where we have a view of the beautiful plains, a nice little winding river, the ocean, and a volcano. And that place is right here. This is going to be the place. Upon this hill, we will build our house. And we're going to get started immediately because it's starting to get dark and the night is full of terrors. So the first thing we need to do is place down our chest and get a lot of this stuff out of our inventory because there's just way too much and we're not going to be able to build anything at this rate. So the tree is now down. Let's also put down a crafting table and let's figure out how we want to do this. So did we get any saplings? No, that tree didn't drop any saplings either. That's a bit of a problem. We're going to need saplings. We're going to need wood. We're going to need to, uh, we're going to need to, to build up, oh shoot, we've got to go somewhere where we can find some more rubber wood because we didn't get any saplings from that one rubber wood tree. I should have been paying more attention to that. Also, this is here uh, as we explored the world because we're really going to need a lot of rubber and that means we're going to have to leave now our home to go out and find some elsewhere which is not going to be fun considering how long it takes to get anywhere. On the positive side, if there's any around us, I was going to say we'll see it pretty quick, but I don't see any. So first things first, let's create a secured space where we're not going to be constantly assaulted by things at all times. So let's create a few sticks. So we'll make 10 times 40, or 10 times 4 is 40. I should say, and that'll allow us to create a number of oak fences. And then, did we have any more oak? No, we're going to have to go cut down some more oak because we also need to have a gate, but it's starting to get dark, and I'm starting to get a little bit nervous right now. So we need to take a quick breath and remind ourselves that we're going to be fine because as soon as the sun sets, we've already got a bed, and as long as we can get in bed right as the sun sets and before the monsters spawn, we should be able to sleep through the night and then keep working. So this is day two. Coming to a close. New spawn point has been set. That's fantastic. As soon as it kisses the horizon. There we go. Okay, so we got a beautiful sunrise. And we're going to head off down here. And cut down all of these trees. We might also kill some chickens. There is some sense in not killing all of the animals in our immediate vicinity and instead trying to trap them all. That, in fact, is a, a fantastic idea. And, I, I mean, I really want to give myself a pat on the back for that one because we've got a nice, diverse animal group around us. I see sheep, I see pigs, we saw cows further back, we see chickens. Pretty much everything you could possibly want is already right here at our disposal. And it's going to be relatively simple to just, hopefully, trick them all to coming over here. And, you know, befriending them. Maybe we'll make them an offer. What was it that they did in Alice in Wonderland to convince all those little clams or oysters or whatever they were to come up to the house with them? And then they all got eat, eaten, aided, eaten in, in that one very frightening scene when you think about, I mean, the implications of it. I mean, they're portrayed as little sentient creatures and then they're all just a meal. It's, I mean, I understand it's, it's to make a point 
I don't know about believing your mom or not trusting strangers or something, but jeez, they showed that to children? In theaters? I mean, it stuck with me as an adult, but not really like the stranger danger part, just the, wow, Walt Disney had something wrong. He was a very sick man, a very sick, sick individual. Okay, so I think a potato is going to be the best object for this task, although a sickle, if it works the way that I think it does, would also be good for this, assuming we have sickles. We do, but I'm not sure when in main hand, so they're from Project Red Exploration. In certain packs, a sickle can be used... Well, that, how's that a stone sickle? It's made with flint. I don't understand. They can be used to harvest things. I have a feeling this one is just a weapon, but I'm not going to know until I try. So we might as well make a wooden sickle and see what happens. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, see how it clears up a big section of grass? That's great. I'm glad we built this. It's also not a bad weapon. It has a faster attack. I mean, it's got lower damage, 4 compared to 5, but that attack speed is so much higher that could be worth it. And that that's not something I wanted to cut down. This would have been very handy if it... Oh, come on. Don't also break the saplings. That's a little bit annoying. It's hard to be precise with it. But uh, this would have been handy for collecting all of the legitimately obtained crops that we got from our kind friends back at that village. Fencing, though, we're going to start off with a very small space. And the idea here is just to keep ourselves safe from anything that might creep up on us while we work. If it happens to get dark and I'm not paying enough attention to realize it, you know, we want to be weary of those sorts of situations. And then later on, we might even transition this into something of an animal farm. It'd be good to have an existing fenced area to do this in. So with that, we're going to also need a gate to allow access in and out to ourselves and nothing and no one else. And then finally, we did get those torches. So I imagine, you know, we've done a pretty good job of skipping the nighttime. The last couple of times it started to get dark and I don't think we're going to get lucky like that again. Now, one thing I do not have is a water source right nearby me. We can go down here to the river, though, and I guess at least temporarily we can throw down some carrots and have them start growing. And maybe right here? Oh, wait. Does this also break objects in a vicinity around it? What do I need this for? Does everything do that? No. No. Oh, well, in any case, we'll go ahead and throw down some carrots. And we plant anything else in our inventory? We got hemp seeds. I can't plant them here. Potatoes. Sure. Let's create another chest. And then we can have a nice double chest here. And that'll hold everything, although we're going to want to bring some sugar cane with us. And what happened to our bush, our red currant sapling? Let's plop that down right out here and see if we can't get some fruits out of it. So I think in our inventory right now, we've got a decent supply of tools. We're going to go plant some of this sugar cane down here. Because in the, I think I keep calling them reeds as well, but you know what I mean. It'll be nice to have more of this in the future. And we're going to plant it on the grass and on the sand here. There we go. Starts of a nice supply. The next stage in the operation is going to be collecting more wood to build more fencing as well as ladders so we can get a mine started. But we're also going to want to locate, and man, I just realized we are a little bit above sea level, so we're going to have to go a little bit further to get our mine started if we want it to be up here. But there's some trees that way. I'm not sure how far the river goes, but we're going to get our boat and we're going to go down there and we're going to see if we can locate a rubber tree. Now, the sun's already starting to set, so I don't really want to go too far afield right now. I might go over here and get these trees instead. We'll just go collect those trees, and then we can come back here, and we can nap the night away, and then go locate our rubber tree. Whoa! Oh my goodness, I wasn't even paying enough attention to realize that was a cherry tree. Just thought it was a cool red tree. Okay, we need to be heading back, but I wanted to grab whatever type of bush this was, and I started mining it before I even had the opportunity to read 
it was a golden raspberry bush, okay. And then one other thing to test is whether or not this is actually decent as a weapon. Oh yeah, the reload on it was way faster, so that's handy. But then also it's now broken, so maybe we'll build... Well, we don't... We can't build a stone one. We can build a stone one, but it's actually made of flint. So many eggs out here. This is great. Everyone loves a good free-range chicken, which is exactly how they're going to be until we have the resources necessary to put them in pens. Yeah, oh, can't reach the bed. Get me to bed. We're just gonna wake up and there will be a creeper standing right there next to us going, Oh, hi there, I'm here to blow you up, sir. So once again, we have our inventory cleaned up. We've got our tree tap in hand and we're going to go down to the river, down to the river and pray. But what we're actually gonna do is we're going to go find a rubber tree. Oh, rubber tree, we need to harvest carefully. of a crossroads here in this river. I've got to memorize the paths, else we get lost in the future. So we're going back to this horrible biome that we couldn't escape from before. Now we're willingly returning to it. Not for long, though. Just long enough to spot a rubberwood tree, which might actually be difficult considering all of these trees are very large and imposing, although that could be to our benefit. All of these trees look relatively the same. So you'd like to think that a rubber tree would stand out among them. All right, we got ourselves a cranberry whoosh, a uh, bush, whoosh, cranberry whoosh. I, I thought cranberries grew like in the water, but goes to show you what I know, I guess. Now, unfortunately, we have an oil spill, and that's going to prevent us from going any further this direction in the water. So we might have to carry out on land, but I was hoping that we would just be able to spot one. Hmm. It would be awful if these were the only two biomes in the entirety of the game where rubber trees simply did not spawn. See, these cows are far enough away from my own that I'm not too worried about doing what I'm about to do to them. All right, we're going into the woods. It's going to be dark and full of terrors, but I don't know what else to do at this point. Get some birch wood while we're here. It's a really nice wood. I'm rather partial to it. I cannot believe that we happened upon a rubber tree once, and it didn't give us anything of use. What? I hear fire. Oh! Uh-oh. Oh, oh no, oh no, we found a bit of the forest on fire, and I didn't bring a shovel. Now, the shovel wouldn't be helpful here, really, other than to help me get up here and figure out what's going- Oh! Hey, wait. That's a rubber tree. Thank you, forest fire. It's a good thing we found this one, too, because I don't see any other ones except for right there. So the rubber tree is characterized by its very long head. It kind of looks like something giving you the finger from a distance. Let's go ahead and get what rubber we can out of this before we cut it down. The goal wasn't really to get rubber. I mean, we, we brought a tap just in case we found any rubber. But the goal is to actually, hopefully, come back with at least one sapling. Oh! Oh, it looks like we got one. Just one, though. Yep. Ooh, two rubber tree saplings. Okay. And then I think we saw another one in this vague direction. Maybe we should have stayed on top of the trees. Wait a minute! Well, this is it, but what happened to the rest of it? <laughs> Wait! What happened here? It's like someone came and cut the bottom out from all of these trees, actually. I don't have an explanation for that because it definitely wasn't me. I wouldn't have done that. But I'll tell you what, I don't even care if there is rubber in this one. We just need another sapling. Give me, like, one more. Oh, yeah, baby! Oh, we got we got four total. Okay, that's actually pretty solid. I, don't, I wish I'd brought my shovel because it would make collecting some of this clay a breeze. Clay's pretty handy to have, too. Not a super early game necessity, but it's good to have. But then again, we live next to a river and we're going to find plenty of clay. Oh! Oh, five! Okay, I found another sapling floating in the water right before I took off. So now we got to get back out of the forest. I think going straight east is going to be our best bet. Get back to the river, past the oil, and then we'll head back down to the place we call home. And if we fell some chickens along the way... All the better. Oh gosh, the sun setting. Oh, I hear skeletons. Oh no. 
This is not the river. Oh boy. Okay, we found it back. We found our way back. Words are difficult. We found our way back to the river. Right as the sun has set. I wish we had a backpack or something. Those are cows. I definitely thought that they were pillagers. Oh gosh, wait. The way home is on the other side of this mountain. We gotta get back over there. This might be the last use of our axe. Ooh, it's close. Yes, I saw the oil on the mini-map. So that gets us back over here safely. And back into the water, where at least we can move with some speed. Oh, hi there, sir. How are you? He's fine. Oh, oh, they're taking shots at us. We're moving with such blinding speed, the world can't keep up. It's going crazy. Okay, here's our junction. We want to take a right here. I think going left would probably take us back to the ocean if we wanted to. Okay. We got some monsters over there. I think we'll leave the boat here. Wait a minute. Did I go too far? No, no, no. That's our volcano right over there. So we want to probably park over here, actually. Right about here ought to be good. And then we're going to head... Up this hill. Avoid. There, that's where we want to be. Oh, and they're waiting for us, too. How much you want to bet the game is not going to let us sleep tonight? Because there are monsters nearby. The the one that we can do anything about is this fella right here. Hopefully. Oh, gosh, I can't block. I don't have any way to block. Wait, what can I do about him, then, under those circumstances? Leave me alone. We're just going to have to strafe. We're going to have to strafe like a madman. Come here, you. Oh, we're going to die tonight. Oh, yeah, get him. Get him! Get him, spider! Oh gosh, did you see that? Oh no! Okay, so we don't actually know what's happening up there right now, but it looked like that spider was going back to give that skeleton a piece of its mind. There's a creeper. Okay, we gotta get back up there. That skeleton was already pretty damaged, so I think that the likelihood that the spider came out on top is pretty solid, considering there's literally a bone on the ground over there. So if we can avoid getting the attention of that other skeleton... We can get inside and then just go to bed. Yes! Oh no! Oh! Oh, they're now they're shooting each other. The sun is up there on fire. We could still die, though. We could still die. The opportunity for them to kill us is still there. Anything could happen at this point. We're just going to be patient. We're going to let the sun do the hard work for us. That's one down. We're going to collect some of these goods. We might get ourselves a couple of arrows. Maybe even a bow and arrow out of all this. Plenty of bones, which is handy. I'm not going to rest comfortably with this guy over here. So we're going to go ahead and deal with him as well. It's weird that this game never added other colored creepers officially to the base game. Because these guys are perfectly colored for, you know, the, the old original you know, beta and alpha forests and, and fields. But they do stand out in certain other environments. So having different creepers in different biomes would be cool. Or maybe a nightmare, who can say. But we're going to go ahead and plant all of our saplings out here. We've also got a cranberry sapling, which I guess we can plant, like, over here. We've also got a birch sapling. We can plant over here. Got all kinds of things in our inventory, don't we? Wild cherry we've got. Got tons of stuff. Oh, gosh, that one sprung right up. Well, good. We're good to go with that. Next on the agenda is probably to get our first mine up and running. So we do have a stone shovel, and I suppose what we could do is we could go down here to ground level, and we could dig into the side of this mountain, and that would save us a lot of digging, because digging from up here is going to take a while longer. So that does come with the, the negative being that we're going to have to go on a little journey to get to the entrance of our mine every time we want to use it, but... Might be worth it. We do desperately need cobblestone right now in order to build some furnaces. So uh, we, we could also build maybe one more chest. And that's going to be to hold the rest of this stuff. We don't really need to take that or that into the mine with us. These objects alone should suffice. And should we go ahead, perhaps... We, we don't even have enough stone to build another pickaxe, so no. I was going to recommend or suggest to all of you that we also go ahead and bring with us one additional pickaxe. 
but we cannot. That is not an option available to us. So I'm going to carve out of the mountain here a path down to where our mine is eventually going to end up being. Maybe, maybe right here? I mean, we could go all the way to here. I mean, look, there's even this already. This is kind of freaky. <laughs> that is kind of freaky. That that's already there. That's where the mine's going to be. The decision's been made. So, let's let's actually make this a bit of a double staircase situation. And we're going to go make some charcoal so we can have torches. Wait, we can't do that. Wait, we can't even do that because we don't have a way to cook anything. That's what we came down here for in the first place. We need cobblestone. So I guess we'll start with that. Um, right here. Now, mines are always potentially dangerous places. If you've ever played Until Dawn, you'll know that the threat of the Wendigo is always looming over us because there's a curse in this mountain. Ooh, if any man should ever eat the flesh of another, then the spirit of the Wendigo will be unleashed and we'll become murderers, cannibals, feasting on human flesh. We don't want to do that. We want to avoid that. The, the transformation seems awful. Okay, furnaces. Three of the darn things. Cook me up something, please. I would like charcoal. However much that'll give me. I think that'll give me one. Yes. Two sticks for one charcoal, and then that'll give me eight more charcoal. And then lime wood. Let's see our uses for lime wood. Presumably we can make lime planks. Yeah, I don't know. That, that kind of looks interesting. We might... What, what I was thinking of is we could take one of these and go ahead and start cooking up even more charcoal so we can have more torches. And then we could get the top of this hill completely lit up as well, which would be handy. Start using some of this uh, dirt that we dug up to start filling in all these holes up here and leveling all of this out. Okay, so that's going to give us 20 torches. And we can start just throwing these down around here. A random assorted places. What we could do is hit F7. And it'll show us where monsters will spawn. And we can just put down torches to make sure that that does not happen. In the immediate vicinity of our base. You might consider this to be slightly cheaty. I am not pressed one way or the other. At least now. It's one less thing to worry about. And that does only leave us with seven torches. But I reckon... Yeah, we got some more charcoal. So let's head underground. And we're just going to keep eating cranberries for right now. Because that seems to be pretty effective. And we're also going to go ahead and hit F7 once we get down here. To turn this back off. Because we don't need it. We're, we're smart Minecrafters. We've been playing this game for a while. Ooh, we do need a door here though. I'm not going to even start digging until we have a door. So this will give us three doors... And then, where did all the sticks go? Is the recipe for ladders what I think it is still? Yes, it is. So we've got 18 ladders. That is not enough to go anywhere at all. We're going to need more. Okay, so that is 54 ladders, which is a bit more like it. We're going to, it looks like, get one more night of sleep in before we head into the caves. Lost track of how many days in we are. But we do have far more rubber trees than I expected we would by this point, which is going to be helpful when we start actually doing modded Minecraft. <laughs> oh, jeez. I used up all of the torches I had around the, the the upside of the world. Okay. How about that? Well, okay, well, that's unfortunate. Um, There we go. It's terrible, but we'll work on making a nice entrance later. For now, I will now dig. It's a bit dark, I realize, but uh, if you can see, I'm using this really nifty method that I figured out years ago at this point that allows you to dig straight down without ever risking falling into lava because you're always standing on two blocks simultaneously. And we did think to bring a shovel. The only issue is you got to be careful that you're not accidentally making contact with the ladder or it'll register you as being on a ladder, at which point you won't be able to mine as quickly. And already, I see that we just found something useful, which is copper. We're not going to collect that... Well, I mean, I guess while we're in the area, we might as well go ahead and collect it. What I'm going to say is we're going to dig down a little bit deeper before we stop to collect ores. But actually, if we just find ores on our way down, there's no reason not to stop, collect them, leave a torch, and continue on. Actually, something else we should do while we're here 
is maybe put down a crafting table and build another pickaxe because let's be honest this cobblestone pick is not long for this world so having an extra one is going to be very useful as we continue to dig down deeper and it should be useful to have a crafting table there part way down in case we need to craft anything while we're down in our mines although again we'll likely need to create another one further down once we reach whatever our branch mining level is going to end up being probably around 12. one thing we're definitely going to want to build is a divining rod that's going to make it a whole lot easier to find useful things underground it'll allow us to right click on a wall and it'll tell us what the value in terms of emc the objects behind the stone are so we'll know whether or not we're wasting our time digging in any particular direction but honestly it's not really worth it until you get to the tier two because the tier one sees only what is more or less directly in front of it speaking of things directly in front of us iron that means we can finally upgrade our pick. As if we've been using stone for a really long time. I've been recording for an hour and eight minutes so far. We're already making really good progress. I'm leaving behind... Oh, ten! Oh, man, we've almost run the gambit of everything we need to make machines. In fact, now that I think about it, redstone is the last object I can think of, at least off the top of my head, that we're going to need in order to build some early machinery. So... Looking here, the reason I'm leaving torches on every ledge is so things don't spawn on these ledges. Because that would be a hassle for us to have to deal with later. So, one EMC, I'm, I'm, we're not going to have a whole lot of uses left on that. So, EMC is not a measurement of durability. It is, however, a measurement of value that any individual tool has left to it. So, we could exchange that pickaxe for essentially one dirt is the way that that works so we can only go down another five levels i realize now we're going to run out of our ladders one two three four and then yeah one more that'll take us to ten so that's not quite bedrock but honestly probably about as low as we want to go i do see lava not far from us so that could be slightly above us maybe or maybe just directly ahead of us. Let's do this. Let's break a hole in the wall here, throw down a torch, and then we will dig in this direction. The one thing we don't want to do is come out level with lava. Ooh, there's basalt. If we come out level with it, oh my gosh. That was almost a disaster. So this is handy. If we can find, I see maybe sulfur over there. I think that's silver, aluminum, aluminium if you're so inclined. This is great because this is going to be a good source of obsidian for us early on. I do see some real coal over there as well. That's going to be handy. We're going to want to get out of here though. And we're going to go smelt up some... Although actually, we don't really need to get out of here. I think we have everything we need with us right now almost to just go ahead and start smelting our... Oh my gosh, look at that. Redstone! We picked the best place to mine. I'm very weary of lava, though. We're going to want to be careful. But maybe right back in here, if we have the materials for it, and it looks like we do, we're going to create an additional crafting table. We'll use that to create... Actually, you know what? Let's create a couple of furnaces. And we will start cooking up some of that iron we got. So there's eight iron, which means we're going to need at least one coal. And if we can get over there to the coal without falling in the lava, and that's going to be the difficult part, <laughs> not falling in the lava and dying. What I like about this most, though, is that hopefully we won't have anything spawn down here because of the high light level. And we could go ahead and hit F7 again to verify. Yeah, that was F7 on, in case you didn't realize. That means that nothing's going to be spawning around here, and that's that's really good. So I'm actually going to build my way around all of this if I can. There we go. Is that going to start flowing out this way now? No, thank goodness. This really does feel like an area where a mistake is... It's not, it's not a matter of if, more so a matter of when. So I'm a little bit nervous. I do hear monsters to my left. Monsters to the left of me, lava to the right, here I am, stuck in the middle with you. We're just, we're just holding down that shift key. We're gonna just keep on holding down that shift key. 
All right, let's get out of here. Okay, do we even have... <laughs> oh, folks, we only have one stick, so this isn't going to work anyway. Well, that's a tragedy. We'll go ahead and leave this cooking up, and then I suppose what we could do is we can combine these two together and get a slightly better stone pickaxe. And then we can head up to the surface to get more wood. I do wish that we had one of those mods that made us go up ladders really quickly. But we do not. And just have to live with that. Looks like it's going to be daylight maybe when we get up top. Yeah. Although it looks like either sunrise or sunset. Uh, let's see. What direction is north? Ooh. Okay. Uh, get me into that bed. Just in time. So, let's do some sorting, and then we will leave behind the copper and the tin. We will take with us some sticks, and in fact, we might want to grab more than that. Let's grab another wood, and then we can create more sticks. So that's going to be enough for uh, two pickaxes and 12 torches. We'll go into our stack of torches we already have. Looks like a lot of trees are growing, so that's good. Back now, and... Oh! oh okay! I, for, you know what? We need to address that right now before something horrible happens. I can't see a world where I don't get here in time, you know, onto that ladder. But just in case, there we go. We'll just narrow that hole down. And then what we could do is further down, we can have more ladders in certain places. But okay. Should have now iron should now have iron pickaxes two of the darn things i'm not the type of person to let anything go to waste though so we'll go ahead and use the stone pickaxe until it has picked its last stone and that's it so now we're gonna go ahead and get the redstone and then we might need gold i'm trying to remember if the early machines need gold or silver i did just live stream this last night again so you'd think that I would remember, but we're going to grab some silver and gold just in case we do need it. That way we'll just have it and be ready for it. We're going to try to work our way around to that gold over there, and the reason is that gold over there will not require us to build a bridge out over lava to reach it. And also, yeah, I see you, zombie. Hold on, I've got a rule about having all of my roofs be three meters high, so let me go ahead and deal with that real quick, and then I'll come deal with you. I don't like this giant bit of stone jutting out here, because that presents something called a blind corner, which you never want in a cave potentially full of zombies and creepers and skeletons and spiders. All right, you, you can reach me now try really hard. I'm gonna let you come to me. Just gonna wait over here patiently. I'm gonna cut up this aluminum. Aluminium, if you're so inclined. Sir? Sir? Hello, sir? I know that you're there. Sir, thank you, sir. Thank you for acknowledging my existence. Appreciate that. Let's go ahead and ruin his little safe environment here. With some torches. Maybe too many torches, actually. See what I mean about this corner, though? It's it's terrible. I need to be able to more or less see, as I approach, what is in the rest of the room with me. That's how a hero brine type will sneak up on you. Whoop. Gold. You've got to be shrucking me. <laughs> oh my gosh, we got so lucky! It's only two diamonds. Really, we only need one, though. For early game. That is so fortunate compared to my live stream. You would not believe the hours that I spent trying to find diamonds in the live stream. That that is nuts. That that I love so I'm so grateful. I mean, it would have been better if there was more, but one is fine. Ooh, lapis! Not an immediate need, but something that's gonna be nice to have. Uranium, that's fun. It's a fun one to have. Okay, well, I do believe that we are reaching the limits of what we can do. We already just broke a pickaxe by accident. I'm just trying to actually keep an eye on that. We're risking losing a lot right now. If we died right now, it would not only be unfortunate, it would be annoyingly inconvenient just because of the sheer number of items that we currently have on our personage. So we're going to get out of here. It is currently nighttime outside, which could be a problem depending on how many monsters lay between us and home so let's top off on cranberry and let's move like like lightning 
Fortunately, we know we've placed down enough torches that there shouldn't be anything spawning near our base. Which hopefully gives us enough time to get in here and get some shut-eye. I mean, it looks like the sun is rising. So maybe getting some shut-eye right now is not essential. But we got some. Looks like we've also got some red currant leaves. Uh, cranberry leaves. Uh, can we collect these? Do we have to wait till they reach a certain level of maturity? Hi there. That's probably what it is. They just need to... It says currently harvestable, but it also shows shears. So I'm assuming it, it means the leaves themselves. Right, though. Let's do some sorting. Because everything's a little bit... At the moment, everywhere. And I think that's something we probably should do. You know what? You know what something we definitely should do is... We should definitely cut down some of these trees so we can get some more wood. Oh my goodness! There's so many places to get sap out of this tree. Not this one. Not this one. Looks like one on this one. Well, that tree over there is now my favorite. All right. Now, with all that wood that we've got, we can make more sticks and we can make more fences. Some of you may see where I'm going with this. And some of you might not, and that's okay. We're going to need a couple more gates first off. Some of you might not see the wisdom in it, but the double layer fence is a brilliant idea. All right, I'm not gonna waste time building a house right now because once we have access to a transmutation table, that's when house building gets good. But I guess the next thing we need to do is determine where we go from here. So the first thing that we're gonna wanna build is a generator. And then, oh look, these objects are in here for my live stream. That's good, because we do want to build both of those as well. But a generator, and then we want to build an electric furnace, as well as a macerator. And there is a stone macerator that we can build if we wanted to. I don't exactly know how that works. But I think we'll probably just go directly for macerator. Even though it looks like we can't upgrade a stone macerator. I guess I could just look that up. Oh, interesting. Okay. Well, it looks like a stone macerator is just a regular macerator that runs off of coal instead of using electricity. So, let's go ahead and say we will build one of those next time just to test it, as well as the electric furnace, the iron furnace. So, the iron furnace is 20% faster, and it's also slightly more fuel efficient. So, I think it, instead of doing 8 items per coal, it does 10 which could be handy, but immediately after building those. In fact, we're probably going to work in that order. Stone, iron, for actually no, stone, macerator, iron furnace, and then on from there. Hopefully we can get all of that done next episode. We will need to get more diamonds, but that'll be easy once we get a philosopher's stone. Then we can go build a portal and all of that, so... Yeah! Well... Thank you folks for watching episode zero, the the getting started. Uh, we've done all of the Minecrafty things. All the Minecraft bits are now out of the way. We've got not really a house, but a base. We got a mine. We've got a pretty decent supply of food, although we could start cooking up. Actually, let's cook up some meat before we go. Uh, and the best way to do that is going to be using, check this out, fragmented carbon. So every one fragmented carbon has the potential to cook up one item. And then that way, let's say we had a mismatch, like eight fragmented carbon and seven raw beef, you might think, well, if we had a single charcoal or a single coal that cooks up eight items, so cooking up seven, we're losing a little bit of fuel efficiency. We're, we're losing one item's worth of fuel, but this is one to one. So we never lose any efficiency. It's brilliant, it's great, I love it. Thank you folks for watching. God bless each and every one of you. And I'll see you next time. Bye! Howdy there, folks! How are y'all doing? My name is Reese, and welcome, or should I say, welcome back to our Tech It 2 Let's Play adventure. And I do say welcome back because even though this is episode 1, if you missed it, I did an episode zero where we created the new world, wandered around until we found this lovely hill, built a double layer fence for some reason, and I also did a little bit of mining, 
And if you're interested in watching that, I'll have it linked down below. If not, episode one is as good a place as any to start because this is where we're actually going to start doing some modded stuff. And I guess if you're going to start here, I should go ahead and introduce what this pack is and how you can get it. First off, this is Tech It 2. We are in the first version because that's the only version that's currently available. It was created by XJohn for Minecraft 1.12.2, but it is an official mod pack, as you can see here from the Technic News section of the Technic Pack website. This is an official pack created by the Technic team in conjunction with John or XJohn, who also, in case you were curious, made the official Hexit 2 uh, uh, in partnership with Technic, so as official as it can be. Uh, like I said, this is Minecraft version 1.12, and it is meant to be a successor, a sequel to the original Tekkit Classic that launched in 2012. So if you're interested in getting it, you can download it either using the launcher, the Technic launcher, which is available for uh, well, just about anything, Windows, Mac, Linux. I myself am using PolyMC because that's what I use to manage all of my mod packs from pretty much everywhere. It's it's my one-stop shop. I love it. I will be making a full tutorial for it in the near future. But like I said, episode zero, we did a lot of mining in preparation for this moment. This moment being when we finally get to do some modded things. So at the end of the last episode, we set up sort of a roadmap of things to build. And it's not quite in the correct order, but it's kind of close. One of the first things we want to build is, well, actually, we want to build a generator and a macerator. But I thought it could be fun to start with the iron furnace and the stone macerator. I've never built a stone macerator before. I never used one. I didn't even know that it existed. But uh, today we're going to be building one and we're all going to be trying it for the first time. So this will require a single piece of iron and a single piece of redstone, which means that you could technically build this as soon as you find four pieces of iron because you will need three for a pickaxe to get the redstone and then one for the actual piston. And then from that point forward, you'd be able to grind up every additional piece of iron you find into two iron dust, giving you two iron ingots. So really early game, you can immediately start doubling all of your ores, and I wish that I'd realized that sooner. I'm almost positive that I have everything that I need to build this. There's a ton of stuff in my inventory that I neglected to tidy up for this episode, which I'd actually uh, planned on doing. Interestingly enough, though, flint might not be one of those objects. It's very possible that flint is directly in front of my face and I'm just not seeing it, as that does happen from time to time. But it looks like we're going to be starting off this episode by going into the mines to find flint. Now, fortunately, I have a feeling that's going to take me five seconds, and I'm not going to make you watch it. I'm just going to cut to it. Do I have torches? It doesn't appear like I have torches. Again, they could be right in front of my face. And I'm just not seeing them, but 24 torches and into the mine we go. And I guess since this is episode one, mayhaps you skipped episode zero. This is where our mine is. It's very conveniently located. And uh, this little natural cubby was already here. Let's just go find some gravel. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh no. What? what a horrible thing to see as soon as we get down here. What a tragedy. Oh Oh dear, okay. I did not realize that that was going to start flooding this place. That's unfortunate. There's a lot of gravel up here. That's perfect. We'll go ahead and cap that off. And now we should have the, the freedom to just start digging all this stuff up. Okay, we have seven pieces of flint now, so more than enough. I think we can head back upstairs. And hopefully we can all ignore this blunder. I mean, surely starting the episode off with not enough flint is not enough to completely throw off the rest of the series, right? Okay, well we're back. We've just slept, so we've got a brand new sunrise on the horizon, and we have seven pieces of flint, so we are more than ready for this little operation. First things first, let's go ahead and build this. So, we're going to hop into our crafting table, and we are going to build the necessary furnace, and then we're also going to need to grab some planks. Let me see if I can do a piston from memory. I think I have a vague recollection. I've done this one a few times. There we go. Got our piston, and then I think from there, it, we just combine that with cobblestone and the flint and the furnace, and that will give us our stone macerator. Plop that down, and then my understanding is that we just take any uh, material that can be macerated. So let's say iron ore, we plop that in there. Now we could use coal, and assuming it works like a forest, a, sing uh, 
a, a furnace, I should say. <laughs> a single coal should cook up eight iron. But what if I only want to do a single iron? Well, fortunately, in that situation, we can make fragmented carbon. And then a single fragmented carbon will cook up a single iron ore. So it's just a good way of making sure you don't end up wasting your iron when you only have a few items that you need to process. So we're going to get all of our ores out of here. I think probably the easiest way to automate something like this early game would be to use hoppers. But that could be expensive and quite honestly probably not worth it. Oh my goodness, it's slow. It's very slow. Did it run out of coal? One coal was not enough. Or one, I guess, one car fragmented carbon. So it's going to take, in order to macerate one of these up, I'm assuming four. So does that mean... And I guess, I mean, there's one way to test this. We can put a... Yeah, I guess that's going to give us two iron dust. If we put one, two, three, four of those in there, this should cook up two of them. Unless I'm very wrong. So this is slow. And we'll see. It might not scale correctly with the fragmented carbon for whatever reason. It might not actually get to eight. Let's actually put eight in there and we'll see how close it gets. Because again, a single coal in a furnace should cook up eight iron ore. But I got a feeling we're not going to get that far here. Well, while that ticks away, we can go ahead and take it off of here and look at the iron furnace, which we can make with eight iron ingots. Now the iron furnace is better than a regular furnace in that it is 20% faster and is 25% more fuel efficient. So for a single piece of coal, you will get 10 items cooked up, if my math is correct on that. Wow, yeah, that processed two of those. So it's not just weird scaling with fragmented carbon, it's just not very fuel efficient. We need to get the electric one up and running as quickly as we can. Well, let's go ahead and we will throw three coal in there, I guess, because we're going to need more iron dust. That's going to be enough for six ingots, and we need eight if we are going to create an iron furnace, which we are, just for the fun of it. We can also use both of these items in crafting their upgraded better versions, so the macerator can either be made with the raw ingredients uh, with a machine block in the middle, or we can get a whole bunch of refined iron and put that around a stone macerator and electric electronic circuit uh, more or less the same amount of materials used but it's nice to have an upgrade path and actually now that i'm thinking about it it's it's actually more efficient to do it this way because if we look again at the macerator that's going to require seven refined iron versus building it this way requires a machine block which is eight refined iron so i mean i'm not saying it's a vastly superior method i'm just saying i don't know what i'm saying seven and eight. There we go. And now we have our iron furnace. Plop that sucker down and we can start cooking up things much more quickly. So we've got seven iron dust. Let's put it then in there with our coal. I mean, it is faster, but I don't know if it's remarkably faster. Nice that it's more fuel efficient though. So we can take iron furnace off of here now. And we can move on down the line. To create these two and to use them, we'll first need to build a generator. So that's going to be our first point of focus. The generator is going to need either an iron furnace, but we're going to be using our iron furnace and our electric furnace recipe. So we'll either need an uh, iron furnace or a regular furnace, a machine block, and a re-battery. So this is going to be another eight iron, except they'll need to be refined, which is where you take your iron and you run it through again. So basically, once we're done cooking up all of our iron in here, I'll take eight iron ingots and cook them again. We'll also need a re-battery, which requires tin and copper, which we collected in the last episode. It also needs rubber. Now, I tracked down some rubber trees last time in episode zero, and we got a little bit of sticky resin out of them. We're going to need more sticky resin though, as the series progresses, so we're going to make another tree tap. I think mine is probably still intact somewhere. I don't remember where, though. And we're going to go over to the trees that I collected. Did I not make a gate over here? I really should have made a gate. I know I made one back here. We need to build a proper house, but I'm waiting till we get the transmutation table. So, find yourself a rubberwood tree. Use your tap, right-click, sticky resin. If you leave the tree up... Eventually, 
the places where you can collect the resin will repopulate, which is handy. And if you break these, there's a very low chance you'll get a sapling, so you're going to want to go around and find as many of these as you can. Collect the resin from them first, and then chop them all down. Hopefully get a couple saplings to bring back to your base, and then never cut them down again. You can use, I think it's called an extractor or an extruder, to get more resin out of the logs themselves, which is something we'll probably end up doing in the future. But for right now, sticky resin does have an EMC value. So once we get our transmutation table, we don't really need the trees anymore. Now, while this is busy doing iron, I suppose we can go ahead and cook up our sticky resin over here. And look at that. We have nine fragmented carbon and ten sticky resin. It's a horrible, cruel trick of fate. The universe is laughing at us. But there we go. That'll start cooking up. And in fact, you know what? Let's go ahead and split duties here and get this done a little bit more quickly. So now we can take our iron, split that down, get the eight of those cooking up. And we're probably going to need more refined iron now that I think about it. We'll need eight for the generator, but we'll actually need... Oh, jeez, it's already getting dark again. Okay, beautiful sunrise coming up over us. As I was saying, we're going to need the eight for the generator. The electronic furnace, though, requires an electric circuit, which also requires a refined iron ingot. And so does the macerator. So we'll actually put two more of those in there. There is our rubber. Awesome. This should be done now, so we can start running copper through it. We don't really need all that much. I think we'll go ahead and do two, three, four, five, six copper, and that ought to be plenty. And then we'll probably do the same with ten. There we go. There's our ten refined iron ingots, and we can start moving over the copper dust now. Something to keep in mind once we have our electric furnace generator and macerator is, at least in previous versions, of this mod so this is all from industrial craft to classic or just industrial craft classic once you place these objects you will not be able to pick them up again unless you have a particular certain tool and we'll look more into that in a minute i'm assuming it's the same case now i i guess i think maybe <laughs> i don't think that's changed it's just something to be mindful of once you place these objects I don't advise breaking them with a pick. You might lose them. Yeah, there it is. We get the wrench and the electric wrench. As well as a precision wrench. I've, never, I've not seen that one before. I don't know what advantage it has. So the copper's done. We're going to get the tin running now. We are starting to run out of coal. Things are getting a little bit dicey around here. The problem with looking up information on some of these mods is that they are so old... And there's so many different versions and so many just minute changes between the different versions. So I found information about the wrench and the electric wrench, and it's basically exactly as I remember. This will take down your machines, but there's a small chance it'll gut them and leave you with nothing but a machine block. This is basically the same, but there is a lossless mode. And then I can find nothing about the precision wrench. I might have to look a little bit harder when we're all done here. But for right now, we've got our tin, we've got our copper... We've got a messy inventory, but somewhere around here we also have regular iron, refined iron. We do have redstone. I think we're ready to go. So we're going to start off here with the generator, which is going to require us to build some insulated cables. So I think that the recipe for these is insulation to either side, and that'll give us six of these. But if I'm not mistaken, I thought at one point you could make just like one cable. Maybe I am mistaken. Maybe I'm wrong and crazy. Both of those things are possible. But that'll give us our copper cabling for the top, redstone down the middle, tin to either side, a battery. However, I think we're going to need one of these for each of these machines. Um, well, no, these don't require a battery. And these don't require a battery. They do require a whole lot more copper cable. And maybe we don't have enough rubber. That might be an issue. Oh, but we have 15 more sticky resin inside of this chest that I forgot about. For some reason, it just didn't occur to me. I, I just went out and collected resin and cooked that up and completely forgot about the resin we'd collected last episode. So that's going to save our bacon. Speaking of bacon saving, I'm going to cook up some oak wood into charcoal because we don't have any coal. And we're going to be in a pretty desperate situation here in a minute if we don't have some. Righto! So... 
Furnace. Rebattery. Refined iron to make a machine block. Put those objects together and you have your generator. I think the generator we might be able to break without having a, a certain tool, but let's just not risk it. We're going to place it outside here and we're going to get rid of this segment of fencing because the inner fence was always a silly idea and I don't know why I did it. Well, to be fair, we started with the inner fence and then we built the bigger one around it and that kept the inner one just to be ridiculous. Uh, there was no justifiable reason to hang on to it. These two items, I'm pretty sure we can break consequence free. Let's find out. Stone macerator. Looked like we still have a stone macerator. Uh, iron furnace. That was the last of our pick, but we did get an iron furnace, so I think we're safe. So lots more rubber and lots more copper to get more copper cables. We can hit A over here to dismiss the generator. And if you're curious how to add a recipe over here, just find the object you want to craft, like let's say a wrench or an electric wrench, and just tap A on your keyboard while hovering over it. And that'll save it to quick access. And then from there, you can just click on it to view the recipe. I feel like I need to apologize for the state of my inventory during this video. It's, it's a disaster. And that's another day gone. Oh my goodness. Okay. Another sunrise. We're, we're burning through the daylight hours here, aren't we? Electric furnace. It's like a regular furnace, except it uses electricity, which is better for reasons. It is actually better. Instead of managing your coal and your little coal bits, all you got to do is throw all of your coal into this generator. It generates electricity, which will go automatically into this machine. Uh, as you can see, it's charged up, so we should start seeing a charge here now. And then it only uses what it needs, and the rest of it can sit peacefully until the end of time. It's very handy. Anything that you could cook up in a regular furnace, you can cook up inside of an electric furnace using electricity. You got some raw chicken? You can do that, and it's pretty quick. Got some coal? Throw that coal in there. Battery fills up? Guess what? That's fine. Electric macerator. Imagine being able to build one of those, but you can't because you actually miscounted how much refined iron you would need. Oops. That's okay, because guess what we do have? An electric furnace, which can make more. While that cooks up in the electric furnace, we can go ahead and get rid of that recipe, come back into here, and make another electric circuit, which we're going to need anyway. Something else we should probably discuss, and something I'm surprised I didn't think about sooner, is building the bat box. So the bat box is the most basic form of energy storage. In fact, we're going to go ahead and build one. Uh, it requires three re-batteries, as well as some wood planks and a copper cable. Now, if we use this, that does mean that we're going to need to use uh, copper cables to run power around, but that should be relatively simple. So it looks like the refined iron ingot is ready to go. We'll take that back over here to our crafting table and build the macerator. Now, much like the electric furnace, we can just plop it down right there, it auto automatically start charging up, and we can go ahead. I, I just, I liked the fragmented coal. Leave, leave me alone on the fragmented carbon situation. I'm a fan of it, we're gonna keep using it. Don't mind me, I just went and collected more wood to create more charcoal, because it's easier than going mining. Now that we have the electric macerator, we're gonna come back over here and get some more of our ores, let's say gold ore. Why not? That sounds like a good time. We're going to bring that over here, throw it in, and it doesn't actually look like it's all that much faster. It might be a hair bit faster, but it's definitely got to be more fuel efficient. I don't really know actually how much power this uses. All I know is that if this generator doesn't keep up with both of these machines, we're going to be in a pickle. And I think that it can. In fact, it can keep them both running and charge itself up. Let's make a battery. Get rid of the macerator, open up the bat box, realize that it requires more tin than we currently have, and get that gold out of there and replace it with tin. Gold is shiny and looks cool. That's basically the reason I did that. Let's make tin. It's more practical. What? You, what? Charcoal only gives you four fragmented carbon. I don't know how I didn't realize that. Oh, what a waste then. We'll just put whole charcoal in there. And that will be 12 tin ingots. Go ahead and keep that running in the background while we run over here to hopefully make the batteries now. 
There we go. And on top of that, we've got our copper cables. And that is three re-batteries. Combine those with planks, and I think literally any plank will do. That'll give us our bat box. And I want to put that underneath these machines. So where is my shovel? There it is. There's a bit of a trick with these. And that is that, at least in older versions, only one side would operate as an input, and all the other ones would be outputs. And I don't know if we're going to get lucky. Out the bat, we did get lucky. And immediately, one of the inputs is lined up to the bat box. But does that mean that all of them are inputs and only one is an output? I wonder if the front is the only output. Ugh. I guess now is the best time to point out that this is not necessarily a tutorial series. This is this is a let's play with tutorial elements. Basically, we're all playing and learning together. There will be times when I have to question things because I simply do not know. Please do not think less of me. I never claimed to be the oracle of all-knowing knowledge. I'm simply a man with Wikipedia access, same as you. So what I'm doing right now is I'm trimming the leaves off of the tree in an effort to hopefully find more places to get sap. And I think I've actually got plenty right now. We needed some more rubber. The leaves are not necessary. You can just leave the rubber wood stumps here and they will continue to produce more rubber. At least that's how it worked in older versions of Minecraft. And yeah, you can just go ahead and trim all of the leaves off if you wanted to. I did miss one up there. And I guess I'll never get it because I don't know what happened to it. Okay. All right, don't know how it got there. Let's sleep first. The other good part about breaking these leaves is that occasionally you will get a rubber wood sapling that you can plant and then eventually strip the leaves off of it and also just have a weird looking stump hanging around. <laughs> so I have a sneaking suspicion that the front of the bat box is where power comes from. And the way that I've decided to test this is by letting it get some power in it, letting this run empty. And now if we place a cable right on the side of that, if that starts going, we'll know. So we're gonna shift right click, Nope, so yeah, the front is definitely the output. That is unfortunate. So we'll get all of that running again, and then we need to probably look into, getting rid of the bat box, building a wrench. Because a wrench can be used not only to disassemble, while hopefully not breaking things, it can also be used to rotate things, like the bat box, to get it facing in a direction you actually want it facing in. That's going to require bronze dust, which is a combination of copper dust and tin dust. Uh, this can be done in a macerator by macerating the already cooked ingots if you don't have access to the raw materials, which I might not. We do have tin dust here. That's good. I didn't cook it all up. I should note that there are upgrades that you can put in over here. For instance, there is the overclocker upgrades from Industrial Craft. So we have the quantum overclocker upgrade that I've never heard of and looks really cool. And then the regular overclocker upgrade, which will make your machines faster. You gotta have some coolant cells though, which requires tin and a water cell, which I mean, or a bucket of water, or probably even a bottle of water, splash potion, lingering water, you know, the basics. Those will make your machines, I believe, use more energy, but will also make them quite a bit faster, which could be handy. In fact, what am I saying? That would be immensely handy. I should have some of these. Add it to the list. Yeah, apparently, according to the wiki, each upgrade will reduce the operating time to 70% of the previous value and increase the energy consumption by 60%. So you can stack them and get a lot of overclocking, but also, gosh, how how costful that would be. Costly, even, because that makes more sense than costful. All right, copper dust, tin dust, bronze dust. Get our rubber out of there. Fortunately, I think we have enough to be getting on with. And we're going to just put what's left of our charcoal in here. Because, gosh, we need it. With our bronze cooked up, let's cook up 12 tin dust. That'll be enough to create one of these overclocker upgrades. Let's also create that wrench I was talking about earlier. As well as more copper cables. Now, these are not the best for electricity. And, in fact, if you pump too much electricity through them... Uh, they might melt, but they will conduct energy, and we're going to try to connect these up, I guess, from behind now. 
So we're going to do one right click to rotate that. And then we're going to run the cabling like so. And now these machines can be powered either from the machine directly to the left or right of it, depending on whether or not we're talking macerator or electric furnace, or they can be run off of bat box power. Not super happy with how this turned out. It's a bit messy, but we can tidy it up later. We should see now that even when this runs dry, I'm gonna go ahead and take the charcoal out. The bat box should still keep it all powered. It's charging up quite a bit and I, we don't even really need to test this. I already know that it'll work. So we're going to need water to create an overclocker upgrade. And yeah, I've, I've decided to do that. And in order to collect the water, we're going to need some glass. Glass, of course, requires sand. So down here we go just in time for a server backup. That's always fun. I want to collect bits of sand that are not going to break the river and make it look like a disgusting nightmare if I can. And there goes our shovel, so I guess that'll have to be enough sand for right now. I'm also going to go ahead and, even though we don't need it, collect my sugar cane while I'm down here so that hopefully more will start growing. I say hopefully, but that is exactly how sugar cane works. So if it doesn't, I'll be confused and I'll have a lot of questions for someone. Sand in the electric furnace, that'll give us glass. And then, you know what we should probably also do is get an infinite water source up here. Probably should have done that a while ago, so we don't have to run all the way down to get water when we need it. So, I guess I'll make an iron shovel, as well as, and you know what, maybe a waste of iron, but we'll eventually need two buckets anyway, probably, for other things. Might as well just go ahead and have them. So, one bucket of water in that corner, and then another bucket of water in that corner gives us our infinite water source. We have nine glass now. Man, I make glass vials so irregularly. I don't actually know. Oh, that's the recipe right there. And they're actually glass bottles, not vials. I knew that. I hate to admit it, but I don't even really know whether or not it said that glass bottles were appropriate for this. They're not. Apparently, we can make empty cells like this. But what goes into a cooling cell? Uh, just a bucket of water. Will we get our bucket back? What if I create an empty cell, and then we right-click that on some water? What happens after? I mean, that gives us 15 of the darn things. Interestingly, it looks like a water cell can be used. <laughs> Wait, what? Okay, hold on. Hold on. We're going to create 16 empty cells, and then we're going to get all of this tin out of our inventory. We have all of these bottles now that are useless, so that's, that's fantastic. But I think you just right-click to create water cells and then we can take these water cells back here and surround them with even more tin and that'll create coolant cells which do not stack that's fine Just throw that out on the ground oh we already have some in our inventory so we didn't have to do that uh the next step is going to be creating oof more copper cables oh oh look at that yeah so you can use one rubber and one uninsulated copper cable. I was trying to use rubber and a block of copper. That is where I went wrong. That makes sense. Well, we want just insulated copper cables from the offing. Electronic circuit, combine that with our 10K coolant cells and a couple more copper cables to get our overclocker upgrade. And let's see if that has a profound difference here. So let's watch that bar go across, and then we're going to drop this bad boy in. I wonder if it matters what slot we put it in. Surely not. Did it make a difference? Not noticeably. Hold on. Okay, let's do a count. You know what? That's what we'll do. When this one's done, we're going to count and see how long it takes. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, six. Basically six. I've got it in there. Let's see about this next one. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, six. It, I don't feel like it's going any faster. Maybe you have to create a lot. Wait a minute. No, hold on. It said it was going to go quite a bit faster. Each upgrade reduces the operating time to 70% of the previous value and increases energy consumption. I, f I feel like it isn't, but maybe if we put it in something like the macerator? Well, maybe it'll be more noticeable. Let's say we take our silver ore and we put it in there. And we're watching that thing tick by. Look how slow that is. That is so slow. 
surely if we put this in here, it'll be notably faster. Gosh, I feel like it got slower for a second. Huh. And also, we're running out of power. I thought maybe we were being limited by the amount of energy we could get into the machine, but no. It's definitely keeping up. Maybe it just needs more than one. I mean, 70% of the opera. That. It's not like it's going 70% faster, it's going 30% faster, but still, something that takes, say, seven seconds is notably faster than something that takes 10. I am creating an additional oak chest so I can make a double chest so I can empty all of this into here and then let me tell you what I'm going to go do. I'm going to go back into my mine and I'm going to go find more tin so I can make more upgrades and so I can determine whether or not they are worth making. Tell you what else I'm going to do. I'm going to make some more bronze and make a bronze pickaxe because I think it has the same mining potential as iron, meaning it can break the same objects, but it has 30% more durability, which means that it's going to be perfect for this little expedition where I'm going to be running around breaking presumably a bunch of stone in the search for more tin. All right, we'll be right back as soon as I've done that. Okay, it was never going to be a particularly difficult quest, was it? It's tin. It's a fairly readily available resource. Handy thing right now is that I tend to find iron and tin close to one another, and I kind of need both, so that's useful. All right, we're back, and we've got a pretty good supply now of tin. Uh, it looks like we must have run out of fuel while I was away. We didn't get any coal while we were down there, but then again, to be fair, I wasn't necessarily looking for it either. Probably should have been. And back into the mines we go for coal. Back to the surface again. The bronze pickaxe is looking a little bit worse for wares, but we do now have 43 coal, which will hopefully uh, sustain us even for a bit longer. And we also have, well, not that much more tin and, and iron. I, I did find a, a penance more, but we're going to go ahead and use fragmented carbon for this because I wanted to. So we've got a lot more tin now. And we've got a bit of charcoal cooking up in there. We should have a pretty decent charge in the bat box. Feel pretty comfortable walking away from that for a moment. We're going to have to search around for where I dumped everything. Because I did empty out my inventory, which means that I don't know where anything that we need is currently located. So it looks like some of our rubber spots have already repopulated. Go ahead and collect those. We also have our new trees growing over here. Get ourselves some more copper cables because I can't find ours. And they're either right in front of me or we ended up using them all on the last thing that we built, which is possible. I wasn't paying enough attention to our consumption, but that's perfectly possible. We do have more rubber getting cooked up, so it's not a big deal. Okay, so I think we should have enough now to create six of these. There is the two refined iron that we need. We need to create another batch of cables. This is eating into our magic time. Remember we were going to do magic this episode as well and now I've just become obsessed with this completely unnecessary bonus activity. Oh geez, we, do <laughs> we need even more cables. That's going to take up all of our time and all of our energy and then we might just have to do magic next episode. But I want to make two of these. We don't have enough cables again. Hold on. We only need two more, so we can create uninsulated copper cables and then not put cobblestone next to them, but rubber like a sane person. There we go. And then we can create our second overclocker upgrade. So we now have, counting the one that is inside of the macerator, we have three of these. So if we put the iron dust in here and we start watching it, there's no chance that we won't notice a difference here, right? As soon as we drop this in. Oh, there we go. Okay, yeah, so it does make it faster. Noticeably faster when you have three of them, and it actually looks like we're able to maintain electricity here. So the concern would be if you have too many overclocker upgrades, it might draw more power than can be supplied over copper cables from our bat box. At that point, we would want a series of transformers, a transformer inside of here, and a bigger energy storage device. But you want to be careful because if you don't have a transformer in your machine to lower the voltage to something usable, it will blow up your machine. 
I'm not joking. I had it happen. Speaking of the bat box, it's actually full now. That's useful. I was actually okay with the furnace's performance. I want to see the macerator pick up speed. Will it be noticeable? On oh, very much so. So what we need to do is make a lot more overclocker upgrades. That's what I'm learning from all this. Oh, I didn't realize we were getting the empty cells back every time we used them. That's helpful. I'm making one more of these, by the way, in case you weren't able to suss that out based on my behavior. If you were wondering why, it's because I'd like to have two in each machine. So two in the macerator and two in the electric furnace. Go, so that's all the rubber I was able to collect. Let's finish off these cables. They were starting to look a little bit silly. We're in a race against the clock now to see if we can get this constructed before the sun sets. I've heard the cries from folks at home saying, why don't you just do it after you sleep? Because there's no adventure in that, that's why. Each machine now has two overclocker upgrades, and I wouldn't be surprised if that started to put a strain on how much power our generator... Pfft, no, okay, our generator is keeping up with it, that's great. Well, folks, as the sun rises, I will be the first to confess that... I made a mistake. I didn't mean to do this. This just sort of happened, the overclocker upgrade situation. Not what I had planned, not what I had anticipated, which means that I guess we won't be doing the magic in this episode, but that's okay, because that just means that there's more to do next time. Uh, for example, we're going to need to find more diamonds, hopefully using a divining rod, so we're probably going to make the first two tiers of that. The third one does require a diamond, and I don't know if I really want to waste one of the two diamonds that we have on that, although it would be funny, wouldn't it? Let's go ahead and add it, just as a lark. Uh, we should probably also make a shield if we're going to be going around and exploring in the underground next time in order to get those diamonds, but these are definitely going to help. Then we need to make another portal so we can go get the glowstone necessary to build the Philosopher's Stone, which is necessary to build the Transmutation Table. And once we have the Transmutation Table, well, that's when things get really good. But that's for next time. Until then, thank you folks for watching. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll see you later. Bye! I'd be curious to find out with this copper ore in... Oh my gosh, that's, that's just nether diamond? What? Oh gosh! Oh no! Unprepared! Unprepared for this. Howdy there, folks! How are y'all doing? My name is Reese, and welcome back to our Tech It 2 Let's Play Adventure, where today we're going to be doing magic and also building a shield, because we need one of those, and that's not going to be a particularly difficult task to accomplish. In fact, I think we'll probably go ahead and do that first. But first things first, I did want to address that uh, the oak chest. We built a new one, and we put all of our blocks in there, and then we have all of our sort of plant-related items in here, and I realize that bones and, and leather and feathers aren't really plant-related, but they come from animals. So it's sort of nature-esque, same reason there's a scoop in here, which I believe that came in our bonus chest, if I'm not mistaken, or we stole it from a village. Episode zero things, it's been so long ago. Uh, and then this is our chest of basically everything else, so all of our dusts and ores, just, you know, hoping to keep my inventory a little bit more tidy this episode and not have sort of the, the mess and disaster that was the previous episode when it came to inventory management. Now, like I said today, first things first, we're going to build a shield. Then we're going to build some divining rods so that hopefully we can go find a few more diamonds and then we can get a philosopher's stone. Now, I did want to point out we don't necessarily need to go get diamonds. We don't need a diamond pick to get the obsidian that we need to build a nether portal so that we can go to the nether and get glowstone dust. What we could do is we could take lava in buckets and bring it up to the surface. We could build a frame, perhaps out of dirt or sand or obsidian, and we could one by one place the lava, pour water on top of it, turn it into obsidian, and then do it again until we have built a frame in that manner. But that just seems like so much work. And it seems like it would take so long, and it would be such a unbearably slow process. <laughs> I'd rather go look for diamonds. We need some more diamonds anyway, and hopefully we'll find quite a few. But first off, let's pretend like I remember where I stored everything here, because I do. No pretending necessary. I know where everything is here. We're going to build a shield, because a shield will be necessary to help us survive. And yes, I've not built enough shields in my time to remember where they're located, because... 
I'm I'm behind in the Minecraft times. Uh, that's all I can say to you. Shields have been around for a long time now, and they're still basically new to me. With the shield finished, tap A to get rid of it. Next up, we're going to start working on the divining rod. Now, each divining rod requires the previous one to construct it. So we're going to start from the base. Now, a divining rod, if you've never used one, you know what? Let's build it. And then I'll show you what it does. But that's going to require a few different layers of covalence dust. So we're going to start off with one that requires any type of stone. I think cobblestone primarily. Oh, cool. We have chisel in this mod pack. That's going to make for some uh, really interesting uh, building scenarios. I'm excited. And charcoal. Charcoal specifically. You can't do this with regular coal. And I know that's just an absolute nightmare, isn't it? Because we have just absolutely so much coal. A whole ten coal. But there we go, we've got our charcoal. We're going to combine that in here with our cobblestone that I meant to grab when I opened this chest a moment ago. And create our low covalence dust. And then we're gonna wait till it's nighttime. There we go, and we're gonna sleep because the night is dark and full of terror. Now we're going to take our stick. We're going to surround it with low covalence dust and build a divining rod. Now the divining rod You'll see there at mode 3x3x3. Three by three by three. That means that if we take our covalence, or I'm sorry, our divining rod, we right click on a block, for a 3x3 three three block radius beneath us, it'll tell us what the average EMC is. So right now, the average EMC for 27 blocks, that's the 3x3 three three cube beneath us, is 1, because dirt has a value of 1 EMC. Now, EMC is something we're going to explain in more detail here in a bit when we actually get to the Philosopher's Stone and the Transmutation Table, but I guess quick prep, everything in the world has an EMC value. So the value of a single covalence dust is 1, or at least for the low one. A uh, value for a single iron ingot is 500 and, or 256. Once we have a Transmutation Table, we can take iron convert that into raw EMC, so we'll have 256 EMC, and then if we wanted to, we could turn that into 256 dirt. Or it can go in the other direction. We can have multiple iron ingots. I think four will equal up to maybe a gold. It might actually be eight iron to get a single piece of gold. Four gold to get a diamond. We can basically convert any item we have into any other item, provided those items have enough EMC. Hopefully that makes sense. If you've ever seen Full Metal Alchemist or Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, you'll probably know what we're talking about here. I've seen one episode of one of those because in my last Tech It series, the number one comment I got was from folks saying, Oh, so it's like Full Metal Alchemist. And I said, I don't know what that is. But I watched an episode. It looked intriguing. I believe it was Brotherhood. I think they're two different shows. I'll get back to it someday. It's been 10 years. It's not been 10 years. It's been seven, but <laughs> I'll get back to it. Anyway, this is not particularly useful because it only shows the average EMC for a 3x3x3 three by three by three radius. The divining rod medium can be extended to, I believe, 3x3x16, three by three by so it'll go much further. And not only will it show us the average, it'll also show us what the greatest item is, right? So if there's a diamond in there, that'll be about 8,000, and it'll show us, yeah, the average is about, you know, 56. But there is something in there worth 8,000, and we'll know it's a diamond, something equivalent to a diamond. Uh, the high level one, I think, goes up to 64 blocks, and each sub sub subsequent tier can be lowered. They have different modes to work on the lower tier. So the medium one can either do a 16 depth or a 3 depth. This one can either do a 64 depth, a 16 depth, or a 3 depth. You get the idea. In order to get the highest level one, it will require a diamond, which... We do have, but it's not what we're going to be spending our diamonds on right now. I think a medium one will do just fine. So that's going to need medium covalence dust, which is redstone and iron. So this is something that you can get. You know, before we talked about how you could build the stone macerator once you had, uh, basically, I think it was four pieces of iron. Uh, you, around that same time, if you're willing to sacrifice an extra piece of iron and some redstone that you can get using your iron pick, then you could also get the covalence dust and it will help you mine much more efficiently so it's definitely going to be worth it because and i'll show you once we go down to the mines it's gonna make finding where you need to mine and and getting good stuff just a lot quicker and easier so we'll get the divining rod medium leave all of this behind and we're gonna need torches and we're gonna head down into the ground 
We've only got two coal left now, so we're going to leave that behind. And goodness, you know what? Our bronze pickaxe is not looking too good. We could build a new one. We're probably not going to be using tools with durability much longer, but if we were going to, something else that we could build is the repair talisman or talisman of repair. Yeah, repair talisman, which requires one of each covalence dust. So again, that's one of our diamonds. It also requires string and paper, but this will, well, on a pedestal, a pedestal, it will repair nearby players' items, and it restores one durability every one second. But I think it'll also work in our inventory. But then again, the one diamond isn't even the issue. <laughs> we just got rid of our last piece of coal. So I guess we can't. I was actually, I was actually going to do it. I was going to say, you know what? Let's go ahead and, you know, it's a good investment in our future. Let's just go ahead and make that next tier covalence dust. We will upgrade our divining rod, which I guess we can get rid of the low and medium. We can upgrade it to a high and then we'll have a repair talisman. But uh, unfortunately, no, I was not paying enough attention. <laughs> and that, that is on me. That is my mistake. I am sorry. Let's head into the mine. So we want to find diamonds and we want to see if there's any hidden around here close by to where we've already been mining. Maybe we can just chance upon some. This is where I found the two diamonds before. So what we can do now is we can go over here and we can try in this direction. Now it's going to start out in the lower mode. So it's only going to be scanning a three by three by three grid directly in front of us. And because we have the medium tier one, you see it now shows the max EMC. So we know that the average is 10, but there's something back there worth 256, which we don't know what that is, but I mean, it could potentially just be some iron. And, oh, it's 10. That makes sense. If you want to get it to a higher tier, that's the wrong button. I was very confident about that as well because I did it in the live stream and I thought I could remember. Oh, it's on G. Change mode is on G. So tap G while you have it selected in your hotbar and it'll switch to 16 by 3 by 3 mode. And then you can switch it back to 3 by 3 by 3 if you want to. But 16 by 3 by 3 will now scan 3 up, 3 to the side, and 16 in depth. And it shows us that nah, the maximum we're going to find that way is 256. So probably maybe some iron, maybe some more tin. We're looking for diamonds, though. And I'm not going to waste my time digging to get to anything other than diamonds. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, well, that's like this direction. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so remember, this is where we already found two diamonds. Okay, well... <laughs> They were literally right here. I guess I could have dug a little bit deeper and realized that there was a couple of more in this vicinity. But let's go a little bit deeper. Any more? No, we're not missing any more. Well, that's two more. So that brings our total up to four, which is exactly how much we needed for what I had planned for today. But it'd be nice if we could find some more. So that's 512. can't think off the top of my head of what would be valued at 512, but, yep, still in this direction. Let's go find out. Ooh. Okay, it could be the silicone, silicon ore, or it could be the electrotine ore. I don't know what this stuff is or what it does. It could be useful in the future. We've also got aluminum up there, so it might be worth going ahead and collecting it. Okay, so the Electrotine is 120, and then that's 32, so there's still something of a higher value in this direction. One thing I did want to note is things like ores do not have an EMC value in their raw ore state. So if we find gold ore or iron ore, and we put that in our inventory, if we look at it inside of our inventory, it will show that it has just no value at all, right? It won't even come up with any EMC value whatsoever. But the divining rod knows what the value of, let's say, a gold ingot is. So it will tell us, okay, so here we have silver. This is probably what we were seeing. You see, silver doesn't show that it has a value, but if we cook it up, it will have, the actual ingot will have a value, and the divining rod knows that, so it'll tell you, oh yeah, there's something worth 512. So there's something worth 2,048 in that direction. And 2048, if I'm not mistaken, is gold. So when we pick up the gold, it'll show that the gold has no EMC value at all. But the, yeah, there it is. The divining rod knows that a gold 
or, or itself having been cooked up is worth that much. I know it sounds like I'm some sort of an expert, and I realized this as I was going through the footage from the last episode. I am speaking in my tutorial voice. I have two different voices that I use when I record videos. One is my normal, I'm recording a video and having a conversation with the audience. This is how I talk in videos. This is how I talk in real life. It's just my normal voice. Uh, which is, I guess, what I'm doing right now. But then, when I'm doing a tutorial, I have this very particular cadence of, okay, and now we're going to take our ore over here. You know, like that. And I don't know why I'm doing that. I guess it's because I know what I'm talking about right now. I just want to go ahead and get, get in front of everyone and l just let you all know, in about two or three episodes' time, we'll have done all the things that I know and we'll be... <laughs> we'll be in no man's land. We'll all have no clue what to do next, and it'll be just nonsense and mayhem from that point forward. And you will not hear the tutorial voice ever again. You'll get a lot of like, uh, uh, what? I died. Why is this? Why is this not working? You're gonna get a lot of that. I also understand that a lot of the folks watching this are longtime subscribers who are just excited to see more Tekkit, and you don't really need a tutorial. You know these things in many cases better than I do. So I apologize if last episode, this episode, maybe the next couple feel a bit repetitive. I do have some plans for our future, though. Things things are not going to remain super familiar. We, we've got some different goals this time around compared to previous. Hey, that is possibly more diamonds in this direction. But uh, compared to, you know, the greats, the classics of old, you know, you're the Tekkit Legends, the Tekkit Main, and the Tekkit Classic... There's going to be some some different goals this time. Trust me. Okay, so that is now a total of seven diamonds, which is enough to be getting on with. I think we're going to be pretty good for a while with those. And then, of course, once we have the Philosopher's Stone, we can turn gold into diamonds. And then once we have the Transmutation Table, we can turn anything into diamonds. I'm going to combine our two bronze pickaxes to get a slightly more healthy one bronze pickaxe and take up less space in my inventory. And then we're going to head out of here. So that's the divining rod. And hopefully you can see how just immensely useful it is for finding things. 256, oh, 2,000. That's, so there's probably more gold in that direction. Something to find another day, perhaps. We really need to find more coal. Is what, oh, actually, before we go back up, let's see if we can find some more coal. Perhaps if we dig here on level 35 in the direction of what we think is probably going to be gold. It could be something else that just has the same value as gold. I'm just assuming it's gold, but maybe the gold will be surrounded by coal. Seems unlikely. Ooh, uranium. Uranium, surely, yeah. Uh, it does have the same value as gold, so that's probably what we were looking at there. Coal has a value of 128, so it could be in this direction, but I think a lot of things have a value of 128, so it could also... Oh, it is coal. Thank goodness. Something interesting to note is that there are better forms of, I don't want to say coal, but there are better forms of fuel that you can make using coal that are part of Project E. So Project E is what's responsible for the talisman of repair, the divining rods, transmutation tables, a philosopher's stones, everything with EMC or everything to do with EMC is more or less from Project E. And Project E also has things like the uh, alchemical coal which is created, we have to have a Philosopher's Stone first, but the recipe for it is for coal, and the Philosopher's Stone gives you the alchemical coal, and the Philosopher's Stone is not consumed in these recipes. But this would burn, because it's for coal, it'll burn four times longer. But then you can use that to create Mobius fuel, not to be confused with Morbius, it's not Morbin time, don't get excited. Uh, we can also then create an explosion if we have TNT. <laughs> That's an option. You could do it. I'm not recommending it. I'm just saying. It can also be used to make Aeternalis fuel, which, again, every time you do this, it'll multiply the amount of, of burn time by four. Eventually, you can make the Aeternalis fuel block, which will burn a very long time. Or you can make Dark Matter, which we'll need in the future. Yeah, okay. So a single Aeternalis fuel will burn or cook 512 items. can also be used in a furnace, obviously. But then that means that this, <laughs> the Aeternalis fuel block, smelts 4,608 items or can be used in a generator to run machines for a very long time. Coal blocks are also a thing, and you could make coal blocks if you wanted to and put those in your generators. But, I mean, come on. 
Mobius fuel. That's that's the way to go. Tell you what we could use right now is a destruction catalyst. That would make mining a lot quicker and easier. The destruction catalyst is, if I remember correctly, yeah, not all that complicated to build. We will need something to fuel it though. So it runs on EMC. And to collect EMC, EMC we will need a Klein star. And there's many different tiers, but we should probably start with the basic one. And I always pronounce them incorrectly, and I'm always corrected in the comments section. So by all means, get your keyboards ready, because you start off with the Klein Star Ein, the Klein Star Zwe, the Klein Star Dre, the Klein Star Dier, and the Klein Star Sphere, which I, I, I can do that one. And then there's the Omega. The last two are the easiest, but the Ein is a diamond and then Mobius fuel. So they're, they're kind of expensive. Oh. What a beautiful rainy day. I love a good rainy day. I'm a little concerned about monsters, but hopefully once we get inside of our fence, we'll be fine. Guess we'll go ahead and leave some of this stuff to process while we go and start collecting the necessary obsidian for the next stage of this operation. First things first, we will make our diamond pickaxe. We only need this for eight obsidian or i'm actually going to do a three by three portal so nine but we can break this down into emc afterwards so it's not like we're going to be losing those diamonds i am going to create a block of coal in order to keep the generator running and then i'm going to use one of our diamonds along with a piece of coal to create the next tier high covalence dust and we will use that to upgrade the divining rod medium into a divining rod high. Take that off, and then we're also going to build a repair talisman, which, ooh, we only have one string. I know that wool can be made from string, but can you go the other way with it? I feel like I ask that question a lot. Yes, if we have a wool gen, which requires an iron coil, which requires iron and a draw plate, which requires block of iron post and diamond panel? I, uh, well, I, I, no, I guess. Oh, here we go. Wool and a macerator. That's, okay, we can definitely manage that. Thank goodness. I was starting to get a little bit concerned. Take that out of there. Get that out of there. Paper we can handle because we do have the sugar cane growing down by the water. And we collected some of that in the last episode. So we need two each of all the covalence dusts. We need string. We need paper. Repair talisman. We'll take that out. Keep it in our inventory. And I'm not sure if it's going to work. It might need to be in our hotbar along with our items. But theoretically, if it does work in our inventory... Oh, look at that. Yeah, the sword's repairing. Awesome. Here's the catch, though. I'm not entirely sure if it works with every tool or only tools that have EMC values. So we're going to move the bronze pickaxe down here and we'll see if it starts healing itself. But it looks like it's definitely working on the sword. Now we are off, off to collect obsidian. You know what, while I was heading down here, I realized that something else we haven't built yet, <laughs> I like that we just stopped on the ladder while I do this, uh, is the project table or the project bench, which is like a crafting table, but it has a bit of inventory and it also hold the items that you put into the crafting area. Might be nice to have. We should probably build one of those. Not really a magical item, but still could be useful. Now. I already know where there is some obsidian. Come across it a few times. And yeah, look, the bronze pickaxe is being repaired. Now, one of the useful things with Wayla is if you hit, <laughs> if you hold it in your hand, it always pops down when a repair operation. Anyway, uh, the useful thing about Wayla, which is what's at the top of the screen there, it stands for what am I looking at, is that it does tell you whether or not you can harvest something with a tool you are currently holding in your hand. So yes, we can absolutely harvest the obsidian. We're gonna wanna be careful here because there could potentially be lava underneath this obsidian and I don't want to break it and fall in or worse, spend you know all the time it takes to harvest obsidian and then you know lose it. So we're gonna get down here and we're gonna start digging out from under all of this and yeah, determining where is safe and where is not. Jeez, yeah, there, there's, it's all over the place here. I guess we're just going to have to break these one at a time and be careful. I don't know how I did my math wrong. For some reason, I thought I would need nine to do a big square portal. But now that I think about it, nine is how many blocks is on the inside. We'll need 12. 
in order to to complete it. So let's fill all of this in with cobblestone for the sake of s sake of safety, and then let's get out of here. That's pretty peaceful around here. I guess that's owing to all of the lights. If you look out into the distance, it's pretty scary. Oh gosh, there's like oh gosh, go to bed, go to bed, get to sleep, go to sleep, please, please, <laughs> please. Oh, I don't want to fight a skeleton. Oh, we do have a shield now, though, so we probably could. Maybe we should go give it our best. You know, while they're already dying to the sun and we have basically no chance of losing. Nice. Alright, now where to build the portal? We could... Uh, it would be cool on top of the volcano, but it would also be quite the journey to get there every time we wanted to go in and out of it. But also... It would be cool on top of the volcano. Granted, it isn't much of a volcano. Still. What is that? Oh, there's gotta be some kind of weird tree. Or tower? Oh, it's a tree. That's unfortunate. I was hoping for a really cool tower. So I think from over there, it's going to look really cool to have this on the other side of this lava. But we don't want it like right up against the lava. Because then we could be in a terrible situation where we get out of the portal and walk immediately into lava. And that would be f way less than ideal. And I'll tell you what, I'm already realizing why this is a bad idea. Because not only are we really far away from base, we're also really far away from the materials I need to build the flint and steel. So now we go back home. Flint and iron, we're going to bring that with us to the nether in case our portal gets knocked out. Um, how? Gets knocked out. Um, how? 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 Oh, yeah, that does look kind of cool. I forgot we had a boat. We can be using our boat to save on time, if I could steer it correctly. One way to keep the portal safe from mobs might be, and I, I don't know if they're in here, but if interdiction torches, uh, these repel mobs. Now, they're not cheap. They require three diamonds. They require glowstone. But not only do they light up an area and prevent monsters from spawning, any monsters that do spawn cannot go within a certain radius of them. I want to say eight blocks. I might be off on that. But there we go. There's our big portal. Let's see how it looks over here. Fantastic. It'd be cool if there was more lava. You know, it'd be cool if the volcano were a little bit more volcano-y. It's, it's a little bit of a flat volcano. It's old. It's, it's existed for a really long time, and it's just kind of... It's... It's in... It's end of life, this volcano. It's resting. It's enjoying its golden years. It's not trying to impress anyone anymore. And I respect that. So what we're here for, specifically, is glowstone. But there's no reason why we're here, why we couldn't go ahead and just grab some nether ports. Remember, everything you can grab is EMC. I gave that advice to, I believe, uh, during the live stream, where I was first testing out this pack. I, be I believe it was Maria Amor who commented that that was some of the first advice I gave in my Tech It Legend series it must have been, and that they still remembered it to this day, which I thought was cool. I'd be curious to find out with this copper ore in... Oh my gosh, that's just, that's just nether diamond? What? Oh gosh! Oh no! Unprepared! Unprepared for this! Unprepared for this! Okay, so yes, much like in previous versions of the game, of the mod pack, if you mine up the nether ores, the locals get mad at you. Okay, we're still alive. <laughs> what I was going to say is, in previous mod packs, the nether ores, when smelted, would give you two uh, ingots per ore. But then also, if you ran them through the... Oh gosh, they can also blow up sometimes. I remember that now. If you ran them through a macerator, they would give you four uh, dusts. So, your one, let's say, gold nether uh, ore, would give you four dust and therefore four ingots. Making each individual block worth quadruple, which you initially would think it would be, which was really cool. I, that took a while for me to get out because now I'm, I'm, I'm on edge. I'm paranoid. We came here for glowstone. There's some right above the portal. 
Let's get that and get out of here. The, the locals hate me now. So it's definitely worth mining here. And if quarries are in this pack, it's funny. I, I haven't even wondered about that until just now. It's definitely worth setting up one here. It's a bit complicated because lava can wreck your quarries. Uh, there are ways to mitigate that, at least in the overworld. In Tech at Legends, there was a really handy device that you could press a button and it would block up all the lava that was flowing into your quarry. I don't think that's going to be an option here. Water will also not be an option here because this is the nether. And one cannot bring water into the nether. It's a classic nether thing. Okay, well, let's get out of here and while we fast travel out, I'm going to check real quick whether or not there is some sort of a, well, we've, we fast traveled. I wanted to see whether or not there was a something or another, maybe a pendant or a brooch or a nice pair of earrings that would allow us to travel to the nether instantly upon coming into contact with the portal, because that is a thing in other mod packs, and I just was wondering if it was here. I guess also I want to find out whether or not we have a quarry. Oh, 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 we do. We got Zeta Industries. Okay, so you've got your quarry and your quarry fixer. Okay, well, we are back. The portal looks great up there on top of our little volcano. Uh, time to put this to the test. What happens if we put the nether diamond ore inside of a macerator? We'll have to come back and check on that. Or we'll wait, because if I just keep talking, this will complete before I even manage to finish my sentence. Five diamonds. Hot diggity. I'm assuming a singer, single nether copper ore, again, will give us four dust. So, yeah, definitely worth mining in the nether. Let's see. Yep, four copper dust. And then that can be cooked into uh, more copper ingots. And what's great about that entire adventure is all of our tools are still fully repaired, thanks to the repair talisman. I believe if you have two repair talisman, I don't think they stack, but they will... Uh, double the rate at which your tools repair themselves, which doesn't feel necessary. Now, I know that the repair talisman works in certain kinds of chests. I don't know if it'll work in a regular chest to start repairing these things, but I'd be interested in finding out. So we're going to leave that in there for a bit and see if anything happens, and uh, specifically looking at these items. And if it doesn't, that's not too shocking, because like I said, I think there's a particular kind of chest we would need to make that work. Righto! Philosopher's Stone requires redstone, glowstone, and a single diamond. We have two of the three objects that we need. Let's go ahead and get some more redstone. And we are ready to craft the Philosopher's Stone. Useful things you can do with a Philosopher's Stone. If you hover over it and you tap C, you have a mobile crafting grid. If you look at the ground and you right-click, you can turn grass into sand, turn it back into grass. Shift right-click, turn it into stone, cobblestone, regular stone, back to cobblestone, back to grass. It's cool. It's handy. It does more. If we have it inside of a crafting grid, I wonder if this is shaped crafting. It is not. Remember what I said before about four gold being the equivalent to a diamond? Well, you make a diamond and it doesn't do any sort of damage. It doesn't Get rid of your Philosopher's Stone. I think you can go back in the other direction. I wonder, though, if we could get Obsidian with it. So, Obsidian... Okay, well, we'd need lava, unfortunately. Uh, maybe a bucket of lava would work. I'm not sure. But what we need to do is we need to go get some more Obsidian from deep underground because we're going to need four pieces to build the transmutation table. And we're going to need one extra one to put into the transmutation table. So we need to go get five more pieces. Um, I know it feels like we're moving on from the Philosopher's Stone. It can do a lot of really other cool things. I mean, there's a ton of objects just in the world that you can use it with. For instance, did you want jungle wood? Acacia wood? Dark oak? Oak? Spruce? Birch? It's really cool. It's really handy. But for right now, we got something else we need to go do. And yeah, this has had no effect on anything inside of here. I did not think that it would because there's a different chest that we would need. I think it still works like this. And in the older days, you could get an alchemical chest. And that would do it. Righto, though. Underground we go. That is five. Obsidian. Yeah. And let's get out of here. For some reason in my mind, I have a memory of being able to use four logs to create obsidian with the Philosopher's Stone. 
But I must just be crazy, right? That wasn't an option that we saw. I mean, we'll try real quick. But... Yeah. I guess I was just crazy. That's a shame. Boy, I sure hope the nether copper ore doesn't blow up our macerator. I don't think that's a thing that can happen. I don't... think that's a thing that can happen. Okay, so we need stone. I know it says chiseled stone, but it's any type of regular stone. Obsidian and the Philosopher's Stone to get the transmutation table! And now the game begins in earnest. So we're going to shift right click that onto the crafting table. You don't have to. You can put it anywhere you want to. I like to keep mine there for easy access. And when we right click it, <laughs> I just sat up in my seat. I'm so excited. So this is what I was talking about before. This is where the fun begins. Now, I'm not used to it looking like this. I'm used to playing this with these facts, uh, the pure BD craft, uh, or DB craft, whichever direction. I couldn't find one for Tekkit 2. I found plenty that were 1.12 packs, and maybe that would have worked, but we can get the feel for this. So now we can just start throwing items in there, right? We can dump in all of our cobblestone, and as you see, it says learned. So we can toss it all in there. If you want to unlearn it, a recipe, what you can do is um, put it somewhere on the screen. I can't recall where. Oh, right here. Boom, unlearned. But we definitely want it to be learned. So we can just throw all of our oak wood in there. We can throw basically anything with the value, the obsidian. That's why we got an extra piece of obsidian. Uh, let's just throw everything in here. Why not, right? Like, we might as well. Boom. Look at that. It's all gone. Not this, because it doesn't have an EMC value. But, oh, we can even throw the Philosopher's Stone in there if we wanted to. We can get it back out. The reason that this was not popular in Tech It Classic, and the reason that I loved it in Tech It Legends is this bar right up here. You didn't have a search bar in Tech It Classic. The search bar changes this into the most useful thing in the mod pack. <laughs> it is amazing. It'll store your EMC, so we have our EMC over here. I think it'll only store a limited amount, so you're going to want to build a Klein Star uh, to store some extra in a chest somewhere, carry it around with you. It's basically an EMC battery, really. This means, though, that we don't need chests full of objects. Look, I can get all of these out of here. And, again, it will depend on which ones have EMC values. You'll notice not all of them do. But then, if I want to, let's say I need some... Let's say I need some type of seed. Type it in. It'll come up over here. It knows the recipe. And then, so long as we have enough EMC for it, so we have 138,000 EMC, we can get seeds out. We can get stacks and stacks and stacks and stacks of seeds. Now, now it's not infinite. It's going to use our EMC, but once we start to run out of EMC, we can use other items to replenish it. So let's say we just needed diamonds, man. I mean, there they are right there. Look at that. We got 16 diamonds. Now we're out of EMC, but guess what? We have value, items of value over here. The items of big value. Now, I, we got more diamonds out of that chest, but ignoring that, if we put the, the processed items, okay, well, we didn't have that many. We had enough to get another diamond, though. You see where I'm going with this? No need to store large, large quantities of items anymore. All right, sorry, I had to take a nap. All right, we don't need this chest anymore full of all of these random objects. We can store all of these inside of here and we can pull them back out uh, as we need them. You'll notice that it's not taking our dust. So if we want to convert dust in there, we'll have to cook it into uh, ingot form, which I'm perfectly happy to do. This is going to make building our house though so much faster because we will be able to get whatever raw materials that we need to build it right out of here. So right now, what I'm thinking is it would be really nice. I'm going to teach that in there as well so we can get another one if we need to. But right now, I'm thinking it would be really nice to have a, a diamond axe so that I can cut down all of these chests that we no longer need. Because we got the one chest here with the items that don't have an EMC value, which we'll still need to sort and deal with, and there are better ways of doing it than we are right now. I can go ahead and use my axe to chop up all these chests, throw them inside of here, get their EMC, and then look at that, our axe is repaired, courtesy of the repair talisman. We can get back literally everything we spin on it, the two sticks and the three diamonds worth of EMC. Just dump that back in there. We can grab another one as needs be. I don't even know where I got a golden sword, probably from fighting a monster, but I can get one of those if I need it. So for all the pros, there are some cons. First off, if you are playing multiplayer, you will not be able to, at least in previous versions, and I'm assuming it holds true today, you will not be able to share your EMC value in here with a friend. 
you can dump it into a Klein Star and give them that Klein Star, and then they can use it. But that'll necessitate exchanging Klein Stars. Also, they will not have the same recipes inside of the transmutation table. This is specific to individual players. So if you're on a server and you have a lot of really cool stuff learned in your transmutation tablet, or table, I should say, a tablet is a thing. It's a mobile version of one of these anywhere you are in the world. It's also very expensive, though, as it requires dark matter blocks, which one of those is worth twice as much EMZ as we currently have. So we're ways off from building one of these, but, you know, in the future, hopefully. Now, we are running out of fuel fast, so let's create something else that we talked about before. We're going to grab four coal, and we're going to... Actually, we don't even really need to use the crafting table. We can use this bad boy here with our four coal to get the alchemical coal. We can toss that inside of here and get four alchemical coal out. This is going to start getting costly. I know I just said we didn't need to use this crafting table, but here we are. So at this point, this is worth 2,000 EMC all by its lonesome. So if we go any higher from this, they're going to start getting so expensive that it's going to consume all of the EMC that we currently have on tap. We can put that in there, and then we can get four of those out. And those are worth... <laughs> it's basically four diamonds worth of material here. And then actually, if we wanted to make the next tier, we would need, we would need nine of them, because that would be this ridiculous bad boy here, the Aeternalis fuel block, which is a bit much. We're not going to use that. We are going to take one Aeternalis fuel and put it inside of the generator, and that's going to be burning for a very long time. Next up, let's make the project bench. I think it was four planks, and then a chest, and then we're actually just going to go ahead and use this crafting table here. Actually, give me an axe. Make this a bit quicker. We'll craft it inside of here. Project Bench also has an EMC value. How about that? I think we can teach it items without throwing them into the fire here if we place them into this middle piece, and then that way we won't have to search for them again. So, I mean, how would I even go about demoing that? Are you harvestable yet? Is anything over here on these plants harvestable? Oh, you know what? Bit of fencing. That'll be perfect. Okay, apparently we already taught it. Gate, though. Actually, we probably did that as well. Torch. Probably that is what I don't I don't remember what all we've already placed inside of here. If you place this in here, it'll show you items somewhat related to it, although ironically it didn't show fencing. Birch wood has not been taught to the system. I'm relatively confident about that. Birch wood has been taught to the system. Birch planks, though, I've definitely never built. There we go, they're learned, and then we can pull them back out and use them. All of that just to get that one point across. Hopefully it was worth it. Project Bench. Like I said, it's got a little bit of storage down here. And also, if we stick items inside of here, we can walk away and come back and they'll still be there. This is unfamiliar to me. I have I have no explanations for any of that. But the Project Bench is useful. It's nice to have. And I'm happy to have one. So up next, we can get rid of both of these. And we can discuss the Destruction Catalyst and the Klein Star. These are going together because you kind of need both of them. The Destruction Catalyst, it can be used if you have, let's say, coal or I think even redstone in your inventory. It'll consume that as fuel, but it's better to have a Klein Star, which is like an EMC battery, as discussed previously. So we're going to need quite a bit of Mobius fuel. It's Mobian time? That was dumb. Surrounding a diamond. <laughs> I regret that. I regret it dearly. That'll give us the Klein Star Ein. Teach that to the system. And then if we have, I believe, four of them, we can create the next tier. And this more or less just determines how much energy it can store with each subsequent tier able to hold a lot more, but also being a lot more costly to manufacture. We might as well go ahead and create the next tier. There was a bug in Tech It Classic, I think it was, that allowed you to cheat more of these out but that's been long gone i'm sorry to say so in order to fill this up we place it over here and it's got all of our emc in it now and we can put it back in by placing it inside of here possibly yeah you just get it fill it dump it get it fill it dump it you, you, you get the idea i don't actually want to take all the emc with me so i'm going to get a smaller one fill it up to max 
and then we're going to build the destruction catalyst. So we're going to need four more of these. We're also going to need a flint and steel, which hopefully ended up inside of here. And then finally, we're going to need TNT blocks to create the Nova Catalyst. So four more of those, or actually, wait, how many goes into this? Yeah, four more of those. And then TNT is sand. Okay, that's a weird thing to not have in here. Gunpowder, though? Thank goodness. Let's grab a stack of it. While we wait on the sun to set so that we can sleep before going to get sand, let's make a diamond shovel simply because we can. This is a big moment. This is the last piece of sand we will probably ever pick up for the sake of needing it for a recipe. Now, we'll probably dig up more sand during construction in the future, but never again for this purpose. Diamond shovel, sand, give me a stack of it, and we'll go down here and create TNT. Okay, well that was weird. <laughs> I shift clicked the recipe which puts all of these in here by default. Interesting. So the reason it's doing that is because it will automatically feed in more things from down here into up here. You can clear it with that button. I wonder what the sand... This must be related in some way. I have no explanations for that right now. Uh, maybe in the future, but we're going to need four of these, I believe it said. So those together will create the Nova Catalyst, and we're actually getting uh, two for each recipe use. I kind of want to demonstrate one of these, though. We're going to go down into the mines, and we're going to set this off. Not too deep. All right, we're going to set this thing off, and gosh, it blew up a lot faster than I expected. We were barely safe, as you can see just a bit bigger than TNT by itself. Oh. Oh. Okay. Actually quite a bit bigger now, now that I'm realizing. How were we safe? I guess the center of destruction was here and it went in kind of an egg shape. Jeez. Looks like all of the ladder survived though. So that's useful. Gonna need more torches down there. So now you know. If you have friends and you don't like them, go Nova Catalyst to their base. We got, we got so much cobblestone from that explosion. <laughs> That's nuts. Okay. Uh, back to what we were doing, which is building the destruction catalyst. Nice. And uh, we can teach that in there. We've got our Klein Star as a fuel source. We also need some torches. Get a stack of those. Get a divining rod as well. So this one will go up to 64 blocks, which mightn't be very useful. If you were mining, I should I should cl clarify, it might not be very useful if you were mining with a pickaxe. Because if an object is 64 blocks away, are you mining all the way there to get it with a pickaxe? That's going to take a really long time. The destruction catalyst, though, be so careful with this. A single right click. We'll get rid of a 3x3x1, three by three by one, so 1 being the depth. I guess that would be 1x3x3. Three by three by three. You can charge it up, though, with V, and it gets very more destructive. Now, in previous versions, it would actually drop everything as a little black orb, so you wouldn't actually know what you were picking up, and that was really useful on less powerful computers, but I guess the assumption now is that we're all rocking... 8-core Ryzen processor, so we're probably good. And and I guess that's true somewhat. So we will be consuming. Right now we have 49,000 stored EMC. If we use that again, we have 49,288. 49,000 even. That is why you need a Klein Star to power this thing. We're not there yet, though, folks. We're not there yet, though. We can charge it up even further. And we can create tunnels that are very long. So I believe that is 16, and I think that's as far as it goes. That is why it pairs so well with this. Because even though, yes, it's got... Uh, you know what, let's go deeper first. As I was saying, this can go up to 64 blocks, which is a really long way to mine by hand. But if you have this, and it says, you know what, your max 512, that's not a lot. I want to find a diamond. Oh, yeah, by the way, this shows you... Not only the, the max, but also what your second and third max tier item is. It's one of the features of having 
the the biggest and the baddest of the Klein stars. So I'm having trouble finding diamonds, but there's something in this direction worth 2,000. 64 blocks, though. It could be right behind this rock, or it could be the full 64 blocks away. A long way to dig, but to right-click this a couple times... That's 16... That's 32... Yeah, no, we're getting there. Look at that. And 64 blocks, and that took no time at all. Our inventory is pretty flooded right now, though, with random nonsense, so... Oh, they're diamonds. We must have just skirted right past them. That's that's handy. We'll go grab those. We need some better inventory management, some sort of bags to hold things, some way to cancel out objects. But what I'm trying to get across here is that this is a really useful mining tool, and also very dangerous. Be so careful with this, because you can absolutely wreck your base. It's a bit messy to mine like this, because you're always picking up a, you know, a 3x3 three three area, even if you don't want to. But it is quick. I will also note, be careful when you're using this, because if you run out of uh, energy inside of your Klein Star, it will just immediately start using uh, certain objects from your inventory. So it might start using all of the coal, all of your, your redstone. There are certain items it will use and certain items it will not, but just be mindful that that might happen. Ooh, okay, we found diamonds in that direction. Right through here, I think it was. Let me, let me double check. E yeah. So let's ramp this bad boy up and get going. Oh! Oh, hi there! I don't actually have any weapons to fight you with. You know what, we'll come back. We'll, we're gonna go. We don't need them that badly. Jeez. So this is gonna make, if you want to make a really long tunnel, the destruction catalyst is definitely the way to go. Maybe not great for precision mining. There are other things you can build for that. Uh, if you so desire, we could build electric ones from industrial craft. Uh, that might be a handy way to do things, but yeah, just destruction catalyst. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna charge it down by holding down shift and V. So I don't know if I mentioned that before, but V, as in Victor, as in Vicky, as in Veronica, as in Vector, not to be confused with Victor, that is how you charge it up with V, and then hold down shift and press V to charge it down, and then make sure you don't right-click anything with it or you're in for a bad time. Let's go ahead and get rid of it. We'll just store it inside of there, along with anything else that'll hopefully store inside of here. Wow, well, we actually did everything we set out to do today. We we really delved into magic, and we learned a lot, got some really interesting new items, and I, I don't know what to do next episode. I've been thinking about it. Be cool to have Swift Wolf's Rending Gale, but that's going to take a long time because it's very expensive. I mean, it's not that expensive, really. 559, and we're already up to... 250, uh, 244. It'd be nice to have that in order to build a house, because that allows, so long as you have fuel in a Klein Star, for you to fly like you're in creative. And I really do need to build a nice house, so that might be something to work towards. I'll probably end up doing a lot of mining, because, I mean, look at this. We can use copper ingots to fatten up our EMC coffers, as it were. I'm gonna get one of these. No, I'm not. It's so expensive. I'm gonna get one of these. And uh, toss it inside of here. Look, that last one's still going. <laughs> but I think that's going to be what we end up working towards. Is just getting as much as possible. Wait a minute. What was that thing called? Personal... E oh, I think it was like personal EMC link or something like that. There was a block. It was in stone block 2 that allowed you to take items, pump them into this block, and would automatically convert them into EMC. Which was really handy. Doesn't look like we have that here, so our best bet is going to probably be building a condenser. Uh, just a regular energy condenser. And then piping items out of here into into there and having them turn into diamonds or something. And then we get the diamonds out and put them into the transmutation table uh, by ourselves. By the way, how much fuel do we have? Oh yeah, yeah, I forgot. If you want to empty this, you don't have to dump it into here. You can just pop it right there. Um, that makes way more sense. But okay, maybe that's what we'll do next time. Maybe we'll look into automating so that we can start automatically processing all of the goods that we've mined up. I did just realize how quickly we could build a couple more of these if we wanted to. 
before we went. I mean, look, because, like, getting 10 is just a matter of doing that. I mean, look at that. Look how quickly we could build all those energy cells. That took, like, no time at all. Rubber does not have an EMC value, but sticky resin does. So there's no longer any need for us to collect sticky resin ourselves manually. We can just get it out of here and then cook it up inside of here and have not infinite rubber, but rubber on demand. And then copper... We can get a stack of that if we wanted to. We, we don't. We don't need that much. But, you know, theoretically we could. Copper cables don't have a value either, which is really unfortunate. Because that would make this whole procedure much quicker. Refined iron ingots do. Handy. I guess now is as good a time as any to point out that if something does not have EMC and you want it to, you can go into the configuration and manually alter it. But... It's not really within the spirit of the game, is it? It's a little bit cheaty. At the end of the day, it's it's your Minecraft experience, and, and you can do whatever you want to, but I don't know about that. That feels a little bit wonky to me. I thought I was making four of these. What did I run out of? Copper cables! Now we have enough overclocker upgrades to run both of these with four. And it looks like we're maintaining power, but are we in the bat box? Or is the bat box draining faster? Yeah than the generator can supply. We've gone over. We're gonna have to find more ways to power this. We're gonna need more than just a single generator. So we're going to need to move items out of, in and out of these automatically. And we're also going to need to get more power. So I guess now we know exactly what we're gonna be doing next time. Until then, thank you folks for watching. God bless each and every one of you, and I'll see you later. Bye. Got thumb hound. Got thumb hound. Got thumb hound. Got thumb hound. Howdy there, folks. How are y'all doing? My name is Reese, and welcome to episode three of our Tech It Two Let's Play adventure. Wow, we almost had a countdown there. Episode three, Tech It Two, and I'm the only one here. Thank goodness, <laughs> and I've been busy since the last episode, not super so, but I did build a second generator, and I've had both of these running to keep the bat box fueled up and to keep these machines running. I realized that with two generators, we could maintain three overclocker upgrades in each machine. The reason we could not go to four is because one, two generators barely kept the, the two machines running with three of these. It was like literally every ounce of EU, which is the electronic unit uh, used here. Every single ounce of it was being used. I guess you don't really measure electricity in ounces. Anyway, it was all being used to maintain three, or I guess six upgrades. But if we went to four, we actually couldn't get enough electricity, even if we had it, into the machines. The little red lightning zigzag here started to go down. And the reason for that is you can only pull so much power through copper cables but you can also only pull so much power out of the bat box. We're going to have to upgrade our energy if we want to go faster, and we do want to go faster. So we're going to be looking at doing a few energy things here. We're going to need to build an MFE, which is the next tier of energy storage above the bat box. So it also outputs more energy than the bat box, holds more energy than the bat box. If we pump it into our machines as they are in this moment, they will blow up, which means we're going to need to put a transformer in each of them, so we need two of those. I also thought about building some solar panels and maybe even a low voltage solar panel. This, this here will produce one EU per tick, so not a lot. We'll need uh, literally 20 of them to match up to our generator, right? I think they produce 20 per tick. And then this will produce eight, but it does require eight of them. There are also some really interesting alternative solar panels in this pack, which uh, seem very intriguing to me. I'm not seeing them here, but if we type in solar, we've also got the advanced solar panel, which also produces 8 EU per tick, but requires this one here. The hybrid produces 64, but these things require some really exotic... Wait, maybe I'm wrong, because this requires a low-voltage solar panel, so why would you want... It's got to produce more than 8. I looked this up on the wiki before we started. Advanced solar panel, 8 EU per day, 1 at night, big internal storage, 4 charge slots. Maybe one of those things is the reason you would want one of these. So this is actually from a different mod, and I'm completely new to it. There's a few things in here that are from different mods, and we'll get to that in a bit. But I figure we'll make at least one 
a low voltage solar panel for right now. And then also we need some equipment to carry around with us. I was thinking chainsaw and mining drill should be able to cover all the bases. Uh, there are advanced versions of these. So for instance, we can get the diamond drill, which can dig up obsidian very quickly, actually. There's a ton of stuff it can do. Um, press L menu, scan the area in front of you while holding a scanner. I don't know why we'd want to do that, but we can. We can also build a chainsaw, which can be used as shears. Oh, but wait a minute. We can build an advanced chainsaw too? Yeah, this is from something called the Gravisuit Classic. And there is an advanced mining drill as well that they have, which is down here. I'm oh, sorry, that's a jackhammer. That's normal. Where is it? There it is. The advanced diamond drill, which looks like it's going to be pretty cool as well. We're not going to be building that today. I think we'll probably stick to the basic chainsaw and then maybe the diamond tipped chainsaw because it's just a matter of adding three diamonds. Before we do any of that, though, I noticed something when we looked up shields. And I wanted to just very quickly mention that we could build a bronze shield as well and a plated shield. And the only reason I'm not is based on my reading on the wiki, the only advantage is that they have more durability. You'll notice our shield is not damaged at all, courtesy of the repair talisman that we have with us. So I don't really know if we need to build a better one if the only difference is going to be durability. Maybe we get into a fight with something that deals a lot of damage and can break our shield in one hit and then maybe then having a bronze would be better. I'll tell you what I am going to do is I am going to build bronze armor because it looks cool and we need armor anyway. And then I guess we might as well upgrade our shield to a bronze shield also. Just, you know, so we can say that we have one. It'll look nice and it'll match the rest of our armor. There we are. That's all of the bronze that we need. I did not have any bronze before I started this episode. So I had to take completed tin and copper ingots and grind them up inside of the macerator in order to get the dust to make a bit more, but uh, we're good to go now, and we look snazzy. So I guess to note really quickly, this bronze armor, it has the durability of iron, but it has the protection of diamond. There is something else here called composite armor, which we can build, and reading directly from the wiki here, it says that it combines aspects of three different materials, so leather armor, which protects us better against blasts because of its flexibility. Iron armor for the general metal armor protection and reinforced alloy, uh, which improves armor strength and durability. So that could be fun. It has better damage absorption than diamond armor, apparently, and has double the durability? Wait, why don't we just build this? This seems like a better deal overall. Oh, it requires a mixed al- well, You know what? We're doing this. It's a shame that this doesn't have any EMC because it's basically been wasted now, but it looks nice. Maybe we'll put it up on some sort of a stand with the, the bronze pick that we also will likely never use again. And it'll just be fun to look at. Oh, and very quickly, yes, the next tier up from that would be the nano armor. But like, come on, do we do we have what we need to make carbon mesh and carbon? Actually, yes. Yes, we do. It requires a lot of electricity to keep it charged, though. We're not there yet. This, I mean, this is not what we talked about doing at the start of the episode, but this is what we're doing now. It looks like it's going to be fun. So we need, uh, we need reinforced iron, bronze ingots, and tin ingots. Also, I said reinforced iron ingots, but I did mean refined. So we're going to probably need a lot of this moving forward. We're going to go ahead and create 42 of them. And then I don't think that we put them inside of any machine that would cook them or else uh, grind them up. We're going to need a new machine. We're going to need a compressor, which we've not built before, but now's as good a time as any. I like how I had all these plans for this episode. And we're just immediately veering off into, <laughs> into a side project that is not going to be very difficult. So I'm going to go ahead and get some more sticky resin cooking up because we cannot get that simply from... EMC, unfortunately. How are we doing on the whole power situation? Probably didn't need to waste an Aeternalis fuel on that, but... Oh well. Get a good night's rest, and then first thing next morning, we'll get to work. I think I've got exactly everything we need right now, so... We're going to create just a bunch of copper cables, because we're going to need more of them as we go anyway. And they pop down here. I was wondering where they disappeared to for a moment. So we've got our machine block here. And then we need the electronic circuit. Combine all of that. I say electronic. I think it's, yeah, electronic. Compressor. And we'll have to plug that in. I guess we could place it right here for now. Keeping in mind that we don't want to break that with a pickaxe. 
get another cable to plug it in. And I suppose if we're going to have an MFE, we're going to need three transformers because we now have three machines. It would be a disaster if we plugged this in. Good gosh, can you imagine if this thing blew up? Well, we can put our mixed metal ingots in there now. And we do have two more currently unused overclocker upgrades. Plop those in to speed this process up a bit. And now I guess I am glad I used that Aeternalis fuel. Oh, by the way, I've just got cooked pork chop in my inventory now. Also, there's a chicken in here. I, I don't know how. It's just here now. It lives here. It lives with us. We just, we live with it. So once those are done, we're also going to need full iron gear and full leather gear. I haven't looked at any of the other recipes, but yep, looks like that's more or less how this is going to go down. Iron we have, and leather, yeah, I was hoping we would have. I assumed we must, because I know we've <clears throat> had some run-ins with cows in the past, if you will. I gotta tell you, I was going through some of the random objects I was finding before I started this episode, and just learning how many interesting and unique things there are in this pack that I'd never seen before. One thing that I do want to say, just very quickly for all of you, and, and you don't have to take this advice, but I would advise everything you build, if it has an EMC value, even if you think you're never going to need it, throw it in here. Learn it. Because it's going to be worth in seven hours time if you realize suddenly, oh, I actually, I actually do, for whatever reason, need an iron chest plate. Or a leather one, even. And I, I thought I'd never need one of those again. It's going to be worth having it. I'm going to steal two of these... I'm going to demonstrate what happens when we put them in here. So first off, this thing does get really quick, or at least it should. But then we should see this start to go down. Maybe not. Okay, alright. So maybe we were just limited by how much power we could produce. How many of these can we put in a single machine before we hit the limits? Looks like right about there. So with six, maybe even five, we'll put five in. Alright. So five is the limit of how many of these we can have and still draw power through a copper cable. And if we wanted to go to six, it's going to start drawing more power than can be supplied from the bat box. Uh, because the, the I, I keep saying that the copper cable is the limit, and it might well be. I can't remember what the exact limit on copper cable is. But we're actually hitting the 32 EU output limit of the bat box. Now, I don't know how much of this we'll actually need. It's crazy that I've been playing Minecraft since 2009. And I don't know how much of any given material we need to create a full armor set. But also, we don't need... Oh, yeah, we do actually do. So a helmet is going to require the same amount of material as building a helmet. But then two additional helmets. <laughs> That's going to give us our composite helmet. I'm going to guess. I'm not going to look at the other recipes. But I'm going to guess that there's a bit of a theme, yeah, on how they're constructed. And we're going to see if we can just guess how all of these are going to go. Interesting. That's not it. Well, you know what? It's probably going to be that for let. Mm. Really? Oh wait, those those are not legs. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> not my best moment. So do I just need to invert these? What's the secret here? Okay, so we just don't even have one down there. Perfect. And we do have a lot of extra advanced alloy, but trust me, that's going to be handy in the future. We're going to store all of that inside of there. Equip our new armor. Nice. Do we want a plated shield to match? I, I said it would be nice to have a whole bunch of extra advanced alloy, but who am I kidding? We're going to be making more of that in the future anyway. We're going to go ahead and upgrade that too. It doesn't look as nice as the bronze. In fact, I, I might make the argument that it's a little bit ugly, but I kind of like it. I think it's got a it's got an interesting look to it. Wow, that is huge. That takes up just so so much of the screen. That that takes up an unbearable amount of the screen. Let's leave that out of the the armor slot for now. So with that distraction out of the way, we can move on to creating. I guess the tools that we're going to be using as well. Uh, the chainsaw is a pretty effective device for fighting monsters, so I guess we'll just go ahead and say that's going to be our weapon. And then the mining drill. It's pretty handy, too. Let's get that sticky resin cooking up again. How are we doing on power? We have plenty. So each of these are going to require a rebattery. It looks like five 
of the refined iron and an electronic circuit. So I'm going to go ahead and grab everything we need for those. Pipe sealant. Oh gosh, that's the compressor. <laughs> I was so confused. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I, I opened this machine up and I genuinely was so confused because I knew that I had put resin inside of the furnace. Okay, well we've got we've got uh, 64 rubber and now we have some pipe sealant too, which I'm sure will come in handy in the future. <laughs> and then beyond that, I'm pretty sure we've got everything we need here uh, to make, first off, our batteries. So we'll make the two of those and then the electronic circuits. Ooh, you know what? We're not going to have enough copper cable. Oh, yeah, we are to create. Oh, no, we're not. Yeah, we are to create two of them, and then the recipes are just slightly different, so a sort of chainsaw shape for the chainsaw, and a sort of drill shape for the drill, and then like I said before, we're going to go ahead and upgrade the drill, so we're going to need three diamonds in order to do that. Not a, a difficult or overly expensive modification to make. And then to charge them up, there are chargers that you can get, and in fact, we should probably invest in that, although I can't remember what it's called. Is there a dedicated charger? The charged electrolyzer is probably not it. Uh, I'll have to dig around and figure out what that was called. But uh, alternatively, uh, I'm pretty sure that we can just stick it inside of a generator and it'll start to charge up. Now that will consume the energy that is being produced by the generator which is less than ideal, all things considered. Let's go ahead and move that up here. So while I waited on these to charge up and be ready, I did do a little bit of digging and I found the static charge pad and it can be upgraded to, or I guess there are alternatives to it that will, I guess, charge things more quickly. But this is basically, you put it on the ground, you stand on it, and it charges the items that you're holding, which I suppose could be useful under certain conditions. Alternatively, we could build an MFE, and it would charge both of these up very quickly. But let me see if I can stretch my brain and remember all the details about this correctly. So first off, chainsaw. I think it'll actually cut things down like an axe, whether or not it has a charge. And the charge is mostly for dealing insane amounts of damage. And there's no monsters around here to test this on, but uh, it does, it does, it, it does cut down trees very quickly. It can also be used if it has power to cut grass and I think leaves with as if it had silk touch. So if you wanted to collect a bunch of leaves, you could absolutely do that. Both of these items have EMC, so I don't mind it. Meanwhile, the mining drill is just incredibly fast at mining. And to give you a demonstration, we're going to go down into the mines. And actually, we'll start here with dirt and just point out that it's... It's very quick. Remember this place? Remember what fun we had? Oh. Well, there's very loud thunder outside in the real world. There is a potential that my electricity might go out. I'm not sure. Yeah. It just mines things really quick. If you were hoping for some really intricate animation when that happens, I, I'm sorry, but I must inform you that no. It's just a very fast mining utensil for precision mining. Now, a destruction catalyst is obviously faster. But if you don't want to leave holes everywhere, this is probably your best bet. The greatest thing about both of these is that neither of them will ever break. When they run out, you simply go put more EU into them. Now, as you can see, it can be quite quick, and it might be difficult to precision break dirt. I was reading on the wiki that if you hit the mode switch key, it should change it to dirt mode, which slows it down to 50% on dirt and maybe everything, but I think specifically on dirt. Uh, the mode switch key is B, and pressing B doesn't seem to do anything. And we can double check that by going to our controls and scrolling down to IC2 classic, or just IC2 keys. And there's your mode switch key B. Now it is red, which means it's being shared with something, but it should still, oh, it's being shared with hub expand key. That's the default key, though. That's what the, uh, the the mod author, or at least the pack makers, intended me to use, so I'm going to assume that it works. There's also an alt key, which is bound to L menu, which is not a key I've ever seen on a keyboard. I don't even know what that would be. I'm not too worried about it. 
because it's working the way I want it to already. And now I suppose I would be remiss if I didn't demonstrate the prowess of the chainsaw. You notice I'm not currently holding it because when you do, it's running all the time. I think you can adjust your IC2 sounds by going to options. Yeah, there you go. Go to your music and sound and then here you can change things. But uh, I don't know. I, I, I just won't hold it all the time. Wow. That is quite the effective weapon. I should note, once it runs out of charge, maybe I said this earlier already, but uh, once it runs out of charge, it'll deal one heart of damage. So not quite as effective, not not nearly as useful. So both of these will be hopefully very effective as we continue our Let's Play adventure. We can knock them. Oh, I already did. Now we can shift into energy production, what was supposed to already be the sort of, of meat of the episode. Solar panel. During the day, it'll provide us with one whole EU per tick. Not useful. Low voltage one. Combine eight of them together, get eight EU per tick. You can actually use this in a recipe to get an MV one. So just multiply eight by eight and you, you more or less get where we're going with this. Use it again. Get the high voltage solar panel. Again, multiply eight by eight. Ultimate hybrid solar panel? I don't, I don't even know what that would do. I've, I've never seen that. That is from the Advanced Solar's Classic Edition. Looks cool. Maybe someday. Eight does not sound like a lot, but if it's running passively in the background to charge up something like an MFE, then it's definitely going to be handy. So let's go ahead and build it. That's going to require cold dust, which is oh, that's weird. We can just uh, we can put a coal into a macerator, and uh, that'll give us coal dust. It's interesting though that you could do it with coal blocks. That could be fun. We might, we might do that. We'll get a couple of these. Yeah, okay, so now if I put five of these in here while also the macerator is running with three, yeah, I can't quite keep up. And that is why we need to build... It looks like four is maintaining. Uh, that is why we need to build the MFE because at that point we're up against the 32 EU output from the back box. That's our limiting factor. So I don't know why I cooked up that much of this stuff when it has an EMC value. We could just get more of it now if we need it. In fact, stop. <laughs> just stop. We're also going to need glass. And we got to build eight of these things. That's why I'm grabbing stacks and stacks of objects. We will need a generator. So we will actually need eight generators. It might make more sense just to make eight generators and keep them all charged up with like Aeternalis fuel. But we'll do this. The cool thing about this is I can just grab loads and loads of stuff. Just grab it in stacks. That's fun. Because this is going to be a bit of a process. We've got to create 16 of these. That's so many of these. You can't middle mouse button to sort items inside of here, which is frustrating. Project Bench, why are you like that? 16. So we got 16 of those. And then this is going to require a, a low voltage transformer. We're going to need eight generators, so we're going to need eight rebatteries. We're going to need eight furnaces. And you know what? We're going to grab six of those, and then we're going to get rid of these two. We don't need them anymore. We're going to roll them into the creation of solar panels. And then we might have enough refined, but I'm going to grab a bit more refined iron. This is going to be pretty costly for us. This is going to cost us a lot here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We definitely didn't have enough, so I'm glad I did that. And it looks like we might have everything that we need now. Let's find out. First off, we'll create the generators and immediately did not do that correctly. Got my furnaces in here now, so we should be able to create eight generators. And then I think that's everything to create the eight solar panels. Nice. And again, each one of these will produce one EU, which is not useful. We're going to want to build the low voltage solar panel. Now we're ready to build this thing, <laughs> and then we're ready to build that thing. Yay! Now we can hook this up, and we can put it pretty much anywhere. I, I want to put it somewhere where it's going to have access to our bat box, but then again, how much longer is our bat box? Okay. Yeah, I can see now how that dirt thing can get a little out of, out of control. Uh, we're not going to have a bat box much longer? Hello. Lovely little creature. We're we're going to be we're going to be upgrading that in just a second, but I want to demo it and make sure that it works. So we're gonna put down a cable there, and then I guess we'll just plop that down right there. Oh gosh. What's happening? 
Did we run out of power in the bat box? I didn't even realize we did. Well, that is now providing power to this. And what do you know? By itself, it is able to maintain an electric furnace with one, two, three, <laughs> three upgrades. Not really. Two upgrades. Right at it looks like. So it's, it's a shame we don't have a lot more of them. That might be something we do in the future because the next level up is not that unobtainable. I think the real issue is going to be EMC costs because we ate into quite a bit of our EMC building that. And granted, we have a lot of leftovers here. So if I move all of the leftovers and uh, toss them back in here. Okay, not, not that bad. Still though, I mean, we have other things we want to build. We want to build Swift Wolf's Rending Gale. Now, I should note, when you right-click on it, you'll see here that there is a sun. And yeah, we can charge our tools in here, I believe. But we don't want to do that. We want the power going to the machine. But uh, once it gets dark, the amount that it outputs will decrease. I don't know if it goes all the way to zero. It might go down to one at night. But in any case, it will decrease. They don't have any of their own internal storage, I don't believe. Which is why you might want to create the upgraded, the advanced solar panel. Which does have internal storage, but also requires... Irradiant glass panes, which needs irradiant uranium, which needs enderpearl enriched uranium ingots, which, oh my gosh, we're getting into some weird territory here, aren't we? I don't, I'm not sure about all that. Maybe someday. But as an additional supplemental thing that will, even when we're not burning fuel, even when we're off not paying attention to what's happening at home, provided the chunks are loaded, it'll continue to charge things up. I think it's going to be useful. Speaking of, I was looking for a chunk loader or a world loader. We do have this here, which is the standard world spike, which we're going to go ahead and save just in case that's our only option. That's from Railcraft. Potentially we'll keep the world loaded. If you yourself know of any alternatives, let me know. But it definitely looks like that's going to probably be our only option if we want to keep home base loaded. I tried looking for things like uh, anchors as well and the like. I didn't see anything, but there could be something else that I'm just not remembering. Okay, well, we got cool new armor, we got cool new tools, and we got cool new solar power. But now we need to discuss getting an MFE, which is going to hold a lot more power than a bat box and also output a lot more power. And so before we even build that, we need to talk about what kind of cables we're going to be using. Because I don't know if copper cables can handle an MFE load. But I do know that copper cables lose charge over distance. And so we might want to replace them with glass fiber cables. There are other options. You know, we have high voltage cables, gold cables, and all kinds of insulated cabling. Glass fiber, though, is sort of the premier cable. And I think that's probably what we're going to end up wanting to use. I did math on this once to determine whether or not the two extra you get from using the recipe with silver was worth it compared to using redstone. And I think that the conclusion remains the same. No, it is not. Because you're only getting two more and silver has a much higher EMC value than redstone. But a glass fiber cable, very little power drop, if any. And it can hold massive amounts of electricity. They're expensive. That's probably the route we're going to go. So we need to build some of those. And then we also need to go ahead and build our transformers. So that we don't blow up our machines. And that's actually what we're going to do first. So I'm just over here. I'm grabbing some items that I know we're going to need. And then suddenly, the world inside the game decides to match the world outside the game. And there's now a storm coming through. And there's just a very loud wind. And... I feel at home <laughs> inside of Minecraft as well as out right now. I do love a rainy day. I love a rainy night. You can see it in my eyes. So we have three machines right now. We're going to want to build three of these transformer upgrades. And we do have some options here. We can use something called a base upgrade. This 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 will give us... Interesting. I, I, I don't think I've ever seen that recipe before. Oh, interesting. So if you just have a base upgrade... You can add four coolant cells and it'll give you an overclocker upgrade. And it looks like it can be used in place of a lot of things for upgrades. So I guess the idea is that instead of building a whole bunch of individual, very specific things, you can have a bunch of base upgrades and just use those in different recipes. That could be handy. What is a mining pipe? <laughs> what? Hold on. No, we've got a couple of those. Uh, you know what? This, this could be interesting. 
We're gonna give this a go. We're gonna we're gonna build one of these. It's an experimentation kind of day. We're just we're gonna roll with it and see where this gets us. So we do definitely have two copper cables. Oh, double insulated. I'm sorry, bronze cables. We don't we don't have any of those. Never had need for a double insulated bronze cable. I don't think I've ever built a bronzed cable. How do you double insulate these? I have I have a sneaking suspicion that it's gonna be yeah. Like that. So that'll give us five base upgrades. And then we can use those in this recipe. We do still need the MV transformers. But that's just going to be... Let me, let me, let me double check before I start creating this. That's going to be an MV transformer. Which does need a machine block. And then either double insulated bronze or double insulated gold. Double insulated bronze is going to be cheaper. So I reckon that's what we'll do. We'll make our three machine blocks... We will get... Did I say bronze? I said bronze, right? Yeah, double insulated bronze. It's not working. We all see this here, right? Oh, two of each. Well, the only issue there is that it will not allow that. It This, this crafting table is not going to allow me to stack items in such a way. I literally cannot craft these here. I'm sure I could do it from inside of the Philosopher's Stone. And in fact, just to double check and make sure... I guess we can go ahead and do that. So two and two and then one gets us an MV transformer. That is only one MV transformer, though. Well, I was anticipating this anyway. I figured we'd have to make gold cable. So that will give us 12 gold cable. <laughs> okay, game. And then two rubber will allow us to insulate that into double insulated gold either side of our machine block. We'll need that later on anyway for other projects, so I don't mind it. And finally, we can combine all of that with glass and the base upgrades to get our... Okay, all right. What? Ah, there we go. To get our transformer upgrades. And we can place this in here. I don't really think it matters where you put these inside of this machine. Oh, but you can't take them out once they're in there. This upgrade is locked. Press Alt key which is left menu, now we know, while clicking to get it out. All right, I had no idea. No, not in game? I'm doing that and it's not allowing it. I'm assuming it's like that because if you try to take it out after you put it in there and it's already hooked up to medium voltage, it will blow up your machines. So that's actually pretty clever. With those in place, I guess we can go ahead now and build our glass fiber cables. And we're only going to create uh, 16 of them. Just pop these out of here like so. And we'll replace them with these. I wish they didn't connect up. It creates this weird circle. I don't like it. I actually missed that one down there. Can I pick it up? No, you're gonna make me break all of these, aren't you? So that's our transformer. We need to stack those if we want to go to higher voltages, but I think one is plenty for an MFE. You'll remember me saying we would need more double insulated gold cabling in the future anyway, and this is why. We're also going to need in the machine block and then energy crystals, which are diamonds surrounded by redstone. That's where a lot of the cost of this is gonna come in because four diamonds is really eating into the very limited amount of EMC that we have, that we've arguably kind of wasted. I've made some strange decisions here, you know, building certain things that were unnecessary. We didn't need this armor, but we love it. Don't diss my armor, okay? I'm very happy with it. That's our machine block. And then how many gold insulated? Oh, perfect. Look at this. MFE. Now here's the deal. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong in that bat box. If, I, if, I'm, if I'm wrong, <laughs> and we put this down, and it blows up our machines, <laughs> it's going to be very inconvenient. But I think it's one transformer is all we need. I'll tell you what else we need. Is we need to pick up that bat box when she needs a wrench. But I don't want to risk breaking the bat box. I don't know if you can do that with a wrench, but I don't want to risk it. So we're going to make an electric wrench. I still don't know what a precision wrench is. It's completely lossless all of the time. That's what we're going to build then. I <laughs> The thing with the... Uh, so here's the deal. If you make the electric wrench, there you have to use a mode switch because there's a lossless mode. Otherwise, it works like a regular wrench, but instead of durability, it'll uh, you just need a charge. 
but you have to put it in lossless mode, and lossless mode uses a lot of energy. So every couple of machines you take down, you're going to have to charge it up, which would be inconvenient if what you just took down was your bat box, now you're out of power. This, though, always lossless? Completely? Yeah, we, we want that. Now, there's one snag here, which is in addition to an energy crystal, I just realized that this also requires an advanced circuit. Oh, we've got that. That's nothing. Okay, we've got all the things we need for that. We have lapis, and uh, we also have... I wasn't paying attention. It was either two lapis, oh, or it was two glowstone, or, or maybe four of each. But uh, we, we've got all of that. We're good to go. So we build our regular old electric circuit. Clean out our inventory, please. And then, from memory... That's not right. That's not right at all. Hold on. I think it was... Oh, why am I doing this? Let's just look up the recipe. That's way quicker. <laughs> Trying to do it all from memory. And then combine that with our regular wrench that we, we built last time, which is just bronze. Uh, and we combine it with an energy crystal, and that'll give us our precision wrench. And we can charge this bad boy up inside the bat box, even if we wanted to. That would be a better place to do it than inside of the the generator, because the bat box... Can I not... Uh, what? What? I need this charged, please. Where do I charge this thing? Where do I Where do I charge... Can I put it in a generator? No. It, it won't charge in a generator. What? How do you charge a precision wrench? Doubt. Um, how? Doubt. Um, how? Doubt. Um, how? Okay, welcome back to the game world. The storm is still going outside, but I think the power situation has more or less stabilized. Don't normally have brownouts or surges, so that's how you know there's a really big storm outside. Let's get back into the game and figure out more about the precision wrench. I've got it pulled up here on the wiki, and it says it's an upgraded version of the pre uh, wrench, an electric wrench has 30 lossless uses, which are only used if the machine otherwise would have been lost. That is activated by default and cannot be disabled. That's cool. And I'm not seeing anything in here about how you're supposed to charge it. Let's just make an electric wrench then. Get ourselves a regular wrench. And then we will make a regular... Oh, I always manage to do that. Regular electronic circuit. A re-battery... And then we'll put all that together to make a regular old electric wrench, which, in, in my opinion, is better because it can be charged. So I'm reading here, and apparently the electric wrench has a 10% loss reduction chance modifier. So 80% becomes 88% success drop rate. Uh, the fortune enhancement reduces loss rate by 3% per level. So if we get to fortune 3, we get 94.4201% that it will drop the correct item. Alternatively, the, the electric wrench has a lossless mode enabled by right-clicking while mode switch key is being held down. Maybe that's what we were doing wrong with the diamond drill this whole time. Oh yeah, hold down B and then right-click and that puts us into dirt mode. Oh yeah, that's way easier to control. So hold down B and right-click. Is it that much different though? Hold on, that's grass. Yeah, dirt's out of control. So hold B and right click again. That'll get us into dirt mode and that's, yeah, that's much more reasonable. All right, cool. So fill all that back in. We will come back here. We will hold down B and right click. And that puts us onto lossless mode and we can get our bat box out of there. Again, the I, there are some items in IC2 that can be broken or IC classic, whatever you prefer to call it. Uh, they can be broken with just a pickaxe without losing them and the bat box might be one of them, but I'm not actually sure. So we right click twice to get the bat box and then what do you think? Should we should we double ch should we check the wiki? Should we check the wiki on transformers? I've got the wiki open here. I can open up transformers. You know what? Let's just be confident. It's filling up. The machines have not yet blown up. But then again, they've not actually been tested as of yet either. So why is there a dirt hole here? It doesn't matter. Let's go ahead and dump some energy into here in the form of a big old block of Aeternalis fuel, which will burn for a very long time. And then we'll get this machine running with the crushed aluminum ore. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's, it's beautiful, folks. What, what we have happening here 
is absolutely incredible. First off, look how much energy this thing can hold. 600,000 EU. Now, we do still have the bat box, and we're going to hold on to that. Might be useful in recipes, might be useful just to have somewhere along the lines. But that means that, I mean, theoretically, let's go ahead and collect all of our, our upgrades that we've got here. So that gives us six of them, plus the two that are in here. <laughs> it's beautiful! It's beautiful! Look how fast it is! And it's able to maintain that speed because we can pull up to... What is it? Um, 128 EU per tick out of this machine. It's crazy. Look how fast it's done. It's just done. It just did it, and now it's done. Now, granted, we're, we're, now, we're now really low <laughs> on EMC. <laughs> we are so low. Uh, I still don't know what the precision precision wrench does, but we've got an electric wrench, and that's fine. Uh, we've got plenty of cables, so I'm going to put these things away right now. And then I'll tell you what I think I'm going to do. We've gone ahead and we've cleared out the the MFE. Got to get that, that, and that. The only two items left on our docket. We'll hopefully be able to make it till next time. We've got a static charge pad and a standard world spike. What I want to do right now, though, is go mining and, and hopefully find a bunch of really good stuff. Let's bring a destruction catalyst. That'll be handy. And then we'll go ahead and you know what? You know what can charge up our tools really quickly? Is if we put them inside of an MFE. Because the MFE has so much power in it. Uh, you know what? We should probably not leave, actually, without first off... Gotta make sure both of our generators have some fuel. So that one's gonna be going for a while, actually. We don't need to worry about it. We'll just get this one running next. So we got our chainsaw, we got our diamond drill, we got our destruction catalyst, and now we need torches as well. I'm going to head off into the mines, which is probably where, we are, where we will pick up next time. Thank you folks for watching. God bless you. And next time, we will... I gotta leave this on a proper tease. Oh, you know what? Hopefully next time, I'll have collected enough material that we can just build Swift Wolf's Rending Gale. And then we can start looking at stuff to build a house, like chisels and things of that nature. All right, bye. Howdy there, folks. How are you all doing? My name is Reese, and welcome back to our Tech It 2 Let's Play Adventure. This is episode four, if I'm not mistaken. And at the end of three, I said, we would resume in the mines, and I wasn't joking. Here we are in the mines where I've just tracked down a load of gold. Wow, four whole pieces. All right, maybe an exaggeration. I did find quite a few diamonds, though. Hopefully. The reason I say that is because there's these diamonds here, and this looks like a pretty good vein of diamonds. Looks like that's all of it, though. Didn't mean to do that. Didn't mean to be that aggressive. See, that's why you gotta be careful with the destruction catalyst. <laughs> if you're not paying attention to what level it's at, you could be in for a, a wild ride. But we got some more diamonds down here as well. This is probably the closest I've ever seen diamonds appear. That can't be true. That's, in fact, I don't know exactly, but I feel like I've definitely had a situation where I found them closer together than that. And in fact... Oh, there's more this way! See, this is what's fun about mining with these awesome gadgets like the Destruction Catalyst and the Divining Rod, but it's also what's dangerous because you might find yourself down here, and I'm going to show you when we leave here. I did see the diamonds. I just want to make sure... Okay, that's not what I meant to do. See, again, the Destruction Catalyst, very dangerous. There's more diamonds in that direction. All right, well, we have things to do outside of the mine today, so we're going to go ahead and grab whatever diamonds are here, and then we're going to try to find our way out through the absolute mess of tunnels, and, and I'll show you what I mean. But uh, we've got a lot planned for today. And, oh gosh, see, we're out of space in our inventory. That's why we've got an alchemical bag. What I've been doing is throwing the cobblestone into lava anytime I find it. But we've actually got a, a, a quite a selection of things up here that we're going to hopefully get to today, as well as something... This is a natural system that we came across. See, I'm, I'm lost. I've got to stop talking while I focus on getting us out of here. We might have just run by. I think this is the connecting tunnel. It's all a little bit of a mess. <laughs> I've just been basically following the diamond signature. Walk up. Does it say there's diamonds in this direction? And then we just go that way. And whether or not that's the direction we need to be, you know, I mean, we just get further and further. Sometimes we get closer and closer to the ladder. But it's led to 
I mean, it. imagine how long it would have taken to dig all of this out using a pickaxe. Even a very powerful one. Just imagine how much time it would have taken. And we got all this done in no time at all. Here we go. We didn't actually have to go that way. I know for a fact that had I been paying attention, this also connects up to here. Because, again, you just you zigzag back and forth. You're following that diamond signature. Like I say, though, I think last time... I, it might have been episode two, I said we were going to upgrade our machines to automatically import and export, and we didn't get around to that, but we're going to do that this time, and I am particularly determined to do that because I've been down here many times, I've come back up with loads and loads of inventories full of items, and I've had to stand around and wait for them to process, and it's not fun, it's not fun at all, it's a pain in the neck, and I don't want to do it anymore. So we need to get some level of automation going. And I know there's going to be a bit of a hiccup. There's something else I wanted to talk about. And I meant to talk about this at the start of the last episode because that's when it should have been addressed. I'm sure some of you noticed it as well. And you probably had questions and you wanted to know, Reese, why didn't you not point this out? Folks, this is where a creeper blew up. And I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I meant to address it at the top of the last episode. And then I completely forgot. Yeah, that's why all of this is the way that it is. Hopefully that answers any of your burning questions. But now I will demonstrate to you why it is so important to automate these machines. Because look at this. We've got some gold in there from my last trip down there. But if I want to throw copper in there and then wait on that to cook up. Well, now I've just got all these other random blocks that I just have to wait. I just have to wait till it's done with the copper. This has cost me a lot of time. Oh, something else I should point out is that uh, even though we've got two generators... Uh, this one's not currently going, but it's been going in the past. Even though we have two generators and a solar panel, that is not enough to keep these machines running with more than four overclocker upgrades each. I know this because I made five new overclocker upgrades. I meant to make four so that each machine could have six, and then I overshot and went to five. But it doesn't actually work. It, it draws too much power. And the issue is not that our MFE can't output enough power, it's that we're not producing enough power. So once the MFE runs out, we're, we're sort of in a, a bad situation. So today, we are not going to be addressing that particular issue. We're more so focused on building import and export upgrades so that these things can be automated. Maybe adding energy storage upgrades so that the machines themselves can act as their own um, battery boxes, their own bat boxes more or less. Swift Wolf's Rending Gale is the thing that we really want to get to. And folks, we could do that right at the top of the episode. Because if you have a look in here, we've got enough EMC to do it already. When we add 15 diamonds to the mix, that's only going to get us a bit closer. So I'm trying to very delicately maneuver through here and get the items that we can turn to EMC. Oh my gosh, look at that! Oh yeah, see, we're going to be doing great. Again, if you're not mining with a divining rod and a destro, <laughs> that's a fully loaded destruction catalyst. Let's actually, you know what? Let's get rid of that right now at the top of the episode, because I don't think we're going to be doing any more mining. But we'll let all of this continue to process kind of in the background. And then while that's happening, we will go ahead and make Swift Wolf's Rending Gale so that we can fly as though we were in creative. So what are we going to need for this? First off, iron band. Lava, bucket, surrounded by iron. So let's go ahead and get the iron that we're going to need. We're also going to need a lava bucket, and I don't have one of those. We're going to just get a regular old bucket and then head down to the mine. See, if I was forward thinking, I would have done this while we were down there before the start of the episode. And if I cared about looking like I knew what I was doing, what I would do is I would stop the episode. I would go down in the mine, I would get the lava, and then we would restart the episode. And I would say, well, how do you And we'd do the whole intro again. But it's okay. It's all right. You know, you folks, you should know that I'm not perfect. You can see that I, too... Have my kryptonites. Forgetfulness is the, the main one. Maybe not forgetfulness. Maybe not preparedness. Not planning aheadedness. One of those two. I did plan ahead, though. I've got a whole list of things that I want to do this episode. Things that I need to address with you folks. And so, I, I don't know. I don't know what my flaw really is. Maybe my one weakness is that I care too much. At least that's what it says on my resume. See, I can't wait till we get to building. So we can build a pop proper staircase. Or, is there an elevator? In this pack? Okay, well, we do have elevator track. That's not exactly what I had in mind. Maybe a lift? Okay, well, we know that there's teleporters. There's got to be teleporters. Yeah, the industrial craft ones. Very expensive to manufacture. Very expensive to operate. They use a lot of power. 
So probably not going to be using one of those. Ooh, a void ring! See, this would be helpful for mining, actually, but it's remarkably expensive. And by the time we have one and a half million EMC to throw around, we're not going to be manually mining anything. You can hold me to that! You can hold me to that! You remember that comment, folks! And if it ends up happening, uh, what can I say? I, I make mistakes. Sometimes I just say things. Let's teach the lava bucket to the transmutation table, and we'll never have to do that again. And then we will get our iron band, and listen. EMC is the currency of this world, and we need to make sure that we not only have a healthy bank account, but also we have a store that is fully stocked. And to do that, man, everything you make, everything you make, always make sure you throw it in there so that you can get it again later, because we might want to make more rings. Now, this is going to require a dark matter block or a block of diamond. So, oh, <laughs> we're making dark matter. So you're not going to have a dark matter block. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, sorry. That, uh, <laughs> we're gonna need eight Aeternalis fuel and nine diamonds. The nine diamonds will make our block of diamonds, and then we will surround that. I'm sorry, I'm in a giddy mood. I'm in an excited mood. I've not been this excited to be playing a new mod pack in a while, and this is such a good one. I'm having a really good time with it. So now we're going to need feathers and more dark matter. So this is going to be a large chunk of our EMC gone, but not as much as I thought, not as much as I feared. I guess I could have done, you know, basic math and realized that we were going to be fine. Actually, we're kind of where we were at the end of the last episode, and we're going to have more EMC by the time we're done slowly processing all of the things in my inventory. So there we go. Swift Wolf's Rending Gale. On a pedestal, it shoots lightning at nearby mobs. <laughs> That's cool. Not really what we want, though. We want it for flight. Now, it has to be on our personage. I don't think we have a place to keep it. I wonder if it works if we keep it there. No. No, it does not. It has to be at least in our inventory, and it might even have to be on our hot bar. There we go. So, much like the Destruction Catalyst, this will consume EMC. Uh, in this case, or at least it's supposed to. Actually, I think in Tekka Classic it was bugged so that it didn't. But it definitely should here if we fly around with it. So what are we on right now? 368? Let's go ahead and zoom a bit and we'll see whether or not it consumes any. I'm not sure what the actual consumption rate is. Yeah, 6304. So it is consuming the EMC. So you got to be mindful of that. If it runs out, it should work. And I keep saying this, but I don't think I've ever demonstrated it. If you have some sort of fuel in your inventory, like let's say coal, get a couple pieces of coal, We'll leave our Klein Star behind. Yeah. It should run off of the coal. If I take the coal out of our inventory and it runs out, will we just, like, crash to the ground? Yes, we will. See, I'm glad I didn't zoom forward. Put that away, get our Klein Star back out, and go ahead and fill it up again. But now, so long as we have Swift Wolf's Rending Gale in our inventory, we have the power of creative flight, which is going to be fantastic for us. Meanwhile, back over here, we're still dealing with the old school method of managing items inside of machines, which is doing it by hand. And it's time to stop doing that. It's time to get a basic export and a basic import upgrade. Except, there's a catch! I was checking the basic import upgrade and noticed it required a sticky piston, which requires slime or sticky resin. So there actually isn't a, uh, 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 there actually, uh, uh, there actually isn't a catch. I was going to be like, oh, we don't have slime. We can't make one of these and then reveal the sticky resin as an alternative. And then I just kind of neglected to do that. So there goes all of my plans. Now we have not built, well, no, we have built a piston before, haven't we? Earlier on, I can't remember what for, but I'm pretty sure we did. Well, we're going to build another one now because we don't have one inside of here, I don't believe. And then we're going to actually get two of them because we want to make... Actually, let's get a few because we're going to need some import and export upgrades for at least two of our machines. And then in addition to that, we're going to need some sticky resin. Again, at least two. I didn't notice if these upgrades had... They do not have an EMC value. So we're going to have to make them both manually. And then we also need some base upgrades as well as some redstone torches. Now, a redstone torch is yet again something that we have not built before but something that we can assemble quickly and get a near infinite number of i guess we need four total 
Now you'll notice that there was a couple of different options for these upgrades. One is this recipe, which requires two electronic circuits, a bunch of copper ingots, a mining pipe, or if you have a base upgrade, you can do that. Now I made a bunch of base upgrades because I used them when I manufactured all of these extra overclocker upgrades that we can't currently use because we are not producing enough electricity. It's getting dark. Let's not even worry about sleeping. Well, it we won't be producing as much energy at night. I was going to say it doesn't matter because we've got a chainsaw and actually now that we can fly, we should probably let it get dark because we need to fight an enderman so that we can get at least one ender pearl and then we can EMC up some more ender pearls in the future. So I suppose actually we'll do that. Anyway, like I was saying, we can manufacture these using basic ingredients and the base upgrade, which can be constructed as such. And we're actually gonna be saving some materials because this would require two electric circuits otherwise, as opposed to the one that is in the base upgrade. So the base upgrades are fantastic. And we're, got, we're going to move these objects up here so they'll automatically be pulled from our inventory. And like I say, we want two of the exports and then also two of the imports. Oh, but we didn't actually make the sticky pistons. So we will make one of those and then two of them and then realize that we only needed to make one because EMC. It's the currency of the world, folks. It's the currency of the world. And we can combine that also with the base upgrades. I should have made more of them, actually. Uh, was there a recipe for using base upgrades? Yes, there was. Yes, there absolutely was. Uh, we want to make energy storage upgrades so that machines can store energy. I think we talked about that already, actually, now that I think about it. Anyway, that is our basic export and our basic import. And oh boy, have I had trouble with these in the past, but hopefully things will go better for us today. Now, we could build some regular chests. But what if we did something a little bit different instead? See, I've been planning on upgrading our chest game for a while. Even though we don't have much need for chest because everything can be stored in the transmutation table, we do still have some items that require chest and a double chest. <laughs> that chicken. <laughs> it's phasing through the lid. Uh, the double chest takes up way too much space. We can shrink that down to half if we got serious about things here. So if we surround this chest with iron, we can get an iron chest. And the iron chest is cool, because the iron chest is like a double chest that you only need one single solitary square for. But what if we took it even further, and we did something really wacky? Like, we took that iron chest and we surrounded it with gold to get a golden chest, which is like an iron chest, but bigger. And then what if we took that concept and we went even wackier with it? Because folks, believe you me, we can. If we have a look at uses for this by tapping U, Glass and diamonds will get us the diamond chest, and then we can surround that with obsidian to make the obsidian chest, which is nigh-on indestructible. Also, if your computer's a bit of a beefcake and you want to stretch its technological prowess, you can surround it with the glass to make a crystal chest where you can actually see what's inside of it, which is kind of cool, but also kind of wild. I don't know how I feel about that one, actually. Uh, let's go ahead and grab the glass, and then I think what we're going to do is we're going to make the diamond and then the obsidian chest because then it'll be indestructible. And I mean, as you've seen, we've already had issues with creepers blowing things up once already, and I don't know if we really want to risk that again. So, did we even show you the inside of the golden one? Yeah, well, there's the diamond one. And then I don't believe it gets any bigger with the obsidian. I think it just gets destruction-proof, and it looks cool. And it does look cool. Come on, you gotta admit that it looks cool. So we'll teach that to the system. It has a pretty hefty EMC value of 28,000, but my goodness, look at that. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So while this charges up in here, we'll come back over here, break these chests, plop this sucker down. Excuse me, you're very much in my way right now. I hope that you realize that. You probably do realize that. You probably realize it and you think it's funny, don't you, you little chicken? Sorry, I don't know why I was getting so frustrated. Now, we could make obsidian chests for all of our chest needs, but that might get a bit ridiculous, and I think we'll just stick to iron chests for right now. Okay, so here goes the tricky part. You'll notice that we made the basic import and export upgrades. I think the difference between these and the regular ones, because there is a regular, it's just called the import upgrade and export upgrade, is that these pull one item at, at a time, as opposed to the upgraded ones, which I think do entire stacks. But the upgraded ones also consume energy. These will not. Now, I think we have to program these in a way... And I'm trying to remember how it works. So if we look at this, it says north. So if we right click on it, set direction to south. 
<laughs> okay. And then if we shift right click on it, it'll do the opposite. So I think the way that this works is we want this to pull items out of this iron chest right here. And then we're going to put another one on top of it. Uh, although we should probably actually take that one down because we need to be able to right click on the top of this thing. So yeah, I didn't really think that one through. Get that out of there and we'll just break that real quick. So, yeah, see, this is how the fence got blown up. This happened, and I didn't realize that it happened. Oh, gosh! See, even that time, I knew it was about to happen. I thought the chainsaw would one-shot him. I don't know. It, it works on animals. Creeper Chainsaw Massacre. What achievement. Yeah, okay, anyway, I'm sorry. I keep getting distracted. We need to stay focused here. We want this to, with, uh, with this basic import upgrade, we want it to import from a chest that's over here. Which I think means we right-click, set direction to south. Does that mean- no, 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 no. Set direction to north. So shift right-click, and that means that a chest to the north, it'll automatically pull items out of. Possibly, we'll find out. So we'll go ahead and take that basic import upgrade, we'll plop it down, well, we'll put it right there, why not? And then, oh! Oh, we're running out of room for upgrades. It didn't even occur to me that we wouldn't have enough room to add an import and export upgrade, as well as then also adding a a, uh, um, a, a storage upgrade for energy. So, hmm, well we might be able to get away with using hoppers. In any case, that is currently set up. Let's get some ore. Do I not have any? Oh, there it is, aluminum ore. And so we'll do our testing. We will put that inside of here. And it automatically got imported. Okay, yeah. So if I want a chest on top, I'll get on top, I'll look down. Basic export upgrade will hold down shift and right click, and it says direction two up. Then we will put that inside of here. We will put down another iron chest on top. Hmm. Just to confirm though, the input does work, and it works wonderfully. Oh! Oh? Oh! Oh, it might only work with things that have just been processed. Wait, oh, that's a butterfly. Sorry, I heard a zombie dying, and then I saw a butterfly, and I got panicky. So let's throw aluminum ore in there, and let's watch it. It might not have exported it before, because it had already finished it. And it might only export finished items. Oh? Oh. So it exported one of them. And it exported one of them. <laughs> wait, wait, what? <laughs> it's only exporting half of the items. Why? <laughs> Why is that what's happening? Oh no. <laughs> okay, well, you know what? I feel pretty confident that I get the general idea so we can set it up thusly. So we've got our basic import. We're gonna shift right click there and uh, we'll put down our chest. We'll put in our basic import and we'll, we'll put in the tin dust. Oh no! What did I do wrong now? Oh, that's the compressor. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, all right. Goodbye, compressor. Store all of that inside of here for now. Basic import upgrade. Shift right click there. It's okay, so it's going to pull items in to the south. Shift right click up here. Send items to the north. We will put down our two iron chests. We will put in our two upgrades. Take out that iron. Uh, we'll swap those around for no particular reason, and then if we put in the tin dust, the tin dust should automatically get pulled into here, be processed, and be automatically put out the top. So that's working. You, though. Why? We might have to make the full fat export upgrade. Now, fortunately, we can use a basic export upgrade to build the super export upgrade that will consume electricity. I don't know how much power that consumes, but... That's unfortunate. Alternatively, something else we could do is we could come over here. Oh, good. We've already got some iron. Uh, I think we might need one more iron, and then we also need... Our, no, you know what? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I think it's actually five. And then we also need a chest. Because we're going to build a hopper. Which is so much more simple and straightforward and universally uh, loved and appreciated. Oh, I should aluminum over there. 
and we might just be able to use that. See, a hopper was my alternative plan all along because we need, if, if, if it's going to take up all of our upgrade slots, right? And what we really want to do is we really want to have the energy storage upgrade as well. So if we can use a hopper on the top here to feed items in automatically, which we don't know yet if that'll work. But uh, yes, it does work. But what if we take out the... Yeah, okay. All right, so that's good. So that will work automatically. Uh, happy to see that. So we're going to need a re-battery and some of these advanced circuits that we have built before. So fortunately, not a difficult recipe. Let's see whether or not this fixes our problem. So once again, we're going to do... Well, we're going to do import from this side now instead of export. So excuse me, butterfly. Butterfly, if you wouldn't mind. You, you, okay, you know what? I'm going to put this... You're, you're literally in my... Wow! That is one sturdy creature that takes two whacks from a chainsaw. I feel bad about that, but it really left me with no choice. We've got our export upgrade there. Let's find out, first off, whether or not I set that up correctly. So, that should do, I believe, a stack of 64 in one go, which means that it should easily handle the two that we get from this machine. I feel like it should work with a basic export. I feel like that's a bug that it's not. Because sure, it can only take one item at a time, but it should take the next item. Unless I'm doing something wrong here. I don't think it requires any sort of redstone signal or anything like that. But this works, and this is fine. You know, that little bit of extra power it's consuming is not that big a deal. And we still have room left over for our energy storage upgrade. So we're actually going to do the same with this machine because, again, energy storage upgrade. So we'll want to take out the, the basic export, which works on this machine because it only ever outputs one item at a time. And we'll set that to export to the south. Well, I've shreked up there. Export to the south, I believe is what we want. And then we'll put it in here. Now, I could connect these so that they automatically, you know, items that are dumped into this chest are sent into this machine instead. We could just move the electric furnace to be next to the macerator. They don't need to be either side of a generator anymore. That's largely unnecessary. Uh, I'm not gonna do that though, mostly because I don't feel like it. It's also handy to not have them automated because sometimes there are some things that you wanna macerate but then not cook up or things that you wanna cook up and you don't want you know the, the hopper to be filled with macerated items. You know, It's nice to have a little manual control in some regards. Hey, the export's not working. That's because that's an import upgrade. That That's probably why. Set that one up. Put that one in there. And now it's working. Good. Oof, what do we want to do next? I'll tell you what, we're going to continue with upgrades and then we're going to finish off with objects that I need to do my home renovation. We're going to build two of these. So we'll need two re-batteries. And then uh, we would need an electric, uh, electronic circuit and copper cables. But because we already have basic upgrades, again, super simple recipe. Uh, you can't go wrong with either of these unless you do the one with silver ingots because that'll cost you more EMC in the long run than the one with the copper. Because the copper just costs a lot less uh, than silver does. I guess this, this mod wasn't necessarily built with the idea that you would have EMC and you'd be confronted with, with that sort of an obvious choice. But there we go. Two energy storage upgrades. So this should increase the amount of storage. And I completely forgot to, to hunt for Endermen last night. I completely forgot about that. There we are. So big energy storage upgrades. According to the GitHub page for this mod, each of those shouldn't increase the internal storage of each of these machines by 10,000. EU, which is useful. And that's not European unions, my friends. So I'm going to put a obsidian in there. And we're going to find out whether or not obsidian dust has an EMC value. I don't know what I would need obsidian dust for, but I know that in the past I've needed obsidian dust as part of industrial craft as it happens. So we'll just hang on to that. And now I am going to go with my pork and hunt for endermen. And we will resume normal episode things. Oh, I need a Klein star. There it is. Don't don't know how it ended up in that chest. We are on the hunt for an Enderman. Oh. Looks like the portal caught on fire. Oh. Oh, interesting. It's got it's got like Goku hair. 
Um. <laughs> our ender, our ender portal, our ender portal has gotten edgy. Hey, now's a good time to demonstrate how good our armor is, because I've fallen in the lava a couple of times. Look how, look how it just tanks that damage. It's pretty decent. It's, it's helped me survive a lot. Oh gosh, there's a lot of things over here following me now. I'm kind of curious about, uh, let's, let's go cool off in the river if we can. Because being on fire, even though we're going to survive it, it's kind of unbearable. There we go. It's very loud. It's very annoying. Do we need to go to the, to the, to the nether? And find out if there's something weird going on in there? Let's not. You know, the last time I was doing a Tech It series and the, the nether portal started changing, it was bad stuff. Let's avoid it. I'm sure it's nothing. It might be part of the mod pack. We never know. It never. It could be part of some sort of nether upgrade. Anytime you build a nether portal, it just automatically starts to expand and sp spit out lava. Well, it doesn't matter. Right now, we're looking for Endermen. The issue is I'm not seeing any Endermen. And I know that even if I do find one, there's there's a likelihood that it won't drop an Ender Pearl. It it seems like every time I start a new mod pack, the first Enderman I kill just has no Ender Pearls for me, which would be an unfortunate state of affairs. Oh, you know what? Oh, I was gonna say we should equip our shield if we're gonna be doing uh, combat with with an Enderman, but I don't have my shield, and I guess we don't really need it. We've got really decent armor on. I sort of ditched our Talisman of Repair because. Both of our tools are now energy-based, but now that I think about it, we should probably hold on to it for the armor, because the armor does have durability. We've gone pretty far afield here now, if you have a look at our map by pressing M. We're a ways away from- oh, well, you know what, we should probably put down a marker or something. Oh, we can put down a waypoint. Oh wait, can we teleport? What? Oh my gosh, I'm assuming that's because we have cheats on. I turned cheats on at the start of the series so that I could uh, fly into the air and get pictures and things for thumbnails, which we used, I think, in the first episode, and then never again, because every other thumbnail... Oh, there we go, an Enderman. That's kind of cool, though. We, we still need to put a mark down on where our home is, and maybe we'll have to set up a rule about using that because it's a bit broken. We should attack it with the chainsaw. That's the tool we should actually be using for this. Come here, you. Hold still. Gosh, it's so fast! Where is it? Okay, we're gonna have to just land and kill everything. Stop it! Yeah, see, they didn't drop anything, as expected. Come here, you nasty! Oh, I was pitched combat, and still nothing. At least I don't think. Yeah, nothing. Oh, darn it, the sun is coming up. Oh, come on! That was an entire night and we found two Endermen? I don't really need Ender Pearls for anything in particular. Uh, I just know that we will need them in the future, and I was trying to be mindful of the fact that when it gets dark, it's a good time to go Enderman hunting. We got a good chainsaw, we got some decent armor, we need to get that knocked out, but never mind, I guess. Uh, something we were going to do before I got distracted by the fact we could teleport was open this up. Right click, new waypoint, home base, and we're going to give it the color of Howdy Folks, which is kind of blue, not that blue. Not really that blue either. That'll do, though. And we want it to appear in the overworld and nowhere else. Oh, gosh, we can change the icon. Oh! Okay, this is fun. Which one of these says home? Oh, that I mean, that one's literally a house. So I guess that one says... It's so small! It's so small! There, there, has, to, there has to be a way to change that. Max distance... Death points... Options... All right, well, I mean, really... Whatever, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna make another arguably unneeded one for the nether portal. And you folks let me know whether or not you think using the right click teleport to is cheating. And I will decide whether or not I'll use it in this series based on your feedback. Oh, that'll get annoying, won't it? <laughs> that'll that that's gonna It's gonna grate on me probably. If we go on M waypoints, we can disable this waypoint. There we go. I'll leave the portal one open. So that is the energy storage upgrade out of the way. I think we're still going to be mining manually for a little bit. So the alchemical bag is a bag that holds a lot of things. We have to build an alchemical chest in order to build it first. And the alchemical chest was the chest I was talking about where you can place inside of it a 
talisman of repair or repair talisman and it'll automatically repair tools that are inside of it so that's a potentially useful thing to have so the recipe is pretty straightforward it is one of every type of covalence dust a diamond two iron a chest and two stone to build the alchemical chest and the alchemical chest can also just be used as a storage chest it's not in my i don't okay it, it's pretty big i think it Ooh, is it bigger or smaller we'll have to do math okay I've got the numbers for you. I did counting and then basic arithmetic. So this chest has a 9 by 12 grid, whereas this one has an 8 by 13 grid. That means that the total storage size is 108 for this chest and 104 for this chest. But here's the kicker. One of these is much cheaper. So obviously the obsidian chest will be more than the diamond chest. But the diamond chest is still 28,405 EMC, whereas the alchemical chest is a mere uh, 9,000. Where is it? Hold on. I didn't actually put it in there. Let's break that sucker. Uh, 8,987. So it is not quite as dense by four additional storage spaces. That, literally, that's it. But it's so much cheaper. It might make more sense economically to have these instead. But is it blast proof? I don't actually know. We're all going to find this out together. Let's get that. Let's get a button. Let's go test it. It's the sort of thing we do in the mines, isn't it? It's where we tend to blow things up. So we got our chest. TNT. Button. It is blast resistant. Can confirm. It's funny because that's not even what we built it for. Uh, we blew up a segment of ladder just then. We built it so that we could use it as a stepping stone to the bag, which is going to require more high covalence dust, as well as white wool. Now, there are other options. We can actually make it any old color we want to, if we wanted to have something more fun or festive, but I don't really care. White looks nice and clean. Could be brown. Could be green. Doesn't matter to me. We're going to combine our alchemical chest with some wool and some high covalence dust to get the bag. And it does have a value, which is handy. So inside of our inventory, look at that. That's going to make mining and collecting items when we're on the go so much nicer, so much easier, so much. Let's get more stone. I don't know why. So when we go back into the mines, we'll have that going for us. Now, there's three more items up here, and I didn't really intend to build either the first or second item. So the first item that we have up here is the static charge pad, which will charge items that have uh, the use electricity that use EU that are in our inventory. I don't really want one or need one at the moment. Uh, we don't use them enough to justify it. I can just throw them in the MFE if I need a charge. We also have the standard world spike, which I think will... Uh, redstone will be disabled, but it will load chunks to keep, I guess, everything else going, which could be useful. And I didn't really plan on building one, but I guess we might as well and just test it. Oh! Oh! Oh, we did need an ender pearl for something. I knew it. I knew it. I guess we won't build one of those then. Well then, on to building the chisel. It is literally... <laughs> All right, it's, it's, it's iron and it's a stick. So we're going to go ahead and build the chisel. The chisel has durability, so it will break when used too much, which means you might want to create the upgraded version or alternatively... Just make sure that you either have a transmutation table to get lots more of them, or make sure you get yourself a talisman of repair. Alternatively, if you have a diamond, you can create the upgraded version, which also has some benefits to it. Uh, nothing that's really applicable to us and what we're going to be doing with it, but it has some advantages. For example, if we had some stone... Oh, wait a minute. We do have some stone. It's inside of here. If we had some stone and we placed that down, we could right-click it with the chisel, uh, shift right-click it, left-click it, that's the ticket, to change it to a type of chiseled stone. And there's actually many different options in here, but as you can tell, it does require that you click them all individually, whereas this bad boy here, check this out. Oh, actually, we have to open the UI for that, and I guess you should demo that as well. Hold down shift and right-click, and that brings up your chisel UI. You can put your blocks in there, pick a block that you like, and then click. We now have 10 stone bricks from stone. Very handy. This one, though. Shift right click. What is this? You can choose to have your chisel work in a 3x3 square of blocks 
or a row, and then we can convert all of these beneath us with a single left click to make them mossy, make them cracked, make them chiseled, make them chiseled differently. Even more differently chiseled, we can turn them into bricks, it looks like. That looks like a fine brick foundation. That looks like, like, a, like a nice driveway, actually. So that is useful if you have blocks on the ground that you would like to convert in some manner. I want to get them back to something that is EMC-able, which would just be regular stone. What am I do What am I wasting my time on here? I can just collect these, and then I can do it inside of the UI. And I really had no intention whatsoever of making the diamond one when the iron one exists and works fine. But now that we have the diamond one, we might as well use it. And that is everything that we needed to get started on the great house re Th that is so concerning over there now like i am i am so concerned about that get my ring back down here there's so many random objects we're carrying around with us now it's a bit of a disaster but that is everything we needed now so that i can build my awesome house i have the ability to fly i have the ability to make really cool looking blocks it's time to no longer live out in the open it's time to build a really cool looking base and we're going to do that next time Thank you folks for watching. God bless each and every one of you. And I'll see you later. Bye! Just kidding. We're not going anywhere yet. I'm determined to kill an Enderman and get an Enderpearl before we end this episode. You dirty little devil loading in a massive hole in the world. You know that I have... I'm risking a lot coming out here. What if the game crashes and takes my world with it? Some kind of invisible barrier back there. I can't even reach him. Where, why am I attacking him with that? There's so many spiders! We still don't have our shield for some reason. Why didn't I bring our shield? Not that it would help, because I'm, I'm attacking with every swing. There we go, he's dead. Still didn't drop anything, did he? <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh my gosh, is there a, a better volcano? Right over here? Because it kind of looks like there's just a better volcano. Unreal. I feel like a madman just puttering around with a running chainsaw. Looking specifically for Enderman. Come here, you. Come here. Got him! We got him, boys! We got him! We even killed the creeper by accident! Not even paying attention anymore! Let's get out of here! Okay. Ender Pearl. Nice. What else do I need for the standard world spike? We need an Ender Pearl. We need four gold. We need two diamonds. And we need two obsidian. And that'll give us the standard world spike. Now, I don't know how many chunks this loads. I don't know if this requires power. I don't even know if this thing works. Oh, so it needs fuel. World spike fuel. That's interesting. What kind of fuel does it... I mean, will it take Mobius? Or I'm sorry. Uh, uh, yeah, Mobius. No, it won't. I wonder if it needs some sort of exotic fuel. Well, all right. We can't use it. But we did build it. At the end of the day, that's what matters. Comment down below if there's a better one. Till next time. Thank you, folks, for watching. For real this time. God bless each and every one of you. And I'll see you next time. Bye. Howdy there, folks. How are you all doing? My name is Reese, and welcome back to our Take It To Let's Play It. Whoa! Howdy folks, that is right, we have the Pure BD Craft Pack installed. I was getting a lot of comments from folks asking if I could, why I wasn't, if I knew how to use this resource pack, because of course it is classic. Everyone used this in their Tekken Classic, Tekken Main, Tekken Legends Let's Plays, myself included. I even have tutorials for all of those showing you how to get it installed, but I was being a bozo and I couldn't find it. But uh, if we pause the game and hop out here real quick, it's actually been out for as long as the pack came out on the 27th of August. And uh, you've got your patch here, and you have the actual base Pure BD Craft. you got to have both of these. I will put a link to each in the description of this video. Just download the patch and the base Pure BD Craft, and then you can install those in your resource folder, enable both of them, and look at this. It looks absolutely stunning. I, this, this, <laughs> this is fantastic. I love this so much. This is what Tekkit is to me. This is what it looks like. This is what it feels like. Now, 
I did notice that there was an update, and one of my subscribers, I believe it was GSNL, even commented on my video saying that it was a shame that uh, they got rid of some of the EMC value in the, the patch. So that's the 1.0.1 patch. Some of the items, I think, either had their values removed or changed. I wouldn't know, because every time I've tried to start a world in 1.0.1, it crashes and says that uh, Matmos, or M. Atmos, is at to blame. I haven't figured out what the cause of that crash is or how to fix it. If you know and would like to comment down below and, and help me out, I would appreciate it. I'm going to try again after today's episode. But I wanted to hop in and record today's episode. Just ignore everything happening over there. And just show that, yeah, hey, you are all correct. The Pure BD Craft, or Sfax, as it used to be known, is available. And it does look lovely. I need to make a tutorial, I guess, for how to get this all set up. I recorded one, it was terrible, so I scrapped it, I need to try it again. But, without any further ado, because we've opened up with a lot of to- Oh, this is what our armor looks like now. Okay, I wonder if the shield is any smaller. Probably not, because that wouldn't really make sense for the shield to shrink from a texture pack. No, it's still massive. It's still obscenely massive, we'll hold on to it. And in fact, you know what we'll do, is we're, we're gonna put that inside of here. And you know what else we can do? I'm pretty sure if we put the repair talisman in here, and then we put in objects that can be repaired, like the diamond chisel. I think it'll repair them inside of our alchemical bag, or else I'll probably end up accidentally referring to it, the bag of holding. If I put Swiftwolf's Rending Gale in there, can I still fly? <laughs> of course not. What a silly question. Well, we've got that now, and uh, I suppose we should test my theory. Let's go ahead and grab maybe some stone, and then we will convert... You know what? Let's do, let's do regular stone. We'll use this, so hold down shift and right click, to convert it all into stone bricks. So that damaged that a little bit. Well, if we throw it in here, will it recover over time with the repair talisman? Maybe. I don't know. We'll find out. In the meantime, I did say that today I wanted to focus on building a big, beautiful house, a base, a factory, something. And that is what we are going to do. We have pretty much everything we need for it. We've got Swift Wars Rending Gale. We have got our chisel, which is going to help us make beautiful blocks, and also that is not being repaired over time, so maybe I'm crazy, and I don't know what I'm talking about. It is working now, though. Possibly it was working and just taking a really long time. Who can say, really? Who, who knows what's going on? Now, there is one more thing I wanted to build before I get started on construction, and that is sort of the inverse of the destruction catalyst. It is the mercurial or mercurial, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, uh, I, and this is cool. It basically acts as a crafting wand on steroids. Speaking of which, is there one of those in this pack as well? We do have the ender offset wand, but I have a feeling that's not exactly what I'm looking for. This though will allow us to place blocks in large fields and plains and make building large structures easier. I don't know if I'll actually end up using it a lot, because I don't think I'm going to build a very big house, and I think there's going to be a lot of meticulous, detailed building, but it's definitely worth building. It's uh, red matter, though, is the only catch. This thing is very, very expensive, and we do not have enough EMC to build it. So why even mention it? Well, I just wanted you folks to know that it existed. That's not true. I intended to build it. I just didn't check the price before. <laughs> All right, my mistake. <laughs> okay, well, you know what we can build is frames. This is sort of, this is from call, uh, this is from a mod called Blog Craftery, which is sort of like carpentry blocks, and you can build a framed block using sticks, so really basic recipe, and then you can use those blocks to build stairs, to build slabs, to build uh, slants, to build all kinds of interesting things. Uh, even, well, that's a reinforced framed fence. I, I don't know if that's different than any other type of fence. I, that's the only type of fence I see. Why is it reinforced? Why is it not just a basic framed fence? Who can say, honestly? If we type in at and then block craftery, uh, we can actually see everything that this mod has to offer. And yeah, look, there are regular framed fences. So I guess maybe reinforced are just more durable, maybe explosion proof. I'm not entirely sure, but... There's a lot of really cool potential here. And apparently it just requires iron nuggets to create the framed version. And as of right now, these all have EMC values. Again, apparently some things have changed in the 1.0.1. And I don't know what those changes might be, as I, again, cannot get it to launch because of the bug. But we're going to go ahead and mess around with these a little bit. 
and we're going to potentially be using them in our construction. So that's a regular block. And then a framed block is similar, just with nuggets. So what can you do with these? Well, if you place one down, you got that. But then you can get silly with it. So we're going to get a block of diamond here. And what we can do is we can put that block of diamond in there. That's a bad example because that's just a block. You can just put down a block of diamond. Do you know what you can't make, though? is you can't make a block of diamond stair. Disregard that, that was a mistake. You can't make a block of diamond stair, but you can using this mod. How cool is that? And then you can shift right click to get your block back out, uh, assuming you have a free hand. There we go. I also got glowstone because at least with carpenter's blocks, yeah, you can add glowstone to these and they will emit their own light. So you can make a floor out of either the reinforced or the regular framed blocks, fill each individual block with a single piece of glowstone dust, and then your floor will be its own light source. Cool. And the chainsaw is great for breaking these. I assume an axe would work as well. I don't know if the characteristics change with a different type of block in it. They do not. I guess the real question on everyone's minds now is uh, which is better for surviving a TNT explosion? So I suppose we'll do the classic explosion test. That is classic because we've done it twice now, and that's that's pretty much it. And in fact, one time, it, we weren't even testing the durability of an item. One time we were just testing an explosion. So we've only tested item explosive durability once down here, but it's already a classic. So on the left, we've got the reinforced. On the right, we've got the regular. In the middle, we got TNT. We got a button. Give me that button back. Let's move back to a safe distance. Yeah, the reinforced one survived. That means that it's probably, at least for us, because iron isn't an object we are hurting for, or I'm sorry, a material we're hurting for. And not to mention the fact that also they, they do, at least at the current time, have an EMC value. Might make sense to build everything out of these. That's right, even if we end up using some sort of planks as our flooring, by using these, they will be explosion-proof planks, and they will be able to emit their own light, and then also we can do fun and wacky shapes. So we can have doors, I believe, right there that are made out of any material. You can't have a stone door, can you? Well, now you can. Using either the reinforced or the regular framed door, you can have a door that is made of any material in the game, more or less. These are cool. I've always really liked, uh, th not this mod necessarily, because I've never used block craftery, but I've used carpentry blocks, and they work essentially exactly the same and I love them. So we're gonna be getting pretty extensive extensive use out of these. I'm gonna grab a few stacks, and I don't know if we're going to use any of the more exotic shapes, like they've got slants, they've got corners, they've got inner corners and outer corners, I should state. They've got walls, they've got fences, they've got everything. And I think we're probably gonna to stick to blocks, maybe stairs and doors for right now, because we're not gonna build anything too complicated. We just need to build a basic house to live in that is not a, a a hilltop surrounded by fencing. Now, I did try to get one of my favorite Minecraft mods ever to work, and I, I kind of had some trouble with it because apparently they don't make it for Forge anymore, and that is the replay mod. And the replay mod is very cool. The replay mod will... Then again, is this even Forge? It is. The replay mod runs at all times, and it basically records all of your interactions in Minecraft, and then you can go back and create these beautiful, sweeping, panoramic uh, uh, time lapses of your activities. I may try in the future, because I have a feeling this is going to be one of those series where we have more than one sort of build video. Uh, the alternative to that would be to just get a second player set up on another computer and have that sort of filmed from a distance, but we're gonna we're not going to be doing a time lapse today. That's just the decision that's been reached. Uh, we're going to be doing things a, a bit differently. It might not be as visually interesting as some builds I've done in the past, and I apologize for that, but we're going to be doing our best. So, first things first, I'm going to get rid of all the trees up here, and I'm going to be doing that using my handy dandy Ooh. chainsaw. Right, oh, wow, okay, this looks very different without all of our stuff up here, doesn't it? Just a barren, uninteresting hill. Got a lot of stuff in our inventory. Man, I gotta tell you, ever since I got that comment from GSNL, anytime I open up my transmutation table and start dumping stuff in there, I find myself wondering, okay, which of these items will I never be able to get back out of here because they no longer have an EMC value? It's a genuine concern to have. You know, we might end up in a pickle. Maybe come next episode, if I can get 1.0.1 to work, 
we might end up in a situation where we cannot get certain things that we've put in here back out because they just don't have a value anymore. And I'll have to go find them out in the... Is that a sign? New mine and trade post coming soon. Not on my watch. I don't think so. The heck? <laughs> it's weird. Let's see what we have in terms of wood. So we've got cherry wood. We also have cherry wood. One is from Binny's Extra Trees and the other is from Forestry. Presumably they're both going to look very different. So lime wood could be interesting. These we all have a pretty good grasp of because they're all vanilla. But let's see what we got here. So lime wood planks look shockingly like spruce so not not much different there cherry wood planks look shockingly like spruce so not much going on there and then other more different cherry wood planks oh these are the same so they both turn into forestry cherry wood planks well i suppose the question then is how bright do we want our flooring Ooh, i might actually like the lime wood better but let's go ahead and we're going to take a nap and then we're going to go on a journey to just look around and see whether or not there are some other alternatives out there in the world. So we got maple wood here, which I don't think we have any of. Bring some of that home for sampling. I like the cherry wood itself, like the logs, more than I do the actual planks. Hmm. We seem to be quite limited by the variety of trees that we have in our immediate vicinity. There don't appear to be all that many. Uh, mostly just lime wood, cherry wood, and then your regular bog standard Minecraft trees. And then whatever this abomination is. Oh, just cherry again. Wait! Is this yet another volcano that is better than the one right next to our base? This is the th this is the third volcano we found, and the second one that's just better. Maybe it's it's extra better because there's nothing seemingly evil going on around this one. Well, we're back, and the only thing we were able to find is maple wood, which, oh, I kind of like it. It's not quite orange, you know? It's not quite acacia wood in appearance. At least I don't think so. Granted, I don't have any acacia wood, although I guess I could. I think we just need to start smacking this. Oh, by the way, if you look up in the top left, it'll give you a preview of what you're going to get when you use the... Uh, Philosopher's Stone. So as you can see right now, it's showing sand, and if we shift, it'll show us cobblestone. Over here, it shifts between different wood types up there. So there's acacia, and then you can go the opposite direction if you hold down shift again, so let's go ahead and cut that down. I don't think it works with leaves, although granted, I've never tried. Now that I've said it though, it's on my mind and I need to find out. Okay! It looks like it will. We can get spruce leaves, birch leaves, jungle leaves, acacia leaves. That looks ridiculous. Let's leave it like that. Okay, so there's the maple wood planks, and now we have acacia wood planks as well. And, wow, it's funny, because this is how I remember acacia wood looking, and this is how it actually looks. I kind of like the maple wood planks, and I think we're going to go with those. Now, at this point, I had hoped to find marble to build our house out of, and it's possible that maybe I just wasn't looking in the right places. So, I mean, I'm just going to go underground. I'm going to bring a bunch of torches with me. And I'm going to dig in a straight line and see if I can't happen upon some. I don't feel like we'd need to be super low for this either. So maybe we just go to something like, well, maybe even right here, level 40. Crank this bad boy up and just start going. Oh my gosh, that worked. I can't believe that it worked, but it worked. We've got marble, everyone. Did we already collect some? We did, and it has an EMC value. Again, though, it might not in 1.0.1. I wish, I wish I could get that update to work. Well, folks, I was starting to be driven crazy by the idea that I did not have 1.0.1 and that there could be massive changes in there that I didn't know about, and I really didn't want to continue the series any further without trying to address that, get it working, and then... We could carry on all together in the latest version of the pack. So, I did it! I I just removed M Atmos. <laughs> I just deleted... Well, So, I use PolyMC as my launcher. And it's very easy to go in there. There's a checkbox of the mods. I just unchecked it. So, it's technically still installed in my system. I just removed it. And, yeah. 
it opened right up. So we are now on the latest 1.0.1 update. We have marble, and it does still have an EMC value. Thank goodness. One thing I'm not too sure about, though, is what no longer has an EMC value. And I guess we're going to find out as we go. I suppose the next time we open this bad boy up and we're like, oh, man, I guess we need some leaves and they're not in there. Well, then we'll know. But well, no, but yeah, but now, OK, we are officially updated to 1.0.1. We officially have the pure B Deep Craft mod pack and we have marble. Everything is right in the world. Did Lime have it? I don't think Lime had it before, so I think we're probably safe there. Let's get to building. So the reinforced frame blocks are relatively affordable. So I think we will go ahead and use those everywhere we can. Whether or not we're going to put glowstone in each one, though, glowstone's kind of expensive. A stack of that is worth 24,000 EMC, so probably not. What we might end up doing is I will use this as the flooring, and then we will enable F7, and that'll show us where mobs will spawn on the floor, and it can go back and retroactively replace those pieces. But for right now, let's figure out how to do this. Well, I suppose we should also go ahead and try to determine whether or not we're going to be using regular marble or some form of chiseled marble. So what are our chiseled marble options? Now, I like the way that regular old marble looks, but maybe let's go ahead and we will make a sampling of, let's say this lovely weathered brick marble. We can always turn it back if we end up not liking it. And there's a ton of other options in here, but... Oh, they got marbled bricks too. So that is marbled bricks. This is weathered marble. You can kind of see the difference. And then this is just plain old blocks of marble, which... I mean, maybe I just want to use marble as my floor. I know I said that I liked the maple. I do kind of like the maple. It's hard to say. Maybe we use a little bit of both. You know what? Maybe we start down here with our mine. And maybe by framing that out, we'll get a better idea. Oh, gosh. I want to be careful with this. Do we have it on dirt mode? It looks like we must. Otherwise, it would be insane right now. But by framing this out, maybe we can get an idea of how we want the house to look. So let's start making some of the more interesting and, and more useful, arguably, reinforced block types. So we've got reinforced stairs now as well as reinforced doors. We might actually be able to make, yeah, we can make a, a maple door, but it won't be explosion proof. This here, check that out. We throw that down there, place that in. Okay, well, I don't know if I want the door to be invisible. There's gotta be some way to fix that. Block Craftery doesn't have any sort of tools which is what I expected it to have to change the appearance of a door. Sometimes in these mods, if they don't have a dedicated tool, you just whack it with a stick. No. So I looked up the mod on Curse Forge, and apparently reinforced blocks are not only blast resistant, but also fire resistant. And there doesn't appear to be a way at this time to change the door appearance, which means maybe we will be going with the standard maple door. It looks good. There's nothing wrong with it. I don't I don't have any issues with it. So marble stairs are not a thing, and I'm assuming that weathered marble stairs are not a thing either. And that, my friends, is where we're going to get the most use out of our reinforced frame stairs. So I've got those up there, and we're going to uh, right-click glowstone into each of those. And then we're going to add our bricks. Okay. All right, it's subtle, it's simple, I like it. <laughs> so now we've got our mining room here, and I think this is where, once again, we're gonna get some use out of reinforced frame bricks. We're gonna go straight down the middle here. Not do that, because that was a mistake. We're going to place glowstone in each of these, and that's going to be our light source. So again, we don't need it in all of them. Just those center ones ought to do it. And I do like the look of the weathered bricks for down here. It makes sense for a mine, but I don't know if it's going to be sort of the permanent look for down here. But it does look nice. So as you can see, it does, as it's getting dark, it does light up the space. And it does so, I mean, kind of naturally. You don't even really notice that there's light being emitted from there. It just, it almost looks like it's glowing from the outside, or from the inside out. Except for in the middle, where we use these along with glowstone to have light up paths. Ironically, 
Ironically, you could probably just, yeah, make stairs out of these. And, and yet we're using, we're using these. I don't, I'm not, I'm not saying there's sense to my actions. Is there a way to tell using Wayla whether or not these have, oh, wrong button, whether or not these have glowstone? No, they don't seem to show any difference. Oh, you can just keep putting glowstone in these? Wait. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why is that a thing? Do I get it all back if I break it? No! Okay, well, be mindful of that, folks. Okay, alright, you know, it's, it's alright, except for this looks awful, so I guess I replace all of that with marble now. Alright, yeah, you know what, we're, we're getting there. This is starting to look like something. This could be better, though. We did more of a, uh, like a one of these. See where I'm going with this? Hold on. <laughs> okay, maybe we went the wrong direction with this. You know what? I kind of like it, though. I kind of like it. And I like how all of this glows now, even in the dark. I feel like this at the top, though, is it's a bit too tall. That's that's part of what's making this look funny. Clickety lickety. Oh yeah. Okay, that that still looks kind of silly, but I kind of love it. And yeah, I went with the regular marble in the back, not the. Uh, not the marble bricks, and I think it works. So we've got our mining station down there, and it swings around up here, and this is where we have to have a house now. So I would like there to be a barrier between the road that's going to encircle our house here and our actual house. I want a one block wide space for grass, for bushes, for flowers. So the house starts here. No, here. So at this point, I want it to look like we have a retaining wall all the way around that is built of marble. We are going through the marble. Fortunately, each individual block is only one EMC, so this is not a particularly uh, expensive procedure. So let me acknowledge that, yes, things may have gotten out of hand. At some point, it stopped being about laying down the foundations of our house or creating an outline for a road and turned more so into defining our territory because there's someone trying to open a mine over here. There's whatever's going on over there that we don't really want to get involved with. And I just want to make sure that we got a big wall around us, you know, sort of denoting where where we are, where our land starts and, and where the wilderness begins. Ladies and gentlemen, after two hours and nine minutes, we have managed to manufacture a very large wall. And already I see a problem with it. Wait a second. That's not a firm foundation. You can't be building on top of dirt. That's not going to do. We're going to have to fix that. Just patch all that up. There we go. Okay, okay. As I was saying, ladies and gentlemen, after a mere 2 hours, 9 minutes, and 36 seconds, we've managed to construct a very large wall. Wait. Wait, what is that? Wait, come on now. Come on, you're making me look sloppy. You're making me look like I don't know what I'm doing here. There we go. Okay, now, now the wall is perfect, and I gotta go take a break. Because I'm, I'm tired, I'm thirsty, I have to go to the bathroom. Can you check out my pets? I've got chores to do, I need to wash the dishes. We'll be back, we'll continue. Alrighty, folks, we are coming back to this a few hours later, and I was wrong and a dope! The replay mod does work with Forge up to 1.12.2. It's not until 1.14 that it stops working. Boom! Recording started! Now, this wasn't easy to get working. I had to disable the custom start screen, or main screen, the custom main menu, as well as, I mean, even after doing that, it would crash every time I tried to start, and there was one other mod that had to do with scaling the main menu. We still don't have Matmos enabled. Maybe I'll try that now. Uh, I've done so many things. I've <laughs> updated Java. I've jumped through so many hoops. I, I, I gave it more RAM. But uh, we're finally in, and now we should be able to do an epic time lapse of this build. Apparently, I can put down markers by pressing M. Oh, except for that's, that's connected to space. We can go to so many places. 
We're going to space, don't you worry about it. But uh, first off, let's go into our menu. Oh my gosh, there's a ton of things here. These might, oh, oh, pause recording, stop recording. Fantastic stuff. Mouse button five, perfect. That's going to help me set markers for, yeah, when I go to edit this. That's so exciting. Okay, oh my gosh! I was gone for like three or four hours at the most. Oh, oh, oh my, my gosh. What the heck? That's the wrong button. That's, that's big menu. How did we get the big map up before? I thought in, I thought, wait, I thought M was the big map. What button is big map? That's the wrong big map. Okay, we're going to temporarily disable the galaxy map. Considering we've never seen it before to begin with. That's what I was hoping for. Oh. Well, that's concerning. What? What is this? Oh my gosh. Do we think that maybe whoever's been adding to the portal over here, do we think that possibly, potentially, me building this wall, they read that as some sort of challenge? Because I said we were defining our borders. Maybe they felt like they needed to do the same thing, and that's why they've got these little purple eyes of Sauron all over the place? What the heck? Oh. Uh. Nope. Nope, not today. Not today. Not today. We're not going anywhere near there. If we need to go to the nether, we'll build a new nether portal. What's going on back here? See, that was there before. I remember seeing that from a distance. Okay. All right. You know what? You know what we're going to do is we're not going to go over there. We're not going to associate with any of that. We're not going to affiliate with any of that. We're just going to come on over here and we're just, we're just going to carry on with what we were doing. There's so many monsters here now because I neglected to sleep in time. Hopefully we get some rest and then we can chainsaw them all to death and and get to continuing this little project of ours. It's not like we're actually in danger, because we've got some incredible armor on right now, and a really powerful tool. How did we get a pig up here? It must have gotten up here when I wasn't paying attention. Oh, that was, that was stellar. Okay, all right, you know what? I think we're good. The spider I'm not too, I'm not too worried about. Creepers, as long as we hit fast, we can deal with them. Right, setting a marker on replay, and I'm getting back to Ignoring that and building! Okay, and that does it. The wall is finished, and it is magnificent. It's shaped, it almost looks like it could be a horse. 
but like a bad one. Like these are the two front legs, and then it's both of its rear legs are kicking off, and then it has the stubbiest little face up there. Something like that. Or if I had just contoured this part, if you look at the mini map, actually, you can see, hold on. Well, let's use the other map, I guess. You can you can kind of see how if I if I brought the in down somewhere, it could look like a horse. It could absolutely look like a horse. I was just following the shape of the ground. Now, as for why I filled it in, uh, eventually I'd like to bring all of the dirt up to level. I want this to be completely flush all the way across so that, you know, from here you can just walk to the wall, but but then the edge is here and then the monsters can't get to me and then uh, hopefully we've got enough torches in here they won't spawn in here. And then we've got to do something about this over here because anything could just walk up these stairs and be in my house. So maybe build some kind of like gatehouse down there or something make it a part of the mine maybe block all of that off with a gatehouse oh we don't even really need stairs i can fly now we are hurting for emc it's it's a bit of an issue right now we we've used up a lot of it from i think i just accidentally threw my bag in there we used up a lot of it from just making marble and actually glowstone was i think the one that really hit the hardest glowstone cost us a lot I think I'm done for right now, though. I'm tempted to wait till we get to the Mercurial Eye before I fill all this in, because it's going to take so long. Or maybe between every episode, I'll just fill in a bit of... Just a wee little bit of extra... Um, extra dirt until eventually it's all full, instead of doing it all in one go. But now we actually have to build our house? Because we don't have that yet? <laughs> all this time, all I've been doing is... um. It's building a wall. I've not actually built a home yet. That'll have to wait, though. I need another break. I have to go to the bathroom again. It's been about an hour 20. Gotta go to the bathroom. Gotta get some food. Gotta edit some videos. So we'll be back. Okay, well, we're back, and it doesn't look like anything new has happened over here, so that's good. I did just live stream this again, so I'm live streaming a separate playthrough of this game on the, uh, or the Howdy Folks gaming channel. I almost said Cub Games. Not, well, I mean... Technically, yes, it's the same channel, but it's time for us to now build a house. I just built a house in my other world, and I got to experience what it's like to build a house with cherry wood, which looks pretty interesting as a roof. We have two different types of cherry wood here. We're not going to use either of those. We're actually going to go on a bit of an expedition to see if we can find a different type of wood. So there's one type of wood that we had, but then I didn't actually get any of it condensed. And I believe that would be this right here. Is this the honeysuckle or whatever it is? The sugar maple. I was so close. The sugar maple has an interesting look to it. And uh, we didn't actually get any of the wood. I know we have the planks. Don't at me. I know that we have the planks. But I don't think we have any of the wood left over. So I'm going to collect a tree's worth of it, take it home with us, get that condensing. And then, man, I really do wish that we could find some different trees. I've tried my best. I've looked all over the place. And I've, I've yet to find any... I mean, we might need to go really far afield, is the issue. If we have a look at the map, which still has a massive blacked out space above my house. I wonder if there's something I need to do to fix that. Do I need to delete something and then reload it? Maybe like map data? If I delete the map data, will that come back? I don't know. So we've been up north, of course. We started our Let's Play kind of over here somewhere. I, I don't even remember where now. I don't think I could get back to there if I tried. I don't know what's happening here. I, I definitely haven't gone up there. This is the village we stopped at before. Oh, and I'm just now realizing that that entire journey we did around here was unnecessary if we wanted to live in the fields because there was some right here, just kind of right inside that. Mm, okay, well, let's let's check our EMC. How are we doing in our client star? Not too good. Not too good. We're not doing too good with EMC in general uh, because I used so much on glowstone to unnecessarily light every single piece of the pathway, which I do not regret. Yeah, so we're looking at a whopping 43,000. So we can fill up our Klein Star, but then we're not going to have a whole lot left. Oh, well, we're going to go on a journey now at night to see if we can just fly in this direction and maybe find some different trees. I feel like there has to be some different trees. If we just look up wood. And, I mean, yeah, look at all these different types of tree that we just have not found. Where's where's the Purple Heart wood? Where's the Iroko wood? Where is this stuff? Oh, do we have to breed it? Do we have to breed trees together? Do we have to get a balsa sapling and a teak sapling to make 
a Niroko sapling? They get balsa. Teak, dark oak, and jungle to get teak. Tree breeding? Didn't know that was a thing. Well, we're definitely going to be doing that at some point, but uh, not right now. What I've noticed is that this is not unique to the world that I'm presently in. I have a different world for the live streams that's using a completely different seed. So this one was Cub Games, that one was Brachiat Cub. Different biomes, exact same tree selection. So here's the ocean. Our best bet might be to just follow the rising sun and see what awaits us on the other side. Oh, pirate ship. Pirates. I mean, maybe we can do this. It's the worst that could happen here. I did not bring my shield with me. But also, it looks like we might not have to do much here. Looks like they might all start killing each other. This might just be a matter of, of being patient. Oh, yeah, they've all walked the plank now. <laughs> uh, this must be the captain. He's staying behind to go down with the ship. Well... This will not end well for any of them, honestly. Oh, yeah, he's got a he's got a little he's got a little parrot. I love that. He's dead now. Do we get the parrot? Oh no, the parrot's gone. It's flying away to better days, probably. Okay, well that's everything dead. Uh, Polly want a cracker? Because I, I don't have one, so I hope not. Oh, where'd you come from? Is there a spawner back here or something? Oh, there's a lot of them. There are a lot of them. All I've got with me right now are cranberries. Get away! Trying to eat cranberries. Leave me alone. Some gold nugs and a bow. Oh, where are you guys coming from? What the heck? Oh, inside of here, maybe? All right, we're leaving. We're about to die. Uh, there's not much treasure here. All right, we're, we've made it to land. There's an even smaller volcano. Oh my gosh, we found an entire forest of birch wood. It's actually lovely. This is this is this is darn near picturesque. But again, it's the same trees. It's vanilla trees, rubberwood trees, various cherry, and uh, and honey honeylock maple or whatever it's called. I keep forgetting what it's called. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Limewood also exists. I don't know if we considered that in our list of the the four additional trees that we have. I got another village. I want to throw out there that I did not realize this, and I should have, but a uh, longtime subscriber, Maria Moore, pointed out that you can just right-click if it's a fully harvestable crop, and it'll collect it but leave the seeds. And I can't demo it right now, because there we go, potatoes. Ah, just right-click. But it only works on crops that are fully grown. Okay, well, you know what? Never mind. We came all this way. There's another weird line... Basically for nothing. At least now our house is fixed. We can go back to our wrong horse. Now, I never did... I haven't released the last video yet, so I don't know whether or not you folks are okay with me teleporting. But I'm doing so right now, because what's the point in manually flying back here? So we already landed on the Maplewood Planks, and I guess in addition to that, we will use probably marble. Definitely marble. So I'm going to start a recording... I made it to where it doesn't automatically start recordings because I didn't want to do it while I was live streaming. Like the chicken just breached our wall. That's our that's how secure we are right now. <laughs> All right, I'm going to get to work. <laughs>
And we're done. Folks, here it is. Maybe I like it, maybe I hate it, I haven't decided yet. What I do know is that if we go outside... I, I, I took influence from Tekkit Legends, as well as Tekkit Main, as well as Tekkit Classic. Pretty much all the greats in my past. I got the big roof from the Tekkit Legends, we got the marble from the Tekkit Main, and then the, the Tekkit Classic. We, it's, it's a look, it's mostly glass. I wanted it to feel like it was outside without being outside. One of my other ideas was to just leave it open and not put in glass at all, but I think it's going to be a while before we have it secured completely from monsters, so I figured, you know what, glass is cheap. Just use regular old Minecraft glass and that'll keep us safe. It, it's a good juxtaposition towards that mess over there. I built it with this little room jutting off to one side and I figured we might put like a basement down there or something. Again, all of this will eventually be brought up to be level with the house itself. Or maybe it won't be. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. This is just sort of all my, my little safe. I thought maybe we'd put the rocket launch station over here because we're going to go to the moon in a couple episodes, you know, if we can get that going. And I say in a couple episodes, but uh, here's here's a problem, folks. Here's a problem. I, I have built this place and it's being lit right now with a bunch of torches because I don't have enough EMC to get a bunch of glowstone. Even just to put down like strategically placed uh, bits... I don't have enough. There's my MFE, and I've got all of my other machines inside of here. And I guess I should go ahead and set those back up. I haven't really thought about where to put them. Maybe over here is what we'll do. I should have a back door. Maybe a door right here off the side, or, or maybe right here in the middle. I, I don't know. Is there a middle back here? Yeah, we definitely do need a way out other than going to the front door here. So not permanently, but for right now, this thing needs to be in full view of the sun. But interestingly, I don't think that it matters whether or not the sun, like if it goes that direction, I think it'll still count as being full sunlight, yeah, and then we'll pipe that in under the house. You know what I just remembered is, don't we still have our bat box around here somewhere? Yeah, we'll put the bat box on the low voltage solar array for no real reason, just because we, we have it and we should use it. So it'll come down into here, and then that'll uh, start filling up and carry into the house. So there we go. Out of sight, out of mind. Look at these leaves out of here. Solar panels can get hot. We don't want the uh, ground to catch on fire. That's not a thing that can happen in this mod pack. Don't worry about it. I shouldn't say things like that. So then that cable comes in, and so we'll fill in this hole here, and that cable, we can have it run up directly into our MFE. And then let's actually have both of our generators also hooked up, maybe like right here. Also hooked up to the MFE, which we want to rotate around. And then we will have, gosh, see now we're in a, now we're in a pickle because we have the power come out and then what, go into the ground again? And then there's just this bare spot here. Are there like cable hides or something like that? Let's see. Covers? Oh, okay. Well, we got a super conductor cover. Maybe that's what we want. Looking up cables, I don't see anything in here that would be what we want. Advanced alloy, we've made some of that before. We might have everything we need for this. It might be worth testing real quick. Oh, iridium plate though. No, never mind. I take it back. It's not worth <laughs> It's not worth testing right now. Yeah, I guess we'll just have it go into a block here and it'll be disgusting. We will replace every visible brick. Anything you can see from above, we will replace right now with uh with marble see if we do this it's going to connect up to that cable and i don't want it to i wonder if we can use our wrench to stop that from happening no no we cannot well there's actually nothing wrong with it connecting up there it'll still work other than the fact that i just don't like it according to the internet if we use a painter from industrial craft classic we can make it to where they won't connect. So that could be an option. So that's iron and then wool. And I'm assuming whatever color wool we'll use is what color it'll come out. So I guess we need to make a couple of these. Painter. That'll be a white one. And then we'll make a black one as well. That also came out white. <laughs> to make it black, we're going to add ink. Or I guess actually we'll add some dye. So I don't actually have any dye on me, 
We're going to have to make some. There we go. So we'll never have to do that again. Presumably, it'll hold these colors forever. I don't know if it ever runs out of durability or if it runs out of paint. Maybe we have to add more dye. I've never used these before. I've never had need to. But apparently, any color will still match up with an unmarked one. So what we want to do is mark maybe these two as red and this one as yellow. Okay. Yeah. There we go. So with those marked as red and those marked as yellow, they will not connect. That's handy. So look at that filling up. And then also we're going to need to replenish all of the power in there. So, ooh, let's just go alchemical coal. We don't want to waste all of our very limited EMC that we have left right now. So pop those in. I want to make sure the sound was still working because I can't hear these at all. I, I noticed that the update changes IC2 sounds to be all the way down at like 50. Maybe let's bring it up to something more reasonable. I kind of like having the rumble of a generator. But I can't hear it at all still. That's that's maybe a bit too far. It's also been very quiet without Matmos, so I need to figure out how to get that working again. And we genuinely do not have enough EMC to get a diamond <laughs> to get all of our machines hooked back up. We've got our... What all have we got in here? We've got a macerator, a compressor, we've got a furnace, and I can't hook up any of them. Anything at all in here that's got... Oh, we can get rid of our chisel. We can get another one back later. But wait. This is still not enough. This is only going to get us, what, four cables? Oh, dear. Oh, dear. See, the plan was to have them go around and then have them come up. Okay, well, you know what? That's enough cable to get the two most important ones back up and running. So we can get our furnace and our macerator running again. So macer... Important to note is that before we plug them in, we'll need to make sure we put... We need to put the transformers in them. Or they will blow up. Well, folks, let me tell you about what I'm going to do now. I think we're done with this Let's Build. It's been uh, two days and, and more hours than I'm currently aware of. I'm going to take my Destruction Catalyst, assuming I can get one. I don't know how much EMC it costs. I'm going to trade in everything I got for it. And then I'm going to go underground and I'm going to just start digging until our EMC supplies are restored. Thank you, folks, for watching. God bless you. And I'll see you later. Bye. Tis a dark and stormy night in the world of Minecraft. And howdy, folks. How are y'all doing? My name is Reese, and welcome back to our Tech It 2 Let's Play Adventure Extravaganza of Awesomeness and Fun Times to be Had in the Wonderful World of Tech It 2, where I have some things I need to catch you folks up on because I've actually been doing a little bit of work. So first off, if we come over here, and in fact, you could probably see this by looking at the map, so we'll go there. I came down here and I rounded these corners out to be the same. They were already rounded, but one was slightly different than the other, and I really wanted them to match, and now they do. In addition to that, I added another walkway right here and gave them the exact same treatment. Now I'm noticing some parts of the work walkway are darker than others, and I'm wondering if those are places where I neglected to put glowstone, but then again, it appears to be on tiles that wouldn't have glowstone in the first place. Those are marble tiles, so who can actually say what's going on? But it sounds like, oh, it sounded like the storm was done. You'll notice we have some beautiful atmospheric sounds, and that's because we are now updated to 1.0.2, and I have Matmos back, and it all launched, and it's all working good, so we should have some beautiful melodic noises once more. Something else that I did was I experimented with roof lighting by using some of the... There we go. Oh, wow! It, it, even, tr it even tricks Wayla. Oh, no, it doesn't. Never mind. <laughs> I was just looking at the wrong block. I used some more of our reinforced framed blocks and glowstone on the roof here, but only on this one, because going in this direction, it doesn't quite work right. It doesn't get the texture right. It looks like the textures are going at odd angles, so I don't know what I'll do about that. This was my plan to fix monsters spawning on the roof, 
But since it didn't work, I just covered the roof and torches for right now. For right now! This is not a permanent thing. The other thing that I did between episodes was I filled in some grass around here. Not all the way over there, but uh, we also have more EMC now. I think I said last episode that we were going to get to a million, and I did. And if you want to see how I did it, I will go down into the mines, and I will show you. And while we do that, we're going to talk about... Well, that wasn't there when I did all of this last night. So that was last night that I did all of that. And this must have been built since. Um, these are glowstone torches from Galactic Craft. You have to have these on the moon because there's no... No air. Mine under construction again. Again, you say. You need to leave me alone. Sign vandals will be, <laughs> will be prosecuted. Jeez. I wonder, wonder who that's a reference to. Port opening soon. What are you? What is? Is this part of the mod pack? Comment down below if this is happening in your world as well. Well, because we took down the lost sign, but it's being very persistent. Is this and is that over there also part of the mod pack? I have no idea. We're gonna do some things today, folks. I've got plans. I've actually got plans all the way up until episode ten, and I was going to do a board with the signs on it to explain what my plans were. But then I kind of decided not to because I didn't want to spoil it. But let me just say the next five episodes, counting this one all the way up to ten, are going to be pretty, pretty packed. And ten, I think, is going to have a surprise that a lot of you folks will not see coming. But uh, you might be wondering, how is this different than last time? Well, it is more open than the last time I showed you what it was like down here. Especially going in that direction quite a ways. And you can see on the map that there is, that's, that's the above ground map. This button? A lot of, lot of, lot of crossing over and whatnot, so... I've, I've basically been sometimes following diamonds and then sometimes just clearing out massive swaths and uh, utilizing a bag, an alchemical bag. I wanted to call it a bag of holding. I mean, that's basically what it is. To carry boatloads of stuff to the surface and start automatically, well, not automatically, manually more or less processing it into ingots. The only automated part that we have set up so far is that it will automatic. Oh, I also tidied this up a little bit. This looked silly last time. So I tidy that up a bit. I think that gets you all caught up. I guess it is automated in that it's automatically pulling items out of there and dumping them into here. And that's, I mean, that's a stack of 11,000 and that's a stack of 3,000 each. So that's pretty decent. Dump it all in there for fat stacks. Look, we now have a 1.2 million EMC. Not too shabby. So let's talk more about plans. And it looks like the rain is just going to be with us for a while. And, and I'm okay with that. I bet if we, I bet if we slept, it would go away. I mean, it's going to be sunrise in 10 seconds, but... Oh yeah, there we go, we fixed it. <laughs> As I was saying, big, big plans, lots of things to do today. We're digging all this up! The reason I wanted all of this marked off by the wall is so that I can dig a massive quarry here, and then <laughs> I've got plans. I got plans for what we're going to do down here. If you've ever seen the old Brashiat Cub... Tekkit Classic series, you may remember a certain secret, maybe evil base. Well, let me just say to you folks, I've I've done a lot of thinking in my head about what I want to do here. But how to do it? Manually? No, of course not manually! We're building a quarry! And everything involves with that. Now, I want to get a lot done today. So we're going to start off with the basics. We're going to build the quarry. We're going to build the, the, the Sterling engine to power it. We're going to build the quarry fixer so if there's lava down there, instead of preventing the quarry from digging, it'll be removed. It'll no longer be an obstacle. Mwah. Another option to that would just be to put water around the outsides and it would turn into obsidian, but uh, I don't really want to do that all that badly. We got pretty much everything we need in here in order to get this up and running, except for landmarks. I realize I, I neglected to add those to the list. Now, I also want to build a battery using Zeta Industries' big battery. It's not necessary. You can run this directly off a of quarry and the... Or, I'm sorry. You can run the quarry directly off a of Sterling engine. I'm trying not to burp right now. I'm trying to hold it in, which is probably not healthy now that I think about it. I should probably... Give me a minute here. All right, there we go. I feel a little bit better. Probably a little bit healthier, too. I'm not going to have gases now, like 
leeching their way into my cells. That's, I don't think that's what happens. Anyway, battery, unnecessary. The more Sterling engines we hook up to this quarry, the faster this quarry will run. However, I like building big batteries. It could be fun. You know, even when the quarry's not running, the battery will be filling up. It's going to be a good time. We're all going to love it, so we might as well just go ahead and do it. And I guess if you're not familiar with the quarry or how it works, it is from a mod called Buildcraft, and it uses a different type of power. It does not use European uh, electrical units, the EUs. It uses RF, which stands for... What does it stand for? Redstone Flux. Yeah, I had to Google that. I used to know that. It's been so long since I've dabbled with it that it's sort of escaped my mind. But uh, fortunately, everything we need here, pretty much everything we need here, except for the pipe plug, has an EMC value, so that's going to be helpful. So I guess that that is what we're going to focus on today. Big battery, quarry, maybe some other stuff towards the end there. Maybe we'll have some other surprises. But this quarry is going to be amazing. I get, should, I, should I explain what it is? I realize that there's a lot of people watching this. You know, original Tekkit was a decade ago. A lot of people might not have even been playing Minecraft back then. It's gonna it's just a big thing that mines for us. And the reason we would want that is so that we can have more EMC, more or less, right? Because we don't really need something that goes and digs iron when we can just come over here and get iron. But something that digs iron and converts it into EMC, ooh, hey, there's an idea. Let's go ahead and get a condenser out of that list of things that we're going to be building as well. And we already have one of those. We've built one. No, no, we don't. No, we built the alchemical chest. The condenser... Ooh, we're going to have fun with the condenser. Oh, there's so much about all of this that I am so excited for. This is quintessential classic tech -it. Now, there are better ways to move items around than what I've currently got queued up here, which is our transportation pipes. But again, quintessential classic tech -it. This is what we're going to start with. Maybe later on we'll update it. Now, for those of you who say things along the lines of, Reese, this is unnecessary. There are other ways to get EMC. You're right. And we're going to be covering that next episode. I'll go ahead and tease that. There's some intended and some unattended ways. Unattended? Uh, unintentional ways of generating EMC in this pack. As there were in Tekka Classic. And we're going to be testing those out. But today I wanted to do this because one, I need a giant hole dug anyway. And then also, again, it's classic Tekka. I want to do it. Let's go. So for the quarry, we will need a bunch of stuff. We will need iron, we will need gold, we will need diamonds, we will need redstone, we will need a diamond pickaxe, uh, but gears. Gears are something we're going to be building a lot of, and in order to get these gears, we've got to start off with the stone gear, that means we've got to start off with the wooden gear, which means we've got to start off with sticks, and these things do have EMC value, which is different. It's definitely different. They didn't... Back in my day, these items didn't have EMC value. They were from different mods, and you just put up with it. You just dealt with it. You may, you may do. So we've got all of the items we're going to need here. I'm going to go ahead and move this and this in here, because they are already ready to go. Now we're going to build all of our gears, and we're going to do this fun little game of building it, going up there, dropping it in, building the next tier, because we're going to need more than just the one of these that we're getting. We're gonna need we're gonna need a number of them, but each one builds on the next. That's how you get your iron gear. I, I'm sure that there is a pattern emerging that you're all following at home. You're all thinking, yeah, I I don't need to see this in painstaking detail. I get the general idea. You're gonna surround that one with diamonds, right? Well, that is where you would be absolutely correct. And that'll get us our diamond gear. And then of the gears that we need, we need two gold, two diamond, and we also need an iron gear. And I think we need, was it four of those? Ooh, it might have been three. It was three. Get out of my inventory. I don't need you anymore. Now, I could put all those in there from memory because I definitely remember this recipe, but we'll go ahead and get the quarry. Now, the quarry does not have an EMC value, which I kind of prefer it this way because this way you have to manually manufacture them, in my opinion. And maybe some of you will disagree. And that is completely fine. But in my opinion, everything having EMC makes the game a little bit boring. Because at that point, like, oh, I've made my first rocket. Now I'll make a thousand more. It's like, no, you need to have to work for some things. You know what I mean? So this is going to be the landmark. And this is how we're going to define the size of our quarry. We will need three of those. Which, you, they go at each corner. And you might think, well, surely you'll need four. But no, you don't, I assure you. 
let me go ahead and show you how we set up this quarry before we do anything else. So by default, you don't actually have to use landmarks. We can throw down our quarry and we got to figure out how we're going to do this. I guess we're going to set up the quarry to dig out the biggest portion. So from here forward, and it doesn't have to be centered up. You can place it anywhere. I mean, let's say we place it right, right here. That's exactly where I wanted it. By default, it has this little bitty shape, which is fine. By the way, these are not industrial craft. They're build crafts. So you can just break them with a pickaxe or a diamond drill. We want to make it bigger, though, so we're going to use our landmarks. Now, there is one trick with the landmarks, and that's that they all have to be at the same height. So we'll plop that one there. Place one here. And then we're going to need one over here, and there's not enough dirt, I can already tell. So we're going to collect some more, and how is it already sunset again? Boop. So we can plop that one down, and now we go into the corner, the common corner. We right-click on it, and we have this giant red outline. So we want to go ahead and have a good look over this and make sure that it is exactly what we want. And it is not. I don't know how I managed to do this. I want it to fill in this entire section here. Why did I leave a gap? That's all right. We can just break these and uh, we'll put them back down. All right. I've redone them, but using my brain this time. And yes, that's exactly the shape we want to get dug out. Now, obviously, I'm going to have to come back and trim some of this manually, but that's okay. We can do that. So with that made, we want to get our quarry and we want to set our quarry down up against, but not inside of the red line. And it will automatically claim that space. I'm going to collect all of our landmarks. Now we need to power it. And before we do that, we actually need to build some pipes. Because once this thing is turned on and it starts running, it's going to start spitting objects out the top. And if they don't have anywhere to go, it's going to be real messy real quick. So over here, I have two pipes ready to go. Gold and diamond. Now back in Tech at Classic, gold worked by applying a redstone signal to it and it would make your objects travel faster. I don't think that's the case anymore. I think gold pipes are just faster by themselves. No power required, but we'll find out. And the alternative to that would be to use either the stone or the cobblestone pipes. So those are both very straightforward. Piece of glass in the middle, either cobblestone or stone to either side. Stone and cobblestone are the same speed, but if you have a gold pipe to accelerate items, when they pass through a cobblestone one, they will slow down more quickly than if they were going through stone. So if you're limited on resources, I would recommend building stone pipes, and those can be found right here. So just glass in the middle, stone to either side, good to go. Interestingly, stone pipes don't have an EMC value, and I would assume that is because it would break the game. Each one of these items is only one EMC, and if you get eight pipes out of that, the minimum EMC you can assign them is one. So you'd very easily be able to break the game by just making a bunch of these, turning them into DMC, making a bunch more. I understand that. We're going with gold because we want them to be fast. I, I don't care about material costs. We can cover it. Each one of these is going to be, well, uh, 512 a piece or 4,096 for eight of them, which is I mean, basically we can get 16 of them for the cost of a diamond. And then we also have a diamond transport pipe. And this one is important because it allows you to do sorting which we're going to want to do because some of our items will be going into a chest where they will be stored. Some other ones will be converted automatically into EMC. Could set up a whole system that automatically brings the ores inside and macerates them. And we might actually do that. I said it like we wouldn't, but we might actually do that. There is also a teleportation pipe that exists that allows you to teleport items through time and space. Well, just through space, not necessarily through time. However, I couldn't find it, but someone in my live stream, and I'm sorry, I can't remember who said this, but I was live streaming this in another world the other day, and they mentioned that you could still build them. So before we build any pipes, I want to test that. So I believe that the recipe for a teleportation pipe is two diamond gears and glass. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab a stack of glass. I'm also going to grab some gold. That is a golden chest. We don't need that. I'm going to grab some gold. So we can make some golden pipes. And I'm also going to grab some diamonds to make the sorting pipes. We're going to give this a shot. I'm not saying this is going to work. I'm not even sure if this would be the correct recipe anymore. It doesn't look like it. As I remember it, it was two diamond gears to either side of a piece of glass. And that would give you 
a teleportation. Now, again, I might be misremembering. It's also possible that that was the right recipe and they've just been removed from the pack for being a little bit too OP. In any case, I thought it was worth a shot and I'm glad that we tried it and can confirm. Now, I got enough gold to build a bunch of pipes because I forgot that the gold ones do have an EMC value, as do the diamond ones. So we can get rid of all this, we can get rid of our landmarks, and we can get a few more of these golden pipes. We don't really need that many, but then also... We definitely don't need this many diamond ones. I'm going to hold on to maybe three of them. Get rid of that egg. Get rid of that gold. Now, in terms of chests, I actually want two of them. I want one alchemical chest to store items in, and then I need another one for a recipe. This is for building the energy condenser. And this is what I was talking about. This is going to be what automatically condenses items that have an EMC value into raw EMC although we will have to turn them into a different type of item. I'll show you what I mean when we build it, but to build it, we will need to get some more diamonds out. So I didn't really need to put all those back in here. We will also need, it looked like it was obsidian, if I'm not mistaken. So we'll get a few of those and we will build this very expensive chest. Now, the base of it is the alchemical chest and it helps if you put the items in the correct orders. There we go. How am I going to demo this? Let's go ahead and get some diamonds. Uh, just one will do. And then we'll get some gold. Because gold's a pretty high value item. So we'll get 64 of those. And when we plop this sucker down, it looks kind of like an alchemical chest. In fact, we can throw down our alchemical chest. And you'll see it has the same number of slots in it. Or actually, maybe a bit less. I can't tell because it's being offset. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, yeah. A bit less. But the way that it works is we set an item up here. So you just hold it up there and left click and you get to keep your item. And that is the target item. Then as we add items into the chest, it converts them into EMC. And the goal is to fill this up and get a diamond. So we know that four goes into a diamond, get ourselves a diamond. So you can see how this will work with a quarry. We will pipe items into it. And if they have an EMC value, they will contribute towards making a diamond or whatever we put up there. We can actually make it uh, generate anything. We could have it generate dark matter if we wanted to. But that is the energy condenser. Before, back in the days of Tekka Classic, the transmutation table didn't have a sorting, or didn't have a search bar. So it was actually kind of useless, and you, most people would use an energy condenser and then just keep one of every item handy, and then they would just leave all their EMC in here, make what they needed as they needed it. It was chaotic. It wasn't great. So we want to set this up. To have one chest, we'll put our alchemical chest right here. That is a diamond pipe and not what I meant to put down. Uh, alchemical chest there, and then we will have our energy condenser. Ooh, actually, if we're going to be moving items around, it might be better to have the alchemical chest, the storage chest, over here instead. If we end up getting rid of it anyway and having items go... Well, that's interesting. Wait a minute. Okay, when I put that down, that appears. I wonder if that means it's going to automatically put items into those chests. Because that's not necessarily what we want to do. What we want to do is have items come out the top. Now, usually you'd want to use a wooden pipe up here. Because a wooden pipe is an extraction pipe. But the quarry should automatically pump items out of the top. So, in fact, if we wanted to, we could go straight into our diamond transport pipe. And then from there... Have it go to shift click and shift click. There we go. So now if you right click on the diamond pipe, you will see all of these filters. And this is how we're going to determine what goes where. So see that yellow? Let's say we mine up some dirt, which we definitely will. Well, we want the yellow to go into the energy condenser and start creating something. I, I don't know. Swift Wolf's Rending Gale? That's pretty expensive. That might be a bit much. Aeternalis Fuel. That's actually a perfect one to pick, because I think that's what we're going to be running the quarry on in the first place. So, if the quarry is, you know, able to generate its own fuel, that would be fantastic. Meanwhile, we would want ores and things that don't have an EMC value to come out of the green. And then, like I say, we could pipe all of this into the house and have it automatically go... I mean, we could have it either go into the chest or into the hopper. There's an idea. Maybe we'll do that. But let's get this thing up and running first. I'm still curious to see whether or not those little holes in the side of the quarry means it's going to try to automatically pipe items into the chests instead of spitting them out the top. Which, I mean, that sounds ideal, but it's actually not the behavior that I want it to 
exhibit. So we're going to build a Sterling engine now. This is not the most basic engine. A wooden engine is the most basic. But Sterling is pretty good for running a quarry. There are other types of engine, if we look them up here real quick. So from this mod, we also have the combustion engine, which runs on fuel. Back in the day, you could run into problems with these blowing up if you weren't paying attention to them. I don't know if that still happens anymore. I think that's probably been altered. But we have to go find fuel. Uh, you'd want to process that into... Because it comes as raw oil, you want to turn it into, into fuel inside of a refiner. It's a whole process. Forestry adds things like the peat-fired engine, the biogas engine, the clockwork engine, and the electrical engine. Now, the electrical engine converts EU into RF, which would be cool and helpful if we had a ton of EU, like if we had a nuclear reactor running, which is a thing that I have planned to do in the near future. Hint, hint, maybe keep your eye on this one here. The recipe is not all that complicated. In fact, we're going to go ahead and save it. There used to be a mod called Thermal Expansion. I don't know if it still exists anymore. It must. It was such a cool mod. And it added these dynamos that you could use. So you could have like a steam dynamo and a lava dynamo. Lots of really cool things. But this is Tech It 2. It's a Tech It Classic en Enthusiasts mod. You know, it's a throwback to the old days. So we're going to be sticking with our engines. And we're going to go ahead up here and remove some of these things that we've already built. There we go. So we can have a better idea of where we are in all this. This is so simple. Even though it doesn't have an EMC value... Everything in here does. We're going to want to build a number of these, so I'm going to get a little bit silly and just grab stacks of these items. You don't have to do this. So let's get that recipe pulled in there, and we will make... Oh, actually, if we put it all inside of here, it'll automatically pull them in as we go, and they do stack. So let's say we make six of them. That's a good place to start, and we'll leave the materials in there in case I want to get more. And then I said we would use Aeternalis fuel, but let's start with coal, and if we spell it correctly... Gosh! If we spell it correctly, there it is. We're going to stack out. You do need to turn these on. So you can do that with redstone torches. You can do that with uh, levers. I clicked the wrong button yet again. I'm really bad at this. I've never built a lever. Or a lever, if you're so inclined. Well, then we will get a stick. And we will get a cobblestone. We will amend this situation immediately. Lever. Now, we could use one of these and use either redstone to power all the engines up and power them all down at the same time. Or, there should be redstone wire in this pack. Oh yeah, there we go. What do y'all say? Y'all want to do that? All it requires is a bit of redstone around an iron ingot, and then you can do all these other fun colors. Hi! Are you having a good time? He's so confused. He wants to come in here and eat my face, but he can't work out how to do it. Bless his heart. Okay, well, good luck with you, or good luck to you on that front, sir. I, I encourage you to, to maybe stop. So that has an EMC value, so we can get some more of those. We can just get a stack of those, and then we need to go cook them up to get the proper red alloy ingot. Now, those do not have an EMC value, which is why I'm making a stack of them. It'll be nice to have some later on. How are we doing on juice? Oh, well, we're full. We're ready to go. Oh, oh, I guess I, I haven't shown you this either. I did get all this set up and going again, built a new macerator after the last one blew up. We are using hoppers for input, so that we have enough room for everything inside of here. And uh, we're using the cheapest big chests that we can get, the alchemical chests, because they are cheaper to operate than some of the other alternatives. And apparently blast proof, based on that test that we did that one time. So three of those on top of each other will create red alloy wire, which works kind of like redstone, except... It can do, yeah, it can do things like go up walls, do, do like little bins. I don't know if there's a way to prevent it from connecting together like that. I have to assume that there is. I wonder if insulating the wires would do that. I bet different colors wouldn't connect together. Okay, that could be helpful if we want to put all of our engines next to each other, but still have these connect up. Now, the reason we would want them not to touch each other is if we want to put all of our engines bundled up really close... I'm assuming that trying to connect the wires... Yeah. Well... It's going to say maybe even if it doesn't touch, it might still work. You know what? Let's take a nap and then we'll find out whether or not it's necessary in the morning. Okay, it's the next day and I had a p an epiphany, if you will, while I was sleeping. I realized that we had neglected something very important, which is how to get power from our engines into the quarry. 
because you could very easily just hook these up directly to the core. You can even run one through the other by just putting them all together in a chain, but I think you lose some efficiency that way. There is another way, though. If we look up pipes yet again, we will find that there is such a thing as a uh, kinesis pipe. These carry the redstone flux, and different ones carry different amounts at different speeds. I'm going to say let's go ahead and build the gold ones, because we've already got gold pipes in our inventory. And then getting redstone is basically child's play at this point. Check us out. And for some reason, we're building two of them, even though, yet again, they have an EMC value. So we're going to want to get quite a few of these. It could be necessary. I'm not saying that it is, but it could be necessary that we might need a wooden kinesis pipe in order to actually extract power out of our engines. Oh, interesting. Look at that. Work in progress. The above uh, limit isn't enforced. Does that mean that 1,280 redstone flux per second, if it's not enforced on the golden one, is it then also not enforced on the stone one? Could we save bakoodles of cash? Or I guess, you know, EMC is the currency of the world by using a stone ones instead and not really lose out on anything? There's only one way for us to find out here, folks. There's only one possible way for us to learn the answer, and that's to just try it. As I was saying, though, we might need wooden ones in order to extract power from the engines, so we, we might want to go ahead and just build some of those in advance just to be sure we've got them. The recipe is super basic. It's just wooden glass. It might not be necessary, you know, add a bit of redstone, but if we need them, it'll be nice to have them. Now, with all of that talk out of the way, let's get these hooked up and see whether or not they're going to work. I'm going to steal a little bit of dirt from over here and use that to fill in all of these holes over yonder, or right here. And then, let's see, we're going to have to hook up power to it, I guess, maybe from the bottom? That could work. I feel like I've been very disjointed and unclear for most of this episode, and I'd like to apologize for that. I'm doing the best I can here, folks. So we'll patch all that up. That looks fantastic. We're going to put our engines over here. Ooh, actually, they need to have at least one side open where I can get the redstone to them. We'll do four there, and then we'll do two here, and we can run our redstone wire down the middle with our lever there. Hold down shift and we can place these. Ooh, they are not connecting up. That's not looking promising. That is why I said we might need these wooden kinesis pipes. They hook up the way I would expect them to. We'll hook all of these together and then we can actually save on stone pipes by running them down the middle and we will have them connect up right there. Now, this connecting probably won't cause a problem, but there is a way to fix it using a pipe plug, which requires that we just get cobblestone to either side, gravel in the middle, that'll give us a structure pipe, which you can use for just free building if you want to, and then a structure pipe will give us four pipe plugs. My only issue with these is that they are horrendously ugly, and, and I hate them, but we've got 32 of them now, and we're going to make good use of them. They work in regular pipes, kinesis pipes, liquid pipes any any kind of pipe so we're gonna plop it right there that's gonna plug it off okay so now we're gonna put a bit of fuel in all of these we're gonna do just basically a test run and for that i only want a couple of the motors running so let's see if this works perfect so it doesn't actually have to go into the motor this might have worked with redstone as well could be worth testing i guess some of you probably heard the sound start up as soon as i switched it and if you're not familiar with the mod you're thinking wait a minute you're leaving in the middle of the action. Go back. Don't worry. I am. I am. That is the sound of the quarry preparing the space. It's putting down these quarry frame blocks. And this goes a lot faster when you have more power. But I want to test this. We're going to turn that off. And we're going to break these cables. And we're going to put down redstone instead. Wow. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. That one's not working. So this one's running solely off the fact that the lever is going. The redstone is not running the, the other motor because, of course, it won't. That's not how redstone works. Redstone has to be plugged directly in. So point one to these really cool cables. That'll power both of our motors. And I hate the fact that they're not in sync anymore. So let's fix that. Try to get in here and pick up that piece of redstone. There we go. 
And then we will go around and we will power up the rest of these and you will see what a tremendous difference it makes to the speed of this when you have multiple different engines running. And gosh, look at all that energy flowing through there. See, I was concerned that we would be generating too much energy for stone pipes, but if the limits aren't being enforced, then who cares? And yeah, that's moving along quite a bit more quickly. Not, not as fast as it could be going. Oh, chicken, you want to get out of there. If that chicken doesn't make it out, that chicken's going to be at the bottom of this quarry when all said and done. Y'all y'all remember that chicken. So there we go. The quarry has started mining, and I don't see... Oh, there they go. Okay. Okay. All right. So yeah, it is not automatically exporting to these chests, which is good. So we want to start getting things that have an EMC value. Uh, the torches. <laughs> We might not worry about that because we have a limited number of items we can put in here. But uh, seeds and torches, we want to be automatically dropped into here so that it can produce Aeternalis fuel. Now, you don't have to pick Aeternalis fuel the way that I did. It just has the same value as a diamond. So for me, it's basically the same. And like I said, we are going to start powering these off of Aeternalis fuel because it's going to burn for a really long time. I don't have to worry about them stopping when I'm not paying attention. Now, you don't have to stand here and baby this the way that I am to make sure that every single item gets sorted where it needs to go. Uh, you could just have everything you expect to be mined up in your inventory, set it right from the beginning. I don't know what all we're going to find. I mean, of course we're going to find dirt. We'll probably find things like cobblestone as well as it goes along. So it's going to go through and it's going to do all of this one layer at a time, slowly digging its way down. Now, eventually, like I said, we are going to run out of sorting in here. So what would we do in that situation? Well, in that situation, we would throw a plug right there. And actually, let me just set it up and demonstrate. So what I would do is I'd have this go up one. I'd have another diamond sorting pipe up top. There we go. And then I would plug this off. So now everything that isn't sorted into yellow will automatically go up to the next one. And then we will have a, another golden pipe hooked up right there. Not right now. Not yet. Because I don't have anything that I can tell it to sort through. Feather. Perfect. So in this one, we want to have another golden pipe. And we want the feather to go through yellow. So... Now, everything that is sorted through yellow goes down there. Oh, gosh, that's not what I wanted to have happen. Oh, shoot. Okay, this happens sometimes. I know how to fix this. Wait, what? How? How? No. I put lighting in the floors. It should be impossible for anything to spawn inside of there. Unless the floor lighting doesn't work. Yeah, F7's on, and there's nothing... What? Well, this is concerning. Hey, fellas, come outside! Come and get me! Come on! So there are a number of things I didn't show you with Swift Wolf's Rending Gale, like what happens when you right-click it. It repels mobs away from you. So if you're holding it in your hand and you have it right-clicked, that happens. You can also put it into your shield slot, and you can switch between them by hitting F like that. So then you could have out your sword, but that's not really going to do us any good because they can't get near me. Something else you can do, and I don't know if this works. Yeah, you can press Y to do that. But what is that actually doing? Get that back here so I can fly again. And then if we fly up and we hit Y. Oh! That's what that does. So look at the enemy, press Y. Did I do that? Oh! Oh! I'm just pressing Y still. What? Sometimes it makes lightning come out of the sky. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we've still got it turned on. Like I say, that's right click. I just wanted to get in here and deal with these guys without them blowing up. You know what I mean? I don't want to lightning strike my house though is the only issue. How did you guys get in here in the first place? Come on out. This is a good way to lure them out because it's going to keep them far enough away from me. Like, they're aggro, and they should be coming out the door towards me. But they won't actually be able to get super close. Hello, guys, come on. Okay, what if I turn it off? Come on, fellas. Come on. 
What 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 are you wielding right now? Can I can I force them out the door if I do this properly? Hold on. Yeah, yeah, out you go. Out you go. There you go. Okay. That's you dealt with. And then just one I think I can manage. So let me turn my ring off. And then come here, you. Yeah, okay. Two quick hits. This thing recharges way faster than I give it credit for. What was I even doing before I got distracted with that? Oh, the quarry's still going wrong! Iron! We want iron! We need iron. We need to put that to either side, a piece of glass, and that'll give us the iron transport pipe. And the iron transport pipe can be configured... Does it... What? The iron transport pipe... Oh, jeez, we need a wrench as well, I think. This is the build craft wrench. It requires three iron and a stone gear. Okay. There's our wrench. This is not at all how I anticipated this episode going. It's been a total disaster. We need to get to bed, and then we need to get out there and fix this. All right. Don't have time to deal with any of you right now. Get out of my way, shoe. Shoe. Off the wall with you. Off the wall with all of you. You! Come here, you. Look, we can fly along and just shove him off the edge. Okay, it's like taking out the trash. Let me keep this on while we're down here so nothing sneaks up on us. Right, iron transport pipe. Prevents items from going in a direction you don't want them to. So we will, we will, is this, is this it? This is the iron transport pipe? Shift right, click it on there. Okay, and now we want to use that wrench that we had earlier to... There we go. So do you see that little thing there? So that will allow items to pass through it in one direction, but not go back the other way. So you saw how, like, the dirt and stuff goes up there and then it realizes it can't go. But if we had something like, so we got a lot of cobblestone going in there. If we configured this diamond pipe up here to say cobblestone goes through yellow. Co cobblestone goes through yellow. You got to left click it in there. I was trying to right click it. It would be able to pass through that solid line. So that very complicated and convoluted mess that I just manufactured is how one might go about making sure that, wait, what? what? That is dirt. Dirt is supposed to be sorted inside of here. Thank you. How is dirt getting up here in the first place? Dirt should not ever be going up there. And if it does, it should be stopped by the iron pipe. Maybe we need to put an iron pipe down here as well. In fact, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to break that one. We're going to, as quick as we can, find our iron transport pipes. Uh, shift, click, plop. And then we got to configure this to be a particular way. Okay. There we go. So. <laughs> items should now not go up there, which means that this iron pipe is kind of useless. It'll allow it through here, allow it through here, but it won't allow it to go backwards, so it looks like everything's going the way it's supposed to. I don't know why dirt was coming up here at any point. It really shouldn't be. Unless maybe something was getting confused inside of there. I wonder... It must have been just coming back through. And we had a gold pipe here before. It must have just been going back through and then bypassing the sorting and then going into there. That's nuts. That shouldn't be happening. We can replace this one now, though, with a golden one. That should alleviate that issue. So once more, to hopefully explain everything in a way that is as clear as I think that I can, quarry, diamond pipe, diamond sorts things into yellow. Anything that isn't sorted into yellow, because it's not also occupied any of these filters, goes straight up to the next one, where we have another chance to sort items. So we, we're going to get rid of the dirt there. We're going to get rid of feathers. We're not going to have any more feathers. And actually, we're going to go ahead and grab some cobblestone if we can. And we're going to add that to the bottom filter so it doesn't have to travel all the way up to the top. We'll add that in there. I don't reckon we're going to be getting any more torches or flowers. Uh, if we do, I can manually filter those out. But th th those aren't things that need to be permanently filtered anyway. So the only reason you'd need the second one is if you run out of space on the yellow one. You could also have the pipe come out the front here and even off the back so if you didn't want to do two diamond pipes you could just have uh i would recommend iron pipes coming out of either side and that would give you access to one of these others to choose from so all of these are still running off of the meager coal that i put in them before this one is still running off of that eight or analysis fuel and it's been going for a while so that's actually what we're going to put in the rest of these and in case you were wondering if you've never done the math on it uh we can go ahead and have a look at coal Remember, coal goes into an alchemical coal. And just in case you folks have never done the math on it, remember, an alchemical coal is worth four coal, which means that a Mobius fuel is worth four alchemical coal, which means it's worth 16 coal. 
and then you can keep going from there. What is 16 times 4? That's going to be 64. Well, I made all of that a lot more complicated than it needed to be, what with the creepers inside the house, and then trying to get the sorting pipes working correctly. I, I feel like maybe in terms of a tutorial, it wasn't the best, but hopefully you folks followed along and you understand. If you have any questions, feel free to ask down below. But yeah, these are good for sorting. These are good for moving items quickly. These are good for making sure items don't go backwards into your pipes. And uh, kinesis pipes. Gotta extract it with the wooden ones. Engines. Alloy wire. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go eat a slice of pizza. And, and then we'll come back to do the battery. Well, folks, my recording session yesterday was supposed to go for about an hour and a half to two hours, cover the quarry, cover the battery, call it there. It ended up running for over four hours, and in that time, I got so distracted immediately after what you just watched, the quarry, that I forgot everything else I was going to do. I completely forgot about building the quarry fixer, as well as automating the quarry, and then by the time I remembered many hours had already passed, so when I sat down to edit the video, I realized that it was just too long to cram into a single video, and I was kind of disappointed with the outcome because we never really got to those things that I just discussed, the quarry fixer or, or automation. So I'm recording this as an append... A, a, what is it called? An appendices <laughs> at the end of the episode? A, a post-credits scene, if you will? An epilogue of sorts. So... There's more that you've not seen yet. The next video you will see, your future will be my past. That's why I'm not turning around. I don't want to spoil the next episode. I don't want you to see what's behind me. I don't want you to be able to logic out how my descent into madness took place, because trust me, there was a descent into madness. Instead, we're going to focus on what is directly in front of us, and I'm going to be showing you folks real quick, just... To kind of cap off this episode specifically about the quarry, I'm going to be showing you the quarry fixer, how to build it, what you might need it for, as well as how to do some really basic automation, which hopefully, yeah, we've got some ores in here now, and we can configure that up. So the first thing I want to do is show you how one might use the uh, quarry fixer, and to do that, I'm going to dig a hole here, and I'm going to put down a bucket of lava. And then we will see what happens when the quarry reaches this bucket of lava. It's going to take a little bit of time. Oh, I kind of hoped it would spread out a bit more than that. I suppose if I wanted it to spread out a bit more, I could put a block here. And it should spread to the sides back there. Perfect. And then I think if I break this one, it'll come back out again. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. It would be so funny if we found sulfur just in the quarry walls. Oh, you don't know about that, though. You don't know about that, either. Just do a little bit of mining while we wait on the quarry to get around, you know? Kind of help it out a bit on the items it missed. So here's the moment we've all been waiting for. What happens when it reaches the lava? As you can see, it just goes around it, which is not great, especially if you dig down into a lake of lava. Now, in the old days, your method to fix this was to get a bucket of water, maybe several of them, and put them around the corners of your quarry which did work and was quite effective. It also had the benefit of turning the lava, at least the source blocks, into obsidian, which you could then mine up. So that was always pretty useful. The problem with that method is that calculating all of that water from a few source blocks spreading out across so much territory tends to take up a lot of system resources. Now, computers are a lot more powerful these days than they were in 2010, but still, it's not an ideal solution. You might want to just get rid of that lava, get rid of that water flow, and just have a clean hole that it can travel down. And that is what the quarry fixer is for. The recipe for the quarry fixer is really basic. You need a Minecraft dispenser, and you got a couple of different crafting options for that. And then you need to combine it with four iron gears, and that'll get you the quarry fixer. You'll need a button to go along with it. And the cool thing about the quarry fixer is that it's a single-use item. You don't have to keep it out here. And I wonder if you actually need the button. You might be able to just right-click it. But you set it up next to your quarry, you right-click, and the job is done. It got rid of the lava. If you have lava that is coming in from the outside, it'll dam it off. Now, where is the lava, though? What happened to it? Well, if we dig back here, it's still back there. 
All the quarry fixer did was create a dam of stone to keep it from flowing in. Now, if the lava source block were inside of the quarry, it would simply get removed. So I've kind of broken the quarry again, but fortunately we still have it set up. So we can just right click, does its little calculation, and as you can see, it is walled off again. And we're done with the quarry fixer. We can collect it with our pick or pick-like item and use it on the next quarry. Again, putting water in the corners or all along or actually just mining in the ocean. That is also an option. One that we may or may not be utilizing in the future. But with that out of the way, it's time for me to demonstrate how you might set up a really basic and really simple automation. And I'm going to need a bit more material for this. Well, I've got 50 cobblestone, so no, I won't. I'm going to build an ugly little extension over here. Perfect. That's just temporary. And I've already manufactured some additional machines for this. So there are better versions of the macerator and the furnace that you might want to use. But for today, we're keeping things really basic. Now, in the future, I do intend to have a more permanent setup like this one. But for the sake of this video, we're going to go super basic. I'm going to throw my generator right down there. On top of it, I'm going to have my electric furnace. And then next to that, connected with a cable, I'll have my macerator. Now, for this demonstration, I'm using an alchemical chest and a hopper. And the reason I'm setting it up like this, that's a hole, is because I do not want the pipes to go directly into the macerator. Buildcraft pipes are not very smart, and if the inventory they are targeting is full, it will not care. It'll send the items anyway, they'll pop all over the floor, it'll be a huge mess. That is why I want to have this chest up here to act as a bit of a buffer, and then I'll have my hopper feed items down into my macerator. I do have an export upgrade, which we want to go to the west, so we're going to right-click, not shift right-click, but right-click, so it'll send items to the west, and I'll set that up there. I'll go ahead and fire up my generator with some coal, and then we want to configure all of this to start working immediately. So we already have some samplings in here of what it is mining up. So we want it to send silver. We want it to send iron, copper. The first thing I need to do is figure out what this top is going to be. So shift right click and that's going to be white. So inside of the white, we want to put our silver, our iron, our copper, our aluminum, uh, eventually, things like gold, whatever else we might want to get. Oh, gosh. Okay, we're now in a race. So I'm going to pipe that into this chest here. And you'll notice they start going much faster once they get into the gold pipes. I don't know if y'all caught that, but they zoom in. So what's going to happen now is they will drop into our macerator. And you can, of course, add whatever upgrades you want to to your macerator. But because we have our export upgrade set to pump items to the west... As soon as they are done inside of the macerator, they will automatically be shipped over to our generator. Now, I neglected to get an additional export upgrade for the generator, but as you can imagine, you just get an export upgrade, put another chest next to the generator. Why am I talking about it? Let's just do it. So I am back and I got another, in this case, basic export upgrade, which is super simple to build, either using this re recipe here or using the base upgrades, which I need to make more of. They've been really useful. I've also got an alchemical chest because I find that those tend to be a little bit more expensive than a diamond, but you're getting a lot of storage space, which is gonna be helpful. So if we right click on this, it'll send items to the north, or I'm sorry, to the east. I got my orientation set up wrong, but we actually want them to come back towards us. So we'll shift right click and that'll say west. And then we will plop down our alchemical chest to the west. Put this in there and of course it'll only oh oh interesting you might remember before they would only import and export items that were recently finished oh my gosh i wonder if that means it's been patched if it has been patched then that means that the basic export upgrade now may work properly inside of a macerator so let's add some iron and remember before if we had the basic export upgrade it would only export a single item out of the, the output here. So you'd get two iron ore, it would export just one of them. Let's see what happens now. Now that we're on 1.0.2, does it work properly? Yes! Well, everyone, good news. You no longer have to use an export upgrade. A basic one will work fine. I've already got this one, so, you know. There we go. And that is everything that I had hoped to cover in today's episode. Again, there's three more hours of content 
from my last recording session that will make up the next episode, episode 7. And that is going to involve a descent into madness and chaos. So I hope you folks are looking forward to it. I don't want to spoil what's behind me. So you'll just have to wait till next time. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you for watching. I'll see you later. Bye. All right, we are back. I have had two slices of pizza that I ordered for dinner last night. There was the sale at the Domino's and I got two large pizzas for like 15 bucks. And I was like, perfect. That'll be dinner tonight and dinner tomorrow and dinner the day after that. <laughs> it's so good. And now we are ready to focus on building the battery, which should be pretty straightforward. We still have the quarry fixer. I was hoping that we might get deep enough that I could demonstrate how it might work, but we might have to create an artificial scenario for that. But the big battery, again, not necessary. As you can see, it is running off of power raw just fine. But there's a lot of really cool things you can do with a battery. We could limit the amount of output so we could slow or speed up the quarry based on how much power we let out of the really big battery. We could also have a whole bunch of these running even when the quarry isn't and building up a massive charge. I believe we can even convert RF into, and if we look up conversion, we might find, I mean, obviously we have that, but it can go the other way and converts industrial craft electricity to rail craft charge. I mean, that's not exactly what I was going for. Fact is, I know it can be done somehow, or at least I assume it can be done. So if we wanted to generate a whole bunch of RF and then convert that into EU, theoretically, it's possible. Now, again, I don't see it, but I'm pretty sure it's a thing. So we want to build us a big battery. And I'm thinking we build the big battery right down here where the quarry is. Specifically, though, I think it should be somewhat under the house. So let's get a good night's rest, and then tomorrow we will begin that project. I've been wanting to put a basement on this place anyway. So let's figure out where our center is. So frustratingly, it is not perfectly centered, but I can work with this. This is totally fine. Oh yeah, this place. This is that random hole that was next to our base. I never actually filled it in. Okay, we are now under the house. In fact, I think that right there might be house foundations. So I think we should be two blocks under, which is perfect. Hello. How are you? Don't look at me like that. We want this to open up on the quarry so we can see what's going on in the quarry. All right, well, the quarry has been busy and so have I. I made a giant box. I wanted to test something with these doors here to see whether or not we can make our entrance hidden. <laughs> very funny game, very funny. Right click to open that door. And then we could have another door here. So these are using the reinforced frame doors. Uh, we could probably also, just using the reinforced frame blocks, we could probably use a regular framed door, but these are blast resistant. Okay, yeah, all right. I'm seeing one issue right out the gate, which is that it's very obvious that there's a cavity there, but otherwise, you know, you would never know. It's perfectly subtle. I think I'll probably re-engineer that at a later date, maybe put it one block further that direction because eventually all of this is going to be lined <laughs> with marble. <laughs> anyway, we need to focus now on building ourselves this really cool battery. So let's actually leave this room for now. Oh gosh! No! Get me out! Stop! Stop now! Oh gee, I do not know what that was all about. You know what would be nice is if we had a way to get down there from up here. Perfect. Uh, wow, that's almost the center of the room as well. Wait a minute, I've had a brilliant idea. So what if we use the reinforced framed trap doors here? Perfect. And then we could add another one onto the ceiling. We can put a marble inside of it. Uh, that Now that's the second time I've done that. Will I ever learn? The only issue now is that what happens... <laughs> What happens when I forget which tile it is? I just have to remember it's in front in front of the second torch to the left of the wall facing away from the window. Perfectly easy to remember thing. But cool, now we've got quick access in and out of there. Now these batteries are multi-block structures and they're quite expensive to manufacture. We're now down below a million EMC. But I think we should still be able to manage. Righto, though. Starting off with the walls. These are big, expensive multi-block structures. We're going to need a bunch of walls. 
I don't know how many, so we're gonna we're gonna build the smallest one that we can right now, and we'll kind of count as we go. And therefore, if you folks want to follow along at home, you'll know. But the only issue is that this requires blaze powder, and we don't currently have blaze powder, so we're gonna need to build a portal. Now I know what you're thinking, Reese. You've done that. <laughs> I have. You're right. I did build a portal, and look what happened to it. Do you think I'm going over there? I don't want to go over there. I'm 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 too nervous to go down there. Because of that! i tell you what, though, folks. I've learned my lesson well, and we are building this next portal very, very far away from our base. We're going to build it on top of this other, more different volcano instead. And I'll tell you what we're going to do is we're going to make it big. We're going to make it bigger than it needs to be. Why would we do this, you might be wondering? To appease whatever beings are building portals. Or, or building things around my portals. Maybe if it's a really big one, they'll either be very appreciative and leave me alone or they'll be very intimidated by its size and also still leave me alone. Either way, I don't care. I just want to go get Blaze Rod and be left alone. Oh? Hi there. Are you affiliated with this place? How did you get here? We got an Ender Pearl out of that. So all that time we spent hunting in a previous episode was unnecessary. Should we relight that? Oh! It looks like a... Like a big pig nose and snout. Okay. Well. We gotta find... And possibly the map will help us on this one, because the map will show us maybe a fortress around here. I don't see a fortress on the map yet. But that's okay. That's okay, we can fly around till we find one. Uh, we have... We have plenty of EMC. Oh, there's no mark on the map about... Is this... I guess this is how we get back out of here. I don't know where the other portal is. Wait, this is where we came in before. <gasps> oh, I must have built it too close to the other portal. Does that mean when I go through here, I'm going to be in the creepy fortress? All right, we'll just have to move fast. Let's set up a waypoint. And I think all of my waypoints were deleted when we updated the game. So we'll just put a new waypoint. Portal... Home? And then we can use the skull and crossbones because this actually looks like it may be a large skull. Cool. Boy, this sure beats traveling around here by foot, I'll tell you that much. You can move so fast with this ring just flying around. I feel like I'm inside of the Death Star and I'm, I'm doing a run on the core. Oh! Well, I don't know what a blaze lantern is, but I found blazes. What in the blazes is a blaze lantern and can I get one? I want this. Give it to me. Oh. Wait, that's just a monster spawner, so that's where they're actually coming from. Well, then what is a blaze lantern? I have to figure that out later. Hey, that's all I needed. Ooh, while we're here, though. Oh, gosh, if we don't burn to death, where is... I've brought one cooked pork chop with me. I've made horrible mistakes. Leave me alone. See, I was going to say, let's try to fight that thing. Because if we defeat the ghast and we get a ghast tier, that's one less thing we'll have to come back to the nether for. But I didn't think to bring food. We're in a pretty bad way. Let's just get out of here. We're going to hope for the best when it comes to going through this portal. I've still got to figure out what a blaze lantern is. I wonder if it's just a lantern built out of blaze rods. Oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh. Get me away, get me away, get me away, get me away. Do you think we're fine? Right, home, safe, away from the fortress. How do you make one of these? I think that's literally, it's just a blaze lantern, and it's called that because it's made out of blaze parts. So I assume that means if we place this thing down... First off, are you kidding me? Are you actually kidding me right now? So that's how the creepers got in here. But I know darn well... Look right here, I've got a reinforced frame block, and I know that I put glowstone in it. I know that I did, this is not up for debate. I know because I had this on, hold on. Does it fade over time? What? You know what's wild is that I can tell where those blocks are because monsters can't spawn on them. Like, here's some right here. So I should have just made my entire floor out of these blocks, I guess. Look at this. What? Why? Why would the Why would the glowstone disappear from the blocks? This is silly and frustrating. And I need it to stop. Put that down there. Okay, well, I think I've got them all back. 
and I put this down in the middle because I couldn't find that one. But if they go out again, then I'm going to tell you right now, putting glowstone and reinforced blocks do not recommend it, does not last. So now we can take our blaze rod and get EMC out of that. And then here's a question for you. Blaze powder. Hmm. A rod is worth 1536 and it gives you two blaze powder. Two blaze powder is worth 1536. But what if you put it through a macerator and it gave you three? A little tease for next time, folks. Back to the task at hand, though. We've got our three obsidian, our three blaze powder, two blocks of gold, and a diamond, and that gives us four battery walls. We will need more than four. I don't know exactly how many more. Definitely not a stack. That was silly. 32 is probably overkill as well, but let's be prepared. We will need one battery controller. Oh, yeah, we're going to need battery walls for the rest of these recipes. So we're also going to need to build a redstone lamp, which is vanilla Minecraft, as well as some redstone repeaters and comparators, which are also part of vanilla Minecraft. I'm not really big on the redstone scene. I've never had the mind for it necessarily. So a lot of these recipes, even though they're, you know, super basic, you know, of course, everyone knows the, the repeater and the uh, all that stuff. I, I just, I don't know them off the top of my head because I never use them unless they're required for a recipe because I just don't do redstone things. But there we go. Lamp, some uh, battery walls, the comparator, the repeater, blaze powder, redstone, big old block of it. Finally gives us the battery controller. Next, we need the battery power tap, and we will need two of those. I see you out there, Mr. Creeper. Don't think you're being sneaky. Yeah, look at me. You look at me, and you understand that I'm not intimidated by you. Mainly because there's a wall between us. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You carry on. You get out of here. Don't look at me. Stop. Stop. Go away. That's a very nice everything you have in there. Be a shame if something were to happen to it. So this will require a block of graphite to build the power tap. And the block of graphite is you make a block of charcoal and you cook it up. Now fortunately, the power tap, like everything else, has an EMC value. So we only need to make one of them and then we can EMC ourselves up the second one. Next up, we need a battery electrode and we will need a minimum of two of them. Although if you have more, it increases how much power you can input and output take out output extract from the battery uh, at any given time big old you graphite with gold blocks these suckers are expensive and like i say we will need two of them so there we go that's pretty much all the material we're going to need to build the thing so let's empty out our inventory of all of this excess and let's talk about what we're going to need next which is a block of sulfur Except, we're not actually going to use the block of sulfur in the battery. We need to use it for something else, and I'll show you what I mean. But surely we found some sulfur by now. Uh-oh. Sulfur ore, okay. Yeah, it's most prevalent around Y10 with a 0 0.1... No! 0.01% chance. And that's the good odds. Them's, them's, the, them's the good odds. Really? Alternatively, we can build a rock crusher. Rock crushing is what it's called. I, I don't... It's railcraft. It's probably a big multi-block structure. That has a 50% chance of getting one from a blaze rod. Apparently, if you find appetite and you crush it, there's also a 20% chance. Yeah, so this is a 3x2x2 multi-block structure from Railcraft, just called Rock Crusher, which doesn't look particularly difficult to manufacture, except for steel, which requires a blast furnace, which is itself a multi-block structure. I mean, the alternative is... We go dig around and try to find sulfur. We're at a bit of an impasse, because we can't build it without this thing. And fortunately, sulfur has an EMC value. So if I just find a sulfur, theoretically, we'll be good to go. Well, this is all very expensive. This is all extremely expensive. Like, that's 344,000 EMC all by itself. So we'll leave all that here. And then, I don't know, is there is there such a thing as nether sulfur? 
I think just finding some sulfur ore is going to be our best bet. So it's got an EMC value, a single sulfur of 32, but there could be more than one per cell. Well, however long this takes, here I go. You get away from me now. Go away. Shoot. Get out of here. Gosh, this stuff won't light up anymore. I bet you it's lost all its glowstone as well. Which means it's not gonna it's not gonna keep creepers from spawning around here. What the heck? Get away you you get away from there, you absolute monstrosity. I don't even know how you got up here. Go away. Jeez. Oh. Oh, these have gone out as well. Framed blocks! You've betrayed me! We need a new light source, I guess. Comment down below your recommendation for the best light source. So apparently our best bet's to mine at level 10, which, I mean, maybe there's just some sticking out here already, and we've just never collected it because it didn't seem useful. Also, hi. It'd be great if you could drop some slime. Thank you, we don't have any of that yet. Don't even know what sulfur would look like if I found it, you know what I mean? I guess here's a note to all of you. Make sure if you see sulfur, you collect it. <sighs> I guess we'll just start going this way. <laughs> I mean, okay, that kind of worked out, but not I mean, not really the way we wanted it to. But, I mean, we're not complaining. The Blast Furnace! This is Plan C, everyone. We're building a Blast Furnace, which requires Soul Sand, Nether Brick, and a Magma Cream, or an Infernal Brick, which uh, we don't have. So... Let's see what we can do here. Do we even have soul sand? We're going to have to go back to the nether. Ah, soul sand. Flying. Totally normal. Perfectly fine. Back into the mouth of the weird skull. And then back out of here as quick as we can. Pretty sure I heard something walking around behind us just then. Ooh, I got, I got goosebumps. Now, we didn't get any nether brick while we were in there. That's because I know we can cook that up, and we're just going to go ahead and do that. So four netherrack will render us with four nether brick, which can then be assembled after we go ahead and memorize that recipe into nether brick. And then we can take a blaze powder and a slime together to get our magma cream. And then according to this, this is a hollow 3x4x3, three by by three, which I think means 4 tall. My intention was to create a bunch of them, but they have an EMC value, so maybe a stack? I mean, that's too many. So 3x4x3, three by by three. boom, look at that. So this is how we create steel. But I wonder if we can use regular coal or if we're going to need coal coke. We'll put our steel up there and we'll put our coal in down here and it's not going to take it. That means we're going to need to build a coke oven. This is just getting more and more complicated. This is like the one small favor quest in RuneScape. Fortunately, this only requires sand and brick. So we get a stack of bricks and combine that with sand to get coal coke oven brick. And that's going to be a 3x3x3 three by three by three hollow. There we go. So that gives us the ability to create coal coke. So we're going to take our <laughs> regular coal and we're going to put it over here. And then uh, I think we'll actually we just put coal in there and we wait. That's so slow. I'm the type of person who likes to watch the sun rise while I think about the positives. Positives. In the future, we'll need these things. And I'm glad that we have them. I'm also the type of guy who likes to sneak around corners and spy on potential enemies while I think about all the negatives, like how whoever built that built it way faster than I built this. And how if they put their mind to it, they could completely destroy me. Okay, we finally got ourselves a single coal coke. Now, how long that will burn for, I could not tell you. Whether or not one is going to be enough to process this block of iron into a block of steel, I also couldn't tell you that either. All I can tell you is that we really need to get a block of steel. We don't have to do an entire block, by the way. We could just do a single one. 
In fact, inside of a blast furnace, anything iron could be made into into steel. Oh yeah, that wasn't enough. I'm going to go outside with my pork chops and set myself down over here by the quarry and just be patient. I don't know. Maybe I'll go get another slice of pizza. Dang it. Jeez. Okay. I was trying to do like a cool time lapse here while I went and had like another slice of pizza, but instead the computer decided to change the window it was focused on, which is unfortunate. That happens for some reason with- Oh my gosh! What are you? Why are you in my house? It stopped working again! I Ugh! Never put glowstone in your framed blocks. It's a waste of time. I was gonna start complaining about Pop OS. Oh, really? Seven? In that whole time, we got seven. You know what? Let's let's just let's get let let's just let's just let's just let's just okay. Let's let's just. Hello? Is this gonna do anything? It, uh. Hello? Sixty-four seconds. That's a little over a minute. It it should give us uh, iron into steel. It looks like he's using one of these. Oh! Oh, it worked! I guess the project... I, I guess the progress bar, I should say, is just slightly broken. Perhaps another coke oven is in order. You know what would be really fun is if we automated that to move the cold coke in by itself. And we can do that with a redstone engine. So this is pretty straightforward. Wooden gears, a piston, glass, and any type of plank. Now, there are other ways of doing this without using an engine that are better, but they require a little bit more setup. And I'm going to be showing you folks how to do that in the future. So just sit tight and be prepared for that. But for right now, we also need to get ourselves a wooden transport pipe. And then we mightn't need a wrench, but then we might need a wrench. You know, it's hard to say which way that might go. So we just plop down our wooden transport pipe, hold down shift and right click. And that didn't work. Maybe on the top it would work, though? Oh, wait a minute. No, this is a kinesis pipe. Well, that's why it didn't work. We need the regular wooden transport pipe. <laughs> uh, hold down shift and right click. And it's set up the way we wanted to. So the item, or I'm sorry, the inventory you want to pull out of should be on the side with the little red marker. Let's see if it does it automatically over here as well. It did not. So it's going to pull stuff out of here, which is not what we want. So we're going to use the wrench to right click. Do that, and then we're going to throw these engines underneath, power them with a bit of redstone, which will hopefully not interfere with these things functioning. I don't think that they will. So these will run kind of freely, so long as there's something to move. And that'll keep this operation running, hopefully. They've stopped moving right now. These don't require any sort of fuel. The reason we're not using a bunch of them on the quarry is because they produce so little energy. So this one's going to go. That's going to fire up and start moving it over. Now, we would need to get into the world of chipsets and gates and things if we wanted to do this without the engines, which we want to do. But that requires we build an assembly table, put all the parts in it we need, and then blast it with a laser. It's not actually super complicated. It's just not exactly what I had planned for today. Then again, I didn't have this planned for today, so... Come on, folks, we have time. What, what else would we be doing? So this is the assembly table. We'll need obsidian, a diamond gear, a diamond, and redstone in order to manufacture it. And we're also going to need a laser. But let's start off with our assembly table. We can plop that down right here, I suppose. Hold on, hold on. After we teach it to the system. Next up is the laser. And the laser is one of those things that the more you have the better. That is to say, the more you have, the faster operations will complete. So we've got our table here, and then a certain number of blocks away, it could be three, could be four, I can't quite recall, but uh, it needs to be a certain number of blocks away from the assembly table. You'll need something to power it, like a Stirling engine. So I might have my distances off here a bit, but... I think turning that on will do the trick. 
What we want to build here is something called a pipe pulser, which requires a redstone engine and some iron ingots. I think I actually called the redstone engine a wooden engine before, which, I mean, it is made of wood, but you should know that's not what I meant. And then add four of those, select pipe pulser, and then we want to come over here and power this thing on and see whether or not we did it correctly. Boom! The laser's going, it's doing its thing, it's slowly building it. Again, we could add a second laser if we wanted to, but I think one will do for now. In the meantime, it looks like this is managing quite well. I did notice that our engines are turning red. Now, I don't think they're going to blow up, but they might seize up. I'm going to go ahead and turn them off for a bit and see if they cool down. We have enough now to make a single block of steel ingot. Oh yeah, they're starting to cool off. Well, we're not going to need them much longer anyway. Because this is just about finished. And if I'm not mistaken, I think it just flings things into the air when it's done. So there's one of them. We're going to go ahead and do this one, I guess. We'll get rid of the lever and the engine. I like that There's this pack doesn't quite have the correct textures for when you're breaking things. So it's just, it's just <laughs> pink and black. And kind of disgusting looking. But we should be able to right click this under there. And then right click it again to turn it on. And theoretically, that's all it takes. It should automatically extract things out of here. No power required. I do want to be here to see it happen. Oh yeah, there it goes. Jeez, it zoomed through there. Great. Turn that one back on. Because I imagine there's at least yeah, one or two coal coke in there. And this one should be done. So we'll just go ahead and power that bad boy off. No longer needed, thank you. So once again, plop that down, right click it to turn it on. And this should be better automated now. Now this is going to give us our one steel block. But remember, in order to build the rock crusher, we need one of these for four of these. And this is a three by two by two structure. So I'm thinking three across the bottom, two high, that's six. And then two in depth, that's 12. We're going to get four from this, so we need three blocks of steel. We've got one and then a couple of extra steel ingots, so we're going to be waiting a little bit longer. This whole episode has been Ground Blast Furnace Slag. don't know what that is. I guess it came out of one of these machines. Oh yeah, it's right down there. That's the Ground Blast Furnace Slag, and it can be used... For making a bag of cement. How fun. I'll play your silly little game. Give me my bags of cement. What do I do with them? I know, I know this has nothing to do with the original intention of the episode. But what are we going to do while we wait on this? I have no better ideas. We have a bit of a hole out here. In front of our quarry observation room. Where we might go ahead and test a bag of cement. So I don't really know how this works. What, do I just maybe put down water? And then right-click cement on it? What do, what do I do? It, it says concrete mix on it. Cement and concrete are not the same thing. Oh! Oh, we use it in recipes to make either reinforced concrete or concrete ties. I thought maybe we could just, like, put it out in the world and do things with it. But no, appar apparently not. At least we can turn that in for EMC. Because there's nothing else we could do with that stuff until we made something out of it. At this rate, I might as well go back underground and keep looking for sulfur. On the off chance that we just happen upon it while all of this is running up here. I'm just going to go ahead and say that sulfur in the wild does not exist. The wiki is a lie. It's all a lie. Sulfur doesn't exist. It's all a lie. But we now have 13 of these. Which means we're that much closer. Only need five more. While we wait on that, now is a good time to talk about how we're going to light up our house since, well, you know, this is, is failing rapidly and making me quite sad. The one on the roof seems to be, well, no, there's some dim spots. What are all their alternatives? An inverted white lamp is a, well, it's a lamp, but the inverted part refers to the fact that instead of needing a redstone signal to turn on, it would need a redstone signal to turn off. That is to say, it's on all the time by itself. The question here would be, what color do we use? And I feel like... I mean, white seems like the obvious choice. We could go with a nice inverted gray to match the ceiling, though. 
or orange might look good with the floor. They all have an EMC value, so we could pretty much try any of them. Oh, <laughs> that blue one is expensive. We could pretty much try any of them, though. You just need glass panes, a redstone torch, and white Illumar, which is um, looks like glowstone and then whatever color we want to use. Making the best of a bad situation. This isn't what we wanted to do today. But we're doing what we do, what we do, what we can when we're stuck here waiting anyway. Ba 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 ba. Inverted lamp. We can make five of those bad boys. And we can put them down here in place of those. And those are nice and bright. And they almost look like glowing marble. In fact, if we wanted to use them around the perimeter... Oh, that looks pretty decent. But what we could do, I was thinking, is because the glass, you know, we could put this underneath there. I'm just not sure how that would look from the outside of the house. But then again, the whole house is going to be surrounded in the future with grass anyway. So what's the best way to break one of these? Like that, I guess. So if we broke all of those and we did this, and we backfill all that. Okay. I kind of like it. This will add the sort of bonus effect of lighting up the outside as well. Let's see how that looks from outside. Okay, let's tap F7. And we'll break these torches just to confirm. Yeah, the light's coming out the bottom of the windows. It's lighting this all up. Looks pretty good from a distance. I want to see it again, though, when it's completely dark. Right, got the whole house done now with the glowing blocks. It's not going to work on the inside, you know, when we get too far away from the walls. I'll have to come up with another solution. I don't know about running this all the way along. Again, the orange ones, I don't know. Do those look pretty close in color? Because they kind of do to me. At least enough that this, which is actually a light brown ceramic block and not a lamp. Let me get back to that. These two, they don't look so dissimilar to me that it would be distracting. I think it might work. Alternatively, we just have like a white path down the middle. That's the, that's our other option. But we, oh gosh, we're more than ready to go here. So at long last, we can create our final block of steel. And I'm actually going to leave all that running over there. Because we might need more steel in the future. But for now, we need pistons, diamonds, and more steel. How about that? As well as... 10 plates? Metal rolling. Oh gosh, of course. So we have two different options. We have a powered rolling machine, although I don't know what type of power it uses. If it's EU, that would probably be okay, but I think we can use a manual one for right now. Assuming manual means I just put items in and it gives me the items I want. That will require us to build using a stone gear and bronze ingots, a bronze gear. And of course, I got enough to make so many of these, but we only ever needed one. And then from there, we will combine it with four pistons and a crafting table to get our manual rolling machine. And we're going to set this down over here with the rest of this stuff because it's part of a related mod. All right. Yeah, it looks like we just put things in there. And specifically what we're putting in there is a bit of steel ingot. Well, hold on. No, this is crafting. So we're trying to get 10 plates, so 4, 10. This all feels way too simple. Click to craft. It's just happening. All right. Well, that's that's 10 plating done. Maybe make a bit more just in case. Can it be shapeless? It is not shapeless, but it looks like it doesn't matter where you actually put them in the crafting grid. So that's our metal plating. Next up, we will need a charge coil which is going to be iron plates. I can guess how those are going to be built. And then copper inside of the rolling machine to get the small charge wire spool. None of us thought we were going to be getting a railcraft tutorial today. None of us thought we were going to be doing anything railcraft related. But that's, that's the funny thing about life, isn't it? Sometimes it's just unexpected. So it looks like if we add a whole bunch of items in there, it'll automatically keep making more, which is pretty useful. Seeing now that the rolling machine has an EMC value, I propose we get another rolling machine. Maybe two more. So we'll have this one making just bakoodles of this stuff. Oh. Oh, now I see what it means by manual. It means that if I look away... Right. Sort of defeats the purpose of having two of them. 
But then, ironically, in order to build the powered one, we have to have this charge motor. Like we're trying to build for... Yeah, okay. So now we have the iron plating and the small charge wire spools that we needed to get the charge coil. Now we need to get a charge terminal, which is going to require that we have brass ingots. Now, brass ingots looks like we can make those, uh, make those by using zinc and copper. I always thought that brass was just tin and copper. Same as bronze, but in different, like a different consistency. More tin, less copper. Maybe you can also make it with zinc, or maybe it's always been made with zinc. The real question is, have we ever found zinc before? Oh, no. Zinc ore. How much do you want to bet? Oh, zinc ore can be found in the end. Or the nether. At least it seems to be... Oh. Oh, no, it's not plentiful there. I just wanted to build a big battery. That's all I wanted to do today. I just wanted to build a big battery. Why, why won't you let me build a big battery? We, we, we go through all this effort. We're so close to building a rock crusher. And you're telling me that I can't build a rock crusher. Because brass requires zinc. Poor zinc ore is a thing. Apparently. Somewhere. To be fair, I did misspell zinc a minute ago. I spelled it with a, uh... Okay, well... Z K or C. We don't have any that I can see. What if we just go to the nether? And we just find some? What, if, what, what then? I just wanted to make a big battery. I thought it would be fun. I happened to get home from work early today. I sat down to record at 5. It is now 8.53... So we're looking for this. That's what we're looking for. And it does look like our best bets are going to be around Y13. So I've sort of come over here to separate myself from any potential pigmen. And uh, we're going to start digging down. Wow, that just blew up. Oh my gosh! It's a Christmas miracle! Oh! Oh! Ho 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 ho! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas, everyone! Ho 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 ho! It's September. Santa Claus is still on vacation. Let's get out of here. That place is so freaky. Just before I do anything with these, I want to smelt it? That's what I want to do with it? Okay, you're the boss, I guess. I don't know, it feels weird. I will smelt my two zinc ores. Wow, we've got a lot of ingots. While those cook up, let's go see how much EMC that gets us. Uh, what are we sitting at right now? 484? 677. Okay. More gold would have been better. Okay, we've got our zinc ores now. Can we put those through a macerator? No, we can only smelt them. But they do have an EMC value. I'm so cautious right now with these. Because they're, 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 the, they're the thing that's keeping me going right now. The fact that we found these, that's all that's keeping me in there right now. Alrighty. Copper. Zinc. Brass ingots. We made way too many. Way more than what we need. So we need at least a single plate, if you wouldn't mind. Put that across there. Put that on... T uh, that's the exact opposite. I did just even say that we would need a single one, and then I did that. Like a silly goober. I think that's everything we need now. We just need to get the diamonds and the pistons. So let's grab the pistons first to get a stack of those. And we will get the diamonds next and get a stack of those. We really don't need that many. Uh, so we can put all that together to get our charge motor. Oh, wait a minute. We will need three of them. Well, let's just make one for now and then feel like we have a slight small sense of accomplishment. Uh, and then remember that actually we have everything we need for these. So two more of those. I started recording at about 5.30 and I'm not done yet because I decided to do something very simple. I built a quarry and I thought, you know what, we'll tack on a big battery to the end of it. So the quarry was done in like 40 minutes. The big battery? Oh, oh no. Turns out we're going to need some sort of weird alloy. 
that has a 0.01% chance of spawning? <laughs> okay. Alternatively, we can build this whole big contraption to manufacture it. And I was like, well, let's just go see if we can find it. We couldn't. So I built this entire massive manufacturing facility, which is still not finished because the last piece requires a different rare element that... <laughs> At this point, I'm just sort of anticipating something else going horribly wrong. You know what I mean? Like, you ever just find yourself in that position where you just realize, this this can't possibly go right. Nothing else has. So, naturally, something else has got to fail right before our eyes. But it looks like we ran out of diamonds and pistons? I was gonna say, I think not. I got out a stack of the darn things. Which actually we should probably put back. Because carrying around that many diamonds is a recipe for disaster. Okay, well, we've got our rock crusher now. We'll set that down right here. So it was two high, three wide, and two in depth. And then what did we want to do here again? Blaze rod! And we're only getting a 50% chance here, but you know what? We can get as much blaze rod as we need to. Now, I do wonder how this thing is powered. Does it require coal coke of some kind? Hello? Hello? How, how do you work? Hello? Uh... Is this the one that I need to jump on? I remember that being a thing in some pack on some machine, but that cannot be right. The wiki says that it runs off of redstone flux, which we can get using this here... Uh, this here engine. Um. Hmm. Well, it certainly doesn't look like it's hooking up. Yeah, no part of this thing wants to hook up to power. It seems incredibly unlikely. Yeah. No, I didn't think so. I am looking at pictures on the internet of this thing hooking up to Kinesis pipes. And... Just no. <laughs> no. Why are you the way that you are? Why why are you like this? I don't know if I care. I, I don't think that I do. I don't think that I care anymore. I don't think that I care about the battery anymore. I don't care anymore. I go outside my secret door. And I'm going to go into my... Yeah, I'm fine. We don't take fall damage with Swift Wolf and Gale, so I'm okay. Just down here. Looking at the one thing that is working for us. Well, folks, I think that that's going to do it for today. Did we get where we wanted to go? No. But we did a lot of really cool stuff along the way. We got a bunch of steel ingots now. We got a bunch of coal coke. We got a bunch of creosote oil. We built a rolling machine. We did this really cool thing with the laser and the assembly table. Automated some build craft pipes. That'll be handy in the future. We've done a lot of really cool things. All I can think about now is how I could have spent all of that time instead building a system to automate what's coming out of the quarry being turned into useful objects, which is a plan for the future. But not next episode, folks. Because as promised, next episode... We will be looking at ways to automate, not automate, well, yeah, automate the the generation of EMC. Some ways that are officially supported, and some ways that are a little bit hacked together. All right, I tweaked the sorting over here based on some things that I saw in this chest that should not be there. Looks like we're doing good. We've got five Aeternalis fuel. I mean, we just put what would have been, so there's the starting six. And then we got to 12 and I boosted it. And then I added some more just now. So we're at, <laughs> we're at 18 invested. And we've gotten 5 out of it so far. But once we get a little bit lower, and also once we start processing the ores, that's when we'll start making progress. We also have this really cool room with the, the terrible hidden door that doesn't quite look right. But does work to be fair. This works a little bit better. Oh, we built the cool lamps, too? I mean, really, we got some neat stuff done. I want to see that from outside. Okay, the torches on the roof are still terrible. I need, I need to do something about that. Well, the house looks great aside from that. I like the lighting. Until next time, folks, thank you all for watching. God bless each and every one of you, and I'll see you later. Bye!
Howdy folks, how are y'all doing? Race here, welcome back to another episode of our Tech It 2 Let's Play Adventure. Where you'll notice everything is a little bit tidied up in here after last time, after the, the debacle that was the previous installment. But before we go any further, I wanted to address really quickly that we have updated to 1.0.3, which has removed EMC values from even more items. And the reasoning given was that they were trying to stay more in line with what Tech It was in Tech It Classic. Now, I'm not happy about this. I love EMC. It is the currency of the world. I think every object should have EMC. I love it. But I do understand the reasoning. And even though you can revert it, you can always assign your own values. I'd prefer not to. I want to stick with the spirit of the pack, and that is determined by the pack maker. In this case, uh, X John and the tech Technic team. So, we want to roll with that. We're going to stick with that. I'm not sure... What all has been removed? Maybe I'm crazy. I seem to remember that Golden Pipes had an EMC value last time, uh, but they do not. Strangely, <laughs> the one pipe that does and is in here is the Stone Kinesis pipe, and I'm sure other pipes... Well, I said that. I guess other pipes don't. Yeah, it looks like the, <laughs> the Cobblestone and the Stone Kinesis pipes are the only two that still have an EMC value, and I have to assume that that is a mistake, that the intention was to get rid of the values, and they just didn't on those two. It is unfortunate because I try to make my videos combination tutorial, combination let's play. And the problem with playing a pack when it's, you know, fresh out the gate like this is that every update changes something. And the previous video you made is now a little bit out of date. I think that after maybe a month from now or so, when the updates have calmed down and everything's sort of settled, I might do a second pass. No let's play, straight tutorial, just raw, this is a tech it guide walking through all of these things as it exists in version 1.0.7 or whatever we land on. But for right now, we're going to carry on in 1.0.3. And today, we're going to be talking about generating EMC. Now, when it comes to EMC, it is the currency of the world. And much like a real-life currency, you can get it by exchanging goods for paper that we pretend has value. In this case, we exchange our goods for something that does actually have value, EMC. I need to charge that down and actually maybe not have it in my inventory for the, uh, for the rest of the video. Oh, does the, does... <laughs> you tell it, what? The destruction catalyst no longer has an EMC value. But it stores EMC. Okay. Anyway, moving along... EMC is energy generated from matter, and it can be put back into matter. E equals MC squared. EMC, you, you get where this is going. See, the way we've been doing it is we've been taking items and converting that into EMC to make other items. But we can actually get EMC from energy, from the sun. And that is the proper way of doing it, using things like energy collectors, um, relays, and condensers. And that's the first thing we're going to do. But there is actually another way. It's one that has existed for years now. It will probably not be removed because this is a classic in the original Tech It. It was a classic in pretty much every single version that's come out since. What happens if you take a blaze rod and you run it through a macerator? Because normally, a blaze rod, uh, if you look at its uses, it will give you two... And I'm, it's not... Oh, there it is. It'll give you two blaze powder. Which, if you have a look at the blaze rod, you have a look at two blaze powder. If you look at the stack EMC, they are the same, and that makes sense. It's equivalent exchange. But if you macerate it, you get three. Which is what we've just done. Which means for every blaze rod that you macerate, you're effectively getting 768 free EMC. So, I mean, yeah, we could just grab a few stacks, maybe a couple of stacks. We could come back over here, and while our macerator's not being used for anything, we could just go ahead and run these, and that's fine, and that works, but there's a way to automate that, and that's what we're going to do after we do things the proper way. So that's the setup, that's the discussion of what we're doing today. Oh, wait a minute! All that stuff that was up here is in the basement now. Yeah. We have a basement now. That was supposed to be cleaner. Let's try again. Hold on, hold on. No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. <clears throat> yeah. Dang it. Hold on. Yeah. We have a basement now. See? That was perfect. That was fantastic. This is our basement. It's built right underneath our house. It doesn't go all the way that direction, but it will. As I fill in the ground above here, we can expand it out that way. 
We have, of course, this is where our little room was, where we can look out at our quarry, which, in case you were wondering, is coming along quite nicely. It's it's chugging. It is currently at level 14, and oh my gosh, it's digging into one of my tunnels! This is one of my mining tunnels! This is fantastic! That's amazing! That means we're going to uh, see more of my strange pathways uh, being... Oh my gosh, yeah, look, here we are! This is where... Uh, that crafting table I built way back in episode zero is and all that. How much fun is that? So the quarry is coming along quite nicely. I also moved, and we're going to be using this today. We'll see whether or not this setup works. Our assembly table here, as well as our laser. I moved all of this down here. Still don't know what to do about the rock crusher. That episode will not come out for me until day after tomorrow. So hopefully you folks will have some comments on that. And then, uh-oh, uh-oh. Why is that not hooked up? You're supposed to be making me more steel. What's go? Oh my gosh! Wait, where's the steel? Oh my! Wait, where? Where, where is the steel though? This thing has been running for a long time. Where's the steel? Oh, where's my wrench? Did my wrench have an EMC value and now it doesn't? And I got rid of it? Oh, Shrek me! Uh oh. Wait a minute. I'm starting to realize something else is missing here. No gears anymore. Really? Oh, those are the most annoying things to build. Oh my gosh, that is dumb. I'm losing my patience with these changes. These are silly. Again, I'm going to stick with them because it's, you know, mod pack author's intent. But it's very dumb. Watch the actual issue be that they no longer allow these to connect together or something like that. Okay, there we go. So those should work properly now. Am I, am I not getting steel out of this for some reason? What's going on here? Steel is still in the game, and it is still generated by using a blast furnace. Iron ingot? Steel ingot? What? Why? Hello? By the way, I emptied out all the creosote and put it in this chest over here before I moved these machines down here. There's better ways of storing liquid creosote. We'll get to that in the future, possibly. But where is all of my steel? I'm very, I'm very concerned. Might have to make some sort of an automatic export on this. Oh! Oh, it's gone! What? Where did it go? There... There... No! Oh! Ah! This one's going in the wrong direction! So I guess it's been dumping it all into here and it's just being lost. <sighs> Alright, you know what? Let's focus on what I intended to focus on this episode. Before this episode ends up being like the last episode. EMC generation. The first thing we're going to want to build is an energy collector, which fortunately still does have an EMC value. We need glowstone, we need glass, we need a block of diamond, and we need a furnace. I suppose we could view this as the game forcing us to get more creative about generating items. Maybe now is the time to build a giant factory to manufacture things like gears for us. Uh, but we now have our energy collector. And using the energy collector is as simple as taking it outside, placing it in direct sunlight, plopping it on the ground, and having a look inside. And as you can see, that number right there is EMC. And it's going to slowly start ticking up. And what we can do now is we can come inside and we can say, you know what, I really want that thing to generate stone. I don't know why you would want it to generate stone, but maybe you do. So you take it outside, and then you try to put your stone in here, and you go, wait a minute, that's not doing anything. Well, of course it's not, you knucklehead. This is just collecting sunlight. You gotta move it over into something like a energy condenser. Now, we have built an energy condenser before. It is obsidian, it is diamond, and an alchemical chest, which is just all the various covalence dusts, uh, diamond, cobble, you, you know the drill. But because we've built it before, and it still has an EMC value, we can just get it out. So I just had some technical issues. Uh, I've kind of reset back a few seconds, but as you see here, we have this currently, <laughs> you can tell I've already done it once. <laughs> but we place our energy condenser next to the energy collector, which is currently generating quite a bit of EMC. And it doesn't look like anything's happening, but if we take our cobblestone and put it in there, we'll see that that EMC is now going directly into our condenser and goodness gracious it's making a whole lot of stone but we don't want it to do that that is silly what you would actually want to use this for is generating let's say diamonds maybe and i should note that this is tier one but if we have a look at our uses we can turn it into a tier two which has 12 emc per tick as opposed to four 
And if we make a tier three, it's 40 EMC per tick as opposed to 12. That's a huge leap forward. Now, it's also very costly, but I mean, imagine how much stone you could make like that. So I have just enough EMC right now to get three energy collectors total. And we're going to do that. We're also going to grab something that is reasonable in price. Oh, no, don't tell me. Oh, of course, we don't have any EMC left. So, uh, shoot, what is reasonable in price that I currently have in my possession? What? Swift Wolf Trending Gale doesn't have any EMC value anymore either. Oh, for crying out loud. Oh, thank goodness. Well, our blaze rods are done turning into blaze powder. So that should restore a ton of EMC. And we can now get, uh, let's say, Aeternalis Fuel. Or, you know what? We can go for Diamond. I, I don't know why I go for Aeternalis Fuel. I guess it does have the same EMC value. I'm not sure why it's my go-to for this. But now we can configure these in such a way that we can have a little... uh little semicircle surrounding our energy condenser, and we can have it start creating diamonds. Now, that's going to take a while, but it is working. Let's go a little bit further with it. Now that we have all those uh, blaze rod EMC, we can take a couple more of these, and we could plop one on top, we could plop one in front, and you might be thinking, well, geez, that's got to be as good as it gets, right? Well, no, that's where the relays come into play. But first off, let's make sure we can actually access, uh, not necessarily the basement, I just wanted to be able to access this chest and view how quickly we are generating diamonds. As I was saying, we can go further. That is where the antimatter relay comes in. Obsidian, a diamond block, and glass. Big old U, little glass on top, diamond in the middle. Teach that to our system. And then I got 30 blaze rods out because I'm, I'm, I'm getting kind of desperate. We need more EMC for the rest of this episode. Now with the sun setting, you might be wondering, wait a minute, these things condense light into energy, right? And you would be right, but they don't actually seem to be bothered. Even though it's dark, it still shows full sun. Now, the texture could be bugged, and it just stopped running, but no, it's still running. See, back in the day, what we would do is we would take glowstone blocks and place them on top of these, and that would give them a constant, unyielding supply of light, but it doesn't appear as though that's necessary anymore. Maybe they produce their own light? Maybe the torch is doing something? Maybe they're bugged. I can't say. Looks like they're working fine, though. In any case, I would like to move this demonstration, so I'm going to have it generate a couple of Mobius fuel instead, so we're not missing out on an almost diamond's worth of EMC. Well, almost half a diamond's worth. And we're going to take these items with us. I'm going to patch up the floor here, and we're going to move our festivities over yonder. I still don't know whether or not those folks or whatever's going on down there, whether or not that's all good, wholesome, above board, or, or whether or not they're going to come try to kill us. So... I think we're going to move EMC generation down here, where we can keep it secret and keep it safe. So we're going to elevate our energy condenser up a bit, and then we're going to put a energy collector back on top. And now it's not to please. I guess it is currently being blotted out by the fact that there's a roof above it, but let's see if we can't fix that. So this thing's pretty bummed about being in the dark, but if we throw some glowstone on top, it's perfectly happy again. It's counting up way faster. Now, what is the story with this antimatter relay that we built? What is it all about? Well, it is all about cramming more collectors onto a single energy condenser. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna drop it down next to the energy condenser, and then what it does is it relays or reroutes from these into the condenser. So we can surround this thing with collectors and it will take the energy from all of them, from all the different sides. And of course they're not working at, oh, well, they are working at peak, well, of course they're working at peak efficiency. There's a glowstone right here. They don't all need one on top of it. That's the way we used to do it. Well, if we open this up now when we tell it, hey, make us a diamond. Oh yeah, that's going noticeably faster, isn't it? Now, granted, there is currently being a lot dumped in there from here because this had to empty itself out, all of these. They store a certain amount themselves, and they had to get all emptied out. But still, look at that number go up. And you can imagine if we had another relay on each side, and even more collectors, where we might be going with this. Oh, the quarry stopped. I'm assuming we ran out of fuel? Uh, we do not have enough to get them all back up and running. But, you know what I realized with our quarry setup? Is that I neglected to pipe automatically 
the products of the uh, electric furnace back into our energy condenser. And I probably should have done that instead of having them come out into a chest. Oh, wow! <laughs> Hot dang! Okay, well, you know what? Let's move all of that over here. We could use that right now for our own nefarious crafting needs. But if we put it all inside of here... Oh, wowzers. Okay, cool. Yeah, I would say that the machine definitely has the ability to be self-sustaining. Only barely. Well, actually, I don't know. It's, it's building up the Atronalis fuel. That's the thing with quarries, is you will get EMC out of them, but it's at its best when it gets down to the lower depths and it starts picking up the really valuable items. Like, that's where you start finding the diamonds and the, the falling into this hole is getting old nows. And, I mean, look, I haven't even sorted through redstone and uh, lapis lazuli yet. So we need to add those right here and get those going to where they should be going over here. And then, look, that's going to contribute to more Aeternalis fuel like crazy. So how are we doing over here? Well, we got our first diamond and we'll, we are well on our way to the second. Now, a question you might be wondering with these is, is there benefit to putting a energy collector onto the bottom of a relay, will that actually work? Will it produce any EMC? And honestly, the only way I know to test that, because I've always done it and assumed that it worked, yeah, yeah, you know what? It's it's not going very fast, probably owing to the fact that it's not getting a lot of sunlight underneath there. So I definitely would not prioritize putting one on the bottom. I would say once you have an entire uh, flower assembled and it's producing, you know, a hella big stacks of EMC, then at that point, you're probably good to go ahead and add a few more to the bottoms, just because it does contribute a little bit, and if you have a lot of spare EMC, why not? But for the most part, like especially early on, focus on getting the top ones. Now, one thing I did want to point out is I've seen a lot of people over the years put an antimatter relay on top of the chest, and there's no reason whatsoever to do that, because the reason to use the antimatter relay is so that you can connect up more energy collectors, right? So for one of these, we can get one on the side, one on the top, uh, one to the front, one to the back, one to the bottom. Here, you know, like this one is already connected to the relay below it, as will the one that eventually goes up here, the one that goes on the front here, the one that goes in the back. There's no reason for those to be collected to a relay in this position. Adding a relay does not allow you to collect more EMC, not to the top. It just extends where this energy collector is up one. There's no benefit to it whatsoever. You can have this energy collector connect up directly to the condenser. Adding a relay to the top is just a waste of EMC. And literally, it does not benefit you at all in any way. So I don't recommend it. We've got two diamonds now, though. That's cool. Our alchemical bag no longer has an EMC value either. That is... Things are getting progressively sad. Raw basalt doesn't, though. Like, it never did, but I'm really thinking that lime, limestone and, and basalt should have EMC values. They absolutely should. It's not like they have any great use, other than to be... <laughs> I'm looking at uses, and they can be turned into limestone spelithium. I don't even know how to pronounce that. The basalt is equally useless. I, I think that these should have just like one EMC, same as stone and, and cobblestone and all that. Hop to it, X-John! Get it done! Well, folks, I've made an interesting discovery. I'm trying to generate enough EMC to finish out the Power Flower or Solar Flower, whichever name you have for it, which is where you completely surround an energy condenser with the, the relays and the collectors. And dusts now have an EMC value. And they are the equivalent of their ore counterparts, meaning that if you're just going for EMC, you no longer need to smelt these. You can just run them through your macerator and the raw dusts will be EMC and that is strange. Of all the things that they've changed in this pack, that's the weird one to me. I don't get that. <laughs> I don't get that at all. But again, it's just another case of, well, I guess previous episodes of this series are now out of date because you no longer need to, I mean, even the quarry, that was what, three episodes ago on 1.0.2? I'm pretty sure we still had to have a furnace at that point, but we can get rid of that furnace now. And we can just have it come out of the macerator and go directly into the energy condenser if we wanted. Not all ores, though. Uh, crushed aluminum ore still needs to be 
ran through. What is the decision-making process behind this pack, I wonder? Or was that just an oversight? I'm assuming that. I need to get on this Discord. They're always talking about where these decisions are apparently made. So the quarry is about finished. It's really close to the bottom now. And I went ahead and grabbed all of the Aeternalis fuel that it's produced out. Although that's not all of it, because we do have all of this over here. So I suppose if we wanted to be fair, we'd say that it produced. And keep in mind, I've been pulling Aeternalis fuel out of here in order to fuel these machines and that generator down there. So it's produced a lot more than the... Looks like it's kind of probably end up being, what, 36? That it has so far. It's produced a lot more than that. I'm pulling these out right now, though, because I need them to finish up this operation. In fact, I think I only need one more energy collector. And I will show you where we're at down here. So this is the last one we're going to be putting on for now. And like I said before, you can add more collectors to the bottom of your relays. They won't run as efficiently because they won't be getting full sunlight. But you can do it if you just have a whole bunch of EMC to spare. You could also put glowstone on the top of every single one of these collectors, but they're all getting full sunlight just by virtue of having that one glowstone, even these at the furthest extremities. And then there's no point in putting a relay on top. This is just really not going to benefit you any. But if we have a look inside of there now, and I've also been pilfering diamonds out of here to speed things along, it's moving quite quickly. So this is the more or less official and endorsed method of generating free energy. It might seem very cheaty, and that's because it is. A lot of people dislike this aspect of TechIt and Project E. They dislike that you can build something in your basement, or any other room of your house, or even just right outside where a creeper can get to it, that just generates diamonds from nothing. And this is a pretty simple setup. If you wanted to make a full solar flower or power flower with MK3, collectors and mk3 relays you're generating diamonds in no times flat and if you have a whole room full of them it can get nuts which i suspect is why emc has been removed from many of the recipes in the pack is to try to balance that out some sort of force you to have to manually collect some items construct some items farm some items for me though that's kind of part of the pack freely generating things is what the TechIt experience is about. I feel like that's... Other mod packs exist, and if you're looking for a challenge, you can go play one of those. But for me, it's nice that you don't have to worry about the items. It's more so in TechIt because you have Project E, and you can eventually get to a point where you have you know, three dozen of those things churning out red matter. You can just focus on your cool builds and not necessarily the means to produce them. But it really is up to you how you want to play. You don't have to build one of these. You can use uh, big old quarries. You don't even have to engage with EMC. I talk about it being the currency of the world because that's sort of what the entire pack is built around. But you don't have to. If free diamonds aren't for you, you don't have to build one of these. But if you like free things, let's talk about method number two. Method number two involves automating a process that I've been doing over here manually throughout the entire recording. And that is putting blaze rods into a macerator and getting extra EMC out of it. There is a way to automate that, and it involves using a ma uh, macerator, obviously. A few transportation pipes, which we've got. Maybe getting ourselves another assembly table like we built in the last video, which is why I do have this set up over here ready to go. And in fact, it should be, yep, ready to go so we can flip that on. And we'll see whether or not it works. Yeah, good, good. This method is a bit more, I don't want to call it hacky or cheating or anything like that, but it is a bit more scummy. <laughs> You're using and abusing the fact that a macerator from one mod has a recipe to give you an additional item that helps you out in another mod, and whether or not you think that's cheating is up to you. I don't think it's cheating because they're genuine mechanics, and if it wasn't intended to be used like this, it could very easily be patched out. We're absolutely going to be using it. But if the solar flower or the power flower was an issue for you, considering that is a thing that is designed to be used in that way, using this hack is going to be a real issue for you. One thing I do want to note is that the rotary macerator is a better macerator for this task. It is faster. It does need to be running all of the time, though, which means it is always consuming energy. If it ever stops running, it slows down a lot, and it takes a long time to ramp back up. The way you fix that is by putting 
a redstone current to it to keep it always running, but then it's always consuming power. You might think that you need scrap metal to make it, which means you need to get a scrap metal chunk, which means you need to get scrap metal inside of a compressor, which means you need to have a recycler. But uh, not so, my friends, because there is a second recipe. There is another, and it uses obsidian blades, which is just obsidian dust, which you can get from your macerator, surrounding flint, which you can get from gravel. Also, actually, I think if you put flint through a macerator... No. I'm thinking rock crusher. You can put cobblestone through a rock crusher and get gravel and flint. A shame we don't know how to power it. So the quarry has now reached bedrock, which is good for me. That's going to be very handy for my future plans. See, I really want this macerator. So we're going to go ahead and grab it. Or watch it fall into the abyss. I will set up another quarry in the future. Don't you worry about that. But we need a macerator, and I don't feel like making another one. And then... Well, as for all of these, we can run them inside. So we're going to start off by coming over here and undoing what I just did. Uh, we're going to take all of this out, take this out as well. We're going to put 64 obsidian in there, and that'll start grinding into obsidian dust. And while that's going, put those back. We did make one obsidian dust a while back. I remember we were going to test to see if it had an EMC value. It did not. If it did at the time, it definitely would not now, as, as most things don't tend to. Wowzer! We're, we're going to need 14 obsidian blades, and each of those is going to require 8 obsidian dust. That is 112. Okay, then we'll need more than one stack of obsidian. While we wait, I'm going to make another transformer so we don't have a repeat of previous incidents. And our macerator running again. So macer... Um how? Doubt. 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 Um how? I will forever be singing the praises of these little base upgrades. They are amazing. So we are now going to manufacture our raw obsidian blades. There we go. 16 of the bad boys. We need to combine that with the macerator and the advanced. Ooh, okay. So this could be fun. We've made this before. We've made this before. Carbon plate, I don't think we've ever made. But don't worry, it's not particularly difficult. Uh, we just need to go all the way down from having coal dust. Which we get by running coal through a macerator. And if you want to save time, you can do this using blocks of coal. And don't worry, I was paying enough attention to realize that we actually need to run these, I believe it said through a compressor. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and we will do that now. And we will throw, if we have any around here, we do have some overclocker speed upgrades we can toss in there. And look at that. So it does it in big old chunks of nine, which is fantastic. So I didn't actually do the math on how many of these I would need, but they're quite strange to build. So from the coal dust, we want to make the raw uh, carbon fiber. Raw carbon fiber stacked on top of itself. Well, I <laughs> like how I'm just watching myself do that. Uh, raw carbon mesh, which then we want to also run through the compressor when it's done with its obsidian blades. Are we running out of power? Oh, Shrek. Boop. There we go. <laughs> uh, I was taking all of this down and I realized I didn't want to single drop of EMC to go to waste. Just got an extra generator, and I, I don't see any reason why for the time being we can't uh, give the whole system a little bit of a boost. I think I'd like to move all of the generators and all power generation into the basement. So we've got our obsidian blades, now we can start cooking up our raw carbon mesh. Quick note that for this recipe we only needed two carbon plates. So I'm just making up a bunch with the assumption we'll need some in the future. And there are other really cool things you can do with these, including building a nano saber, which is a lot of fun, but also the nano armor. Now, there's better armor in the game, but the nano suit looks pretty cool. And then we made the advanced alloy in a previous episode, and uh, the recipe for that is the mixed metal ingots. So get yourself some refined iron, some bronze, and some tin. Put it all together inside of a compressor to get your advanced alloy. And with that, I think the last thing we need is a machine block. Make sure we've got all of this up here and ready to go. That'll give us our advanced machine block. And... Mmm, uh, we can't craft it up here. Oh my gosh! We put our Philosopher's Stone in here, and I guess it no longer has an EMC value either. 
Why? It's literally from this mod. Why? Why would you take that away? At some point, trying to be true to the original just becomes a bit detrimental to everyone. Okay, tap C, and then we can pull that recipe up here and get ourselves the Rotary Macerator. And I wasn't joking. We're going to want to get a lever to go along with this one. And then I'm realizing now that we left this running and we were not here to collect them when they were done. And it's gone now. Okay. Well, the gears is truly the worst defense in my opinion. They're such a pain in the neck to build. Okay, two of those, four of those. We will just have to be extra mindful this time. Also, I don't know if you noticed it, but our engine up there was stalled. I guess from running without the power going anywhere, which can be quite detrimental to its health. So we're going to want to stick around here for when it's done to turn it off. Fortunately, turning it off and back on seemed to fix the problem. Like most issues in the world, really. Pop. So there we go. We got the two of those. Now we have power tap right here. So I think this is where we're going to end up building this. But we want to be mindful of the rotary macerator's power limits. And we want to go ahead and throw that transformer in there. Immediately. Now you've only got a couple of slots for upgrades in this machine. So keep that in mind. Now I'm actually trying to figure out how we want to set this thing up. Because we have some options now. Things aren't like they were in Tekka Classic. We could now hook up the rotary macerator. And, I mean, presumably we could put an import upgrade over here. Or um, export upgrade. We don't have to use wooden transport pipes. I think we're going to. But I don't know. let me think about this for a minute. I'm going to put my condenser behind it. I want this to be a pretty compact setup. The issue here is that we have to have the transformer in there. Otherwise, we could use an import and an export upgrade. If you were running this on a lower power setup, you could totally get by without having the transformer upgrade inside. Um, but we cannot because our machine would blow up. Speaking of, I suppose we can go ahead and hook it up to power and it'll start juicing up. I guess for now, let's keep things simple and let's use the wooden transport pipes. So we want one coming out of the rotary macerator and going into an energy condenser, and then one coming out of the energy condenser and going into the rotary macerator. So then what we want to do is we want to have this creating glowstone rods, and then we want to have this churning those bad boys up. Now, you'll notice that it is remarkably slow right now, but speed's only at 1%. As it continues to macerate items, it's going to get a lot faster. And the more power you feed it, well, you, you can take this pretty far. One thing you got to keep in mind is as soon as it stops macerating, this percentage is going to drop rapidly. And it'll get very slow again, and it'll take a very long time to charge back up. So we're going to put a lever on it, turn it on, and that's going to keep it running, but it will be consuming power that whole time. So let's go ahead and get an energy pulser and we're going to put it on the front here and then right click it to turn it on and that'll start to remove those. They'll go in here and they will produce a blaze rod. Now over here we want to have not a pipe but our other pulser, uh, pipe pulser. Right click it and it'll start pulling the completed rods out and pumping them back into here to be macerated again. So there they go. And then out the other side come the completed blaze rods. This compact little unit, you don't have to use the rotary macerator. You can use a regular bog standard macerator if you are so inclined. However, as you can tell, this is way more efficient than what I was doing earlier, running around and doing this all by my lonesome. Now eventually we will run into an issue and it's going to be a little ways away from now. But eventually what's going to happen is this is going to fill up on blaze rods. And then it's going to attempt to send some down here, and they're going to fly into oblivion. That is where I think using the basic import upgrade makes a lot of sense. There are other things you could do here. You could have uh, another chest up here where items could go in instead, but then you're going to have an issue where sometimes they go into this chest, and sometimes they go in there, and it'll be a bit random. There is a different type of pipe that supports round robin. Um, what is it called, though? Gate controlled extraction, that might actually be useful. Paints items. What is a wooden diamond? Oh, oh, okay, it's an extraction pipe that also does sorting. 
Oh, these weren't in here before, were they? Additional pipes. Adds items to adjacent inventories only if they already have that item. Okay, that is amazing. An advanced wooden transport pipe. I already knew about this one. This um, allows basic item filtering. So if you only want certain items pulled out of an inventory, that's what you'd want to go with. Ah, outputs a configurable ratio of items to each side. So that would be how you would achieve round robin. Ooh, the jeweled transport pipe. Highly capable and configurable sorting pipe. I see the... I haven't used a lot of these before. See, now I'm getting excited. I'm like, hey, wait a minute. Oh, this could be a lot of fun. Uh, but ultimately, it's unnecessary because I think we could get by just fine using a basic import upgrade. So if we right-click, it'll draw in items from the west, which is what we want because if you look at our mini-map, that is the direction the chest is in. So, oh, wowzers. Okay, this is starting to fill up. This could become an issue. Uh, in that case, let's go ahead and put in our basic import upgrade. And then we will break this pipe. And we shan't be doing this anymore. So that will eliminate the issue of this filling up with blaze rods and then blaze rods shooting out of the pipe. Now, we need to get those out of there more quickly. I'll be honest with you, the easiest way to do that is to just add a second one of these pipe pulsers. And that'll double the rate at which they are being pulled out of there. But if we have a look at it now, you can see how quickly it is grinding those bad boys up. I'm going to give it a little bit of a hand here so you can really see that crazy speed. And it's only at 63%. Now, it's consuming a lot of power in the process. But, oh yeah, that's what we want to see. See, if we didn't need the transformer upgrade, we could put in our basic export or, or even a full fat export upgrade. And this would be going so much more efficiently because we wouldn't need this extra pipe over here that is still not keeping up with the speed of the situation. All right, I just had a uh, wacky idea. Welcome to wacky idea time with Reese. If both of these are running export, is that any faster? Actually, yeah, that does seem to be a bit faster, but still not fast enough and we're only at 80% speed. <laughs> we're actually running into an issue with our basic import upgrade. It's not pulling these in fast enough. We might need a, need a uh, full fat import upgrade because they can do up to a stack at a time or I think you could actually stack import upgrades, which would be way less efficient and downright silly, all things considered. But let's see what happens. Yeah, we can put two of them in there, and it is doubling the rate at which they're being pulled in. But I think that building an import upgrade might be smarter. So right now we have our rotary macerator running in the basement, and then we have solar and one generator running. And it is able to maintain it. It's it's fine. It's not going to draw so much power that we can't keep up with our, our four generators. We actually do have a generator in the basement going as well. I forgot about that. But still, everything's quite reasonable at the moment. So this is a full fat import upgrade. It requires a basic import upgrade, two advanced circuits. We've built plenty of these in our time, and a rebattery. See what kind of chaos we have wrought back here now. I'm going to need one of those. So two advanced circuits, a regular basic import upgrade and a re-battery. I think we're going to be good to go. So I'm going to take out our basic import upgrade, replace it with this one, and then I'm going to take out all of the blaze rods, and we're just going to wait and see what happens here. Now, there are plenty of blaze... Oh, you know what? I should probably configure that first, shouldn't I? So we're going to right-click it, yep, from the west, pop it back in there, and immediately we've got a full stack. So I'm no longer concerned with it keeping up, and you can see we're at 100% speed now, and it is moving through them. We need a faster way to get the items out now. One thing we could do is, I mean, we don't really need high voltage coming into this machine. The reason being, this machine, we're not going to put speed upgrades on it. You know, it's going plenty fast as it is. And it really doesn't need more than 32 EU per tick. So instead of using a transformer upgrade, we can just build a transformer. The recipe is simple. Copper cables, copper, uh, any type of wood. I don't even know what we use there. It could have been lime wood, but that'll give us the low voltage transformer. And then from there, we're just going to, I mean, it's going to look ugly. Let's put it up at the top here because this isn't, I mean, we can change it whenever we want to, but we want to configure it to where it's pointing down, I believe. I think all of the sides are inputs and one side is output. And this is still running. So that does appear to be the case. Oh, oh, it does look like we're losing power though. So we can hit alt to take that out, 
but having done it now, the rotary macerator is slowing down. Maybe it does truly need medium voltage to keep up. Well, in that case, we'll leave that transformer in there. And that was a fun idea, but ultimately it failed. The reason you do this, by the way, is for what's happening back here right now, where we have more of these than we know what to do with, and each stack of these is worth, I'm sorry, how much? 98,000 EMC per stack? And that's just running down there all of the time? What? Again, if we just used a regular... F <laughs> if we used um, a regular macerator, we wouldn't be having this problem, but I wanted to do I wanted to do the extra thing. Jeez, it's so much EMC. It's, it's really silly. Uh, so something even sillier is happening over here, where it looks like it is going to be generating a whole bunch of these. Now, I wonder what the idea there is. This is like when you have a problem, and, you know, you have something that doesn't move, and it should. So you, you know, you blast it with like PB, Precision Blaster, to get it moving. Some people would use WD-40, and that's perfectly fine and reasonable. You know, I'm not going to tell you you're wrong, but it certainly wouldn't be my, my lubricating spray of choice. Or, you know, you have something that doesn't move and it should, so you slap some duct tape on it, and you're like, yeah, that works. But you've not actually fixed the problem, not, not in the right way. And that's more or less what I've done here today, at least what I'm attempting to do. So with three of those, we're, we're doing a little bit better, but I need to start seeing gains on this going down. Actually, it looks like right now, we're almost keeping up with it. It is gaining on it, though. So the problem that we might see occur here is once this is full, these pipes are still going to be extracting out of there. So eventually, we're going to need to find a better way to move these around. Red power might be an option because they do have just an objectively better means of moving items around. The other would be that we just add another condenser and instead of generating blaze rods, it generates um, like something bigger, like diamonds or, or red matter. Anyway, let's add a second one of these and hit it and confirm that it actually goes faster. Let's see. It doesn't. I thought for sure that it did. I thought adding two to one side would make it go even faster. I'm almost positive. Oh, okay. Well, when you add three, it definitely does. Maybe you can't add them to the ends. That's not true because that's how we have the one underneath here running. That's done it though. It's finally done it. We now have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six <laughs> pulsers <laughs> across uh, three wooden pipes. And now it's finally keeping up. That is absurd and I don't recommend it. I, I need to find a better method. It does work, though. It does technically work, and it's not like these are difficult to get. You know, the assembly table and the laser we built in the last episode, if you're using a regular macerator and you're not putting a bunch of uh, overclocker upgrades in there, then this is even more unnecessary. So let's actually do that. Let's get another condenser, and let's get a dark matter block. And some more marble, because I made some holes in the floors. So we can just put our other condenser right in front of this one we can get some golden pipes set it up like so and it should just randomly distribute them although the other option would be that we use one of those really cool pipes we saw earlier to configure the ratio and then if we wanted to be super uh, pedantic about it if that's the right use of that word then we could figure out exactly how many we need to go into this condenser to maintain a constant supply from the macerator and we can configure it like oh yes every one of six goes in here and every five of six goes in here and it all runs perfectly and I might end up doing that not today not today but we now got the uh, that so we got the blaze powder coming into here and the other way to do this would actually be to instead because this problem's not gonna go away uh, maybe we add um, a pipe to the top <laughs> this is getting a little silly and then we get a pipe pulser and we slap that on there on the on the front and that'll start pulling out some of those rods now is that going to i'm gonna have to keep an eye on this system and make sure it all is perfectly balanced because the last thing i would want is for the rotary macerator to run out of although i don't think it's going to run out of blaze rods uh, we got to keep a perfect balance and it actually looks like we're almost there 
It looks like as of right now, this is slowly crawling up, but then this is also slowly crawling down. So we may have reached almost perfect equilibrium here if this would just stop going up. And maybe adding one more pipe pulser to the setup would do the job. I do love that this has been the solution we found, is to just stack pipe pulsers. What, what fun times we're having right now. And we've already got a dark matter out of the deal. Have you produced a dark matter? I don't think so. Look, we haven't come out of here to get one of these, I don't think, since we started this project. And in that time, it's created 18 diamonds? That's worth uh, 147,000 EMC. It's not bad, you know? It's not the 278,000 that are too dark matter. Look how quickly this is going. This is insane. And this is still gaining rods too quickly. So a third button might be in order. This... <laughs> I wish you could see my face. I'm so happy right now. This, to me, is what Tekkit is all about. This is peak Tekkit. It's not the massive quarries. It's not the... It's not the big buildings or, or any of that. To me, peak pure Tekkit is all about making just obscene EMC generator setups and, and tinkering with them until they're perfect. So I'm watching it now and I'm trying to see whether or not this one goes over 26 or drops down because we don't want it to do either so as of right now we've got four on here we got three on here three on here and then one on the bottom and it's still going up a bit it's still going up but it's going up more slowly and we're rolling in the dark matter that is we we, <laughs> we almost have a million emc down here you know i guess if we threw those diamonds that we got from over there that could be something. Now, there is another way to set this up where you actually use it in conjunction with a power flower or solar flower. So instead of having diamonds being made in here, you have blaze rods being made, and then they get piped out directly into a macerator, and then that macerator goes out directly to an energy condenser. And that simplifies the process a lot, because you're not doing this where you're moving items around constantly and trying to maintain this perfect balance and realizing you've not quite managed it, but ooh, you're so close and it's a lot of fun and this is this is more fun, obviously. Uh, that, that system has its advantages, you know? Like I say, you don't have item rotation like this. What you end up having is items coming out of a condenser, into a macerator, out of the macerator, into a condenser, and that's it. Nothing ever has to go backwards. It'd be a slower setup, to be sure, but it would be better than having just a solar flower or power flower by itself. It would be more efficient because you're getting that that ground up uh, blaze powder bonus. And, it, you know, the benefit over this system is that it's just a lot simpler to operate. And you're not doing things like, well, like, like having 12 pulsers going or however many we have right now. 11. I did the math in my head. There, there's 11 pipe pulsers going right now and i think if we got it to 12 if we somehow squeezed one more on up top here it would be perfect but there's literally nowhere else to put it oh shrek me you know what we didn't do I'll tell you what we didn't do we didn't hook up this one down here will that be the balancing factor we've been waiting for how long can we hold 30 come on baby Oh, actually, I, nah, well, 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 whatever. And there, folks, over the course of the last two hours and 28 minutes, I hope that I've given you a brief and quick demonstration of how you can break the game by generating matter basically for free. We're not doing anything. It's mostly the sun. The sun, and in this case, a block of glowstone, is providing light to our energy condensers, which is being condensed down into matter, which is pretty cool. And then this is just abusing game mechanics, but in the best possible way to get an absolutely ridiculous outcome. Look, we don't really need all of these in here. This is unnecessary. So we can just come down here. We can pull some of these out. We'll come around here and we'll, we'll toss them all in there. And we'll just watch that stack of dark matter. Look at that stack of dark matter. This is going to take a while. What if we took all of this and we just kind of headed out up top here? We really need to get another transmutation table down below. So just add these in there and then... <laughs> oh! Baby! We updated to the Zway a while ago and then I had to go back to the Ain because we could not maintain the charge in the Zway and we always needed that EMC. So I always just went back down a tier, but... I mean, now we might be ready to go straight on to a gray. 
Look at that. It doesn't even use up all of our EMC. Man, what if we actually went up one more level? I mean, these are expensive, but you see the rate at which we're just making... I mean, what we've effectively done is we found a tree that grows money and we put it in our basement. <laughs> what we've effectively done here... Oh, that doesn't quite fill it all the way up. Oh, well, it's fine. We'll, we'll be able to soon enough. Oh, we're, we're basically printing EMC, which is the currency of the world. We're printing money down here. And it's amazing. And it stopped running because I took all of the blaze rods out and severely crippled the, the system. Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't think about the consequences of my actions. I should have realized that taking literally all of them out would have broken it. Yeah, okay, I think my actions actually in some way restored balance to the machine without the necessity of any of these pipe pulsers up here running. Because now it's maintaining 46 to 47 perfectly. Okay, a little bit of a drop there, so maybe not quite perfectly. But still. Again, I think sitting down and really balancing how many blaze rods go into here versus go into here is going to be the secret to getting this working perfectly. So I'm going to do some maths and figure that out for next time. Speaking of next time, the frick are you doing down here, sir? Get out of here. Was it just dark enough up here for you to spawn? Oh, you little minx. We will simply get some more... Uh... Oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Don't you tell me you got rid of the EMC value. You son of a bitch! Well, folks, it's a new day, and in fact, it's the next day since I recorded that video. Uh, welcome back to another post credit appendices epilogue, where today I received a comment that completely changes this setup. And I'm going to read it for you here in a minute. Real quickly, I did do a little bit more testing, and I did find that actually this setup makes like way more sense. Don't put the dust into this one. That was dumb from the beginning. Instead, what you can do, and this has been perfectly balanced, and I've been watching it now for about 15 minutes, and it's running perfectly. So all I've got is all of these firing off, however many uh, pulses it takes to make sure you keep this thing empty going into here to create more of these. And this has been locked at 54. And this has been shooting all the way up to 63 and then back down to like 60. And then it, it's, it's in perfect balance. Up at the top here, we have a wooden transport pipe and we have one, two, three pipe pulsers. And it, I mean, look at how quickly that's moving across there. So it's perfectly balanced as all things should be. But now, for the comment that blew this whole thing wide open, this was a revelation to me. So this is from Wobbles, or W-O-88-L-E-S. I'm assuming it's supposed to be like Wobbles, or whoa 88 ls Who can say? Uh, hi, I'm new to your series. I'm not sure if you spotted, but for IC2 upgrades, there is an upgrade pouch which holds three upgrades. That can then be placed in a macerator upgrade slot, allowing up to 12 stacks of upgrades if you understand how I mean, and I absolutely understand how you mean, Wobbles. Sir or madam, you are a wonderful individual, and I love you with all of my heart, all right? You've, you've changed everything. So I looked the item up. It's actually called the Upgrade Container, and initially I, I, I didn't believe. I found myself questioning whether or not something like this could even exist in the world, or whether or not the world was too dark and cold and cruel a place. For such a magnificent item to exist. So I opened it up in my test world. My big super flat test world. And yeah, this is the real deal. I know it doesn't seem like I have a test world. Based on how a lot of these end in just frustration, confusion, and misery. But that's because I don't use the test world <laughs> very often. I go in with complete confidence. And only when I'm filming do I realize that I was wrong. So in order to build this, we will need Iridium Plate. Now this is the issue. Iridium ore requires UU matter. UU matter requires... I'm sorry? Okay, well, for whatever reason, this is bugged and telling me that I need a created UU matter and a carpenter. Something weird's going on here. Uh, the mass fabricator. And generally, a lot of energy. Somewhere in the neighborhood of 166,666 EU... We're not generating that kind of juice right now. It's not a matter of being able to build this. We could build it. It's just, it's unattainable right now. 
However, I wanted you to know that it existed, and that thanks to Wobbles, let, let me see you wobble, blah, 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 you know the song, I, that it is feasibly possible that we could ge generate, manufacture one of these upgrade containers, if we just, you know, generate some UU matter in the future, and we could use that to fit both an import upgrade and an export upgrade into this pouch, into this one slot, have our transformer, and do all of this without pipes. That is something to work toward. That is a reason to build a nuclear generator, as far as I'm concerned. And the prospect is exciting, but this is still holding rock solid stable. So if you want to build something like this and you don't have access to UU matter, however many wooden pipes and however many pipe pulsers you need, in this case, I'm using two. So I got rid of the one on the bottom. I'm using two wooden transport pipes with a total of six pipe pulsers, and if I needed to, I could get underneath there and add more, but, oop. Yeah, it looks like we're maintaining pretty steady. And then that's all going into one energy condenser, creating the blaze rods, and you don't have to have a second energy condenser. You can just be proactive about coming over here and taking blaze rods out, and literally never have to worry about it. It'll be completely fine. What the heck? This is one thing I've noticed, is when I take blaze rods out, messes up the equilibrium of the machine and I have to like turn a couple of these back off until it stabilizes again. I don't know what that's all about. I don't know why that happens. But once you get this and then maybe one more stack of blaze rods, what you do is you put yourself a wooden transport pipe up there and then however many pipe pulsers. For me, once it gets stabilized, three pipe pulsers creates a perfectly fluid in sync dumping them into here making dark matter that's three million emc right there baby something else that i did was i logged on to the discord for the mod pack and i casually asked i was like hey uh, is it possible to add an emc value for basalt and limestone and apparently now in new world generation these items will have an emc value but i guess if you have previous versions they won't Unless you go in and you change them from the chisel version, I suppose, to the, uh, the the quirk version, which apparently works for... Okay, so yeah, Project Red Basalt. So what I was told is if you go in here and you chisel all of these, they will now have an EMC value. And apparently in new worlds with fresh world gen, or if you go to new chunks in version 1.0.3, those will also have an EMC value. Obviously, it's not going to work retroactively because all of these chunks have already been generated around me, but it's better than having just a bunch of limestone, limestone sitting around that I'm not really planning on using at all, you know, to just very quickly... Uh, you can also just make it into the quark limestone, which I guess is what is natural in word, World Gym now. So just swap it all out and it can be condensed. This might apply to other blocks as well. I've only really been finding a lot <laughs> of limestone and basalt around here, so I don't know if it applies to others, but if you have any other blocks that are sitting around that don't have an EMC value, it might be worth throwing them into the diamond chisel and seeing whether or not you can get those, uh, get some EMC value out of those. Finally, I wanted to demonstrate how much power our macerator uh, consumes by itself. So none of the generators are running, not the three up here, not the one in the basement. This, it's completely dark outside, so if there's any com power coming from the solar panel, it's very minimal. And this is the type of power draw we're getting from that macerator in the basement running at full speed. Now, that macerator in the basement running at full speed uh, being the only thing that's running. And I suppose this is also drawing a little bit of power. It is, uh... It's doing good work right now. You know what I mean? Like, it's fine. It's producing... Okay, so this is what I wanted to talk about. See how if you leave it alone for a bit and you get, like, an extra stack in there, everything stabilizes? I don't know why. But just leave these alone now and it'll never... This will never tick up. I'm telling you this is the magic number. Assuming you everything else in your setup is the same. If you're using a regular macerator or, or different pipes or, or any number of other things, it might be slightly different for you. But yeah... I haven't counted it, but this thing is producing enough dark matter at a fast enough rate that I could just go make stacks and stacks of Aeternalis fuel blocks and use that to keep the macerator powered. Energy is no longer an issue for us, except in the fact that we're not generating enough quickly enough. 
So I could go build 40 generators and keep them all running off of eight or Nalus fuel blocks. Or I could do the more sensible thing and build a nuclear generator, which I plan on doing. But that's all I wanted to say for now. I just wanted to get on here and let everyone know those two quick facts, uh, as well as see that I've kind of got that figured out. We're going to be working towards building one of these. We can get rid of this stuff up here. It's no longer necessary. But we're going to be working towards this in the future. And next episode, we're going to be making preparations for something very exciting and hoping that no miners slash dock workers slash whatever that is show up. Okay, bye. Oh, also, 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 actually, no, we're doing this one more time. I'm preparing to do an episode, probably episode 11 or 12 where I just go through the the wealth of comments that I have received from you fine folks and address a lot of them. There's been a lot of really good stuff suggested in there, a lot of really good tips and information shared, so I'm going to be addressing all of that. Okay, bye. Howdy, folks! How are you all doing? My name is Reese, and welcome to something weird. This is a mini-episode. I'm not going to call it, like, episode 8, or, or we, would we... 8.5? Actually, maybe I will, because that's a throwback to the fun old days where I used to do that. I would give my episodes, like, episode one and a half. It's a mini-sode. It's a little mini-sode. It's meant to fit in between these two episodes, because I'm doing something between these two episodes. The quarry finished up. I'm now going to use the destruction catalyst, which, I mean, this is going to be so much faster, it's going to be silly. I'm going to use it to finish uh, cleaning up, and I've already started here the rest of this hole so I can start filling it in with marble. But we now have bucket loads of EMC because even though I said I don't technically like it and it feels like cheating, we do still have all of this running down here in the basement. So we are still producing diamonds. We are still producing dark matter. We have a full Klein Star Veer, which I think is the third one or maybe the fourth one, but I think the third one and then right over here, we just have, we have 5 million EMC to spare. Which means that finally, after all this time, we can come back and address my desire to build the Mercurial or Mercurial Eye. We can build one of these now. They're quite expensive. They require red matter, which is uh, dark matter, which we're generating freely, as well as Atronalis fuel. Three of those, and six of these. And I wonder if red matter is going to have an EMC value. I noticed the Mercurial Eye no longer does, which sucks because that was always a good indicator of whether or not I was going to be able to build a thing by looking at the EMC value and knowing I do or do not have the correct amount. Frustrating that that would be removed, considering it's from the mod that has EMC and introduces it, but whatever. So we need that. We need a couple of obsidian, a diamond, and we need some bricks. Now, I don't know whether or not I have ever in my life built solid bricks. I know, I mean, I guess I have because I've built this device before, but in this series, I don't think I've ever built like a solid brick block. It's just never happened. I've never had need to. The only time I can think of ever doing it would have been in recipes, probably building the Mercurial or Mercurial Eye in the past, as well as I suppose in Survival Island. Remember I did a Survival Island series with Buttercup? Is that right? That was that was 10 years ago. So we need a Klein Star, and we want to get the smallest Klein Star. We don't want to go crazy with this. And apparently, we've got four uh, tiers of Klein Star. So apparently, yeah, we do have the big bad boy. We'll fill up a little one. That'll be plenty. And then we need our target block, in this case, Marble. So what we do is we right-click, uh, no, I'm sorry, we hit C to open up this inventory, put our marble over there, and it's not actually going to keep the marble, it's just keeping it as a reference, and then we add the Klein Star over here, and that's going to be the fuel source. So currently, this is holding a 50,000 EMC, and each piece of marble is worth one EMC. That means we can now generate 50,000 EMC into the world. Now, if we fly down here and we right-click, we're going to get a single marble. We charge it up with V and we right click, we're going to still get a single marble. I'm sorry, but if we charge it up again, 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 is this thing broken? Let's charge it down first off and then I'm going to have a look at our controls. Change mode with G. That's probably what we want to do. Some of you are probably trying to figure out like, aha, extension mode, extension classic mode. 
Transmutation mode. Transmutation classic mode. Pillar mode. Creation mode. Extension. Well, I don't know what these mean. We're going to move over here into this open field. And I'm going to cycle through some of these modes. So again, that's G. And we're going to start off in creation mode, which apparently just acts as if you have the target block in your inventory, which I can see that being useful because when I was building this wall, let me tell you what, it was a pain in the neck to go around and constantly get more marble. But now instead of carrying around seven stacks of marble, I just need the mercurial eye with marble as my target. Extension mode. So I have an idea of how this probably works. I bet we do that and then we right click, charge it up first. There we go. I don't know how effective this can be. If you have to like, I, I don't know how, oh. Oh, you can get silly with it. Oh my, okay. Well, now we know. That's extension mode. How does it differ from extension mode classic? Oh. Oh, interesting. Okay, so that just seems to copy the shape. That's awful. I hate that. That's useless. Transmutation mode, I'm guessing, changes, and let's charge it down a bit. But it probably transmutes, yeah, the objects into the, the, the object in question. So now we just have... I mean, this could be useful for the walls. Because what I was doing was I was using the destruction catalyst to go into the wall. So we could then come back and use the mercurial eye to fill it in. But if I could instead turn that segment of wall there into marble. That might be better and faster. And yeah, I'm going to get rid of this massive monolithic structure here. Uh, transmutation classic mode. <laughs> I don't know how it's, it's going to differ really. Kind of looks the same except for it worked on the grass. And I don't remember. Oh, hi there. Yeah, I'm really not worried about any of these guys. We can kind of take them all down right now. You know, we're in really good armor, and I'm, I'm trying to just figure out whether or not transmutation mode. I don't think this will trans... Oh. Yeah, no, I, I don't see the difference. So now we have pillar mode, which... Doesn't appear to be doing anything. Oh, it just makes a pillar. Well, what if you're facing up? Yep, yeah, that's a pillar, all right. And then we're back to creation mode. Well, hopefully that helps you folks out. If you were curious, now you know how you might use this thing to help you build big monolithic mega structures, which is what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to go take a nap, and maybe these things will be less hostile towards me. And then I'm going to tidy all that up and start digging out these walls and covering it all with marble, except for the floor. We'll cover that next time. Wowzers! This is almost as dangerous as walking around with a fully charged destruction catalyst. I could have just had a wall of marble in front of me instead of a door, and it could have been a disaster. Hey, thank you folks for watching. God bless each and every one of you, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Howdy there, folks! How are you all doing? My name is Reese, and welcome back to our Tech It 2 Let's Play adventure, where today, spoilers, we're going to be building a nuclear reactor, a safe nuclear reactor. Well, as safe as we can, and we're going to be building it. Well, I'll show you where we're going to be building it, but I'm going to listen. I'm going to go ahead and forward this by saying, as I, I trolled through the many objects in the IC2 Classic mod, and I realized that there's now steam reactors and, and nether star reactor fuel cells and, and all sorts of things I'd never heard of. First off, I felt old. I felt it like old man yells at LED bulb in store and says, Back in my day, our lights were a, a, a fire hazard and we liked it that way. I, I f <laughs> I'm so behind. So there's a lot of research I need to do. So today we're going to be building a classic, basic uranium reactor with a nice safe design that's going to put out hopefully enough power for a mass fabricator so that we can get that thing we talked about last time, the UU Matter pouch to hold a bunch of upgrades. I can't remember what it was called anymore. That's what we're going to be doing today, though. That's going to be the focus. And before we get started, I do have some things that I want to discuss. So first off, I figured out what to do with the roof. Now, the roof might look normal to you at first, 
if we fly around out here, but if we get really close, you'll see my brilliant idea was to put gray carpet on the roof. Now, gray carpet is, of course, just, uh, well, that's useless, but if you look at the recipe, a couple of gray wool, gray wool, it's just, you get yourself some gray dye. Gray dye, it's just bone mill and, and ink is what I ended up doing. Pretty basic. I think it looks good with the wood to the point where it's kind of hard to discern the top up there. I mean, like, look at it. Can you even really see the carpet in the wood? I will say I logged into this without the pure BD craft pack on and boy, does it look awful. This house looks terrible. The windows were a poor choice because, you know, in Minecraft, they don't connect together properly. But I've got actually some design changes in mind for those windows in the future anyway. Something else we need to address very quickly is uh, what's going on in the basement. We really need like a single button push to open all of those. That would be cool. The basement has been extended. It now goes all the way over here. And let me tell you, this was so much easier with the destruction catalyst and the um, mercurial or mercurial eye. My gosh, that made this so much faster. Now, lighting is a bit of a mess. Our lamps and most lamp components, well, not really mo- Well, actually, yeah, all of the lamp components, except for the redstone torch, I guess, uh, no longer have an EMC value. So that's unfortunate. They all have to be made in bulk, and it's a pain. So this is the only area where I really did, like, patterned lighting, and then for the rest of it, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna just put them down where we need them. We do have a pig down here. And uh, our, we got our good pig, Prescott, who is just having a wonderful time. I went back into the mines, and I got that one name tag we found that one time and left down there. And then folks have been asking. Folks have been worried. I assure you, Carl the chicken is fine. Carl the chicken has has not been, is not dead, has not been killed, has been hanging out down here in the basement. Got lots of glorious windows that are going to be replaced soon with better windows. Oh, and then also I did this. So let's go outside and have a look at that, because that is where our reactor is going to be stored. And hopefully, if it goes, you know, again, I'm building a safe reactor. But if things don't go quite to plan, hopefully having it down here will be helpful. Let's talk about the design aesthetic down here, right? So first off, on the walls, we went from the white marble to this lovely basalt that I made with the, the chisel. And I wanted to have a good transition. So we go from the pure white of the marble to a light gray lamp to a regular gray lamp to the very dark basalt. And I think it has a nice transition. And then I really wanted to have lime green inverted lamps down here because it's like nuclear energy. I thought that would look really good with the quad uranium cells, but it required I go find a cactus, which I've not done yet. So maybe in the future. In the meantime, we got some orange lamps down here just kind of filling in space. Now, unfortunately, obviously this is not centered. So our nuclear reactor will not be centered which is, is frustrating, but I don't, we'll build it off to one side and pretend it was supposed to be like that all along, I guess, maybe. And with all of that malarkey out of the way, we can go ahead and get started today. We're going to be building a lot of things. First off, right in the middle of our reactor, we're going to need a nuclear reactor. We're going to want to surround that with as many reactor chambers as possible which is six, because that's how many sides a block has in this game. We're going to need to store all of this energy inside of an HV... Nope, hold on. Inside of an MFSU. And then in order to get it out of there, because this is going to be uh, outputting super high voltage. I think it's, it's like EV. So I don't know what that stands for. Extreme voltage, maybe. We want an HV transformer to bring it down to something the MFSU can handle. And then we already have an HV transformer to go from the, um, the MFSU into our machines. Although I don't think that the mass fabricator requires it. I think the mass fabricator can take high voltage. Unless I'm mistaken. Now, inside of the reactor, we're going to need some uranium cells. And then we're going to need other things. Now, I'm not telling you this is the best way to build a reactor. What I'm telling you is that after reading on a bunch of forums and Reddit posts, what I have determined is that we're going to follow an image that I found, a JPEG, that tells me I need a component heat vent, an overclocked heat vent. I don't know how you can overclock a heat vent, but here we are. A heat exchanger and a containment reactor plating. We're also probably going to need some high voltage cables or, or maybe extreme voltage cable. If that's even a thing, we might be able to just use the glass fiber cables, EV cable. 
doesn't appear to be a thing at all. There's something called a plasma cable, but I don't know what that is. There's also LV flux cables, MV flux cables, and HV flux cables. What the heck is a flux cable? It's from Flux Cable the Mod. I think we actually got a message about this from someone. Transfers RF per tick. Why would you want this? Why, why would you want to do this as opposed to use... I mean, it's not necessary. Because remember, the regular uh, kinesis pipes that we have are, are very broken. For now, let's get started with our reactor chamber. We will need six of them, plus... There are three required for this actual recipe. And then, interestingly enough, a regular bog standard generator. We might nip one from up here, as well as a, a basic advanced circuit. So I guess not basic at all. This would be an, a basic circuit. This would be an, an advanced one. So in order to build the reactor chamber, we need dense copper plate, which is just eight copper inside of a compressor. We have a compressor. We have copper. We can make that happen. The other thing we're going to need is a machine block, which is iron cooked up. Now, remember when we started this pack? Am I wrong? Oh, oh, I organized some things over here. That's not as interesting, is it? Built an anvil so I could give the name tags names, because we were able to get the one out of the... And then put it in the... And then we got... we got and Now we got Carl and Prescott down there in the... No sign of Buttercup or, or Thunderhoofs yet, but we'll see. Didn't the iron have an EMC value when we started? Like so many things in this pack, wasn't it just, like, slightly better? So, we're going to zoom over here, and we're just going to have a bunch of refined iron cooked up. And then I don't think we're going to be using the macerator much today. So we will overclock this bad boy, and we'll come over here to the compressor, and we'll throw some additional overclocks in there too, although we might be getting to a point where we can't sustain that type of power output, although it seems to be running fine right now. There are other ways to generate high amounts of electricity. We could upgrade our solar panel if we wanted to. It's been on my agenda to build a medium voltage solar panel for some time now, but what I figure is, <clears throat> you know, because Galacticraft's in this pack, when we go to the moon, Maybe then we'll worry about solar panels, and, and while we're down here, we won't we won't worry about it. I, I started putting Mobius fuel in these because I think the reference... Every time I put them in there, I, I just say, Mobius? Gosh, fortunately, yeah, this thing is very quick. Because it is taking eight of them and, and then producing one. I suppose I could have done maths to figure out exactly how many of these we'll need. Uh, wait, so it's, we're making we're making six, seven, eight, nine, and then four. That is, what, 36? So we need 36. And then it takes eight of these. 288, is that right? I think we need 288 copper ingots to get the 36 dense copper plates that we need. So if you were looking for math, there you go. That comes out to four and a half stacks of copper. Did a little division there, a little, little basic arithmetic for you. It's possible we will need more for other components. I haven't checked yet. I suppose I could. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally the first one I clicked on. Yeah, we're going to need more dense copper plates. We should have an export upgrade, a hopper, and we should also have a chest. Let's automate this because I don't want to stand around here all day. So we can put our copper up there and then we want you to output not... Yeah, actually to the west. That's fine. So we'll toss that in there. And perfect, so we can just keep this bad boy loaded with copper. I've noticed as I edit these that I refer to these machines as bad boys a lot. Which is strange because they're actually quite useful and helpful. And I don't think that they're in any way, you know, naughty or inappropriate. It's just a weird thing that I do. I don't know why. I can't really give you any explanations for it. So I'm going to put all of this up here. Disregard the glass! It's chiseled glass. We'll talk about that later. That's, that's, that's a, the next half episode, maybe. Let's make some machine blocks, and let's make a few of them, because we're going to need probably a lot as we go through this. But we now have enough to generate, wow, am I doing that recipe wrong, are six reactor chambers for going on to the actual reactor itself, and then the three necessary for the reactor recipe. I'm going to grab my electric wrench, which should still be in lossless mode. And I'm going to come down here and pilfer this generator. Because it is no longer needed. Oh, I guess while we're down here real quick, we can have a, a little look-see. I haven't emptied these out in a while. This is pretty good. The last time I emptied these two machines out, I emptied them out at the same time. So this one's at a stack and almost a half of diamonds. And then this one over here, I did have to turn off one of the buttons to maintain equilibrium. Just a heads up. <laughs> 
<laughs> Let's just let it keep running. We don't need an EMC right now. I can already tell that this is going to be one of those episodes where by the time it's all said and done, my inventory is going to be a complete and absolute mess. So again, preemptively, I'm just going to make six of these, even though we only need one right now, because you never know, you might need more. Now, what I should have done if I wanted to be truly professional and helpful is I should have gone and gotten right, right down to the very last stick a list of every single component and exactly how many we would need. And look, I'll be the first to admit that, yeah, I should have done that. But I've been here at this computer for many hours now uh, because I've, I've actually, like, this was all done today. All the, all the basement and everything outside has all been done over the last uh, few hours. So I was ready to get the episode started. I, I apologize. I am working, and I think I said this in a previous video, I am working on, in the future having a proper tutorial for all of this after sort of everything settled down and there aren't new updates coming out every day that break the game in some new and fantastic way. But, okay, that's the recipe. There we go. Nuclear, reactor, and reactor chambers. So those are all ready to go now. Once all the updates have kind of settled down and we have a better picture of what the pack's going to look like, what the, the recipes are all going to be. At that point, I'm probably going to create a couple of, of videos. Tutorial-focused, less Let's play E in nature, actually not Let's Play at all. I'll probably use this place as a set. And if you're looking for, like, proper good guides that don't involve me going crazy and, and actually being prepared and knowing what I'm talking about, we'll, we'll do that. I haven't done it yet because... I feel like every time I sit down to record, there's a new version, and it fundamentally changes something I talked about in the last, like, literally, the update <laughs> that <laughs> removed EMC values from these lamps came out the same day that that video launched, I th or maybe the, I, the day I recorded it, I can't remember, but it's frustrating to say the least. But we've got our nuclear reactor and our reactor chamber. Now, let's go ahead and also get our MSFU, which is the next tier of energy storage above the MFE. This is the high voltage one, and you don't want to plug your machines directly into it unless they have two transformers or a medium voltage transformer, which we made in the past and should still be stored inside of here, uh, and a single transformer in each machine or an healthy transformer as well. It's, it's, uh, it's, you're, you're risking things. It's getting dangerous. So I'm going to remove the nuclear reactor, the reactor chambers. Let's focus on the MFSU. So you're going to need an MFE. So we're actually going to need to build another MFE. That, or... We could just move ours down there. That would be fine. We don't really need an MFE up here and an MFSU down there. We can just have the MFSU. And then as long as there's a transformer between it and all of our equipment, it should be fine. Um, I don't want to unplug it just yet, so we'll wait until we have everything else. And everything else that we need for the MFSU is Laptron Crystals, which I think we've built before. It's two electronic circuits, a bunch of lapis, and then energy crystals, which is what we've actually built before. That's right, I remember now. So the five of these that I built are not going to be enough. We're actually going to need way more. So two, and then there's six of these, so that's 12, and then one in here, so 13, and then wowzers. Okay, so we need 13 uh, electronic circuits in order to build the MFSU. All right, so we got all of our energy crystals made, all, all six of them. Now we combine them with a lapis and two electronic circuits each, and that'll give us the six Lapitron crystals. What a harrowing experience that was. That was a bit of a joke. It was not a harrowing experience. Next, we will need an advanced machine block, which is a machine block with carbon plate and advanced alloy. So I think we've actually built one of these in the past. We should have everything we need inside of here. We do have machine plates and we do have carbon plates. I'm trying to be mindful of other things that I have in here that we might need later. Now, we do have an electric furnace, but I, I don't think that'll be useful. It's automatic, matic, zoom, 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 make my heart go boom, ba boom, boom, supernova girl. Advanced machine block, and then we can build the advanced circuit. And the final component we will need will be our MFSU. Now, once we take this down... Boy, we're going to be in a bit of a pickle. Let's get all of our cables that we have. And we will plug everything in directly to the generators. Come here, you. This is a temporary measure. 
hopefully it'll be fine. We will make sure that each of these machines has a bit of Aeternalis fuel burning in it. So what did we determine? Each one of these was the equivalent of 64 blocks of coal, I think. Should be fine. 64 coal, not 64 blocks of coal. Just so we're clear. I wanted to clarify that. Now, from memory, I will build the MFSU. And this is such an annoying process. Can you... <laughs> I've, I've, in previous series, I have had multiples of these. I, I've built these specifically just to power teleporters. And it's always a pain in the neck. But there we go. The MFSU. So, the MFSU stores 10 million EU, and it inputs and outputs 512. This is according to the IC2 Classic uh, wiki. Of course, that wiki also states that there's something called a plasma energy storage unit that is simply not present in this game. It could have been disabled for whatever reason. I'm not sure, but that's the MSFU. We have our medium voltage transformer to get power safely out of the MSFU to our machines, which each currently only have one transformer. Again, we could start stacking transformers and then get more energy in here, but that's not a task for today. Next up, we need to actually build a high voltage transformer, which is going to protect the MFSU from blowing up when we plug it into our reactor, because the reactor will be putting out extreme voltage. Wake me up, shake me up, take me to the stars. Oh, so much to know so far to go. Galaxy is ours. Galaxy is ours, my girl. You guys ever watch Xenon, Girl of the 21st Century? Or is it Xeon? Xeon, Girl of the 20th. It's been a while since I've seen it, but I've had that song by Protozoa stuck in my head all day. Protozoa is the band, the fictional... Not even a band, he's a performer. Uh, he's fantastic, too. They recast him in the third one. The third one sucked, though. The third, the third, don't even watch it. It's not worth it. The third, I don't even know why they made it. The first two were fantastic films, and then they went and they ruined it with one about the moon spirit or whatever. I, I hated it. It was terrible. Everyone involved should have been fired, except for the girl who plays Zena. She was great. She was always a gem in those films. All right, high voltage transformer. Now, I did say we were going to build a mass fabricator, but considering that's not really part of the... The nuclear reactor experience, I think that can wait a bit. I'm going to build some additional high voltage cables. And then we're going to go deal with this guy. I don't know what his deal is. We still haven't actually secured our house from creepers for whatever reason. Man, they don't really seem to aggro on me though. Or, or maybe it just takes them longer. Maybe I'm just super fast at killing them and, and they don't even realize it's coming. Except for in the event of that one down there. By the way, we had a creeper blow up. I, I know I'm bad about bringing that up. Sometimes it's just craters and I, I ignore them. But let's talk about where we're going to put this reactor. I say this corner because it is closer to where the power is eventually going to need to get to. And then I did just realize that I don't want to put the reactor on the ground itself. So we're going to come up here and we're going to get some marble which for some reason i opened that up with carbol like that's what i started writing which is just not a thing and then i looked at my keyboard and like the c and the m are very far away so i don't know what exactly i was doing there but we will place down our marble and that's probably fine we're gonna take out the nuclear reactor this is the core of our reactor and plop it down right there so if we have a look inside of it not much going on, but if we break all of these blocks, and oh my gosh, this thing is extremely dead. Very unprofessional of me. I definitely should have had that charged up. We're going to get our reactor chambers, and each time we place one of these down, when we right-click on it, you'll see that there's more room inside of our reactor. And what do we do with that space? Well, we're going to fill it with all kinds of useful things. We're going to fill it with things like coolant cells and nuclear fuel cells and, and other things of that nature. There we go. So this is a full-size one. It gets no bigger than this, to my knowledge, unless it's been modified since. Now that just looks like a bundle of chaos and terror, doesn't it? You know what? We probably need to get ourselves some hazmat suits so we don't accidentally die while handling all this hazardous waste material. I don't actually think that the hazmat suits are necessary. I'm not really sure. I know they used to be, especially in Tekka Classic, because otherwise you'd start like tanking damage from nuclear materials in your inventory which was always a fun time. But they look really cool, the hazmat suits. And they really, I think, set the, the stage for what's going on here. So we're going to need some orange dye. And from the looks of it, one there and two there. 
list, so only three. And you can get this, by the way, by just combining like dandelion yellow and, and the red rose flowers. And, and, and there you go. You're good to go. Hazmat suits. These do look pretty slick. We're going to keep them in our inventory for now. And then we're going to just continue and see if we start like taking damage and it'll be funny. Sorry, I realized that was a bit of an odd aside. I got very distracted there. So coming out of this machine, I suppose we're going to have our... Uh, medium voltage, high voltage, we want the high voltage transformer. So we can, I think, hook it directly up to this. I think. It'd be so funny if we couldn't, and it just blew all of this up, and it was just really disappointing for everyone, myself included. <laughs> Wouldn't that be hilarious? We'll point that bad boy downward. Or do we want to point it upward? I actually can't remember how these work. I think that this is how it works. Any side can be high voltage, and then the bottom side is the output. I think if you apply a redstone signal to it, though, it reverses it. But there won't be a redstone signal. You know what? I don't think that we can actually blow up the the M MSFU. If the HV transformer is set up incorrectly, I think just nothing will happen. We'll find out. There is our MSFU. And we will put that piece of basalt back. Okay. Yeah, this might work. This could be fine. This might be fine. This could be a disaster. Now we get on to the components phase, where we're going to be building things like uh, containment reactor plating, heat exchanger, overclocked heat vent, component heat vent, quad uranium cell. Doubt. Um, how? Doubt. Um, how? Doubt. Um, how? Doubt. Um, how? All right. So I am looking on the IC2 Classic Wiki, and we're going to read a little bit about what these do so that I don't come out as a complete hack fraud, and at least there's some educational content here. So we've got the reactor plating. Uh, increases the heat limit of the reactor hull. Increases the temperature levels at which the reactor surroundings catch fire. <laughs> and depending on their type, can either increase or decrease the force of a meltdown explosion. Okay, well, these are containment reactor plating, so... Gosh, hopefully they're, they're better than the standard. So these actually lower the max heat, but increase reactor durability. So heat vents absorb heat emitted by adjacent components. However, they will not draw in heat themselves and dissipate it. Some vents also absorb heat directly from the reactor hull. So the overclocked heat vent extracts 36 heat from the reactor hull per tick, but dissipates 20 heat from itself per tick. If not supported by other vents, this vent can overheat and melt itself, which I suppose is why they are surrounded by component heat vents and containment reactor plating. So then the heat exchanger attempts to equalize the heat stored within themselves and adjacent components. And yeah, it's surrounded by a lot of hot things. And then the component heat vent is event that removes heat from adjacent components at an increased rate. Well, well, there you go, folks. I suppose if I spent a lot of time reading all of this, I could determine what the absolute best... Uh, to heck with safety, but the absolute best setup would be. But for right now, let's just start throwing reactors in there. And, um... I suppose we'll need a way to power it on. Would it be silly to put a lever on it? That feels like a... <laughs> that feels silly. We really need to build a teleporter. Maybe that's what we'll do in the next like partial half episode. We'll just put teleporters everywhere. And back down we go. This is where we find out, as soon as we flip the switch, that it's set up incorrectly, and the MFSU blows up and takes off one of the uh, chambers. And then that itself starts this sort of chain reaction that causes the whole thing to blow up. It's all on! There is no power going to the MFSU. Hmm. Maybe I was right about the transformer needing to be turned in a different direction. All right, you know what? Let's break that bad boy. Oh my god, okay. I was like, where did it go? Hold on a minute, where did it go? Everybody calm down. Everything's fine so far. We're good here. Get that out of that hand. Let's, let's, let's flip that thing around first off. HV transformer might need to be facing the opposite of the direction we had it. Okay, I need you to I need you to face upward is the issue. You know what? Let's throw down our MFSU. And then we will throw our HV transformer onto the top of it. 
No, but I need you to face... You know what? You know what? Come here. Fine. Fine. No, this is fine. We're going to take the, the HV transformer and set it down there. And then we're going to hook that up with some of those big high-voltage cables we've got. Oh, they were in my inventory this whole time. I think we could probably use glass fiber cables, but these will look cooler because they're big, fat, thick cables, and I like that. That's fun. So that's hooked up, right? And then we take our, our MFSU and we plop it down. That should be input right there, so click. Hmm... See, I'm thinking maybe the red is the input. There we go! So red is the input, and then all the other sides are outputs. So that's hooked up now, and we have our MFSU being filled with, I mean, obscene amounts of power. And yeah, look what I was saying. Look how thick these cables are. They're ridiculous. It's great. How are you doing? So what we want to keep an eye on here is is first off, we will have to replace these quad uranium cells. Oh, we lost some components. That's bad. That shouldn't have happened. So I believe up there we had two. Oh yeah, these are going down fast. These are the overclocked heat vents. And they're dropping like flies. I feel like I was lied to by this random wiki. Kill the power. Shut this thing down. So once it's turned off, you'll notice these will start to go back up as they cool off, which is what we want to see. So this entire time, this entire video, I was designing something that was never going to work properly. But it did create a lot of power. Doubt. Um, how? Doubt. Um, how? Doubt. Um, how? Doubt. Um, how? So it looks like we're going to be using the component heat vents still, basing this off of my own video. But advanced heat vents. A lot of advanced heat vents and a lot of, uh... Let's see, these, these I don't even think we're going to be using. We're going to take those out right now. It doesn't look like we're going to be using these. I don't see a single heat exchanger in here. Basically, all of these need to go. This looks like it's going to be a lower output system, and I'm okay with that. Pretty much everything in this bag now is junk. This is all we're going to be reusing. Not even going to be reusing all of them. If I'm looking at this recipe in my in my current in my own video, it never blew up in the Tech at Legends X25 challenge. So yeah. That's such a disappointment. Now that's not to say that the items we're currently holding are useless. That is simply to say that the the JPEG we saw was a lie, and if we want to get use out of these, we'll have to come up with a different setup for them in the future. In the meantime, we still have them, and we can still use them at a later date. Let's go ahead and uh, compress ourselves up some more uranium. Make ourselves some more cells. We will also need more copper plate. Jeez, this is a proper thunderstorm, too. This is the perfect weather for something to happen. Unfortunate, you know what I mean? We need to make sure... It's nice and cozy inside of here, at least. You know, it's nice and warm from all of the heating lamps. They, they put off a nice little warm glow. How is everyone down here? Are you okay? Are you alright, Prescott? What about you? Carl. You okay? Carl's fine. Maybe we can get Carl a baby. Maybe not. We then need 27 advanced heat vents, which means 54 regular heat vents, so making more of those. 54 of them. 54! What was the other recipe? Oh, we could just use different ones to create this one. That weird. It's D4. I've already forgotten how many of these I said I would need. Was it 42? I think it was 42. I think the fact that these don't stack is actually... Like, make it to where they don't stack inside of the reactor. That's fine. But I need them to stack for most things, so it's a bit annoying. How are we going to get power up here? We're going to have to dig. I already have this weird little hole back here that doesn't really do anything maybe that's where we dig straight down and then out of the wall down there and that's where we'll run our cables i can already tell that editing this is going to be a nightmare because i keep talking about things and then kind of trailing off and realizing nah, i don't need to talk about that right now i'll do that i'll do that sometimes where i'll just start a conversation I'm like man this isn't really going anywhere and i'll just trail off and i'll expect me in the edit to just know that when i go to edit but edit reese is like a different reese entirely Edit Reese 
hears the beginning of that conversation, expects it to go somewhere, kind of does all the prep and edit work around it, and then the conversation trails off and he realizes, oh, that was never going to go anywhere. And then and then he gets kind of frustrated and he cuts it all out. He's like, oh, darn you race that records! Why are you like this? Doubt. Um, how? Doubt. Um, how? Doubt. Um, how? I think I'm starting to see a pattern emerging on my screen right now. Again, following a guide from a video that I myself made in September. September 6th! Wow! Remarkably close to... So this is 2019, almost exactly three years ago. A little bit more... Then three years ago, I uploaded this. That is crazy. Man, I gotta tell you, this just looks ridiculous. I think we can just start clicking these in here. They should just fill in all the available spots and go where I need them to go. The exception to that is going to be with the little ones. So the little ones actually have specific places in here that they go. So one goes there. I think one goes down here. One goes here. And then this one goes at the top. Now, supposedly... According to me in this old Tech at Legends video, this is good to go, and looking at it, it looks like I turn it on right after putting this layout in there. I'm, I'm skipping ahead a bit in the video to double-check and make absolutely positively sure. And uh, if we head outside now, how much are we producing? 150. So from wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on a minute. I've got some sort of reactor block on here that tells me what's happening inside of the reactor. Tells me the heat, the melting, the output. Why don't I remember building that? Is that is that a thing I can get here? Reactor chamber, steam reactor chamber, reactor planner. Wait, what is this? Nuclear reactors are the most powerful means of generating EU and industrial craft, and they are also the most dangerous. One misplaced component in your power supply is now a rather large bomb. The reactor planner is a block that allows a user to safely create and test a reactor design prior to actually building it. The Reactor Planner is an MV tier machine accepting 120 EU per tick input and consuming 100 EU per tick while actively simulating a reactor. The Reactor Planner has a rather complicated GUI. No, I mean, looking at it, it doesn't look that complicated. Are you kidding me? We could just it just put things in there and it'll... What? This whole time! This whole time! We couldn't... We, we didn't need to follow no... What?! The Reactor Planner, everyone! Now it does require a full nuclear reactor, some chambers... An advanced machine block. I mean, I'm not building one right now, because I'm just going to throw this switch, and we're just going to see what happens. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? This is just here for the world to see! It's just here this whole time! Oh my gosh, how are we doing? How are we doing? We're generating quite a bit of power. It's working. It's working machine is working the, the the reactor heat vents seem to be okay okay well they're they're taking some hits they're getting hot are they gonna break did i do something wrong why 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 is nothing i build right it is possible that the version of industrial craft well it is a different version of industrial craft classic from what i used in tech at legends but i didn't think it would be so different that we would start to see severe heat degradation. I mean, look at this. This stuff's getting way too hot. These components can break if they get too hot. Why is this stop? Why is this so bad? Oh! Oh, did I do that? Okay, yeah, I did that. Thought maybe it had caught fire and burned up. Okay, well, I skipped to the end of my own video, and at the end of my own video, I replaced all the dual uranium cells with single cells. This is why. I need to pay more attention. This video has been sort of a mess, but I don't know if it's as bad as Maddening Malarkey. So, I, yeah, well, comment down below. Uh, comment down below. Vid, which video? Which which video was the worst? <laughs> was it was it Maddening Malarkey or I don't, whatever this is titled? A nuclear nightmare, probably. You know, the funny thing is, I'm not even in this for the most power you can get. I just want to create something that's not going to blow up and supply enough power to run. You know, get some UU matter and, and run all of my machines inside. You know, it doesn't need to be crazy powerful. I made too many of these, by the way, because I forgot that the reason we needed 42 of them was because we had to create a lot of double ones. But that's okay, because now we have plenty that we can replenish with in the future. So, 
I'm going to move this over to this side where the MFSU is because I've decided that that is the side that we address this thing from for no particular reason. Turn it on. Everything powers on. We're outputting a pretty decent amount of power. I don't know how much. Not sure how to measure it. That definitely looks like it's going to be much more manageable. And now we just need to get the power inside. Now we just dig. I think the issue with how I built this is that we might not be able to get the cable underground. And the reason is, yeah, bedrock. But we might be able to kind of snake it around. So if it comes out the bottom of here, we can have it go around here, through here, uh, through there. Perfect. So there is a pathway. It's a bit of a mess, but it can be done. We are going to get our mercurial eye, and we are going to make sure that it is configured with marble. And then we're going to make sure that that chute down there that we just dug is completely marble. In case at any point in future videos we happen to look down here and we see down this shaft, we want all of that to be marble. So we're going to tap through G until we get to transmutation, which is what it was already on. And then we are going to have to put fuel in it. Is it, already, it should already be fueled up, actually. Yeah, except we didn't put the marble in correctly. That's our issue. Right click, right click. Now, something interesting I learned about this device while using it uh, to build all of this is if you right click on an ore, because that can't be transmutated, it just replaces it with the marble and puts the ore inside of your inventory. All right, so we've got a marble chute all the way down. Now we're going to have to build a lot of glass fiber cables, an, an obscene amount of glass fiber cables. <laughs> so we've got two stacks in a bit, which should be enough for getting the power up here through this very dark hole. Let's make sure we point you downward and we're gonna have our cables come out. Now, I did say I wanted to run the mass fabricator off of the high voltage directly. So I've got to decide where I'm going to put the transformer. We just have to make sure that we put the transformer down and that we don't forget to use the transformer because gosh help us if that happens. Also, I need to make sure that I build this cable properly. If, if we accidentally miss one of these and, and I'm spending, you know, 40 minutes trying to diagnose why. Oh, hold, see, now hold on. What happened right there? What happened right there? Was that just a weird shadow? Or did it put a block there when we ran out of cable? I can't tell. See, it did it again. It did it again. Okay, it did. It put a high voltage cable. That's fine, but didn't we have two stacks of these? Come on. The big advantage for glass fiber cables is not only do they carry tons of energy, they also do not have energy loss over distance. At least I don't think they have any at all. So we got our medium voltage transformer, which will take the high voltage and change it into medium voltage, and we can plop that right there, although, actually, we do want to have a tap for high voltage, that's the thing, and maybe that can be directly in front of it, maybe we can generate UU matter with a machine sitting right there, so we will put this on top, like that, but we do need it to be aimed the other direction, if I get down on top of it and I click, well that's just gonna, that's not, what if I shift click it? Yeah, there we go. So it should have the red now pointing down. Perfect. I got to go downstairs and patch all of that mess, but we need to first tap this into everything up here and make sure that I got it set up correctly. So I imagine this thing has probably stopped running a few times. I don't know. It still says 100% speed, so I guess it never lost power. We'll tap in right here. It might be a bit of a mess, but for right now, just to get it up and running, this is the basement. Who cares about how tidy it is? I do. I care. I, I care a lot, actually. Before I click this in here, I'm trying to think, is there anything bad that might happen? That's a medium voltage transformer. It's transforming everything into medium voltage. All of our machines have transformers. So that they can... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So one immediate benefit that we should have is that now even though these generators are going down, our machines should stay fully powered up. In fact, we can get our overclocker upgrades out. Toss some in there. 
Go ahead and get... Oh, that was a risky game we just played. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, did you see what I right-clicked that with? <laughs> Let's get that out of the hot bar. Oh, boy. Tossed that in there. Now, the issue here with uh, overloading it with the overclocker upgrades would actually be not being able to get enough power into our machine because we're still using the... We're converting it to medium voltage in the basement. So I wouldn't expect... Oh. Interesting. Now, this does have its own energy storage upgrade, so we could be depleting through that, although I would expect that to be represented here with the lightning strike. Wow, it is burning through this stuff. We just have so much energy to spare. That's all of my that's all of my upgrades. I don't have any more speed upgrades. That's not true. I have two more. Let's get another stack of iron. See what I could do and what I should do and what I will eventually do. See, we can only go up to 11 before this starts to deplete. And the reason is we're still technically running this machine on medium voltage. If we wanted to run it directly off the reactor, well, not directly off the reactor, that would be silly, but run it directly off of the, the high voltage transformer down there and completely eliminate the medium trans transformer here is we would need to create one, two, three, four additional transformers, I think. Would that be correct? We have four machines, yeah. So, I mean, we could just go ahead and make some more transformers. They're not particularly difficult. It's so easy and convenient because we have our base upgrades. I'm starting to feel like if this were a company, everyone would just assume I'm being paid by them, like under the table to do some like backdoor advertisements for the, the base upgrades. Is building upgrades a pain for you? It used to be for me too, but then I discovered the base upgrade. Get your base upgrade today. Oh, oh, you can't stack them inside of the machine. Oh, they're going to take up an extra slot. Well, for a lot of our machines, that isn't an issue. We can kind of do that and it would be fine. But I think we all know one machine for which that would be an issue. And that would be machine down here that hath no upgrade spots left available to it. That means that we need UU Matter. And to get UU Matter, we need the Mass Fabricator. And nothing here is really outside of uh, anything we've done today. We've done all of that. Do you like the way that I struggled to say words just then? Nothing here is outside of what we've done today? Like, like that's not even... That doesn't even make sense, does it? Does that mean anything to anyone? I don't think so. Laptron Crystal. Advanced Circuit Doohickey Thingy-mabob. One Mass Fabricator! which should be a machine that we can plug in directly to high voltage. It's going to be so funny when I click it on there and it immediately just blows up and kills me and Carl. You ready to die today, Carl? Let's take a risk. Oh. No, that's fine. Back on the wiki, it says that apparently the energy you supply will be used to create UU matter, and one piece of UU matter requires 7 million EU, which is conflicting from other reports. It says that this can be modified in the config, See, I found Tech at Classic wikis that claim it's a million EU. But I don't know what it is in this pack. I'd have to find the config. This config is a multiplier that allows you to modify the cost of EU per UU matter. It needs to be synced between client and server, else progress. Issue come up. Default 1, range min 0 0.01, max 9, uh, 1,900. EU per UU equals 1. Does that mean 1 million? Or is that the default of 7 million? Is that like 1, that is to say there is no multiplier? Because that's what it's saying. Modify the cost of EU. This config is a multiplier. So point... I mean, that, that seems to suggest to me it would be the 7... But then again, I... Uh, I don't read config. I hope it's not risky to open up config files like that while the game is running. To be To be clear, I did not in any way modify it and just open it up. Now, apparently, if we throw scrap in here, it speeds the process up. So we've got scrap, which you can apparently get from a carpenter, but that's just not true. This is very bugged. What you actually want is a recycler, and there's two different versions, a compacting recycler and a regular recycler. Of course, much like with every other item in the game, such as the rotary macerator, there is another. The compacting recycler like the regular recycler, but even better at generating scrap. 
So what you do is you feed it power, you feed it random items, there's a chance it'll give you scrap. If you put nine scrap in here, it'll make a scrap box. And according to the wiki, it is an MV tier machine, which means it can take medium voltage by default, which has me wondering about this thing. Is it also an MV tier machine? Does it not need the transformer upgrade? I thought that it did or it would blow up, but let me have a look here at this wiki. Let's see, Rotary Macerator. According to this, the Rotary Macerator is an upgrade. What? Max input 128 EU protect. So if I take this out of here, well, let's test it with this first. Because I don't care if this blows up. We're going to build one of these. It's pretty basic. You got to get a compressor. We've built one before. Put dirt around it, some refined iron, and a glowstone. This is quite the, the procedure. So first we got to get the compressor. And then we got to surround it with all of these objects to get the recycler. And then we got to surround it with a bunch of pistons. Seven of the darn things to be precise. And then we need to get another advanced block, which fortunately we just barely had enough carbon plating for. And we get ourselves the compacting recycler. And then we get ourselves a few glass fiber cables, because I'm not sure if I really believe. <laughs> Call me paranoid. But let's let's go. I mean, how far away? Let, let's just go over here. Let's take this over here. And we'll plug this thing in directly to the medium voltage. Okay. All right. Seems like it's fine. We'll, we'll set it over here next to this machine. And we'll be weary of not plugging it directly into the high voltage. There we go. So does that mean we can come over here now? And we can... Oh, hold on. Hold down the alt key. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh, my gosh! Ladies and gentlemen! I, I'm gonna have to- I haven't edited the video with this in it yet. Haven't edited it yet. I'm gonna have to have an info thing pop up on the bottom of the screen and explain that the transformer was unnecessary this entire time. That's- 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 Embarrassing. Well, that means that we can just put the export upgrade in there after we configure it first off. Uh, yep, west, plop it in there, and then these are no longer necessary. These these can go, and the complication they introduce can go with them for all I care. It's perfect. <laughs> it's perfect. It's perfect. I've done it! I've done it! <laughs> also, this is getting a little out of hand. Let's let's take some of these out of here. I guess it's probably running even more efficiently now than it was before, since it's literally just spitting things out the back. So let's pull some of those out. This thing, though, you literally you just you put you put trash in it, and and there's a chance that it will uh, not accept my overclocker upgrades, but. It might spit out something that might not. You can throw literally anything in here, by the way. And I mean, like, literally, literally anything. Now, this machine needs to have a lever on it so it keeps operating even when it doesn't have something to process. It's, it's like the rotary macerator in that way, where if you want it to go at full power, you either need to keep it running all of the time with items or keep it running all the time with a lever. So it's another thing drawing down our power grid. Uh... This isn't going to affect this machine. No, but it is going to affect the lamp on the floor. Oh, it did affect this machine. Okay, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta go. You can't be here anymore. Get, get out of here. Probably need to find another place for this machine, honestly. Oh, but we do have scrap. So we can take that scrap and we can put it inside of here. And get like a nice amplification for a bit. Until it runs out of the scrap. If we place it next to this machine. Yeah! Okay, cool. The lever on the front of this machine will keep this one on as well. <laughs> We've hacked the game. So as with a normal recycler, any item inserted has a chance to become scrap, else it will disappear. Any metal items inserted has a chance to become scrap metal, and if 9 scrap is inserted, it will compress into scrap box. 
Scrap is inserted in the recycler, blah, 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 blah. I don't know if it matters what items you put in, whether or not some will give it a better chance at generating scrap than others. Let's just go with the cheapest thing in the world, the most the, the item that most people hate and despise, and let's grab a hopper, and we'll just keep funneling more and more uh, cobblestone. You know what we could do is we could generate... We could put... <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Let me think about this. Okay, hear me out, hear me out, right? We got all this back here. We don't really want to interrupt that, but we're going to put this back here. And then on top of that, we're going to have this. And then we're going to have uh, energy collector, which is not getting the most sunlight in the world. But that'll start funneling into here. And we'll have this generate cobblestone. Okay, and then that's going to go in here. Oh my gosh. Folks, we've absolutely... First off, I mean, no, that's unnecessary. This hasn't completely spun up. Once it, it, it will go faster eventually. But the speed at which this can produce cobblestone is the speed at which this thing can insert it from the hopper. We... <laughs> this is brilliant. <laughs> there are more efficient ways of doing it, certainly. But this is brilliant. We could put an import upgrade here. And an export upgrade, and and have it input directly from the condenser. Now, if we want to have this running long term, we might do that, and then have that be automatically piped into the mass fabricator, and then have the mass fabricator automatically output its UU matter. Oh, see, now we're getting into some fun, crazy Tekkit territory. We are we are currently producing scrap more quickly than the machine over here can consume it. So that's good, at least. But folks, those are all things that we could do later. For right now, let's go check on our nuclear reactor, make sure that it's okay. And then, remember, that was sort of the focus of the video, was to get UU matter production going after we built this. So I did come down here, and I patched up the floor, and I patched up the wall, and you can't even see it now. There's no clue how it operates, but if we have a look inside, it's doing exactly what we want it to. The uranium is depleting, which is what we expect, but our coolant, our all of our cooling devices, are staying in perfect condition. This is not the ideal way of doing this. What you really want to do is have really aggressive cooling and the big quad cells and just produce a ton of energy. But we don't need a ton of energy, although our MFSU is only just keeping up with output. And what's happening inside right now? We're running a few machines. This is not good. That means that we need to be, let's see. Geez, we must be consuming a lot more power than I initially realized. I mean, I knew it wasn't going to be the most sort of over the top reactor, but I thought it would at least produce enough power to keep us running. I don't want to build a second reactor. That would be ridiculous. So probably going to end up trying to find a better internal layout to get more power out of it while still keeping it safe. Which means building that reactor tester, or maybe even just going into my test world and cheating one in, but I don't know, you'll have to let me know whether or not it's cheating to use a tester on a different world. But I want to be here when our first UU Matter is created. Hold on a minute, the whole reason we're making UU Matter is to create something we no longer need, which is a product that allows us to put more upgrades inside of the rotary macerator. Although I guess we do need it now because we could be using high voltage on all these machines. And we can't until we have a way to fit in more transformers. Oh, we got a first UU matter. What can you do with UU matter? Well, folks, lots of things. You can get 16 cobblestone out of it. Now, I know you're thinking, wow, that was a lot of EMC and you're telling me we can get cobblestone? It's not great. But you can also get stone. You can get glass if you have four of them. Grass, uh, oak wood, spruce wood, all kinds of different woods. You can get sponge, people! Don't you want sponge? There's actually a lot of really cool things you can do with it, and it can be really handy. Like, we're not gonna find sponge naturally, are we? Cacti? I, I needed some of that earlier and I didn't have any. With UU Matter, we can just make it. We can make it out of UU. We can make... Nope, nope, not that, not that. Shouts, um, hounds, shouts, um, hounds, shouts, um, hounds. You can make a plethora of different things in here. And, I mean, yeah, it could be useful. 
I think that for right now, I'll probably turn off the darn thing. We can get some uh, mycelium. Because as of right now, our reactor is not enough. We can, but we can build an elytra if we have a ton of the stuff. And of course, the elytra does not have an EMC value, naturally, naturally. For right now, though, we don't need a lot of it. We don't, we don't have any use for it. So we're going to turn that thing. Oh my gosh. That is disgusting. Can I just, can I put the lever on the top? Is that going to affect? I don't think you can turn a transformer. Wait, no, that reverses it. That turns a medium voltage into high voltage if it gets a redstone signal. Let's just take the thing down for right now. And we will keep it in like a, a chest or a box or... Actually, we'll keep it inside of here with all of my different nuclear power cells. But as the sun rises, we have now moved away from constantly dumping coal into generators. And we have moved into an age of nuclear power. And we've not perfected it, but it is running and it's not blowing up. So thank you folks for watching. God bless you. And I'll see you later. Bye! Howdy there, folks! How are y'all doing? My name is Reese, and I have a lot to show you today on this mini-episode of Tech It 2. But first, I need to explain why this is happening. So, bear with me for a moment, if you will. This is going to be a pretty busy week for me coming up, and I will not have a lot of time to record the type of episodes that I've been recording. I like to record for at least an hour and a half, two hours, three hours, and then turn that into one big Mondo episode. The title of the channel is Howdy Folks LP, and the LP could stand for Let's Play, but I like to think that it stands for Long Play. They're big, long, juicy videos that you can turn on and either watch with complete captivation or just have on as background noise. Uh, but I'm not going to have time to record those. So I thought about what I could do, and I could record segments of an episode over the course of many days and then edit those together to create one big, long video. But the problem with that is that that means there will be no new Tech at 2 content for several days. Alternatively, I can squeeze in some recording sessions for smaller videos. And I thought since episode 10, everything that I have planned for it is going to be one really big, really long episode. This would be a better idea to do a bunch of little things kind of leading up to 10. And then hopefully next weekend, Saturday rolls around, I'll have the time to record episode 10 the way that I envision it. Now that does mean that for the next several days, you're going to be watching little bitty bite-sized chunks of tech it and i understand that that's not to everyone's liking but again the alternative is no tech it at all for several days so if the option is no tech it or little bits of tech it i think we're gonna go with little bits now there will be other content releasing i have an ongoing xenoblade chronicles 3 playthrough i finished xenoblade chronicles 3 a couple weeks ago i've got all the footage for the entire game it was a really fun playthrough and i'm actually not done playing it i'm still playing and recording it not right now i've been pretty busy with tech it 2 since it launched but I'm still playing through it. There's still a whole bunch of like post-game content I want to do. And I'm ready to get back into editing those. So because I don't have to record those, I just have to edit them. For those of you who don't know, at my job, there are spurts of really intense physical labor, followed by sometimes uh, an hour or an hour and a half of not doing anything, where I get out my laptop and I, I actually edit videos. So because I already have those recorded, I can edit them at work. And those will be uploading alongside the little bites of Tech it. Also, I have another channel called Howdy Folks Gaming, and I am kind of repurposing that channel to be more about editorial content, so game reviews and things. And as part of that, I had two Let's Play series that were running on there, Assassin's Creed Valhalla and FTB Endeavor. And I didn't finish them, but I wanted to finish them, but I didn't want to finish them there since I'm doing different types of content there. So I'm starting to move those videos over to this channel. I've moved most of them over, but... Those are older videos, some of them over a year old as the sun rises and I'm still talking. But I will continue to release those alongside these bite-sized tickets. So if you enjoy these, maybe check those out. They're very different types of videos, so I'm sure they're not going to be for everyone. But uh, that spider there sure wants some more, doesn't he? So that's that, all of that out of the way. Let me just really quickly summarize. For the next few days... Possibly the next week, we're going to be doing bite-sized tech it chunks in between episode 9 and 10. This is 9.1. Welcome. And I've got uh, a lot to show you in this one. But then alongside these, there's going to be older videos, Assassin's Creed and FTB Endeavor, which I've got to get all released so I can resume those series and make new videos in those series, as well as my new Xenoblade Chronicles 3 Let's Play that I can edit while I'm at work because it, I, can, I can. It's not a big deal. Ahem! <clears throat> So what are we doing in today's bite-sized episode? Well, today I'm giving you a tour of my house. 
because a whole lot has changed and I've got a lot to show you. Starting outside, well, I... Okay, well, I didn't build this. Yeah, I don't know what this is. I, I have no clue what this is. Is that a heart? That looks like a heart. That's lovely. Uh, this is... Trading post opening soon. Okay. Well, that's fun. That's really fun. Port opening soon. I think that sign was there before. Uh, is there anything new over there? That all looks basically the same. Well, this doesn't have anything to do with what I wanted to show you. I This just looks like a mess. Uh, the base has been changed. So as you might have noticed, we've got some beautiful flowers surrounding it now. And you know what? Let's do a, let's do a proper tour of the... Hello? Why cinematic camera? Oh, there we go. There we go. That's perfect. So as you can see, we've got this lovely flower arrangement out here in front of the house, uh, consisting mostly of, what are these? Azure bluettes and blue orchids. Let's turn off cinematic camera, actually. It's a little bit annoying. I've also gone around and bone milled the ground to make some lovely grass and, and various flowers. Right-clicking with a shovel on grass will give you this lovely grass path. I planted some trees, specifically sugar maple and the cherry trees. Basically, I wanted this place to look less bland and more uh, kind of lovely. And I think that I achieved that. Now, we also have over here. Jeez, I wonder what could be going over here. Looks like something might land here or take off from here. Maybe a tease for, for the future. Oh, cool. We can see the other portal. Lovely. Doesn't look like that one's got anything weird going on around it. We also have a hole in the ground here, and I don't suppose we need to go in there. We can just, you know, drop in over here. Oh, no, we can't! That's right, we've got new glass roof up here because I got sick of it raining on me when I was down there at the nuclear reactor. Also, I changed all of our glass. So, you can use chisel on glass, which is what I did, to convert all of my glass to this bubble glass, which I also put inside of these doors. Now, it doesn't work exactly the way I had hoped. I had hoped it would be an invisible door. But I think that these... They're invisible enough that they don't really catch your eye. So it still looks like the house only has that one front door. But then we can get in from other directions. And then we have the inside, where I've done a bit more work. So first off, I moved all of our machines over here. And I had a trap door so we can get access to the MFEs that are underneath them. Because each of them now have an MFE. Why? Well, two of these machines did have storage upgrades. But I got rid of those to make room for proper import and export upgrades. So... I've simplified the whole setup a little bit. No more hoppers. And I'm, I'm pretty pleased with this. But I did want to have a nice buffer of power on each of these. And the MFE is so remarkably easy to manufacture. Why are you there? Get out of here. The MFE is just double insulated gold cables, an energy crystal, and a machine block. They're so quick and easy to make that I was able to make all three of these without even really thinking about it while watching a Red Letter Media video. I moved my bed over here, and the reason I moved all the machines over there is because I needed room for this, which is how we now fly up and down out of the basement. But it was important to me because, remember, flying is dependent on EMC, and I don't think the Klein Star is ever going to run out when I'm not paying attention, but you never know when you might be up there with your destruction catalyst, and you're just not paying a lot of attention, and the next thing you know, you, you can't fly anymore. So I added this lovely double staircase so you can get access to our basement like that. And I did the same over here. So this is access to the mines with a hidden little trap door that goes down there. And I built these really cool iron ladders. And if you're wondering, geez, Reese, you had time to do all of this, but you didn't have time to record like a proper episode. Well, yeah, because I did all of this at, you know, like midnight when I couldn't sleep. And I decided, you know what, I'm not going to just lay in bed and not sleep. I'll go play Minecraft. But you don't want to hear me record at midnight. I was literally like mouth slightly agape. Is that a butterfly? Mouth slightly agape. Slightly like like one eye, like, like fluttering clothes, half snoring, watching red letter media and doing this. What I'm trying to convey to you here with all of this is that there was not a lot of attention being given to my actions. I was on auto I was on Minecraft autopilot. And it, it wouldn't have made for an interesting video. Uh, this is all still running smoothly. <laughs> this this happens. This is getting out of hand. I have to come over here and manually empty some of this. So actually, we probably need to get another like button up top there. Not another button, but another pulser. 
to maybe maintain things a little bit better. And in fact, let's do that now, because I'm pretty sure if we come up here and we have a look inside of our build craft, yeah, we've got plenty of pipe pulsers. I built a ton of them. And then we can just kind of fly over here and drop in. We'll slap this one on top. I feel bad for these butterflies. I should probably plant some flowers. So hopefully that helps maintain the balance a little bit better because things are getting out of control. I'm probably going to be getting rid of this soon. I've got other plans for, for energy collectors in the future, but it's it really is outmatched here. Now something else I did is we got our compacting recycler and we have it hooked up using an import upgrade so it can import an entire stack at a time. So that's no longer a limiting factor. I added two energy collectors to try to keep up with it. Hint, hint, things we'll be doing with energy collectors in the future. And then that will dump into the mass fabricator, which has 10 UU matter, but is currently turned off because, my gosh, that thing sucks down a lot of power. Something I realized is that even though a lot of these trees, like this here uh, hill cherry tree, it, it has an EMC value. I don't know if this is an intentional or if this is a bug. But if you put it inside of here, you can't actually get any more out, and it will not remember the recipe. It'll say that it's learned the recipe, but you can't get any more. I don't know if that's on purpose or a mistake. I am running 1.0.4, but it was doing the same on 1.0.3. And then I just have them in here at random. <sighs> I guess I should straighten them up, shouldn't I? I thought it might be funny if they were all slightly crooked, but actually it's just kind of bugging me now. So I've got those in the frames, and then over here where I've harvested those trees, you know, just, it's like a little safekeeping thing, just so we don't accidentally run out of those in the future. Also, is that normal? I guess that was intentional. Uh, the design in this corner is a little bit of a mess. We did add another hole in the ceiling over here for quick access to the outside. So if we need to go from the house to here, we can do so relatively quickly. Why we want to go over there, couldn't tell you. Meanwhile, if we want to access over here, we have this hole. Which allows us to drop in, and I did move some uh, generators down here to try to top off the MFSU, which, I mean, honestly, we, we've now gone through a batch of uranium cells and we're on our second batch, and this thing can struggle sometimes with keeping everything running. So I definitely need to uh, spend some time figuring out a better way to build the reactor, but I've got all of my reactor things back here. So we got all this nonsense and all of this nonsense. I've got near depleted uranium cells, and I feel like there's something we can do with those. Depleted isotope cell? I don't know why I would want that. I don't know why I want to make such a thing. Damaged conversion module, who can say? I, I, genu I genuinely don't know. But I figured that was weird, that a near-depleted uranium cell was an item that you could collect, as opposed to... Because, like, right now, these just say, you know, uranium cells still. So if you come out here right before they're gone, they change slightly, and there's got to be a reason for it. Now, I want to be able to get everywhere without flying. So I've got another tunnel here that goes to a hidden trap door that can take us out of here in case I somehow end up down here without any EMC to fly out. I've also got this door. Where does this door lead? Well, this leads into our old mines. Absolutely. I went a little crazy with the mercurial eye here, getting marble on top of everything. But uh, this should start looking familiar to you. We've got this crafting table and furnaces that we placed way back in episode zero. The, the pits of lava that I dug out in a desperate bid to find uh, I still haven't found sulfur, by the way. <laughs> if you folks have found sulfur, let me know your tips and tricks, but I have not. I did get a comment from someone telling me to check around lava, which I did. That was part of the, the hour or so of content that got cut out of me just trying to find sulfur. Um, it's a good tip, though, that I should have included in the video, that yes, you can find sulfur. Uh, sulfur tends to appear more often around lava. Believe you me. I looked. I, I looked all around here. It would be very funny if I flew over here and there was just sulfur. Like, right somewhere where I had allegedly already checked and I just somehow missed it. It would be very funny. But I don't think that that's going to work out for us. So I cannot guarantee that in the future there won't be other sleepless nights where I decide I'm just going to play Minecraft while I'm half awake and watching Red Letter Media or JonTron or some other YouTube channel that I enjoy. It probably will happen again, I'll be honest. But... I don't know what I'll actually get up to. Uh, things that I definitely... Well, you know what? Never mind. I won't spoil future episodes. But hopefully you folks enjoyed this little bit of what I've been doing in my Tech It 2 Let's Play. And I think I called it Tech It Legends earlier. Or maybe I said it in such a way that I was able to cut it out. And therefore you didn't hear that. And in that case, pretend like it didn't happen. But this is the house now. I think it looks pretty good. And I, I think it feels... You know, it, it's starting to get into the cold season. Autumn's going to be starting soon. Winter... It's going to be summer that whole time in Texas. 
and hopefully our base here will remain a little slice of summer for all you folks up in the colder north. So until next time, when we get to episode 9.2, <laughs> look, I'm not excited about this either. It's just, it's just the thing that made the most sense at the time. Until then, though, thank you folks for watching. God bless you, and I'll see you later. Bye! Howdy, folks! How are y'all doing? My name is Reese, and welcome back to our Take It 2 Let's Play Adventure, and yet another mini-episode. Now, if you're wondering why we're having another mini-episode, please refer to the last mini-episode, 9.1. It'll explain everything to you, but if you're already all caught up, then let's get right into it. We have a nuclear reactor underneath this lovely glass roof here. And so far, it hasn't blown up, but also it's not producing a whole lot of power. Now, I got a ton of suggestions on how to make the nuclear reactor better, more efficient, produce more power. You've got a recommendation to build three more of them, which would be cool, and maybe we will do that. But before we do any of that, I need to encapsulate it in something that will contain it if one of these things that you people have suggested ends up blowing up and destroying everything. I don't want an explosion in the nuclear basement pit over there. We want to avoid that at all costs. So how are we going to simulate that? How are we going to test it? Well, I don't know, but I figured a nuke would be pretty close. We're going to use a nuke, and we're going to surround it with different materials to see how they respond. So first off, there's two that I don't want to use, but I'm curious. One is obsidian. It's pretty resistant to being broken, but we're going to test and see how resistant it is to a nuke. We're also going to build reinforced concrete. Now, I believe concrete bags at one point had an EMC value, and they do not anymore, but building concrete is relatively straightforward, so I don't think we're going to have too much trouble there. Uh, the next one is reinforced glass, which can be turned into uh, clear reinforced glass, but we're going to test the base. They'll have the same characteristics, and this is actually used in the construction of steam reactor chambers, plasma fires, and things of that nature, so that's what I would prefer to use because I'd like to see through it, we also have the reinforced frame blocks. This is mostly out of curiosity, but also it would be cool if we could use this and, you know, if it works better than the reinforced glass, we can just put glass inside of this and it'll maintain the characteristics of the reinforced frame block, but it won't connect together to be seamless, so it might look awful, but at least we'll know. And then, of course, we're going to be building a nuke, which requires a lot of uranium. So I've actually been working on that since before the episode started. I filled this here chest up. I don't care. Not what we're doing today. <laughs> I filled this chest with a lot of uranium ore, and then it's interspersed with copper and uh, carbon. And the reason for that is I wanted a lot of these dense copper plates for the future. And so this thing has been churned in a way at these bad boys here. And I think in the future, we're going to be replacing all of these machines with the upgraded versions. But that's not right now. Right now, we're going to be building a nuke. Maybe several of them. I haven't decided yet. It might be useful to have several nukes. So the other component in a nuke is going to be gunpowder. So in case you guys were wondering, this is how the <laughs> this is how the uh, the world governments do it as well. If you ever wondered, geez, man, how do they make these weapons of mass destruction? It's just uranium and gunpowder, apparently. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, there we go. We got two nukes. That's what we can build right now until we get more uranium. Two might be enough because this is going to take a while. We need nine per block. And each one of these requires five blocks. So maybe by the time we're building some of these reinforced classes, we can make an additional nuke. I guess the first one that we're going to build, and I'm putting build in quotes here, is obsidian. Very straightforward. The reinforced concrete is going to require that we have rebar, a bucket of water, a water cell. I think we have some water cells. And a bag of cement. So we're going to see whether or not we have any ground blast furnace slag in the basement. Because if we do... I'd rather just go ahead and use that. So this here is the blast furnace. There's nothing in it. We do have a lot of creosote oil, though. Probably need to empty it. I, I don't know if these will work if this is full. In that case, we'll just build it out of gravel and nether quartz, since we have an infinite supply of those things. It's a bit weird to get rid of the concrete bag EMC value when the two components that are required to build it just have an EMC value, and you can just do that. But whatever i don't make mod packs i don't make these decisions there's our concrete bags uh rebar is going to be inside of the metal roller iron or bronze or reinforced iron so i mean if we want to be economical about this bronze will be the cheapest way to go about it although uh reinforced iron is just iron cooked twice and you do get six of them but that's that's quite a bit more expensive in terms of emc so here's something that's cool about the rolling machine right so we've got our three stacks here 
We don't have to manually spread them out, though. If I drop the 11 here, it'll automatically disperse them so that it'll be even across the entire recipe, which is very handy. Now, we just need to build a real one instead of a manual one, and it'll be even more handy. I won't have to stand here and watch it. At least it's quick. All right, so we got all of our rebar, and while I was waiting on that to finish, I decided to read some comments on some of the videos, and I gotta say, I think upcoming, we need to have a video where we just read off some of the weird spam, I think maybe robot comments that I get. Because there's some really funky ones that I don't know what to do with. I gotta tell you, there's some... I think someone's trying to train a robot on this channel. <laughs> I'm sure you folks have seen them. That's gonna be a future episode. <laughs> there's some weird stuff. Oh, hi there, you. How did you get in there? I don't think I showed this off last time, but I did build this lovely wall. Come on outside. Oh. Okay, just flying on top of my wall. Come here. I did build a lovely wall. We need to build something to keep the monsters away, and I think I know exactly what that's going to be. Okay, well, let's just not... Let's just not engage. Just ignore it, and maybe it'll go away. So if you're wondering why use these lovely empty cells to get water and use that in recipes, it's because it stacks. So, I mean, it it's a lot more convenient than carrying around a whole bunch of buckets of water, is it not? When you can simply have a whole bunch of water cells in a stack in your inventory? I think so. Concrete at long last. We've got our water. It goes in the middle. We've got our rebar. Tops, bottoms, and sides. Concrete all around. Reinforced concrete. Let's just make a whole stack of the stuff. And then we will put the rest of these unused items. Some of these are IC2. And then the concrete is railcraft, but I don't have a railcraft chest. So we'll throw it in here. By the way, our battery walls and things no longer have an EMC value. Someone commented on that video and said that, Oh, if you're watching this as a tutorial, don't. He, he gives up. And I was like, that's not a that's not an accurate representation of events. Didn't give up. The pack gave up on me. So we've got the obsidian and we've got the reinforced concrete. So I'm going to tap A to dismiss those. And we're going to move on to the reinforced glass. Or are we? Because I just realized we can get a sense of completion here. We can get like one of those dopamine hits by just getting out the reinforced framed block. That's done now. We did that. Congratulations. Don't you all feel like slightly accomplished? This is going to be glass and advanced alloy. Advanced alloy is when you get the reinforced, uh, or, sorry, the refined iron ingots, the bronze ingots, and the tin ingots. And you put them together. And then you run those through a compressor, and then we should have plenty of those lying around. Right inside of here, we have 20 of them. That's not bad. I'll tell you what, though. We probably need more. So I'm going to go ahead and make a bit more. And we're going to force feed this in here if we can. I don't, I don't actually think that I can. I think i got to move that. And then put those there, and then pull this out. There we go. We're going to need more of that in the future anyway, so we might as well have it going. All right. Glass looks like regular glass or any sort of stained glass and advanced alloy. Pull that in there. Make sure that we have all of this actually up here. And we'll go for a stack. Almost. We got 63 of them. That's that's plenty. So we're going to come over here and we're going to get however much uranium we got. We're going to take all the uranium that cooked up while we were making those reinforced blocks. And we are going to turn that into 16 more uranium blocks. And then with the gunpowder that we do not have in our inventory. Well, we got a little bit of gunpowder. But I think that's from killing the, those creepers, <laughs> actually. And has nothing to do with uh, with crafting. We're going to make some more nukes. So we got six nukes. That's fun. Uh, we'll take the rest of this out because I don't want to have a dirtied up inventory. We'll put the gunpowder away. We will put the uranium inside of here. And then I think we're ready to go, except we'll need some way to uh, start up these nukes. I think that they have a really long countdown timer. It's that or they go off immediately. We'll bring a few buttons with us. <laughs> we'll bring a few buttons and find out, I guess. Let's hold. Oh my gosh, why is this full of cobblestone? Oh, I was mining. That's right, I was digging up holes the last time I used it. I dug the hole through there and all of that, see? We're going to go to the nether to test all of this, because that seems like the safest place to go. I feel like there's nothing important we can blow up there, and who cares about, you know, like, the zombie 
pigmen. Uh, the whole game just froze, by the way. I didn't stop moving. It may well be crashing. This is bad. Uh, I guess now's as good a time as any to say that I've updated to 1.0.5. Here it is. In action. <laughs> it is completely frozen. Alright, we're back. Everything seems fine. I had to quit the application. It was all a bit of a mess. But we're back in here. There is a pigman literally guarding the portal from entry. I'm going in. You can't stop me. Gosh, the minimap is still too big. I changed it to a circle. But it's still too big. Uh, for those of you who are wondering, I use the uh, the Poly MC launcher, which is fantastic, and I love it. But it doesn't do pack updating. When you get an update, you have to just install it as a new instance and then manually move all of your saves and things over, which I'm I'm perfectly fine with. Like that's not a hassle. But it does mean that I have to redo certain settings every time, like fixing the mini map, and sometimes I forget. But all right. Uh, 1.0.5, 1 everybody. It's working flawlessly. I don't actually know where I want to test my nukes. I do want to just set one off by itself and kind of see what it looks like. I, I don't... It's not going to be a huge explosion, right? I don't want to disappoint anyone. I don't want to mislead anyone. The explosion is not going to be gigantic. But it's going to be pretty big. And I think that maybe... Somewhere, I'd like to have somewhere semi-open to test it. Although then again, if we nestle it into a corner somewhere, that's going to be a better representation of the, the explosive power, right? If it rips through walls and ceilings. We'll tuck it away in here, in this little corner, alright? So we're going to plop it down, hit it with our button, and then we're going to run. We're going to zoom out of there. I think it's got a pretty good long charge on it, so I think we'll be fine. And if, as long as we can see it, it's still loaded and it's going to do its thing. I'm just watching it. Oh. Oh! <laughs> I think we just got hit by the shockwave of it. Let's go in and see what it did. Oh! Oh no, now we've been hit by the shockwave of it. Oh, we might have been standing too close. I think without our armor, we might have just died. We are now very much irradiated. We're okay, though. Oh, we were like... We were in the blasts. Oh my gosh. Oh, I did not know it was going to be that big. Oh, no. Oh, I've got the hiccups now. Oh, my gosh. Oh, jeez, bud. I feel bad. I feel so bad. I'm going to go ahead and collect these materials. So I don't feel so bad. Oh, look at them. They're all gathering around to look at what's happened. So this must have been the center of the blast, somewhere in here. Oh, jeez. Okay. Well. Yeah. Yeah, look at that theory. Oh, boy. Oh. That's... that circle there is our blast radius. I I don't even know where our portal in and out was. I think it... is that it up there? That vaguely... That weird shape, I think, might be it. That's another thing that disappears every time, is my waypoints. It's unfortunate. Alright, well... <clears throat> that's a nuke. Oh my gosh. If we had built it any closer to us... It might have destroyed the portal. I I am just blown away by the volume of destruction. We I was going to test this in the real world at one of the volcanoes near our base. Can you imagine if I had? 
All right, well, I've got another one. Let's build our obsidian floor. And I'm actually gonna make everything double thickness for this experiment. So we will use reinforced walls on this corner, I think. And then we will use the reinforced glass on this corner. And then we'll just plop reinforced concrete. Oh shoot, didn't think about that, did I? Well, hold on, hold on, no, that's fine. Cause that's not gonna change the characteristics of that any, but it does, it does ruin the aesthetic. So we'll use reinforced concrete all across the top. Again, double stacked. We're gonna have our nuke and our button, and we're gonna have to move really quick on this. Can we put a button on top? Cap it off and zoom! Zoom far away and not look back. We need to clear at least the blast radius of the previous nuke, and then I feel like we'll be safe. Although, I don't know, we took some damage last time. So, this is where the last nuke reached to. So I reckon so long as we're standing here, that one's further away. We'll be perfectly okay. I cannot eat this chicken and I don't know why. What's happening here? What the heck? What? What is- Eat the chicken. What? Oh my gosh, that took out my armor. Oh, I'm just now realizing that my armor did not just protect me, my armor died to protect me. Oh no! Alright, yeah, it's a good thing we didn't stand close enough to get hit like that again. And we just can't eat any more chicken, I guess. I guess we're full on chicken for whatever reason. So, according to the IC2 Classic Wiki, the nuke is your ultimate tool of destruction. It has 875% more power and explosion than a normal piece of TNT and creates a huge crater around its explosion radius. If you don't want to get blasted, then run for your life. While not only doing a lot of blasting damage, it also applies a lot of hunger, potion effect, and the radiation poison effect, which will hurt you a lot. The explosion strength will be changed in the config, or can be, due to the fact that obsidian and various other hard blocks get nerfed in their explosive resistance nukes will do a lot of- wait, what? By default, it can't break reinforced stone or iridium stone. Nukes can no longer be activated by an explosion, so chain reactions are not possible. All right. Apparently we can get an achievement if we blow it up using either uh, flint and steel or... Where, where is it? Hello? Nuke? Where'd you go? Oh. I'm guessing... What? Is it the world not loading? Okay, hold on. Well. Game froze again. While trying to save and quit and then log back in. Game just froze. And so we're reloading again. Here's hoping the world's not corrupted. Oh. Wait, what? Wait, what? I'm confused. Wait, did the nuke not go off? What? Did it restore us to a previous state? Okay, well, we're gonna- we're gonna do it again. Oh, you know what? We need to go put on more armor. Okay, what have we got? We do have the bronze chest plate and leggings. That'll do. And then also, we're gonna grab... One of these chests has, I'm sure, yeah, we don't need a repair talisman in the lighting chest. Keep that with us. If the nuclear reactor blows up anything at all like that nuke, it's not just going to take my house. It's going to take my house, that weird construct across the river from us. It might even blow up the other volcano and whatever's going on over there. We're, we're, we're taking a real risk here if that's the case. We, we got to be careful. Okay, I'll tell you one thing we are going to do is we're going to turn up our render distance really high. Like so high it might even slow down the game. So that hopefully we can see all of this from a distance. And we'll know when it's blown up. Okay, bloop bloop. And then we fly away. 
Oh yes, we fly away. We go zooming. And I want to stay within sight of that little flashing light. We've already lost it. It could have already detonated. It should have by now. Oh my gosh, did that work? I think it might have contained it. I think all of these materials... That or it's taken a really long time to... To go, but it looks like it contained it. Okay. Well, let's do this then. Let's set this up next to it. And then we'll detonate it. And then that way we'll know whether or not... Whether or not there was just some sort of weird fluke. It's also possible that we went so far away that it unloaded, because it is technically an entity. And it might have just unloaded. Oh, see, now that's not doing anything. See, that's concerning. I feel like we're in the game's about to crash territory. Can we just leave? Can we just leave the nether? Can we just get out of here? Will you let me go home? Please? Oh no. This is the same thing we were having before where it wouldn't let us eat. Yeah. Yeah, no, something bad's happened here. Actually, the sound effects from me activating Swift Wolf Rending Gale on and off are gone. And actually, if you look at Swift Wolf Rending Gale, it's not changing. It should change when I fly. And it isn't. And right-clicking it doesn't change. The game is the game is gone. We've lost the game. The game has crashed. That's what's happened. It's it's still running, but the game has crashed. We're just gonna have to accept the fact that this thing's gonna blow up and we're gonna have to take some hits from it. I assume is what's happening here. We might die. Shoot, I didn't get the lid all the way on properly. Alright. Well, we're gonna have to hope that that thing does indeed contain some of the blast and then we're gonna have to go maybe no further than this. I think we've got to be close enough. Shoot! To watch it happen! Or it'll stall again. I think we've stalled again is what's happened. Yep, there go the sound effects for this thing. Dang it! You know what I'm gonna do? I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. Let me, let me I'll do what I'll do you what better. I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. Alright, because it's getting a little bit ridiculous here. Let me just explain to you what we're gonna do here. We're gonna go, uh we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna hit this button. We're gonna do game mode one. Okay? Alright. And then we're going to light this thing. And then we're just gonna stand right here. We're gonna watch it go. We'll, we'll do this cinematically. We got a cinematic camera and everything. Is that it? Did, did this... Did it actually blow up and this thing contained it? Is that what happened? Uh, turn off cinematic camera. Well, this thing's frozen again, so I'm gonna say no, that isn't what happened. Alright, everyone, welcome to the super flat test world. Where we're gonna be doing this again. Just to eliminate the world as a possible variable. <laughs> the sounds did I just kill everyone in town? <laughs> wait a minute though. Wait a minute. Wait, how though? Did they all just get like irradiated? But this thing didn't blow up. Is that what happened? Is that what you're telling me? Hello? Everyone? Uh, if I had a Swift Wolf Rending Gale. 
and I right clicked on it. Oh, it doesn't activate or deactivate. Have I frozen the world again? Why does this freeze the world? Why does this freeze the world? I don't understand. Can I set off another nuke? Nope. Can't set off another one. Am I just being impatient? Do I just need to stand here for a really long time and wait for something interesting to happen? Or maybe nuke's just the worst possible thing. I like how it let us set off one for fun in the nether, and then every additional nuke we've tried since has just not worked. Other than to kill all of the testificates in the immediate area. They're all dead. What? Hello, game? Hello? Well, folks, I think that the moral of the story is that nukes aren't to be trifled with. They're very dangerous, and maybe we could detonate one by itself, but for some reason when we try to cocoon it, it doesn't care for it. So let's go ahead and get this nuke out of here. Um, I, I don't know. I I'm tempted to try to detonate it without putting it inside of there, because it seems like detonating one inside of this stupid egg is what breaks it. It just... It, we detonated this one out here just fine. But at the same time, I don't know. What we're trying to test is, is what blocks are more resistant to explosion. Uh, how else would one test that? I, I don't know. Unless we just detonated the darn thing on top. But I've got a feeling that this is going to do the same thing. That it's not actually going to blow up. It's just going to disappear... See, if it did go off right now, it would definitely kill me. I'm so close to it. See, there it goes, and nothing happened. Let's even be patient for a minute. I, I feel like the nuke just doesn't work. Something happened, the game's broken. But it's not just this world, because we just did it in a completely different super flat world, and it also didn't blow up. The first time we did this, the second the nuke went off, we took damage. So it's not like there's a delay. There was a delay in everything around us changing. I just decided to have a look at System Monitor, and apparently one of my CPU threads is being absolutely hammered right now. So maybe it did work. Maybe it's just still trying to calculate, and we just gotta give it some time. I'm willing to do that. I'll, I'll go- I'll do this. And then I'm going to go have food. Okay, I'm back. I've prepared my meal. I'm ready to eat. I've noticed that the world is, is still the way that I left it. That is unfortunate. I've forgotten how many times now we've done this. I, I don't even know what login attempt this is. We all- Oh gosh! Okay. <laughs> Lesson learned, don't sign out while hovering. I give up. I, 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 I have hunger. So apparently a nuke went off. What did it do? Who can say? I don't care anymore. I'm leaving. Goodbye. Sucks anyway. I'm out of here. Goodbye, world. Goodbye. Okay, at least, at least we can get back home now. Oh, well. Oh, you know what? Hold on. <laughs> Wait a second. There we go. <laughs> Maybe it's trying to do a little bit too much. Although saying that... Am I... Am I moving? Am I flying? Oh, come on. Oh! No! Oh, gosh! Jeez, okay! Everything is wrong and bad and I hate it! Get me inside my house. I, I, I'll tell you what, folks, I've got a backup of the world from right before we started this episode, and I think I'm going to load it, because I think the world's a little bit messed up, so that means we won't actually have all of these materials that we built, but I think what I'll do is I will turn the reinforced glass into clear reinforced glass, which does not connect the way that I thought it would, but does look better than this. And then we'll surround our reactor with that, and we'll just hope for the best. Yeah, I'm definitely reloading the save, because this is a mess. And I did it, everyone! The now-secured nuclear reactor. So I actually went 
onto the IC2 Classic Wiki, and it said that, yeah, a double or triple thick wall of this glass, this here is the clear reinforced glass, which you make by taking just reinforced glass and doing four of them, uh, it should be able to sustain a blast from a nuclear reactor. I also built the blocks down here. This is the reinforced stone, which is pretty straightforward to build. It's just regular stone, not cobblestone, but regular stone surrounding an advanced alloy. I put that down there as the floor. The doors are actually framed doors because there are reinforced doors from IC2. And in fact, I did build those, but uh, I don't like the look of them. And then more than that, they require either a button or a lever to, to actuate. And they actually, hold on. They take... Uh, watch. They just close way too quickly, right? Like, way too quickly. So I was not a fan. These are cool, though. These are glowing buttons. So you make these by making the uh, Luminar. The, or sorry, the Lumar. Which you use to make all of the lamps. And then you take two of those and you put them with a button. I thought that might be cool, but these doors just... They take too long to open and close. So I am using reinforced doors. I don't know how well they'll sustain a blast from a nuke. Mainly because every time we tried to test it, you might remember, you know, an hour ago when we did that, it crashed the game. But here we are. It's built. It's running. It's fine. It'll hopefully be okay. Thank you folks for watching. God bless you, and I'll see you later. Bye! Howdy there, folks! How are y'all doing? My name is Reese, and welcome back to our Tekken 2 Let's Play Adventure. Welcome back to another mini-sode, where today... We have hopped back in, and I do have one quick thing to show you before we get started with the meat of the episode. You might remember we had a bunch of butterflies stuck down here. Well, I wanted to make the place a little bit more habitable for them, so I added a nice little garden here, some water and some lights and some flowers, and I mean, I don't know if they're doing any better, but over here we can see that one is currently hanging out with the good pig Prescott, and we've got an even bigger garden over here. Hello, Prescott, how are you doing? Where is... Where's our chicken friend? Well, Prescott Pig, you take care. I don't know if the butterflies like it in here or if they'd rather leave. Actually, where is the chicken, though? This is concerning. I, I have not done anything to the chicken. The chicken should just be in here. I don't know where it would have gone. I suppose it's always possible that it's around here, like, nesting? Getting ready to lay more eggs? I'm actually really confused. This isn't a bit. This isn't a setup. I don't know where the chicken is. Where's the chicken gone? Oh my god. Ignore the chicken in the... It's not... No, we've had that for a while. I promise. It's unrelated. I guess they could have left the basement, couldn't they? Now that there's stairs, they could have come up here. Carl? Carl, where are you? This is so weird. I have no idea where Carl is. I'm sorry. I... I promise this isn't some weird bit. Uh, well, anyway, we are going to carry on without Carl and, and hope that he is well. Today, you know, our armor took a beating last time. I never did end up getting the... Wait, why is my armor gone right now? Has my armor been broken for a long time? I assumed that it went out in the... Explosion. But remember, we reloaded the save to before the explosion. So... So where's my... There it is. So you're telling me we survived the nuke without the armor? I'm deeply confused. Oh well, that doesn't change the goal of the episode, which is to build nano armor. Now there is a better set of armor that we can get called quantum armor. And in fact, we have so much dark matter now that we could just skip to building dark matter or red matter armor. I mean, this is all actually a bit silly, the idea of building nano armor. But I've always liked nano armor. I think it looks good and it offers some pretty decent protection. So I think we're going to go ahead and build that. I'm really not looking to delve into the infinite money pit, unless we really need to. The infinite EMC, you know, EMC is the uh, currency of the world. We will eventually, but for right now, nano suit. Uh, the nano suit is your first and basic set of power armor in Industrial Craft Classic. I'm reading this off the wiki. It is unbreakable in EU-powered armor, which provides you protection as long as it has energy in it. And as long as it's powered, it will take 90% 
of damage from you, and it will absorb any fall damage as long as the damage is below four hearts of health. Anything above that will only uh, absorb 87.5% of fall damage. Okay, well, that's that's not a big deal. Uh, one thing to note is that if you get struck by lightning while wearing it, it'll fully charge your suit unless you're flying, in which case it'll kill you instantly. So not great, but I've never been struck by lightning in Minecraft, I think, ever, so I'm not too concerned with it, unless it's going to increase the likelihood of that happening? I don't know. But it's pretty fun armor. It looks really cool. We're also going to be building a charge pad for it, and then we've got two other items here I want to talk about at the end of the episode. We're not going to worry about those, but I was looking at these things because I know that they're used in the recipes to build the quantum armor, which is better overall armor, really. Uh, feeds you if you have filled tin cans, removes wither radiation poison effects from you, provides air to you when air is low. I, I don't, I get maybe underwater, I don't know, maybe that works on the moon, that would be cool. But I also noticed other things like this, like night vision goggles. What, does that get rid of the nano, or does it just add night vision, gives the ability to see in the dark? We got one here that's, um, I can't actually tell, it just adds an EU reader, I guess, which we need to build also. For an unrelated thing in the future go ahead and add that one up there too and then there's, there's this one this one adds a crop analyzer a thermo uh thermometer this one just turns it into an advanced solar helmet so what i'm trying to get out here is we might need this for other things in the future anyway but let's get started in order to build one of these we will need carbon plate energy crystal and light gray stained glass but actually it's any type of glass it doesn't need to be that specifically as you can see it's cycling through it uh then it's pretty much very similar for everything else and we're also going to be building a nano saber which is a really cool sword and we'll talk more about that once we've built it first things first we need to head over here and yes good all of my refined iron is done cooking up now we're going to throw in blocks of coal and the reason we're going to do blocks of coal is each one block of coal will give us nine coal dust and that was supposed to coincide like the end of that sentence with this being finished but i forgot it'll auto output over here but we will get the same effect here in a moment why is this still happening why is that going up oh that's happening over here okay no so it's not finished that's still going on i don't know why i thought that would be coming out of the it, it doesn't matter but we need the coal dust because we've got to take the coal dust and turn it into a little raw carbon fiber and turn that into the raw carbon mesh and then we need to take the raw carbon mesh and we need to run it through our compressor, which is still making... We don't need... We're, we're You know what? We're good on a lot of these things, actually. If you could... Let, let, let's go ahead and we'll shift focus for right now. You, you calm down there. But once all of these are done cooking up, all of these raw carbon meshes are finished cooking, they will produce the carbon plates that we need. So while that's happening and the moon rises in the background, I'm going to come over here. And I'm going to grab five diamonds, and I think 40 redstone is what we're going to need, but I'm going to grab a whole stack, and we're going to make our energy crystals, which are not new to us. We've made a number of these before, but we'll need one each for the uh, boots, the leggings, the body armor, and the helmet. I wonder if there are things you can do with the other pieces of armor. I didn't even check. So, obviously, we can use that to create quantum body armor. Or we can create an advanced nano chest plate that looks like it's got a compact jetpack installed. Which I assume means that we can fly. Yeah, we can fly. Switch between fly modes, all of that. Well, we've got a pretty cool ring, so we don't really need that. That's the problem with a lot of this armor. Is it's described, literally on the wiki, the nano armor is described as early game. And I think we're still potentially early game, maybe early mid game. And we have enough EMC to build armor from Project E. And that's the problem when you have both of these mods, is that... You don't really need to choose. I, I, you, you, it's not really a choice to, over which one to go to, I guess is maybe a better way of phrasing it, because one is just, in so many ways, objectively better. And it almost feels silly right now to be using the nano armor over the, the dark matter armor. Or, you know, But I, I, I like the look of the armor. We're going to do it. You can't stop me. If anyone out there is like, I, you gotta stop! I'm commenting on the video! Don't do it! it! It's a mistake! I don't know why I'm defending this decision as if there's going to be outrage over it. I, I genuinely cannot imagine any of you caring that I'm doing this. If you do, I would like to just go ahead and let you know that in the future, we will be building other armors, right? So, don't worry about it, I guess. A lot of these recipes you can just kind of guess at, and you will more than likely get them correct yeah there we go so there's our full suit of armor and we can stick it on but because oh yeah it looks so good 
It looks so good. I love it so much. Keep in mind, this has to be charged before it is effective. And to charge it, what we could do is we could go put it all in an MSFU, an, M an MFE, a PESU. We'll get to that later. But what I'd actually like to do... Oh, I forgot to build the sword. We'll do that. I want to build a lap Lapotronic charge pad, which, as I understand it, we just stand on it and it charges up our armor. There's also an upgraded one called a Fission Charge Pad. It does require the Lapotronic charge pad, as well as whatever these things are. I've never built them before. A nuclear reactor, we've built one of those once upon a time. Might be a little bit too long, because for those of you who haven't figured this out yet after the last video that came out, when I call these Tech It Minis, it doesn't necessarily mean that the videos are going to be short. Uh, they might be, but what I'm actually referring to is the fact that I'm trying to record them quickly, because I have very little time to record them. So it's less so about... Oh yeah, look, there we go. All right, uh, carbon plates... Advanced Alloy, we've been through that a few times. Glowstone. Nano Saber. It needs to be charged up as well. Schwing, schwing. I think you have to turn this one on once it has power. It's less so about the length of the videos and more so about the, the length of time necessary to make them. And that is what I'm referring to with the, with the mini title. Also, hot dang, there are so many energy crystals I forgot that I made for recipes. This is good, though! This is good, though, because this is going to require... Uh, well, no, it's not. But this, though, is going to require... <laughs> I got some of these and some of these, and then I got a whole lot of these. And the real reason we want this is just so we can charge it by standing on it. I think it has its own energy storage as well. That's why it has to have an MFSU. Seems cool. We're actually going to need four more of these, because the MSFU requires an MFE and an advanced machine block. And the MFE requires four more of those, and the advanced machine block doesn't. I don't even know why I mentioned it, as though that was an additional reason we would... Whatever. I don't believe, and feel free, and actually I encourage you to correct me if I'm wrong, but I do not believe that this pack has any sort of item management or sorting outside of setting up something to sort objects into chests for you. I mean something more like refined storage or, or something along those lines. That would be extremely handy and I do not think that it is present in this pack which is very unfortunate because something like that would make crafting a lot of these items a lot faster and easier like when I already have a bunch of these cables made and a lot of these energy crystals made it's just a matter of going and finding them to build my MFE I would prefer if I could you know pull them all in but I've searched for refined storage it's it's obviously not in this pack and and there's nothing else really like it either so, at least not that I've seen. Correct me again if I am wrong. It will be appreciated. Your corrections uh, will be will be very much thank you. And I guess that's something else to say real quick, is that I really do appreciate a lot of the tips and suggestions I've been getting. I know I haven't brought a lot of them up, but that's another mini-sode we have planned, is to just go through a list of a ton of the different things that you find fine folks out there have been recommending for me to try. I'm probably going to have an entire episode dedicated to just... <laughs> testing out different comments and suggestions and recommendations. So I need six of those, and I have enough to make three. And the next thing we will need is going to be more of these. Oh, well, I have enough to make four, but we're going to need more electronic circuits. Sun's coming up, folks. Sun is coming up. This is an involved process from the looks of things. But there are our Laptron crystals, all six of them. And there is an MSFU. That is the third one of those I've built for this series. The last object that we need is, funnily enough, super basic, and I've just not built one yet. It is a stone pressure plate. So we'll toss that into the system, and then we will... We should have had two of those. Oh, I used one for the MSFU. Obviously. Don't look at me like that, Mr. Creeper. Don't sneak up at me and stare at me like that, like you're going to get me. You... You have no power here. I'm, I'm, I'm on the inside where it's safe. There we go. Finally at long last. MSFU, couple of advanced circuits, and some carbon plating, along with a stone pressure plate, I guess, to activate it. It makes sense. You activate it by standing on it. It would need a pressure plate. There's nothing weird about that. Laptronic charge pad. Now we need to go plug that in. Probably from the bottom, although I would imagine we could probably plug it into the side and it would just look ridiculous. 
but we're going to go plug it in from the bottom. And then the hope is that we just stand on it. And there is a insect of some kind flying towards me. This is real life. I'm I'm not doing a bit. I'm slightly startled. Actually, I, I'm kind of tempted. I want to test it. Can I just do that? <laughs> no, of course I can't. That would be ridiculous, and that's okay. We're going to have to plug it in from underneath. So we do have this line coming up from the nuclear reactor, and I suppose we will do that. And I'm going to need more marble to fill all of this in because I have this thing where I do not fill in holes in the floor with the materials I harvested, so we're not going to put sandstone, of all things, back in there. Why is there sandstone? Oh, you know what? There was a little pond or something up here when we started, wasn't there? Am I imagining that? Oh, well, actually, we're, we're at level with the, the beach. I keep forgetting that. I keep thinking that the basement is real high up, but the basement is basically level with the ground. And actually, any armies charging from that fortress could just smash through my glass. But it's really good glass. They wouldn't do that. I, I don't think they could. In any case, I've long lost track of whatever it was I was saying. We'll click that in there. It's starting to fill up. Now, I imagine this is one of those things where... If we stand on it right now, it's going to very slowly fill us up because it is charging from the MSFU down here next to the nuclear reactor, which we should probably go check on because I haven't actually checked to see how it's doing. You know what? I was going to say maybe Carl came down here, but I don't see Carl down here either. Carl's, Carl's missing and it's concerning. So that up there is charging up though from here, and this is not producing enough power. But remember, the whole reason we built this thing was so in the future we can try some experimental stuff. We should add some trees down here. Also, I need to get some uh, some cactus green so I can make some proper green colored lighting. Should we use UU matter for that? Would that be ridiculous? I know that we can, and I have generated some UU matter. There's probably some in here, but also I've been storing it up top here inside of the IC classic chest. Every so often I'll just make some. So I've got 14, and I know that I can use some to make cactus and sponge as well but how much is used for cactus Ooh, 48 cactus though and it sure beats having to go find a desert and it's not i mean this is even less cheaty than emc i put in a lot of work to make all that stuff and it takes a ton of juice and i think we could probably spare six of them you know to make some cactus hey folks i think i think it's worth it we're gonna make a little bit of cactus today look at that no regrets put that cactus in there Take it over here. Do that. That's not what you do with it. What do you do with it? What do you, what do, you do with a cactus? If I, if I smelt it, it gives me green cactus. I will do that then. Excuse me. Do this. Stop. Stop what you're doing. Okay, continue what you were doing. But look at that. We finally got cactus green. So we can do some green lighting. Very delicately step over here and break these cables. And then we're going to get our saber. We've got all of our discharged and useless armor. It's not charged enough. I, I'm kind of, I want to step on it. Immediately it turns on and starts glowing. And there's a slight charge happening to our suit. It is very slow, even though this, see, I was expecting it would immediately dump all of the energy it had stored into our suit. And then we would just be empty, but that is not what's happening here. What is, the, what are all these upgrades over here? Is that like a wireless charge? Hold on. Is that a thing that we can make? Is there some sort of a wireless upgrade? I just assumed that based on what this looked like. And it doesn't look like that's actually the case. But I want to check at... Oh, you know what? Why is my sword not charging? Do I need to be holding it properly? Oh. Interesting. So this is all full now. And it looks like it's only going to charge the item you're currently holding in your hand. Which is what it is, I guess. See, I was hoping I could just, like, page through here and find something about a wireless upgrade. Maybe we should just look up the charge pad. That might make sense. Electric tools and armor. Charge pads come in four levels. When the player stands on a charge pad, the pad will transmit its stored energy. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, so there's a proximity booster module that will cause the charge pad to charge equipped items and any items adjacent to the item in the player's hot bar. The wide band booster module will allow the pad to charge anywhere in the player's hotbar, but not the rest of the inventory. That is unfortunate. Oh, interesting. You can add a damage conversion module that'll change it into a shocking pad, which sounds fun. Now let's talk Nano Saber. So you right click to turn it on and off. When it is off, it'll increase your damage by plus three. 
and when it is on, it's plus 19, and every tick consumes, uh, or every hit, I should say, consumes 40 EU per tick. Also, when it's activated, it consumes one EU per tick, but in, like, bursts. So not every tick does it actually consume one. It, it like, waits a while, and it consumes them all in one go. Let's go avoid that. Let's see, what can we do? I mean, I don't want to kill the harmless animal. Carl? Not Carl. Here we go. Crabs. There's so many of them. This will make the perfect example. So there it is, just normally. Not activated. And then activated. <laughs> yeah, baby! Look at us go! We're absolutely crushing them! We're doing what Plankton never could! Alright, but I want to go fight some monsters. Some real, proper monsters. So let's go to the nether. And keep in mind, this nether has never experienced a nuclear disaster. Uh, because... Uh, we, you know, we reloaded the save. Oh, but, and yet this one's still kind of broken. We're good. Where are the big men? For I much desire to slaughter them. There's a blaze. That'll be perfect. Hold still, you. Oh, you, you, you can't hurt me, pal. I, I mean, I'm not invincible. It could hurt me. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, my goodness gracious. I don't even care anymore. We can just... Okay, so it's not a one-hit kill on the big ones or the little ones. But still, I mean, we're dealing significant damage. What, there's little dogs in here now? Also, it seems to reload quite fast. So you can't necessarily spam click. Oh, actually, you, yeah, it looks like you could spam click. Whoa! Easy does it there. I've been wanting to kill one of these for a while to get a gas tier. There might be other ways to get a gas tier. But, uh, you know, I'm sure we can craft one out of the UU matter or something along those lines. Get out of here, you! Get out of here! Let's see here, let's see here. What have we got? What have we got? If we fly back to the base and then go straight, we'll end up at another fortress. And that could be great fun. <laughs> oh, a terrible fortress indeed. And terrible fortress indeed. We're gonna have to get a wither at some point. Oh my gosh. Look, we found one. I mean, not a wither, but like a wither skeleton. And hopefully, I mean, I wonder if they're super rare drop or whatever it is. It just has like an EMC value. That would be swell. Now, fun fact for you, we can build this sort of electronic enchanter and it can be used to upgrade the armor even further by, you know, applying enchantments, which is a good time. I am not even here for you all right now. I am here for other other creatures. I, I, I'm sorry I killed your kin. Not really. You're not getting remorse out of me for this. Apparently people call these piglins now. That's weird. Don't like it. Oh my gosh, we got one! Spook! scary skeleton has no EMC value. Get out of here. Go away. Of course it doesn't have an EMC value. That would make the game too easy, wouldn't it? How much you want to bet the, the wither doodah that you get as well? I forgot what it's called. Ah, the nether star. It does. So we only ever have to fight one wither. That's good. Alright, I've had enough fun in the nether for today. It's time to head home. Why does this keep happening? Is this a 1.0.5 thing? Oh, jeez! I, I thought that all these problems were from the corruption of the nuking. Apparently not. Apparently the game's just slightly broken. Nether wart, horse iron armor. Regular saddle, a nether, bit of all these random things. Crab leg. Is crab leg delicious? I can cook it. I can can it. When you're done doing whatever you're doing now, cook crab leg. Thank you. I still want to know where my chicken went. Still deeply concerned about this. This is this mystery. So I was going to upgrade. I, I was actually going to go ahead and upgrade to the fission charge pad. Because I did not think that the recipe looked too complicated or difficult. And we could definitely do it. But from my reading, and I might be wrong about this, but it doesn't really look like it speeds it up any. Uh, maybe if you have it plugged into EV, because the fission one can be plugged directly into extreme voltage. But I'm not running an additional cable from the reactor just for that. So we're going to hold on to that one. I added this because it converts industrial craft electricity into railcraft charge. 
which I thought might be what we need for the giant crusher we build. So that's something to look at in a future episode. Someone commented about this, the PESU, the P-E-S-U. This is apparently the top end energy storage device and it can take the top end of electrical charge going into it. But I mean, we're not going to be building one of these for a while because some of the stuff it requires, I, I have to build a plasma fire with UU matter or, or use UU matter in a plasma fire. Uh, I've, got, I've got to build magnets. I got to have an electrolyzer. I got to compress rare, rare earth dust that you get from rare earth extraction. Uh, it, it, it's not something we're doing today. So my apologies, but we'll get around to it. As for the quantum armor, the reason we're not actually building it today, and I feel like maybe I should have opened with this, is that it requires iridium, which requires UU matter. A lot of it. I mean, just this helmet here is going to require, what, four? Oh, I'm sorry. That's just to build one iridium plate, and we need two. Yeah, yeah, we don't have enough UU matter. We're going to have to get more electricity for that. But that is it for today's installment. We've got a really cool weapon now. We've got some better armor. And we've done a number on the pigmen. Hopefully they don't hold grudges. Thank you folks for watching. God bless you. And I'll see you later. Bye. Things are getting a little out of control next door. Pretty sure I saw someone creeping around over there earlier. I'm not really a fan of any of this. Well, howdy, folks. Welcome back to the Tech It 2 Let's Play. We're continuing our mini-sodes until I have time to record a full, proper episode 10, which is going to be a big blowout. You're going to love it. I've cranked up the render distance just so I can see things happening further away, you know, see possibly figures running into the distance and, and where they might be going and coming from, and I can see all the way to that volcano now, which is a good time. But in today's video... We are doing something that I talked about, I think, way back in either Episode 0, Episode 2, might have been in Magical Mayhem. We are going to be taking our transmutation table, and first and foremost, we're going to be building another one, because that's required for the recipe. And I do need to clear some of this stuff out, because this has all gotten quite, quite muddied up. In fact, let's clear out everything. I don't need any of that right now. What I do need is the transmutation table, because we got to build another one of them, as well as... Done. Dun 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 Transmutation tablet. That's all getting cut. That was way too long. This is a portable transmutation table. The power of transmutation in the palm of our hands, and it's quite expensive. It requires stacks of dark matter, although I seem to feel like this is cheaper than it used to be. I mean, maybe I'm misremembering the recipe. I probably am from Tech at Legends, but I seem to remember that was like 2.5 million EMC. Actually, looking at this, that it's going to come out not too far from that. Maybe I was thinking even higher. Maybe I was thinking 25 million EMC. I remember it felt like an impossible amount of EMC necessary to build it, but we're going to be building one today. And we're going to be tapping into... Good gosh, look at this go. <laughs> so here's the deal. We have been avoiding tapping into here until absolutely necessary. And right now, I'm feeling like it's necessary. Right, Prescott? I mean, where's Carl? Have you seen him? I've not seen Carl. We're, we're going to have to find him. We're going to need a transmutation tablet to do that. We'll just grab ourselves a stack of dark matter and then, you know, we won't worry about that. We'll just fly back up here and we'll, we'll drop it off like so. This is going to be very handy in the future when we reach points where we might not, for whatever reason, have access. Okay, is that not how you build? Oh, okay, yeah, that makes way more sense, all things considered. Was it four of those? Yes, and then also some regular old stone. As I was saying, we might have points in the future where... We need to transmute things, and we're nowhere near home. And then what do we do in those situations? Well, we're going to rely on our handy-dandy... Wait a minute, so this does have an EMC value. Well, <laughs> never mind! I was going to say, we already have a transmutation table, we don't need to build another one. But we cannot add a transmutation table to it itself. So yes, we do actually need another one right now, that's good. For some reason, the tablet does not have an EMC value, it's very frustrating. But here we are... And there it is, and we've built it, and it's cool, and it works exactly the way you think it would. 
you can just right click on it and there's the transmutation table and then our you know we can combine that now with the philosopher's stone we can craft anywhere and we can get whatever ingredients we need for crafting i wish that it was right clicking to bring this menu up as well that's gonna get difficult for me to well i can do it it's good in case you were wondering yes the emc follows us our emc is tied to our character and to our person and not to our table or our tablet so we could actually have a ton of these all over the place if we wanted to and be able to access them anywhere at any time because it's it's character it's individual specific so it carries with us over here next thing i want to do is i want to build a better klein star so we have the klein star i think all the way up to tier four someone recommended that i get like google translate to read these for me listen i'm doing great ein zwei drei dir i don't need i don't need google to do it for me i'm doing fantastic so obviously we've got to get the four of those configure them in a nice little orientation and that'll give us the sphere and then there's only one above that actually and that's <laughs> we don't even <laughs> we can't even get it well well hold on if we if we dump all of that in there I mean, barely. These things are so expensive. Well, I'll tell you what. I mean, in the interest of completion, again, I, I hate having to do this because it does feel like we're, we're going into cheat mode. But I'm going to go ahead down here and just, you know, grab a, a few of these. And there we go. You know, it's what I have to do. I, I don't want to do this. I don't want to have 64.445 to one million EMC. It's a bit absurd. It's a bit obscene. I'm a really simple kind of guy. I've got a Klein Star Omega, though, you know, and it's more so because it's a necessity. Wow, we can fill that up with 51 million EMC and still have about 7 million left over. That's amazing. Yeah, that's fantastic. Let's keep it filled up, though. That, that feels good. Now we have to ask ourselves the question, where do we stop? Because right now, it would be really easy to decommission this really nice nano suit that we've got in order to build some fancy red matter armor that would make us nigh-on indestructible. And then currently we're carrying around three tools. We have the nano saber, the chainsaw, the diamond drill. But we could carry around two tools, the morning stars and the guitar. And that would do pretty much everything we would need it to do. As you can see, the morning star takes the powers of the shovel, the pickaxe, and the hammer all in one. And then the guitar takes on the powers of the sheer, the axe, the sword, and the hoe all in one. That's not all. If we wanted to, we could also build a red matter furnace. And to heck with using mechanical furnaces, right? I mean, why even at that point? We, we could, I, th this thing is so overpowered. I think it does like six, six and a half operations per second using EMC. It's not like we're hurting for EMC either. I mean, you can just look down here in the basement. Look, we have an entire chest over here being filled actively with diamonds. I've not even touched it. I don't care. Why would I even be concerned with that when I've got infinite dark matter? This video, more than any video I have ever made, is meant to pose a question to you, the audience. I have no regrets about building the transmutation tablet. We needed it. It's going to be really handy for things to come in the near future. But how far do I take this? What will be entertaining for you? I can put limits on myself. I was planning on upgrading those machines with the next tier from Industrial Craft. I can do that. Or I can make crazy magic machines. I can keep using this armor and eventually upgrade it to Quantum Armor. Or... I could skip ahead and just make red matter armor. It's not like we're running out of things to do in the pack. We'll have other things to do. I mean, space is is right up there, and we've got to go touch it. But what do you want me to do? I am asking you, the viewer, what direction you want to see me take. Do you want me to truly stretch my muscles and use all of the resources at my disposal, including all of this red matter, or, I'm sorry, dark matter, that could be very easily converted into red matter. And in fact, we've never made red matter before, have we? I can't recall. I, we don't even need to go up there to do it. We can do it right here. I can check real quick. Okay, we have made red matter. Okay. Well, there we go. I mean, I can I can get a ton of red matter. 
In fact, why is this thing even generating dark matter anymore? Why don't we have it generate red matter instead? I've already got some more episodes planned. I mean, I know what I'm doing for episode 10. And I know what I'm doing between now and 10. We're, we're going to be, I think, next episode experimenting with the reactor. And I'm probably going to actually, I've got a bit of spare time, so I'll probably record that next. So when you're watching this, keep in mind, I won't know your response in the next video, but I will the one after, hopefully. If you wouldn't mind commenting down below and letting me know what you want to see happen, it would mean the world to me. Should I use the EMC at our disposal, build the best stuff we can build now, or should I should I hold back and do more sort of techity machine things? I feel like we've just moved so fast in this pack. I, I feel like in such short time we've gotten to a point where the world is 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 at our fingers and we can do anything. So if you wouldn't mind, a comment down below and let me know. And that's all I've got for this one. This one is truly a mini techit. I just really wanted a transmutation table. And that's the first time that I can title the episode with what we do. For those of you who haven't got on yet, I've done a little naming thing, excluding episode zero, which I don't think counts. All of them have had two word titles, and each word has the same opening letter. So like you know, mechanical mastery, magical mayhem, things like that, you know, quality quarry. This one will just be transmutation tablets. <laughs> But seriously, if you could answer that question, it would be swell. Thank you folks for watching. God bless you. How do you power this thing? Bye! Howdy folks! How are y'all doing? My name is Reese. Welcome back to our Tech It 2 Let's Play Adventure. Yet another mini-sode. Reminder, I have not yet seen the comments from the last video, but I am looking forward to them. We need to, apparently, cook some of that up? You- what? Oh! That's a problem. I'm going to have to do something about that. At the moment, I don't really have anywhere to store all of that, so I just won't worry about it. I was going to this episode, and I still plan on it. I was going to go ahead, and we... I'd made the decision... Gosh, I'm just rambling. I'm not saying words. We're going to we're gonna do stuff with the nuclear reactor. We're going to try out some of your recommended designs. And the reason I'm stuttering right now is because I realized I meant to change the color down there of those lamps and I figured I'd go ahead and do that now but you know like at the start of the episode for some reason I really didn't think this through at all I should have waited till I was done before I hit the record button and I don't know why I'm still talking because at this point you're you're literally just watching me make glass panes and and things of that nature and it, it, I don't I'm I wish you know what this is not a project table that's not going to work. It's not going to automatically pull things out of my inventory. That's a bit annoying. So I guess there is still some reason for us to come over here. And, uh, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? This is the most... Okay, there we go. I'm sorry. I, I'm going to stop talking. 16 isn't even enough. As I was saying, I've gotten a couple of different recommendations for other reactor designs to test. And we're going to be doing that today. Uh, we're going to need to build an EU reader so that we can determine, first off, how much power our reactor is producing, and then compare and contrast with other reactors, which, in fact, I don't even think ours is running right now. It should probably be running if we're going to do a test like that. I don't have enough uranium. Maybe we can get risky. Maybe we, maybe we can get risky, and then maybe, maybe right up here in the middle or something, we can stick a two, and then, or maybe, like, right there, and then we'll put another one over here, and then we'll turn it on. We'll see how that goes. Probably terribly. It's probably going to melt something. But I don't think it'll do it so quickly that... Yeah, good. That's going... I don't think it's going to do it so quickly that we'll actually lose components. By the way, M-F-S-U. I am sorry. Apparently I've been misspeaking and calling it an M-S-F-U a couple of times. Listen, that's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and prep you. I'm going to call this a transmutation table from time to time, even though it's very clearly a tablet. Just a heads up, but I'm going to do my best. Boy, these things take a long time to break. I I need to find a better tool for this. There, I, I, this... Is that better? It feels better, but maybe just because I'm used to using this. They are the same. Look at these and tell me they're the same. Because it feels like this one's faster. It's definitely not, right? It's also really annoying to listen to. There's probably a Project Red wrench of some kind that can be used to take these down better. Hashtag's not the right approach. Huh. 
Okay, that's weird. I, I'm actually on the wiki, and it doesn't mention anything about any particular tool being able to break them faster. In fact, it even says specifically that uh, any tool can break them, which means we could probably just punch them with our bare fist. Wouldn't it be funny if that made them pick up faster? It's exactly the same. <laughs> it's exactly the same. There we go. And if we step outside... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, so these are the lime lamps, and this feels way more nuclear already. Just throw those in there with the chicken that are not Carl-related, I promise. How are we doing? Yeah, look, that's not damaging anything. That's probably outputting a pretty good bit of power here to our MFSU. Let's find out how much, though. So to do that, we're going to build an EU reader. And if I put a space in there, it's actually going to come up with the object that we're looking for. Very simple and straightforward recipe. You can also trade five emeralds to a villager for it, if you can find one. We only ever found that one village. I did promise to go rebuild, you know, and give back some of the things that we took from them. I should probably do that at some point. So I've come up here to build it, even though I, I really genuinely just don't have to. We could do it just as easily from right here. Uh, if we find out what we need... Oh, you know what, though? We do have some of those objects already, so we have the four copper cables. And then we probably have... No, actually, I think we used them all last time, didn't we? We used all of our electronic circuits. Well, in that case, we'll need six more of these. One of these, which we've got too many of. I need to figure out something to do about that. Do we have any type of dense storage? Like barrels or, or anything of that nature? Let me know. I mean, obviously, I can type in, you know, barrel myself and, and see what we come up with. There's a lot of barrels... But I don't know anything about these. Booze barrel! Oh my gosh. Something tells me these aren't going to be holding obscene amounts of storage, considering how basic the recipe is. No drawers either. We need some way to store a large quantity of items. I don't know. I don't know anything about that. I'll have to do more research. But until then... EU reader. I've got to say it is much more satisfying and much more straightforward to build inside of the project bench than it is to build inside of the Philosopher's Stone. That's actually a bit of a pain. Maybe we should carry around a project bench with us. That's actually a brilliant idea. Doesn't the project bench even have... Hold on, how many of these did I need? Just one? Doesn't it have an EMC value? It. I, I'm pretty sure that it did. I'm almost positive that it did. When we first built it, it does not now. But, I mean, that's that's relatively easy to to work out. Now, what was the recipe here? It wasn't that. Ooh, was it this? Yes, it was. EU Reader. Alright, we'll worry about building another project bench here in a minute. For right now, I'm assuming, check on this, everything's still fine. I think we could have gotten away with using uh, dual uranium cells in more places than just here and here. Probably this entire time. But uh, the MFSU is currently filling up. Now, if we have a look at this in our inventory, we hold down control, B switches between EU reader modes, and then shift. Keeping this in the hotbar will unlock tooltips on other item tooltips. Grease and Wayla one probe. How, do, how does that work? What does that even mean? So, capabilities measuring, total emitted measure. So, I'm holding down B right now, sorry. Holding down B and right-clicking. Packet measuring, Total packets measuring, source path renderer, which I guess maybe shows us sync path renderer, source path area, sync path area, average measuring. That sounds like what we want. So we're going to go with that, and we're going to go here and we're just going to right click, starting new measurement. Right click again, maybe. Uh, 145 in. 145 out, zero gain, average over 133 ticks. So does that mean we're producing 144? We're going to do it again. About 140. See, I, I'm, I'm clearly not doing this correctly. Let's cycle to a different mode. All right, I'm on the wiki. So the average measuring mode allows you to see how much EU flows through a cable or a generator to a machine. The average is calculated over time. Good to know. Capabilities measuring uh, allows you to see the capabilities on the varying machines, cables, generators, energy storage units, etc. So it'll give you the max input, max transfer rate, energy loss, and energy provided. Uh, the total emitted measuring mode shows you the total flow of energy through a machine, cable, generator, 
energy storage unit since placed, so not what we need right now. Packet measuring shows you how many energy packets are flowing through a cable and how much energy th these packets contain. The total packets measuring mode shows you how much energy packets flowed through a cable since placed. Not helpful. Source path renderer. The source path renderer gives you a visual representation of how energy is flowing from source to sink, which is cool. And then sink path does the same thing, I guess, but the other way. So it kind of feels like average measuring is going to be our best bet here. So this is currently filling up, meaning we should be getting a pretty consistent flow out of here into here. And I guess maybe, should we check it here? 145 in, 145 out. That seems to be what we're producing right around in that range. And I don't think that the HV transformer is really affecting it in any way. So starting new measurement, we're going to wait a hot minute here. About 145 is what we're producing. All right, time to start testing some alternatives. Get, get me out of here. So one thing I was just trying to figure out as I read through the wiki was whether or not the nuclear reactor produces more power the hotter it gets up to a point. If maybe there was some sort of sweet spot we wanted to hit before we did our measurements, but it was running for a while there, and it was pretty consistent on the, uh, the 145, so I don't know. Anyway, I've got up a couple of recipes from a couple of viewers, so one is from GaberTube HD, who's given me a recipe that requires overclocked heat vents, as well as component heat vents. This is a slightly more complicated one, so I figured we would test it first. I don't really know how many of each of these components we'll need. Oh, it also uses the quad fuel cells, which we have built and have right here. Now I have filled up my inventory in spite of the fact that the reactor is still full and we've got to go empty it before we do anything. It is off, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're good. So theirs is a repeating recipe and I'm going to clear away quite a bit of space here so that we can see what we're doing. So the way that they recommend doing it is we have the first spot empty and then in two, four, six, eight. We have the overclocked heat vents. Then we have component heat vents in three, seven, and then a quad uranium cell right there. And then we just pattern that all the way around the reactor. And this will allegedly produce 360 EU per tick. Oh, we can click directly on the reactor instead of the cable coming out of it. Well, that that's useless right now owing to the fact that, you know, I've, I've dismantled it and shut it down. I'm sure if we wanted to, we could put something in these slots. I don't think they have to be empty. I think the idea is that they can be. So amazingly, we almost have everything that we need for this design. And the one thing that we are apparently missing is it looks like we need one more component heat vent. Did I miss one? Remember, I didn't build any of this for this recipe. These are just objects that we already had from a previous attempt. So I need to go build one more component heat vent to give this a proper test. Now we could, I don't know what a heat exchanger does. I can't remember what, I think these just contain it if it explodes or whatever. I guess we could go ahead and just throw those in there because there's empty slots, but I, I don't, they might not need to be filled, you know, no, no rush to do it. Now, fortunately the component heat vent is one of the more simple items to build requiring mostly in terms of exotic materials, that is to say materials that can't be EMC'd, uh, refined iron. No, we need iron bars and tin as well off the top of my head. And that's, that's actually it. Um, we can go ahead and when I say iron bars, I mean iron bars, not, not, not like ingots of iron, not, not iron. You, you know what I meant. So we need to make some basic heat vents here. Then I don't know why I'm making multiples of these. We don't need multiples of them. I've done it, though. You can't stop me! I'm a madman! There's no rhyme or reason to my actions! I think that that is everything that we need to get this design again from GamerTube HD up and running. So we're going to click it on and then keep a very close eye on it to make sure that it doesn't just immediately blow up. And so far, everything seems fine. So far, nothing has exploded. So again, we were promised somewhere in the neighborhood of 360 EU per tick on this particular design, which is a fun time, assuming it is uh, accurate and sustainable. EMC is going, or, I'm sorry, not EMC, or EU per tick is what I should say. 360 EU per tick. I've probably said that multiple times in this video. I've probably said it wrong. I'd like to take a moment to apologize to all of you.
yeah, you'll get over it. So let's go ahead and take our EU reader, and I guess we'll right click on here, zero out or zero in fifty three out, negative fifty three gain, average over. Uh, you know what? It was off for a really long time, so we'll check it out now. Three twenty out, three twenty out, three twenty out, pretty consistently. We'll start measuring from here now. The reason our numbers were messed up at the beginning there is because it averaged over that entire time that the machine was not running as well. So yeah, about 320, so not quite the 360 we were hoping for, but it's also possible that things change over time, and that's fine. Oh! That is a dual uranium cell. That is on me. I am a, I am a silly boy, and I've made a mistake. Where are the quad cells? Is it safe to just pull that out of there while the machine is running? Yes, <laughs> I guess. And if we check it now, we actually need to probably start ticking from over here instead. 361.41. Okay, well, yeah, 360. There we go. That, that we, we, It's exactly as promised. And I know it's not going to overheat, and I'll tell you how I know. This overclocked vent, each one of these has one overclocked vent that hasn't even been touched. It's not taken any damage at all. It would if there was extra heat for it to siphon off, but it simply is not because there is not extra heat. So that does make me ask the question of, well, can we push it a bit further? You know, if we have these here, what if I put like, a, I mean, let's just say I took a dual uranium cell and I sat it there. What impact would that have? Oh, Ooh. So that one did take a bit of a hit. They both did. We don't want to do that. Never mind then. Awesome though. It's it's really churning through these. So we went from earlier with our previous design about 145 per tick or somewhere in that neighborhood to 360. That's a big big upgrade. It might require that we build ourselves some more MFSUs to store all this crazy power we're getting. Or we just start using it, you know? Maybe turn on the UU Matter machine again. Don't know if we're going to be using these. In fact, we might. We might. Because here's the deal, right? Even though we have this system and it works, and it can produce a lot of energy, if we're not actively using it, we're kind of just wasting uranium. Uh, these are damaged, by the way, because... I mean, I could turn the machine off and back on, and they would heal up real quick. And then we can turn it back on. They're just still sustained damage. They didn't take any more. After we took the dual cells out. Anyway, what I was saying is it's kind of a waste of EU once the MFSU fills up. We could swap these out with single cells and just have like a bit of a trickle power coming out of here. And, and these overclocked heat vents and component vents would more than, you know, sustain it. And if we wanted to be extra safe unnecessarily, I assume we could go ahead and throw these in here. But I'm not going to worry about that. I mean, if we wanted to, we could probably throw these advanced heat vents in there uh, just to take up the space. Not that they would accomplish anything where they're at, but we could. So another recommendation we got was from Camthrill, who recommended filling the bottom row, not the entire bottom row, but from here to here, with packed ice, and then the rest of it with an undetermined amount of uranium cells. I mean, obviously fill the whole thing with it, but like quad cells, dual cells, single cells, no idea. There's no promise of how much power it'll produce, but I am kind of curious about it. Building one of these requires that we have a compressor and ice, and ice requires that we have... Oh, we can make it ourselves. Oh, but then how would we collect it? Hmm. Snowball. I think we actually... Don't we... Don't we have a snowball? No. A ring of arcana or a zero ring. Both of those would get the job done. I'm sort of intimidated by that, though. So I don't know if I want to test it here, because what if this is an epic troll? Well, I've got bad news for you. I've got a, I, I'm in my super flat test world where I successfully did a nuke the other day. That's a video for later. Uh, packed ice will not go into the nuclear reactor, I'm sorry to say. And in fact, I don't know if regular ice will either. It might be that that's something that you could do in Tech It Classic. And maybe it's changed since then. Yeah, we can't get ice in there, I'm sorry to say. That's a shame. I was sort of hoping to test that and then put quad cells in there and have it fail spectacularly and get a big explosion. Well, I mean, I guess we could still do that. Okay, we've relocated to a village full of wonderful individuals 
who I'm sure are very excited to see this scientific test take place in their town. Uh, I don't even think quad uranium cells are the best we can get. As I was looking through here, I realized there are a lot of different quad cells. Charcoal enriched quad uranium cells and nether star enriched quad uranium cells. I need to figure out what the enrichment process does. Let's go ahead and... Well, that was instantaneous. Wow. I didn't even get to check the output. Jeez, that just kind of happened immediately. Wowzers. What is this? Oh, it's hops. Okay, well. Don't do that, I guess. So enriching your fuel cells. We're back here, by the way. And I'm just reading on the wiki. Uh, essentially, it causes them to produce more EU per tick, as well as more heat per tick, and more neutrons per tick, depending on which ones you use. One thing I'm confused by here is it says that a quad uranium cell produces 60 EU per tick, uh, 96 heat per tick, and 4 neutrons, whereas the ender pearl enriched quad uranium cell produces 60 EU per tick, uh, 69 heat per tick, and 4 neutrons, which is exactly the same? Why enrich it? What, what would the point be? Comment down below if you know. I know I'm just asking you folks to explain these basic concepts to me, like I don't know what's going on, but that's mostly because I don't know what's going on, you know? I mean, I have a wiki, same as all you, but when I read the wiki and it says these two items do the same thing, but one requires extra steps, I have to ask myself, then what would the advantage be? And I'm here to tell you there probably is one, and I, and I just don't know what it is. We can turn this back on for now, and it'll start consuming scrap and producing more UU matter, and this will continue its operation of producing scrap. Hopefully this maintains. I mean, this is so full right now, I'm not too worried about it. Where, Where's our chicken? Where's Carl? Why has he vanished? Where has he gone? Can I tell you what my concern is? Can I, can I be honest with all of you? I'm worried that Carl might have drowned. Because the last time I saw him was when I was building these... And then I don't think I've seen him since, and I'm worried he might have gone for a little bath and realized he's a chicken, not a duck. That, or he he somehow fell down there and is at the bottom of the chute with the power, but that doesn't seem likely. Or even was that right here? Wow, I got it in the first try. Carl! We should probably put a door there, now that I think about it. Oh, you know what? We can just do that. We can do that right now. Hold on. Look at this. We can grab a reinforced framed door. Take both of those away, plop, plop that sucker down, and then put those back. And now we have hidden access to our our pipe tube here. No sign of a no sign of a chicken though. Well, this reactor is handling the UU matter much much better. It's definitely I mean sure it's still draining. You know we're not producing enough power to keep it you know running and produce energy. But I mean that's okay. Wait, did Carl follow me in here? I might have left that door open. He might have come through here. Carl? Carl, you're not in here, are you? Carl! How would Carl get into the nuclear basement? Wait a minute. No, he's not down here. It doesn't even make sense. Well, thank you folks for watching. God bless each and every one of you. I'm glad we've made this little bit of a... Uh, There's a little bit of progress, and I'll see you all next time. Bye! Howdy folks, how are y'all doing? My name's Reese. welcome back to the Tech It 2 Let's Play Adventure, where today we're going to be taking another stab at nukes, because I've gotten some great comments and feedbacks on the nukes from the last time, that I felt like it was probably an appropriate time to go back and address that subject, and see if we couldn't figure out what materials are nuke-proof again, but this time without having these soft crashes. So, I did get a comment from someone by the name of Jan? John? John? Jean? 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 I, listen, I can't pronounce this name, certainly not the last name, but the comment suggests that maybe some of the blocks that we were testing are incompatible with the nuke. They didn't know what to do, and, and the game broke itself trying to calculate the uncalculatable logic, basically was my understanding of their explanation, and that makes sense. They, as well as someone else, also pointed out that the doors that you can build from Industrial Craft 2 Classic 
probably don't open and close too quickly. It was probably the button we were using. The the little black Ilum Ilumar buttons probably actuate too quickly, and that and that that's probably the case, yes. I think if we'd use regular buttons, or maybe a lever just to hold it open, it, it would have been fine. And in fact, depending on the results of today's nuclear test, we might go replace those doors. Because I have a sneaking suspicion that the problem was with the reinforced... Uh, what are they called? Ah, yes. The framed pieces. I think the framed blocks were the problems. And keep in mind, we're using reinforced framed doors down below. Now, is that really a bad thing? I mean, if we think about it for a moment, and we'll travel down here. If our nuclear reactor explodes, like the one at the end of the last episode, and these beautiful framed doors glitch out and prevent the explosion from taking place, giving me time to exit the game and log back in before the moment of the explosion. Is that actually a bad thing? Well, yes, because it feels like cheating. <laughs> but we're going to be testing that today, but not here. They haven't helped me. If things go wrong, the last thing I want to do is corrupt this world. I've put too many hours in. I'm going to call this one uh, Nuke World, and we're going to set it to Creative. And then for the seed, we're going to use uh, Nuke. That seems appropriate. See what we get out of this. I feel like the beginning of this episode, I was not speaking normally. Normally, what I will do is I will do, especially, like, I'll tell you right now, it's early in the morning. Normally, what I'll do is I'll start the episode off, and I will do an intro, especially if it's early morning, and I'll realize, ooh, that was rough. And I'll immediately redo it. And then today I was like, nah, I'm powering through. We can do it. We can get through this. We can we can turn this around and have a feeling that when I edit this, I'm going to listen to the beginning of this episode and be like, oh, oh. Now, now, would you, now, would you, would you look at this? Immediately, would you look at this? This is such, now, th this is what you expect to find when you find a volcano. This is, if, if we had started in this world, my base would be inside of this volcano. Can you imagine how different it would be? It's incredible to think how differently the trajectory of an entire series can go. If it is, like, depending on where you start in the world. Like, if we'd started here and I saw that volcano, we would be inside of a volcano. We would have a volcano base, and then maybe, maybe this island here I might have taken over. I love the idea of having a little island that we have completely sequestered and all to ourselves. This is cool. It's got we got like a big mainland here, and then a little archipelago of islands surrounding it. Uh, kind of a swamp down here. This, I, I, you know what? Uh, strongly recommended. If you're looking for a world seed to use, try nuke. We'll use a gold button, cause why not? Sounds like a good time. Can we stand like on it? Uh, nothing's gonna happen. We're in creative, so there's no real advantage to this. I wonder if there's a way to make it explode faster or instantaneously. There probably is. There's probably a device for that. And there it goes. Hey! Okay, yeah, so there was a little bit of a delay, but it did go. <laughs> I wish you could hear my computer right now. It is, it is freaking out. It has gone full speed. So, I don't have the most powerful computer you can have. I've got a pretty decent one. I have a... A 5800X CPU and a 6900XT GPU. So it's pretty good. It's pretty good. By the time you watch this in the year 2023, obviously there will be better CPUs and GPUs available. But for what it is, it's pretty solid. And geez, that was just, that was like a reckoning. Look at this place. So we've got that crater over there. And we're pretty much going to do the same thing again. But this time we're going to test with the obsidian. Once I spell it correctly. Now, I know that obsidian will not contain the blast, and I'm pretty confident that obsidian is not going to be the object that causes the game to crash. But I want to see how good a job it does of, even though I know it won't stop the blast, like, how, how well can it contain it? So if the nuke is there, we want to have uh, two wide. Actually, you know what? Let's go one wide, and we'll see where that gets us. These are the experiments we should have been doing in the first place. I, I don't know why we needed to do this. In the actual world, the first time I tested all of these things, those chickens are going to be the first things to go. That's how we'll know when the nuke has gone off. Before anything else in the world happens, those chickens are going to explode into egg and feather. There they are. All right, there we go. So the nuke has gone off. There goes the computer's ramping up again. It's like, I, why have you done this? I cannot compute.
the, the... Hello? Did that crash it? Is it because I was flying? That can't be the reason. This is taking so much longer than last time. This is the same thing that happened in the nether. We set off one nuke. And it was fine, and then every nuke we set off afterworld, afterward... What? Is Obsidian the problem? What the heck? Yep, okay, we've got a soft crash. What we're going to do now... <laughs> we're gonna see where we end up first off. It should be right before that explosion, yeah. So... I, I don't understand. This is not the result I expected. If I break all of that, if we just put down a nuke and we set it off, right? What happens? Just patiently waiting. There it goes. Computer's ramping up. Big explosion sound. Everything's fine, right? It worked. Okay. And apparently I've made the achievement the Stone Age. Congratulations, me. If I put that nuke... Maybe it's because we're sealing it in? That doesn't make sense either. If I put it on a platform of obsidian and do it, then what happens? Is it literally just... I, I, I was fully on board with this theory of it being one of the blocks we were using, and I was actually extremely confident that I knew which block it was going to end up being. It being obsidian seems so unlikely... Because that is a base object in the world of Minecraft. No nuke sound. I think it's crashed. <laughs> oh, no! It's crashed! Are you kidding me? Alright. We're back in the pit. I am so confused and perplexed, but I'll tell you what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of Obsidian and we're going to go to the reinforced... I'll tell you what, we're going to start off with reinforced stone and reinforced glass. We're going to see where that gets us. We're going to go to the top of this hill and, I mean, first off, let's just put some of this stuff underneath the nuke and see if it's mere presence is enough to cause the nuke some sort of freak out. I imagine it won't be. This is, these are from the same mod, right? Both of these are from Industrial Craft Classic. So I don't expect there to be any sort of confusion between the two of them. I think this ought to just work. Okay, explosion. Then we wait for the sound. There it is. And there we go. Kind of waiting for the world to load in. Wow. That was a big one. I wonder if doing it higher at a higher elevation leads to a bigger explosion radius. It feels like each one of these has gotten larger. And I think I've moved up in elevation with each one. So now it's time to find out whether or not encasing it inside of this material causes the bomb not to explode. See, these are the scientific experiments we should have been doing uh, the last time that I just didn't do because I was so perplexed and confused by the fact that it was just constantly crashing. So, golden button, one last piece. We'll kind of take a step back here. One wall thick I don't expect will contain the explosion, but maybe it'll limit it, or maybe it'll crash the game. Let's stand close so we can make sure that we definitely hear the, the sound of the explosion. Actually, you know what? Let me hold on to both of these block types. Maybe we'll do double here in a second to see what the difference is. And there it goes. And wow! Yeah, that did limit it. Quite a bit. I mean, it's not perfect, but... 
<laughs> what is this shape? <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> it's funky. Okay. This is cool. I love little caves like this. This reminds me, I mean, this is almost exactly like my very first Minecraft world way back in Minecraft alpha days. So pre, pre beta even where I had this little mountain and I lived in this little nook and I made this terrible dirt wall around my land and I was so proud and so happy with it. Gosh, I got to find that world. I know I still have it. So let's do double thick this time. So we will set this one off and we will, okay, so it's got double thick now, everything. And I made the walls out of glass. By the way, big shout out to everyone who pointed out that the reason I was missing armor the last time we tested this is because I took off my chest plate and my leggings in order to put on the uh, hazmat suit. So it killed those animals over there. They're dead, but not those sheep. Those sheep are fine. Huh. Wow. So I guess if our nuclear reactor goes off, and yeah, based on our experiments, it definitely seemed like the nuclear reactor that we set off in that village in the last episode, or episode before last, whichever, uh, it definitely had a very similar explosive capability to one of these nukes. It had a similar sized crater. So I would expect that, you know, because this is basically what we did. We did double thick uh, reinforced glass. If our nuclear reactor goes off, our house should be safe. Unless apparently there's any obsidian nearby. We get back to daylight. There we go. And we will test the reinforced... I'm going to go ahead and grab the framed blocks. We're not going to do those yet. I kind of wanted to do the reinforced concrete that we tried before from Railcraft. And let's do a fun color. There's so many different options. Uh, actually, let's just go with the basic one. Let's not complicate things. We're going to do a basic little housing here. And this is partly to see whether or not it can destroy this stuff, but then also to see whether or not this stuff causes it to crash. So, <laughs> I'm starting to think it was just the obsidian, which is weird! That's a vanilla Minecraft block! Why would that... <sighs> I don't get it. And before you say you just gotta be patient and wait it out, I did. Remember, I left it running... Oh... I mean, I can't say that reinforced concrete did nothing, but it looks like reinforced concrete did nothing. I was going to look at this here and say, well, it kind of is a smaller blast. It didn't go quite so far that direction. I think that's just because of the volume of stone that insulated the explosion. All the rest of this got pretty obliterated. This is looking like my Tech at Legends base now at the end of the series. Oof. Zoom over here to this sort of picturesque field. Oh, those are some really cool mountains over there. All right, we are going to now test using the reinforced framed blocks, and we will create a cocoon of them. I don't expect now that these are going to cause any problems. I'm I'm fully on obsidian is the problem. Like, whatever camp that is, that is the camp that I am a part of. Oh, hold on. Did we... Wait, what? I'm conf I'm confused. Oh! Oh, it's going in. I, I see the issue here. I see the issue here. Okay, so we were actually placing the nuke inside of that block down there. I was... <laughs> I think we did that before as well. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I don't expect this to stop any explosion, though. I expect this to still blow up. And... That makes me wonder if whether or not our reactor explodes. If the double thick glass stops it, will it explode out of my reinforced door in like a straight line? And just because that is basically going straight into the center of that room. Wait a minute. Oh, no. Yep. That did basically nothing to stop it. Although. <laughs> the blocks themselves are fine. <laughs> Ah, uh, the reinforced blocks are perfectly fine. They're okay. <laughs> Nothing around them is. That's good to know. <laughs> so I'm now going to build more or less a simulation of the reactor that is underneath my, my house by using bedrock and reinforced glass to simulate. Because remember, the, the my house is one layer of reinforced stone 
underneath the reactor, but then immediately under that is bedrock, so kind of trying to simulate that here. And then we have double layer on all the sides and the top. I did sort of an egg shape on the top, meaning that actually in some spots it's triple layer, uh, I believe, but this will be a fine enough representation of that. So then on the inside, we're going to have this, that, and then there's two doors. Oh. So we're going to see what happens here. I'm, I'm wondering if it's going to push an explosion out in that direction. We'll just wait and see. Those poor horses, they have no idea what's coming. Heaven help them. Okay, well, everything is dead. And there's the explosion. Wow! That's what I expected. I didn't think it would go so far, though. It's almost like it calculated all of the force that wasn't escaping through the sides and multiplied it out the front. But the doors are okay. Alright, we're back. It's been several hours. I, right after doing that test, well, during that test, got a call from my brother, and then I, I, I answered it. And uh, he was letting me know that he'd driven by my house. He wanted to know where my cat Thomas was. And I said, oh, well, I just let him out. And he's like, ah, I think I think somebody hit Thomas. So I went outside. Yeah, Thomas has uh, passed away. It's been several hours. I've already gotten him, buried him, did all of that. And went to, to get waffle fries at Chick-fil-A because I was bummed out. But we're back now. And let's look at the devastation yeah that did kind of what i expected it to do it looks like it it focused the explosion directly ahead so focused in fact that all of this over here is fine these houses are fine thing over there is fine even though the glass on the sides did get blown out it doesn't really look like the explosion traveled far at all um in fact this is probably the limit right here and then as it went it got wider so that's what's going to happen at our base if we are not careful. Okay, we're going to do a test with the reinforced doors going in the other direction to see if that holds up any better. There we go. That did sl open that door for a second, but I think it's fine. And that's reinforced stone. It's the same as the glass, though. It has the same blast resistance, so... That was an accident. I meant to put glass back on top, but I got slightly nervous because it was already flashing. And I realized it's easy to put it down quick. There we go. Took a second, and it looks like... Well, it definitely contained it slightly better. Or did it? I don't know. It blew all the way up till here. I don't think that really the doors made all that much difference. I think that it, looking at it, I guess if we look at the map, yeah. So where am I at on this? Let me let me fly over the top of this thing, and if we look at it, so here's the center, and it looks like this one blew up to here. This one blew up to here. This one looks worse, but that might have been because there was already kind of less in the way to block the explosion or something like that. I don't think the door type matters. And then, just because it could be funny, what does four nukes do? Let's let's all find out together. It makes the computer get loud, I can tell you that so far. Oh, there's the explosion noise. Oh gosh, normally when you hear the explosion noise, there goes another one. <laughs> Wait a minute, <laughs> is it going to play all four of them separately, slowly? They should have all gone off at, there goes the third one, at basically the same time there. So I would expect the fourth one. Now. There it is, okay. Not spot on. Usually it's right after you hear the sound though. You start to see the world. <laughs> the damage of the world. Uh, appear. We're not seeing it yet. Oh, jeez. What have we done? I 
I wonder if we've soft locked it. We might, we might have experienced another soft crash. I gotta know about the obsidian though. I don't get that. I don't know why the obsidian causes the issues it causes. I'm going to fly straight up. And I'm gonna park myself as best as I can over that square. And then we're just gonna wait. Oh my gosh. I mean, it took a while, but it's going. Oh! Oh, it went further than I expected. Wowzers. Oh my gosh. First off, this looks really cool. This is a really interesting angle. It almost looks like those trees over there are on their side. Am I leaving the planet? Am I going into space now? Is that what's happening? I don't think we can go in space in creative mode. I think we need a rocket. Actually, that's not how this works. That would be ridiculous if it was. The planet is gone. Uh, let's head back down. Oh, it's so smooth. <laughs> that's nuts. <laughs> let's look at the map. Wow. Yeah. If we, if we continue to scroll down, I believe this was our first nuclear test. Then we have progressively weirder looking ones. And then we just get to this. I mean, that went all the way to bedrock. And we were on top of a volcano when we started. Jeez. So I guess the conclusion for today is if this thing blows... Everything in that direction is going to be in serious trouble, but otherwise should be fine. And we can always make this thicker if we want to. But I'm going to go ahead and call it there and go continue mourning and grieving the loss of the best cat I've ever had. I, I started this morning. I, I had, like, I got up and I made myself something to drink and I fed him and I pet him. And then I was headed back here to record this video. I was like, you want to come with me? And he ran to the door and just started meowing, so I let him outside. And then it was it was 30 minutes later, I got a call from my brother. So that is unfortunate. But thank you folks for watching. God bless each and every one of you. And I'll see you later. Goodbye. Well, howdy there, folks. How are y'all doing? My name is Reese, and it is another rainy, stormy night, which means I'm going to go to sleep. Because I don't think we've actually slept in our bed for a really long time, and that's probably why it's constantly rainy and stormy. Because it rains more when you don't sleep, right? That's not one of those Minecraft myths. I feel like that's a real thing. I feel like that's a real true thing. But today, I was going through the comments, because I've gotten a lot of feedback, on the question that I asked a few episodes ago about whether or not you folks felt like it was time to rush full speed ahead with using all of our EMC to create the most OP gear and tools, or whether or not we should hold back and follow along a more sort of natural progression. Early responders were very in favor of rushing ahead, building gem armor and all of that, and then... A little bit later, about halfway through the day, the comments flipped, and it was folks saying, nah, stick with it. Stick with the more natural progression, and that has left me in a situation where I don't know what to do. <laughs> I've, got, I've got conflicting reports, so I'm trying to figure it out. I think we'll probably do both, and I don't know how that's going to work. Maybe there will be some reason that's going to come up in the next few episodes, Maybe in the, the near future, something will happen that will put us in a situation where uh, we are uh, required in some way to build certain things. Who can say, really? Who knows what's going on in the world? Everything's chaotic. I came out here earlier, which is something I very rarely do, because, I mean, that is all getting out of hand. And there's a road. There's a road. And in fact, I think there's another road, if you look at the map, that's going this way. So this entire island is is starting to 
it's starting to develop in ways that I don't quite fully understand. I noticed that there was a new sign. There's like a couple of new signs. I don't know about this one, folks. I don't know about this one. I thought I saw someone over here the other day, but then they're not here anymore. But there's definitely something weird going on. I reckon it's probably safe to swim over and just see what this sign says. Welcome to Ant... What does it say? Oh, right, we can fly. Welcome to Andesite Island. Which I guess must be named for all of the polished andesite. Um, Gray's Mine. Private property. Do not enter. I don't think I could if I wanted to. There's no button. Got a mine there. And then this is... Opening soon. Fernie's Trading Imp or E um bring money who are these people is this is this normal comment down below if this is happening in your world as well maybe around your spawn or maybe the original spawn i have claimed this fishing spot leave it be baz baz's balsa do not Okay. What does it mean? What does that mean? Baz's balsa. It's a random crafting table. Bramble's finest farm. I don't know. He's got a lot of weeds, if you ask me. Okay, well, this is just empty. I like that they all seem to be color-coded, though. We got, we got green, blue, brown, and then I suppose that's supposed to be pink or purple. Are these reinforced frame stairs and then... Oh! What is this? Chiseled... It says chiseled sand. Gravel. Oh, it's from chisels and bits. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> oh! It's slightly broken. Love that. It's like we're looking into some sort of alternate dimension when we attempt to break it. Oh, jeez. Sorry. Uh, more purple heart wood needed? How would we go about getting purple... Maybe maybe we need to, like, endear ourselves to these people. Purple heartwood saplings. We'll need Brazil wood and Kopak in order to breed a purple heart. But then again, I don't actually know how to breed a tree. I'll have to look that up. That's going to require teak and ebony, dark oak and Kopak, teak and jungle, jungle and dark oak. We can get those two. Those two we can manage. And then we can we have a ten percent chance of somehow somehow getting teak. Do I just plant them next to each other and hope for the best? I don't know. Well, this is all very strange, and I don't know what to make of it. Quite frankly, I don't want to be over here anymore. So we're gonna Ooh. zoom back over here. I like that this is all progressing, whereas that has just stopped. So I guess that's that's run its course. I, I had someone suggest that maybe that was part of a, a mod that like spawns in random fortresses and things, and I don't know if that's in this pack. I haven't really gone through the mod list well. Normally that'll spawn them in like when the chunk is generated, not after the fact. But I don't know, mods are getting crazy these days, so I, I don't know. Wait. Oh gosh, what's going on with that one? Oh, jeez, there's more lava than there used to- Oh, no! Oh, no, that one's doing it, too. One's doing it, too. Okay, well... Today's episode, because I don't want to deal with that, what I thought we would do is, since we're going to be sticking with these tools uh, for a little bit longer, is maybe I would go ahead and make an advanced chainsaw, as well as the advanced diamond drill, so we can get a little bit more use out of these. And then also, I've never made the next tier up electric furnace. But I guess I should make one of those as well as the better compressor and the, the better macerator. And get those plugged in and running. Uh, we've already got MFEs below them. So we can run those machines without transformer upgrades. And we'll have the benefit of a faster processing. I need to go check my nuclear reactor though while I'm thinking about it. Are you still running? You're off. Good. Heaven knows we could not sustain that. 
Okay, well... Off you go. How are we doing? We, we are full on power, though, and it's going to be a long time, I feel like, before this is empty. And then there's so many buffers in there. I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to just fill that thing up with... I mean, what do we have the most of? Single cell... I mean, this is going to produce so little power. Because there's only, what, four slots for these? Really? Or, no, I'm sorry. No, there's six. I'll be curious to see how much power these will produce. Just with the six of these. <laughs> We remember, we don't really need to produce a lot of power right now. I mean, I guess just enough to keep this up and running. So there we go. And with the four of those, looks like we're getting... Oh gosh, hold on, we need to reset. Okay, starting new measurement. And then we'll give it a little bit of time. Go put the rest of these up. And then... About <laughs> 30! Okay, perfect. That's that's nothing. But I'm not gonna waste. I'm not gonna waste power. I mean, it's so easy to make new uranium cells because we have EMC, but we don't need to right now. Speaking of, we got 45 UU matter plus whatever I have up here in this chest. I seem to recall we were gonna do something with that. Oh, we were gonna build that pouch that'll hold more upgrades. I, we really just don't need that anymore. Is the issue right? So that's gonna be the. Induction furnace, the singularity compressor, and of course the rotary macerator, which we've built before, nothing new there. And then something to note about these tools is that they are not a part of Industrial Craft 2. These are actually from Gravsuit Classic, whatever that means. It also has a grav tool that according to this says it will work as a wrench, but it doesn't mention, like I'm, I'm on their, their page for the curse forge page i don't see any mention of whether or not it's lossless though oh my gosh it has something called the vera is that how you would say that it's definitely not vajra let's be serious this apparently has the ability to break any tool in the game in one hit and is a better weapon than the let's see what does it say here 30 percent better damage than nano saber well, that looks like one tool to rule them all. It will require that we get the advanced chainsaw, the advanced diamond drill, and a mining laser, which we've not even built yet. Then we gotta build the Vera Core, which requires a Tesla coil. That's actually not too complicated. Magnet, though. Superconductor. Superconductor cover. Oh gosh, this is gonna be a complicated one. That might be an episode. Like a full actual episode. In fact, why don't we wait to have a full actual episode for all of that, and we'll just focus on the machines right now. <laughs> this is a mini-sode! So right out the gate, we're going to need three machine blocks, and then we're going to need more advanced alloy, but we probably have some? Somewhere? No? I thought we made a ton of that stuff! So each one of these machines, sort of the... The, f the thing that, that binds them all together is the necessity for an advanced machine block. And fortunately, it looks like I've got everything I need to make the three of those. And then from that point forward, it looks like it's just a matter of combining the machine and the advanced machine block with different materials. So for the induction furnace, that's going to be copper, which is very basic. Uh, for the singularity compressor, it's obsidian. And for the rotary macerator, we've done this before, it's scrap metal blocks, alternatively... We can use obsidian blades, which I think we probably have a bunch of still. Oh, we got two. In order to do this, we have to put the machine back down and then put back in these upgrades. You see how smart I was, though? I did disconnect it before before doing that so we could get the transfer. Yeah, see, that's, that's why I made these. Quick access to these sorts of things. This is out of control. I, I've, I've made a mistake. So it's going to require 14 of these, as you might remember. It's strange that it's specifically the compressor that is, in my opinion, my, my humblest of opinions, the more difficult of these machines to manufacture. Because the recipe for literally all of the other ones is laughably simple in comparison. Again, if it's machine block, electric furnace... A block of regular something, you'll have a thousand of at this point. Obsidian. <laughs> Either scrap metal blades, which apparently, I looked into it, a compressor, recycler, tools. 
or armor. It's so weird, and even then, you're only there's only a chance that's what you're gonna get. Very, very oddly specific. But we're going to need to come over here now and grab one of our advanced machine blocks, and then we're gonna have to build this here because with the recipe we're using, the two obsidian blades, uh, you can't have double stacks inside of the project bench. So that is what we're doing. So now we can throw this down. It'll accept medium voltage and start charging up. And of course, we're going to want to put a switch on that to keep it running at all times. Although apparently there is an upgrade we can get. Someone left to comment about this. I'll have to go find it. But what was it called? Redstone inverter upgrade. That's just tin and a redstone torch. And apparently what that does is it keeps the machine on at all times and it does not necessitate an actual redstone torch or redstone signal to be applied. It, I mean, I guess a better way of explaining that would be that it inverts the signal from redstone. So instead of redstone turning it on, redstone turns it off. And since there's no redstone, it'll be on all of the time. Is that working? Yes, it's speeding up. Of course... That means we have to get that pouch now if we want to add more upgrades. Upgrade container, which requires iridium plate, which requires iridium ore, which requires UU matter. How much UU matter do we have? That might determine whether or not we use that thing. I mean, of course, the alternative would be that we just stick a lever on the front of it and turn it on, which is also possible and easy and not really that big of a deal. UU matter, iridium ore, we've got seven of them. In order to build this, keep in mind we need three of these, one for each machine. We'll need four, so that's twelve plates. And then each of those requires four... Oh, boy. Okay, so we need forty-eight iridium ore. And we got seven. Anyway, we'll be taking that out now. And, uh, just throw one of these up there. Problem solved. Tuck you guys away for later. Import upgrade. Export upgrade. And that brings us on to you, sir. Your turn. This one is almost silly in comparison, so much so that I just know the recipe. I've viewed it a couple of times. And there it is. The induction furnace. Now, if you were wondering, well, what's the difference between this and the regular furnace? Well, the difference is pretty much the same as the difference between the macerator and the rotary macerator. We just apply a signal to it. It becomes stupidly fast at 100%. Keep in mind, it will be consuming power the entire time it's turned on, so we might want to get our reactor set up with at least dual cells to maintain power. But uh, it's more or less the same situation with the Singularity Compressor, which we're going to need... Oh my gosh, we just have the obsidian. Now, did I grab that obsidian for this, or did I... Oh no, I was grinding that away earlier for something else. Well, it just so happens to work out for us, doesn't it? That's lovely. There is our Singularity Compressor. And once this is at 100% speed, it's going to be nigh on unstoppable. Of course, we will need to apply, once again, a lever to it. Get it speeding away. And then I don't remember what upgrades came out of what machines, so... I guess I'm probably going to have to set these back up myself. Alright, yes, yeah, so we've got, like, just so much stuff. Apparently, there is no nice... Uh, storage upgrade options in this pack, which is unfortunate. I mean, it does look like... Our only option is to build chests and then automate sorting. So we have like a dump chest and then everything gets sorted into storage chests. That kind of sucks. You'd like some type of big chest or automated chest, digital storage, something along those lines. But I guess we'll just have to deal with what we got. Since EMC is no longer an issue, we might as well go with the indestructible obsidian chests. Because even though they are stupidly more expensive... Than an alchemical chest, they do have slightly more storage space. EMC is no longer an issue, so expense is not really an issue either. And at least with these, again, slightly more storage space. I can't remember, I think it was like four stacks of 64 more. It was something minute like that when we did the math earlier. Still, that's something. This isn't just me being annoyed with having to store all of this stuff. This is me being practical, right? Refined iron should have an EMC value because, yes, it is just regular iron that's been cooked. But cooking it takes power. That requires EMC in the first place. 
And then it's not like you can turn it back to regular iron. So there's no way to export that or extort that as far as I can tell, as far as I'm concerned. It seems like, you know, just one eighth of a coal's value of EMC added to iron and you have your refined iron and then I don't have to have a chest full of this stuff. You know what? I, it just seems like a good idea. If we're, what we're really worried about is balancing the game, hello, the blaze rod thing in the basement's out of control. Talk about balance in video games. Look at all this red matter we've got. It's crazy. Looks like we're going to be living with chest walls, though, which is funny because I don't think I've had a pack with chest walls in a long time, at least not this far into the pack. But wow, yeah, we've got our coal dust and our refined iron. <laughs> we actually got more over here that we need to move over. So the compressor ought to be spun up to a pretty decent speed. 68. That's not, it's not bad. I mean, there's that 58. It's kind of hard to tell what's going on right over here, but it looks like, oh, 69. Well, ideal then. Let's see how fast that's going to be going. Oh, so much faster. So much nicer. I'm not even worried about the fact that it isn't going at 100%. It, this is lovely. Fantastic. So we've now got really fast machines ready to be used whenever we need to use them. The next thing that I want to build, because it's cheap and easy and simple to- well, no, that's not the reason. It, it is cheap and easy and simple to build, but I want an armor stand because we've got some armor that we're never ever going to wear again that doesn't have an EMC value, and I figured, how the heck do you build- I've literally never built an armor stand. Not to memory, at least. I suppose it's possible, but not as far back as I can remember. Uh, and I thought it might be fun to have one, and in fact, it might be fun to have two, and we can use them to display our old armor that's just taking up space inside of here, because we're never going to use that armor again, and it doesn't have an EMC value, but we're not going to destroy it, and also, it's kind of part of our history, isn't it? All of this armor. Not that. That's not armor. You, you know what I'm getting at here, though. And then also, where is our... Where's our hazmat gear? It doesn't have an EMC value. That means it's got to be around here somewhere. Did I put it in the wrong chest at some point? Did it get destroyed when the bomb went off? Is that what got destroyed? Were we even wearing it? <laughs> when, the <n> <laughs> when the nuke off in the nether? Wait, we reset the world, though. We reset the world to the before that. Where is my hazmat suit? Wait, is it, like, right in front of me? The only other place I can think of it being is down here in one of these chests. Which it is not. So let's talk about what's missing here. First off, Carl. Carl is missing. No idea where Carl is. Second, hazmat suit. Hazmat suit is missing. No idea where hazmat suit is. Are the two related? It seems unlikely. Armor stand. We'll put down a couple of them. I don't know if they all need to be right next to each other. That might actually be a bit crowded. Armor stands. The third one was going to be hazmat suit, but I, I guess it won't be now. Looks good. And then... Perfect. So, of course, we have our, our Bronze Age outfit, which was immediately replaced, I think, something like 20 or 30 minutes later with this fine piece of gear. And then someday we'll have our nano suit up there. Although I guess actually our nano suit will be turned into a quantum suit at some point. And then our quantum suit will be up here as we have on, you know, dark matter and then red matter armor, which again, we could build, but we're not going to. That is it for today's mini episode. Uh, my whole day was thrown off. I was going to record a lot more of these today, but then, you know, a lot happened earlier in the morning. So thank you folks for watching. God bless you. And I'll see you later. Bye! Howdy there, folks! How are y'all doing? My name is Reese, and today is a very special day, because today is the day that I'm going to start reading comments that I have received on this series. Not from my viewers, though. From what I assume is a bot? Or someone trying to ch train a bot? I don't know. They're very weird comments. And the first few, I didn't pick up on the fact that they could be a robot. I just thought it was someone who maybe didn't have the best handle of the English language, but then I started to notice these patterns emerging that you'll notice as well. I should note that there could be one on this video, but as of the last couple of videos, I've started deleting these and reporting them as spam, and I do plan on going back and retroactively doing the same on all of these videos, 
because I don't appreciate being used as a robot comment trainer, but at the same time, some of these are very funny, and I wanted to read them off to you and have them saved for the sake of future generations. <laughs> and when you're living in the year 2050 and you can't tell the difference between a real person and a robot online, you can look back to these simpler times when we got comments like this. So you're going to see patterns emerging. I'm going to go ahead and read this one off, all right? Both the GMS and Softex setup is very different from the one you're using. Why is it so? GMS doesn't even soft like App One. And the. Now, when I first read that, I did my best to understand what that could mean, and I thought maybe there were some words mistranslated. Maybe they were trying to ask me why I don't have. Uh, this was just a guess. Like, why, why, do, why do some people have a different texture pack and I don't? I didn't know. But things you're going to see again is you're going to see the word soft as well as the, the phrase GMS. First, he getting on soft soft to nice tutorials, finna be breeze. Yeah, see, now if you know what that means, let me know. To nice is probably the word you're gonna see the most often. Nice with a T at the beginning. You have about the software. I personally enjoy learning, so it was a little easier to do it over T. But you'll get there, brother. A -ga 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 to nice tutorials reminds me of coding, knowing what to do and how, but not knowing syntax. A -ga 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 -ga. Thank you in the setup. Let's pick a color to organize to nice tutorials. Picks the saw red for every soft. Yeah, you're gonna see saw a few times as well. Thank you for creating tonight's tutorials playlist in soft. Just starting out in soft production, and there's so much to learn. I don't know, brother. Tech it has any mode too. Thanks for introducing us. Tonight's tutorial link, tonight's tutorials, is my tonight's tutorial link now. Overwhelming, but tonight's tutorials was absolutely brilliant. Thank you. Honestly, the best soft tutorial. I've ever seen. Short and straight to the point. I love it. It was the SAW 4. In the GMS, I switched the program to Analog App 1 TE. This one is my favorite. You aren't a setup master without a set of cans around your neck. I'm wearing a set now, even though I don't know what I'm doing. LOL! <laughs> that one's my favorite. <laughs> Thank you so much for tonight's tutorials, bro. When I add the GMS, it was giving different soft in SPIAD of yours. I could fix tonight's tutorials? Soft source? I'm sorry, my ADHD doesn't allow to sit still through tonight's tutorials. I'll be back so other tie. So I decided to give soft softs a try. I just subscribed to your channel. Impression almost everyone does their soft and soft soft, but record their voice in Pro Tools. Not sure why. Would like learning how to do. How do I pull up those effect slots on the left side of the set upper? Thank you so much for tonight's tutorials video. I was so confused and overwhelmed when I first opened SoftSoft, and now I understand how to finally. In the setup, hey bro, I wanted to know how do you load your sample guide into the packs in the browser? Once I buy the basic version of SoftSoft, can I upgrade to producer for $100? Or do I have to buy it new for zero? What a deal! Imagine that. It, it, to get the <laughs> to get producer, you have to pay $100, or you can just get a new one for nothing. What does it mean? How to change your channel rack from dub back to the original channel rack you have. So Also too small to know the difference between two and two. To anyone who comments about torrenting it, I would strongly advise doing that. Pirating a door can be a huge fine. Not. See, I think a lot of these comments are generated under the assumption that my videos are about audio workflows and, and audio editing software. Uh, DAW, that's an audio, I think it stands for digital audio work flow or something like that, workspace. It's basically like a garage band, right? It, it, like that, that's a DAW, I believe. So, I, man, I don't know. Super great video makes excited to learn more and get started. Love the state organized motto. <laughs> I think it's got to be using the auto generated captions to determine what the video is about, because I'm pretty sure in this video I mentioned something about trying to stay organized. But man, I'm trying to switch from Ableton to Soft. I wish Soft would do specific to nice tutorialings Ableton does. So nice tutorialists frustrating trying to get used to it. What's that got to do with magical mayhem? 
Tonight's tutorials is the best tutorial. Simply explained to a newbie. Great job, man. Other desktop soft making software have more features, and you can do much more than you can on mobile, but the user interface in. Also, 3,200th like. No. No, the video doesn't even have that many views. What are you talking about? Following the tutorial exactly right, but still different, using trial version. Thank you! Tonight's tutorial's tutorial is so good, Tism. Amazing advice, wow. I started making soft recently. I was wondering if you want to do any features. Thank you so much, I cannot wait to start setupping. I want to create original soft for com kills and shows alongside my many other. How's everything going, dear? This is insane, catch you later! I can't save, he wants to buy soft soft! Progress. Now, two months later, I am editing for tonight's two out league teams and players and making money off it. Keep your heads up and... He did a very good job in my opinion, explaining the basics step by step. English is not my first language and I have no experience in using DAWs. I can feel you, bro. I, this one might actually be my favorite. Maladaptive daydreaming gang be like. <laughs> Utilized and enjoyed when nice tutorialist increasing in value. Into multi-track record. I would play with an effect or two on my recordings, but I never touched the soft roll in the stepped sequencer. Then there's soft soft running the content for my new absolute zero. Bro, I want to Becco DJ, but I'm smart enough to learn soft soft, but have financial problem. When I first got soft soft, I was Japanese too. I don't know Japanese. But I got to... <laughs> when I first got soft soft, I was Japanese too. I don't know Japanese. But I got the hang of it, and now I'm working on an EP. So thanks. And that, folks, is the, the bevy of strange comments that I've received. Now, I've gotten more since then, but like I said, I've been deleting them or, or commenting and flagging them as spam on some of the more recent videos. Are these real cherries? I right clicked in an effort to collect them. Oh, it worked. They're in, oh my gosh. Look at that. Presumably they'll grow back. We have cherries now and we can use them to create a genetic filter. <laughs> They, <laughs> what the heck? A genetic filter, you gotta have cherries for that, everyone knows it. Well, <clears throat> I would like to ask all of you, uh, as funny as it might seem, if you're going to comment on this video, and I encourage that you do, using either the words saw, soft, soft, to nice, any of it, I think it's funny, could be a fun channel meme. Please also include something that lets me know that you actually watched the video and are a real person. Uh, for a lot of you, I've seen your your like usernames and your avatars on several of the videos, so I will know that you're a real person. But uh, I am I'm being pretty aggressive about flagging these comments as spam now, deleting them and blocking the users. So please don't do that to yourself, right? Like I don't want to accidentally ban anyone for leaving a, a genuine comment. So if you're going to comment down below saying "saw to nice" or "soft soft," "gms," any of it. Please make sure you also include something that lets me know that you watched the video. Maybe put it in there at the end of the comments. Wow, I really enjoyed that bit with the cherries. To nice tutorial link, you know. I It's funny, but I don't know what's going on. I assume it's a bot. I don't get this on my other channel. But then again, the other channel is very pruned over the course of 10 years to detect and delete spam. Uh, so... Maybe we just have more work to go on this channel. But thank you folks for watching. Thank you for leaving real genuine comments. God bless each and every one of you, and I'll see you later. Bye. Wow. Okay, so Andesite Island is actually an island. I hadn't even realized. It kind of makes me wish I'd built my house on the island and then secured the whole island and then been surrounded by water and not have a land connection with whatever's happening right there. Interesting, though. Interesting. And you can definitely see the, the color layout of brown, green, blue, and... I mean, that's white, but the rest of that property is purple, so I don't know. That's weird. The roads leading up to that hill, that hill. I've been up here for a while now. I was hoping that maybe if I just flew around... Oh, howdy, folks! Welcome back.
to Tekka 2. I was hoping that if I just flew around up here for a while, eventually we would see someone, something, anything at all. But no, so far nothing. So I don't know what that's all about. Oh well, I'm gonna keep an eye on it. Nothing new has been built in the last day or so. So I don't know, maybe if I just stay on, nothing happens. It might happen, maybe it's one of those situations where when you log in and it's generating terrain, well, I guess regenerate. It's, it's not like it's recreating the terrain, but maybe it does a check and it's like, oh, I'll add a new building here. So maybe it's not being built while I'm offline because that doesn't make any sense. Uh, but, oh, shoot, I don't know. Anyway, let's talk about solar. We haven't had a reason to build any new types of solar energy owing to the fact that we have a nuclear power plant in the, uh, in the basement. But I thought it might be fun to get back into it today and build some nuclear, uh, some solar energy. Last time around we built the low voltage solar panel, which is pretty cool. 8 EU per tick, but if we built a medium one, that would be 64 EU per tick. And then if we built a high voltage one, that'd be 512 EU per tick. Now, I think I made high voltage solar panels in Tekka Classic. It's been so long ago I don't remember. As you can imagine, it's a bit of a long, tedious process, owing to the fact that it requires you to make... 512? <laughs> Wait, so you have to make 512 solar panels? I think you do. Yeah, because it's 8 for this, and then it's 8 of these for this, so it's 64. Oh my gosh, that's nuts. I kind of want to do it, though. That means creating 1,024 electronic circuits. So we got to keep in mind, we already have a low voltage solar panel that we can use as part of this recipe You're sitting right there. So, okay, let, let me do some math. If we, if we already have that one, oh gosh, maybe we don't even consider it. It'll be easier if we don't even take that into consideration. Two of these requires six of these. So that's going to be 6,144 copper cables. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you what I'm going to do here, folks. I'm opening up YouTube on my iPad. I'm going to turn on an episode of, I don't know, Best of the Worst, probably one that I've seen a dozen times, and I'm going to just get to work. Did you know that an extractor will give you three diamonds per diamond ore? Now, that does require that we have some sort of silk touch to get that. Same with, with the coal and the... I mean, but still... That's pretty impressive. And also, with an extractor, we can get three rubber per sticky resin, which is not bad either. What I'm saying is, let's go ahead and build an extractor for this. You might say it's a waste of time to do this, considering we have near-infinite EMC that we can pull from, which is the reason that I will not be shutting down the thing in the basement currently. There we go. So I think that's everything that we need to build the basic extractor. Ooh, we actually need one more tree top. But the reason I won't be shutting down the blaze rod system in the basement is because even if we're not going to immediately collect and harvest all of that EMC, I like the fact that it's there. So when we decide to do a thing, we can definitely get it done. So this is less about needing this in order to build this and more about it's kind of funny, isn't it? As I was saying, though, it's less about needing the extractor because we're pressed for resources and this is going to make things more efficient. And more so, for me at least... The, the concept's just kind of funny. We don't need this. Let's build one anyway. We're, we're actually going to go all the way and build the centrifugal one. Centrifugal one. Which is, of course, just faster. No, we're not, because we don't have an electrolyzer. And that's that's pushing the limits of, of what I think is funny. Or, I don't know, man. I like a good joke. Let's do it. What, what does it take to build the next one? A bunch of LV transformers. Gosh, these recipes are weird and inconsistent. This is already starting to feel like something that could take up the time of a complete full episode, not a mini episode. But then again, the rules there are kind of loosey-goosey anyway. Obviously, we're going to need to plug this into an MFE. Please note that we don't actually have to plug this into an MFE. There is absolutely nothing that necessitates an MFE. I just am strange and like putting MFEs on all of my machines. So we have our glass fiber cables. And then on top of those, we will throw down our newly minted and highest of qualities MFE. We do not need to worry about this machine blowing up because it is an upgraded version and is ready for medium voltage out the gate. So we'll plug it in directly. And then we will throw this down. 
disguise it. Perfect. And there is our charged electrolyzer. Now, in order to build our centrifugal... I don't know why I'm having trouble with the word centrif centrifu <clears throat> centrifugal extractor. We will need seven electrolyzed water cells. Seven of them. Not, not all 48. That would be ridiculous. So we will drop those in there. Um, maybe this one requires a lever to be turned on, right? I mean, I know some of these require a lever to keep themselves spooled up. No. Well, of course not, because it's not even plugged in properly. Pretty sure it was nighttime when we started this, now it's daytime. I'm reading from the wiki, and it's not really making it super abundantly clear, but I think the issue is that this thing has to be hooked up directly to the storage device in question. So we're going to plug our MFE. It says that it can't take power from wires... Shoot. Okay, we're probably going to have to disassemble this entire stinking thing. There we go. Rotate it upwards. And also, apparently, it can't interact with anything nearby. Like, it, it can't input or output from storage. So, now that I think about it, in order to save space, we might as well go ahead and move it over one block and place it directly here next to this chest that it can't interact with anyway. So, we want to go. Uh, we've got our wire our MFE, and then our electrolyzer, and then we want to put that in there, and it says that this has to be at least 70% full before this will do anything, so maybe we just give it a minute. Okay, this got to about 70%, and then this came on, and it's maybe starting the electrolyzing process. I think we needed seven of these, though. Is that right? Six, seven, yeah. All right, well, we'll leave that to do its thing, then. In the meantime, we'll build another one of these. In the meantime, I bet ease in the meantime. This song sucks, I'm gonna stop. While we wait on that to get finished, which is probably going to take a while, we'll go ahead and extend this out and have it ready for a... <laughs> well, we're gonna need to build another MFE. Really pushing the limits of what a mini-episode can be. Curious to see whether or not when it finishes one, it immediately pulls all that power out of the MFA? No, okay. My reading of this may be off, but I think that the wiki is trying to communicate to me that if we attach multiple MFEs to it, so let's say we put, or maybe even MFSUs, and we put them all around it, it would draw power from all of them simultaneously to get the job done faster. Again, that might be me reading it incorrectly, but I'm pretty sure that the idea is that each one of these is a, a PowerPoint. We could hook up a bunch of MFEs and do the job more quickly, but I'm not too pressed about it right now. For the sake of testing, though, I mean, we'll go ahead and get a second one, because we were building it anyway. And we'll plug it in. Boy, we need to build some teleporters around here. That should be our next thing that we do. Right, so both of these are now full. And I'm not seeing a real quick increase, but it might be one of those situations where if we had four of them plugged in, it does look like it's going a bit faster. It, that might be the case. If we have a bunch of them plugged in, it'll be noticeably faster. Well, I, I will leave this one plugged in because it does look like it's going a bit quicker. And we will move it when it's done. While we wait on that, we might as well go ahead and start working on some of the other components we're going to need. We're going to need a lot of coal dust. And we're good. Generators, though. We need a lot of re-batteries. 512 of them, in fact. Apparently, I've made the the advancement super treetop, but I don't really know what I did to make that advancement. Was it for building the extractor? Because I did that a long time ago. So the battery is going to require... 8, 16 stacks of redstone. There are our 7 electrolyzed water cells, and that means that you have done your job here for now, sir. Thank you. Reposition it right there, and it will be waiting for the completed centrifugal extractor extraordinaire awesomeness fun times. Have a stack of sticky resin. Now, presumably, because this thing is so fast at 100%, because we're going to get three for every one sticky resin, 
That means, theoretically, it could be going three times faster than cooking these up in the electric furnace, because it can only do one at a time. So even if they process them at the same amount of time, this will still have triple the output, which is pretty useful. Obviously, we will need both an import and an export upgrade for this machine so we can have it automated, and obviously we're going to want to upgrade those to the better versions if we can. There we go, full-sized import and export upgrade. Let's get some proper chests to use. Export to the south, import from the north. That should be correct. So we'll configure those, and yeah, all right. So while I continue to make 512 re-batteries, we'll have this thing going in the background. It's still speeding up, though. It's not It's not hit max speed, but we should be good to go soon with, uh, with rubber. Exciting stuff. So to give you an idea of how many batteries we need, they only stack to 16, but we need them to be... 16 here, 16 across, completely filled. Yikes. The extractor is already an invaluable resource. I cannot imagine doing this build without it. Four? I think I just made exactly the right amount, or two too many. But there we go. So that's 16 times 4 times 8, 512, and that's not even to make a solar panel. That is to make a generator. Now we have to make 512 machine blocks and 512 furnaces. So for furnaces, that'll be easy to make. And something easy to remember is that 512 divided by 64 is 8, meaning that we need 8 stacks of furnace. Drop those in there. And then that's where all of this comes in handy, creating all of those machine blocks. We're going to need a lot more than that, actually. We might actually need to have some more of this going because we're going through it really quick, and we're not even completely halfway there. And here I thought having a chest full of this stuff was silly and ridiculous and unnecessary, but I was wrong. My gosh, at least the induction furnace is stupidly fast. Doing two at a time. Madness. And that is what all of the ingredients for 512 generators looks like. Can't fit it all in my inventory in one go, so we're going to have to do this in like multiple passes, but let's see here. Generator, 64, 128, 256, 512 generators. Ridiculous. Hooking up 512 generators by itself would produce so much more power than this solar panel we're trying to make. 20, 21, 22, 23, and then we actually need 24 stacks of glass. 24 stacks of coal dust, 16 stacks of electronic circuits. Yee. When I'm done with this, I'm going to do the math for exactly how many raw materials you need for this. Or I won't, and I'll just say lol on the screen. Or I'll find where someone else has already done the work, and I'll copy that. I'll do one of those things, and I will let you folks know exactly what kind of nonsense was involved in the construction of this ridiculous solar panel. And with that, I think we finally have everything we need to create the solar panels. We're going to have to do these in batches. Unsurprisingly, there will be things that we run out of as we go. What did we run out of in that kit? Glass. We ran out of glass. So many electronic circuits. It would be such a bummer if after doing this, we immediately accidentally in some way destroyed it. I would hate that. That would make me so sad. What we need is someone who provides insurance for these sorts of things. So in the event that we do that, there's someone out there. Maybe we give them a few gold bars every so often and then they, they come back and they're like, Ah, yes, 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 I see. On record, you did own one of these and it was destroyed in the lightning strike of 89. We'll get you another one from the basement, you know, something along those lines. Like a like 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 an Apple Care almost, but for solar panels. Something along those lines. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stacks. Eight times six five hundred Yep, yeah, that's what we needed. That's what we needed! We did it! There's all of our solar panels. Now we need to get them into low voltage solar panel which means we need eight LV transformers. Really, from this point forward, as far as I'm concerned, I, I think it's not 
easy mode ahead, but it should be slightly smoother sailing. A lot of the more complicated stuff is done, and it's just a matter of putting it all together with these little bits. Eight LV transformers and the solar panels. Oh wait, we no, we need a lot more than eight. Eight is enough to build the medium voltage. We need we need eight. <sighs> eight times eight. That is to say we need 64 of the darn things. Well, not anymore we don't. We need 56 of them. Because we already did... Well, yeah. Okay. There we go. 64 low-voltage solar panels. Now we need gold cable and a lot of rubber, as well as more refined iron. And if you're wondering why we're getting refined iron out of there, it's because we actually used all of our refined iron. Nutty as that might seem. That's it. Seven, eight. So I think it's eight. We're going to need medium voltage transformers. We have way too much. I got I got too much stuff, arguably. There's way too much stuff in my inventory right now for this. Those and these. Eight medium voltage. Eight medium voltage solar panels. And then we want to go to high voltage, which means we're going to need... Oh, boy! Oh, no. Oh, I didn't take this into consideration. All right, so that's not too undoable. We can do we can do that. We we might we might be able to do that. What about some of these other things though? What goes into? I mean, first off, what, wait, wait, why do we need an e an IV transformer to create a high voltage solar panel? Why that requires an EV transformer? That's actually manageable. Plasma cable, magnets, compr. Oh my gosh. Okay, all right, so there, that's something we could do. We could build a rare earth extractor, and we could get rare earth from it somehow, and turn it into rare earth chunks, and turn that into a dead magnet, and then put electricity into it, and then build a plasma core, and then, what would we need that for? And then we'd still have to build plasma cables, which means more plasma cores. And then iridium stones is a doable thing as well, Nothing's stopping us from doing this. It just seems like a lot. Now, let me run your mind past this. The hybrid solar panel. It requires an advanced solar panel, which means I would have to build more low-voltage solar panels. Which means I'd need to build more regular solar panels. And then I would need to... Get, get an enriched s scenario. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Or, I could build an MFE, I could connect that up to eight separate solar panels, and for now, that's good enough to keep us alive on the moon. <gasps> I've said too much! Yeah, look, not to spoil episode 10, but we might have grand ambitions skyward. My plan was to record that over the weekend, but uh, with the, the loss of my cat and some other things that happened over the weekend, I didn't really have time which is why you're watching this instead. But I did want to get at least a medium voltage solar panel for the moon, and now we have eight of them. And the options are still open to us in the future to build high voltage solar panels or hybrid. So we will do that in the future. Don't think that we won't. Look forward to that in a future episode. But for right now, I wanted to say that we're done with these episodes because I cannot imagine fitting in another one of these. I mean, what are we what are we going to do? Reasonably speaking, what are we going to do? Episode 9.10. I mean, it's getting silly. We need to do episode 10. So, episode 10 was supposed to be recorded over the entirety of Saturday and that didn't work out for the reasons previously mentioned. I'm going to record it, I guess in segments and put it all together. That will mean that for the next couple of days, there might not be an episode of Tech It 2, as I try to put that together and make it as amazing as I imagine it being. I would ask you to just be patient with me. It'll be out in the future. I don't want to do any more of these mini-sodes. I'm just going to I'm going to buckle down and do the thing that I was trying to avoid with the mini-episodes. I was trying to avoid having a long stretch of time without an episode. But it looks like that's what's going to happen anyway. But hopefully you folks have enjoyed these nine mini-episodes gotten some level of enjoyment out of them episode 10 will be a uh, starbound theatrical amazing affair and hope you folks will be looking forward to it 
And uh, there'll probably be a couple of days between every episode moving forward. Because I want each episode to be kind of big and have something big happen. You know? And, and I want to focus on big projects in a proper episode. So be looking forward to that. If you want to watch stuff in between, as I've said before, I think at 9.1, I have an older Minecraft series that's not finished yet. I'm re-releasing the old episodes on this channel so that once we're caught up, I think episode 39 will be the last one that I made. Then when we get to episode 40, it'll be new and I'll be moving to wrap up that series. I also have a new series being released on this channel. That is the um, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 series. I got a lot of footage of that. I'm still editing those together. So consider giving those a watch. The Xenoblade Chronicles X playthrough is really fun. There's other things to watch. But Tech It 2 Episode 10 will be soon. Until then, thank you folks for watching. God bless you. And I'll see you later. Goodbye.